Chapter 1, Returning from the Nightmare The scorching sun in the afternoon burned the ground. Class 3 to 6 in Dragon City 9th City was as stuffy and hot as a food steamer. The students were sleepy. The teacher brandished an alloy saber with one hand, and in the other, he held a savage-looking specimen. Look at me! He shouted at the top of his lungs from the podium. Hurry up and look at me! If you don't look, how are you supposed to know how the monsters look? A teenager with messy hair sitting at the back of the classroom suddenly snapped awake and screamed out. The students and the teacher were shocked. Meng Zhao? There was a red sleep mark on Meng Zhao's face. His eyes were full of fear and panic, as if he had come out of a long nightmare. He scratched his head and looked around. When he saw the blackboard, his confused eyes suddenly focused. Profound skills of saber techniques were densely packed on the blackboard. There was a number pertaining the arm strength required to swing a saber, the analysis of the required torque, the speed to attack, the angle, and the depth, the highest firmness of the monster's armor, and all sorts of other intricate and complicated formulae. All of them showed questions that were bound to pop up during the National College examination. There were also two lines written in big font on the blackboard. 50 days until the National College exam. Study well, make progress every day, give raise to your own glory, and dominate the other world. This is my classroom from my third year in high school. Meng Zhao found himself confused. Aren't I dead? Why have I returned to my third year? And I'm about to take the National College exam? That's even worse than death. His head hurt so much that he felt as if it was about to split apart. Countless memories in the form of shards rushed into his head like a fierce monster. What? Dragon City fell? I failed in the national college examination and was tormented by society for decades. In the end, I only managed to become a third class fighter. As for my younger sister, she had great talent and night demon blood, so she became the Dark Witch. She's one of the strongest and most fearsome fighters in Dragon City, no, all of the other world. If she were in a game, she'd be at the level of a boss. So, what the heck is going on? Meng Zhao felt as if lightning had struck him. He wanted to remember things carefully, but the nightmare quickly scattered from his mind, and only bits and pieces of it remained. While he was in a daze, a familiar, large, and dark face drew close to him. Mr. Yan, you're alive? Meng Zhao blurted out. The entire class fell silent. Then, it burst into a ruckus. Everyone admired Meng Zhao's courage to look for trouble so much that they were about to fall down and worship him. Mr. Yan Dongxing, who taught them 100 saber techniques, was known as Demon Yan. He was a man feared by all. It was said that in the past, he was famous as an unrelenting instructor in the army. When he killed monsters, he did it as easily as if he was mincing meat to make fillings for dumplings. You actually dared to tease Demon Yan? As expected of the former strongest in Class 6. Meng Zhao, we'll organize a grand funeral for you. His classmates cried for him out of sympathy. Yan Dongxing's face had been as dark as a pan, but now, it burned red. Mr. Meng Zhao, explain. He held the monster's skull in one hand, and while his tone was calm, it was full of killing intent. Oh, this is bad. Meng Zhao's pupils shrank. The him right then was at least ten times more sensitive to killing intent compared to his classmates around him. Due to the shock from the killing intent, he quickly realized what was going on around him. I'm sorry, Mr. Yan, I was too busy studying yesterday, so I nodded off just now and had a nightmare? Meng Zhao tried hard to remember the flashes in his mind and said uncertainly, I think I dreamt of creatures residing in this foreign world coming over in droves. They were all incredibly brutal and ruthless and they were the type to make a lot of noise. They charged to Dragon City like a tidal wave, and we couldn't stop them at all. Our home of many years was destroyed overnight. I was shocked by it, and I woke up because of fright. Then, um, Mr. Yan, you were really brave in my dream. You were a martyr everyone respected. I was longing to see your smile and hear your voice in my dream, so when I opened my eyes and saw you walking over, I was overjoyed and couldn't help but... Wait. Yan Dongxing raised his eyebrows. You dreamt that Dragon City was destroyed and I died. His lips formed a smile, but he was really not smiling at all. His grip over the monster's skull tightened so much that it started making cracking sounds. Um. Meng Zhao scratched his head. Ever since he returned from the nightmare, his will to survive became incredibly great. Don't worry, you died painlessly. It was a peaceful death. Meng Zhao did not lie. 
he somewhat remembered that demon Yan was eaten by a large hundred teeth worm and was torn to shreds in just a few seconds. He did not even have time to scream. He should not have felt any pain, right? Crack. Yan Dongxing crushed the monster's skull in his hand. Dragon City will be destroyed? What a joke? The ruthless instructor was so angry that his face turned red. His eyes went wide, which made them larger than those of a monster. I won't talk about you not being responsible and not cultivating, and I can't be bothered with you sleeping during class, but Mr. Meng Zhao, what exactly do you have in your head that you dream about Dragon City being destroyed? Stand against the wall with your head up, chest out, stomach in, and ass out. Then answer me loudly. Fifty years ago, when Dragon City came to the other world, we didn't have coal, fuel, electricity, nor anything else. We only had plagues tormenting us and zombies rampaging the lands. At that time, did Dragon City perish? Meng Zhao felt troubled. Mr. Yan, how am I supposed to have my ass out if I'm to stand against the wall? What? Sir, yes, sir. Dragon City didn't perish. Meng Zhao shuddered. He instantly rediscovered how he was supposed to act as a 17-year-old. He jutted his butt out and pasted a determined look on his face. After the disaster of the zombies, the fog arrived and monsters appeared. Countless martyrs were willing to sacrifice their lives to wrench spaces for us to live from the teeth of the monsters inch by inch. Yan Dongxing was shouting by this point. During the first ten years of our fight against the monsters, we lost one-third of our population. At our darkest hour, the monsters invaded the center of our city every day. Humanity had to fight in every market, street, and toilet. Tell me, did we submit to them? Was Dragon City destroyed? Sir, yes, sir. We didn't submit to them. Dragon City was not destroyed. As Meng Zhao faced the ruthless instructor's saliva shower, he felt as if he was facing death with a smile. Some of Yan Dongxing's anger faded away, and he said darkly, Very good. Regardless of whether it is our journey to the other world, the rampant zombies, or the monster invasion, none of these dangers destroyed us, but made us stronger. After half a century's worth of fighting, today, Dragon City has gained a firm foothold in this other world. Compared to the time when we first transmigrated here, Dragon City has become thrice as large, and our population has increased by five times its original size. Many of our citizens have also reached the standards of the elite special forces and Olympic gold medalists on Earth. The superhumans, who are only one in a hundred, also possess astonishing fighting abilities. We've upgraded ancient martial arts, restored our great industries, and created brand new technologies. Dragon City's armored cavaliers are all ready for battle. As soon as the fog goes away, our steel army will march forth with the momentum of tigers descending from mountains. We will spread the glory of Earth's culture to the other world. How could Dragon City, when it's in this state, be destroyed by the creatures of this other world? And you said they're goddamn savage? I'm telling you, Earthlings are the ones who are the most ruthless. The ruthless instructor could not help but curse, and the students' blood burned with righteous ardor as they listened to him. The class representative, Zuo Haoran, stood up. He had a heroic look, and he stood tall and straight. Just like his name, he gave off the air of someone who was just. The class representative cast Meng Zhao a look and said sternly, Mr. Yan, what you said is true. We've lived past the age of darkness, and now, the light of victory is shining in front of us. We live in a grand era where light shines for miles, and as youngsters of the current generation, we should study well and train hard to become superhumans so that we can help Dragon City rise to power in this other world. We should be striving to contribute our strength. How can we be afraid of enemies, as if they're fearsome tigers? How can we be wondering about Dragon City's destruction? Of course, I believe that there are only a few who are cowardly. Most of the students are thinking about the same thing. Dragon City will definitely win. Earth will definitely win. Civilization will definitely win. With the class representative in the lead, the students became excited as well. Dragon City will definitely win. Earth will definitely win. Civilization will definitely win. They swung their fists and shouted. They wanted to lay down their pens and join the army immediately so that they could sweep through the other world. Class rep, you're so handsome. Quite a number of girls gave Zhu Haoran admiring glances. And in stark contrast, when they looked at Meng Zhao, their gazes turned strange. Some of them even began to whisper softly among themselves. Meng Zhao has fallen into the slumps lately. He just keeps sleeping in class. You can't blame him for that. Something went wrong with his cultivation, and he was heavily injured. 
He fell from first place to last place in class. Wouldn't you be in a slump too, if you were in his place? But he shouldn't curse Dragon City to be destroyed. The heck? Are you trying to cause trouble? Meng Zhao narrowed his eyes. Do you have a grudge against me? He thought about it carefully and realized that they really did have a grudge against each other. The class representative Zhuo Haorong was his sworn enemy during the entirety of their high school lives. While staring at his handsome, just, and fair face, Meng Zhao felt his headache. His shattered memory surged forward, and various scenes flashed past his mind. In them, he discovered that the class representative was related to why he flunked his national college examination in his nightmare. After that, the class representative got himself into a famous university and quickly became a superhuman. He soared above the others. But he was a hypocrite from top to toe. When Dragon City was killing monsters in the other world and obtaining victory in every battle, Zuo Haoran enjoyed a good life and was given the title of a hero. He obtained a lot of fresh flowers from admirers and plenty of glory. When they had their high school reunion, there were seven or eight girls who flocked to him like beasts of prey. Meng Zhao was someone with a great sense of justice, so he was instantly so envious, no, he was instantly disgusted by the sight. However, when Dragon City clashed against a true civilized race and began a difficult war against it, the class representative actually fled from battle, which made the entire battle line collapse. Zuo Haoran was to receive his sentence in the military court, but since he had already betrayed his people once, he decided to go all out on it. He betrayed Dragon City and joined the foreign race. He sold them Earth's secrets. You are just a traitor, why are you acting so high and mighty? Just who is afraid of our enemies as if they're fearsome tigers? At the very least, I fought until my last moments and died together with Dragon City. Look at you, you first sabotaged my national college examination, then behaved like a hoodlum during our class reunions, and finally betrayed Dragon City. I'm going to kill you. By pure instinct, Meng Zhao started going through battle plans in his head. He took half a step forward. Zuo Haoran was instinctively on guard against him. Class rep, what you said is right. You taught me a great lesson, I'm so moved. Meng Zhao put on a sincere expression and bowed slightly. Thank you for your guidance, Mr. Yan, class rep. I've come to a grave realization of my mistake, and I'll change. From now onwards, I'll be firm in my stance and train hard so that I can contribute to Dragon City's rise to power in this world. I will give my full strength for it. There's no need for me to say anything else, please just watch me." Zuo Haoran said nothing. He shuddered. He felt that Meng Zhao's gaze had become strange. He was completely different from before. Enough. Class rep, sit down. We'll continue with class. Yan Dongxing did not waste his breath with nonsense. He gestured at the corner to Meng Zhao. You know what you need to do. Dragon hibernation stance. Do it until class ends. After the words Dragon Hibernation Stance, sharp inhales could be heard. Dragon City's compulsory education system was from kindergarten to high school, and during it they learned about the nine great stances. Three of them were lying stances, three were sitting stances, and the last three were standing stances. When combined with breathing and meditation techniques, they could absorb the spirit energy from the world and stimulate activity in the cells, allowing people to break the shackles of their genes. Then, they were able to step into the path of superhumans, and from there, evolve into sacred beings. Dragon hibernation stance was the tenth stance that was not within the education syllabus. It was also the hardest stance to train. Forget about high school, many of the majors in college did not teach dragon hibernation stance. Only the legendary undergraduate course, which was the sacred place to cultivate superhumans, taught dragon hibernation stance. Chapter 2, Contribution Points, Awakening Dragon hibernation stance required the person to put one leg in the front and the other in the back extremely widely, and they were to twist their backs like a venomous snake. They also had to be as energetic as snakes when they gathered their strength to attack. They were supposed to look like hungry snakes who had just woken up from winter and were very aggressive. In the ninth high school, there were only a handful of top students in the rocket class who could maintain this stance for more than 10 minutes. Class 6 was a very normal strolling class and there was half an hour before class dismissal. Everyone knew that Meng Zhao was injured during his second year of high school and had stayed in the hospital for a few months. After he was discharged, he decided to let loose and live however he wanted. He did not intend to get into college, and he was average and sloppy when it came to the basic nine great stances. If he maintained the dragon hibernation stance for half an hour, he would probably have to crawl home when school ended. 
quite a number of students mourned him and thought about the ruthlessness of Demon Yan. Zuo Haoran crossed his arms over his chest and sat down with a cold sneer. Meng Zhao stood in the corner obediently. Dragon hibernation stance is a very simple, elementary stance and was obsolete in my nightmare. How in the world did it go again? Meng Zhao tried hard to recall it. His mind was still in a slight mess, so he could not quite differentiate between his dream and reality. Stop pretending to be cool. Just beg for mercy. His classmates thought that Meng Zhao did not dare to enter the dragon hibernation stance, and they could not bear with the sight. They gave him a gentle reminder. He's just a bad egg in the batch. This is what he deserves. Zuo Haoran mumbled under his breath, but he spoke at a volume that could be heard by the people around him. Before his voice could fade, Meng Zhao moved. Whoosh. The leg he positioned in front was bent, and the leg he positioned at the back was tense. He spread his arms out like a sentient snake, and he moved his back like an aquatic dragon which had just woken up from an abyss. It had saved up enough strength and was prepared to strike when rain poured down in spring. Meng Zhao's spirit and strength exploded forth like a torrent rushing down from the mountains. He could not control himself at all. This is. His classmates were dumbfounded. They felt as if Meng Zhao had been reborn and become someone entirely new. The movements of his muscles, bones, and limbs were filled with a relaxed and confident air. Even when he was just standing casually, he gave off none of the stiff movements high school students had. His posture was not perfect, but it was even more beautiful than the normal dragon hibernation stance. Even the tips of his fingers were trembling slightly, giving off a faint, murderous air. What the heck? Was Meng Zhao's dragon hibernation stance so good? It's even better than the class reps. It's just an illusion. He won't be able to deceive me. He's using his life to pretend to be cool. Just watch. In at most one minute, he'll definitely collapse. One minute passed, but Meng Zhao remained at ease as if he could remain in this stance until self-study period at night. Suddenly, he remembered something and said with an apologetic look, Mr. Yan, is there something else? Am I not maintaining the standard stance? I'm really sorry. I haven't practiced it for a while, and my movements aren't perfect. I'll change it when I go back, so please excuse me for this. Yan Dongxing wanted to say something, but in the end, he did not say it. A few expressions fleeted through his dark face. In the end, without a single word, he returned to the podium. The students began to curse in their hearts. Meng Zhao, you bastard! Are you even speaking human? If your dragon hibernation stance isn't proper, then how is ours? Earthworm-like? Is it just an illusion? Everyone felt that after Meng Zhao woke up, his stance and his ability to pretend to be cool had gone up with a whoosh. All sorts of gazes went to Zuo Haoran, and the pressure also returned to him. The class rep felt as if he had just been slapped in the face by Meng Zhao. There was a slightly embarrassed expression on his face, but a monstrous look flashed past his eyes. We're returning to the lecture, come on. Yan Dongxing tapped at the blackboard. 100 Saber Techniques and Thunder Rapier are the two most important high middle tier cold weapon techniques. The last question in the National College examination last year was about Thunder Rapier. So this year, there is a high chance that it will be 100 Saber Technique. Everyone, listen as I analyze the 7 advancing moves that will allow you to cut into a monster scale armor with a saber. Yan Dongxing was a master in Saber Techniques, and he was a top class teacher. It was said that he had a senior brother who was a peerless fighter ranked among the ones who set the questions for the National College examination. In the last three years, Yan Dongxing focused on guiding those in the third year in high school, so his chances of guessing the right questions were very high. When the class heard their teacher mention his best skill, everyone became excited and forgot about Meng Zhao. He continued maintaining the dragon hibernation stance, and as he watched the exquisite and matchless profound skills of the saber technique, his gaze became slightly unfocused. That's so crude. There's plenty of weaknesses in this saber technique. As if he was possessed, he began murmuring in his heart. There are at least nine openings in the first skill forward wind cutter alone. If you use this saber technique to fight against the real powerful beings of the other world, you'll definitely die in the first clash of blades. But that's not Demon Yan's problem. This 100 saber technique has just been developed and is in its first version right now. Before Dragon City was destroyed, 100 Saber Technique had absorbed a lot of the essence from Blood Spirit's Nitoryu and Ice Giant's Broadsword Technique. After being refined multiple times, it was upgraded to version 7.3.5. 
I'm using the ultimate version of the 100 saber technique to size up 100 saber technique v1. It's only natural that I'll find that it's full of weaknesses. Dot hang on a second. What are blood spirits? And what are ice giants? Why did these strange things appear in my head? Men Zhao had a complicated expression on his face. He could no longer deceive himself and say that he had just been daydreaming earlier. Was it the legendary rebirth? Well, being reborn was nothing. Even though Meng Zhao was just a normal high school student, he did read web novels. And he lived in Dragon City. More than 50 years ago, for some reason, Dragon City transmigrated to the other world from Earth. A lot of supernatural, unbelievable things had happened in the city. Children at 3 years old awakened to supernatural powers, old women at 80 years old began practicing ancient martial arts, housewives ripped apart zombies with their bare hands. White-collar workers fought against monsters after they got off work. All of those became common occurrences in Dragon City. Since the transmigration had become a fact, being reborn naturally had its own profound scientific logic as well. Men Zhao could accept it. But based on the fleeting scenes he saw in his head, his future and Dragon City's future were pretty pitiful. The Earthlings who transmigrated thought that they understood their new home. But they did not expect that the other world would be much bigger and so strong that it surpassed the limits of human imagination. Right now, they were only moving around the uncivilized area of the other world. They had not even gone past the Nubi village yet. And beyond the Nubi village, Meng Zhao felt as if he was suffering from a hangover. His memories from his previous life were scattered and blurry. He could not quite remember how the creatures who surrounded and attacked Dragon City looked. He only remembered that there were true civilizations in the other world and all sorts of powerful and ridiculously powerful fighters along with various insanely powerful enemies walked the land. The monster crisis they talked about right now paled in comparison compared to the insanely powerful enemies. Dragon City had raised the flag of Earth civilization to march into the mysterious other world. They killed, fought, and struggled. They enjoyed a period of glory where they were known as the extraordinary disaster. In the end, they dealt with various enemies by their lonesome and could not escape from the disaster. Meng Zhao closed his eyes and felt like he could see millions of purple shooting stars exploding above Dragon City. They were destructive flames, but they were even more dazzling than fireworks. The incredibly vivid picture seemed to have happened a moment ago. It burned in his mind and etched into the depths of his spirit. Is this... our end? Meng Zhao asked his 17-year-old self. Damn you, I refuse to believe it. This is just an outlandish nightmare. He opened his eyes swiftly. Dragon City won't be destroyed. And I won't end up as a third-class fighter and live a mediocre life either. Since I returned from that nightmare, I will definitely be able to change the future so that those extraordinary beings from the other world, who I can't name, will open their stupid eyes and witness what the extraordinary disaster truly means. The 17-year-old Meng Zhao had not been defeated by the harsh society just yet. He still treated statements like my fate is decided by myself, not by God. My fate is that I don't believe in fate, and I will go against it to change my destiny, which were created by adolescent delusions of grandeur and were incredibly embarrassing, as his motto. He gritted his teeth, and his gaze became firm. A flame burned in the depths of his eyes, and it looked like lightning. It grew brighter with each passing second, and it caused him slight pain. What is this? Meng Zhao was shocked. A red light that looked like fire and lightning floated at the top right corner of his field of vision. It was elusive just like floaters. The others were probably unable to see it, or else, if such a strange flame had started floating around the classroom, they would have started screaming. Also, it was rather familiar. During the end of his nightmare, when Dragon City was destroyed, he seemed to have seen this strange flame gush out of the center of the city. Now, the strange flame had accompanied him back to his teenage years. The next moment, it shattered with a bang and turned into lines of profound and complicated symbols. Hundreds of them danced madly within Meng Zhao's field of vision. Then, they twisted about to turn from strange letters that looked like earthworms to even stranger words. They looked like a message that came from beyond the constellations and the depths of the universe itself. After changing dozens of times, the notification was translated to words from Earth. The host has passed the mind and willpower appraisal tests. Kindling has been bound successfully. The host's identity has been verified. You are now Fire Relayer Meng Zhao. Congratulations on becoming the fire real heir of this civilization. I hope that you will do your best to pass on the fires of civilization. Here are 10,000 points as a reward for your initial contribution. 
the fire relayer has been found to contain old internal injuries and not be skilled in any basic skills. Would you like me to automatically distribute your contribution points so that you can upgrade yourself to your best state? Kindling? Fire relayer? Contribution? Contribution points as rewards? Is this a gift pack for my rebirth? Men Zhao was full of questions, but he nodded instinctively. Used up 1000 contribution points in exchange for the use of one initial stage healing skill. Healing progress, 10%. Used up 1,010 contribution points in exchange for the use of one initial stage healing skill. Healing progress, 19%. Used up 1,025 contribution points in exchange for the use of one initial stage healing skill. Healing progress. A string of notifications flashed in Meng Zhao's field of vision. At the same time, warmth filled his body in streams. They were like the first shoots that grew during spring, and they caressed him with the gentlest of motions. My injuries. Even the doctors could do nothing about the internal injuries from when I botched my cultivation last year, but now, they're healed? I can sense that the torn muscles and tendons have all been connected together. Min Zhao's eyes went wide. He was so happy that he wanted to sing. After the series of notifications regarding his healing popped up, a new notification showed up in his line of sight. Use 3,500 contribution points in exchange for Reckless Bull Technique, a basic technique to execute power. It has been upgraded to specialist level. This is. All sorts of details flashed in Meng Zhao's mind. The complicated and intricate formulae of reckless bull technique activation included the calculations of how all the muscles and blood vessels in the human body would twist up, how the blood and electrical signals would circulate in each of the acupressure points. Right after, the strength of the bones, ergonomics, all sorts of cultivation methods, and various scenes of practicing the reckless bull technique in the nightmare popped up in Meng Zhao's head. The memories of his previous life had been blurry before, but now, they flashed brilliantly in his mind and turned into a torrent of notifications that filled his motor nerves and brain cells, allowing him to instantly become an expert in using reckless bull technique. Meng Zhao felt like he could control all his muscles with ease and bring out all his strength to deliver an extremely fierce and powerful punch. This is awesome. So, even a third class fighter is this strong? He was incredibly delighted for a moment, but the pleasure came to an abrupt end. A notification popped up before his eyes. Basic skills are divided into five stages, normal, specialist, master, perfection, ultimate. When you reach 100% in skillfulness, you will be able to level up. Skillfulness can be accumulated by fighting and training. You can also exchange for it with contribution points. Then I'll exchange it all. Do I look like someone who cares about some measly contribution points? The fire relayer's healing progress is currently at 62%. If you want to continue using the initial stage healing skill, you will need to exchange 1150 points for it. Your skillfulness for reckless bull technique at specialist level is at 22%. If you want to upgrade it to master level, you will need to spend 1756 contribution points. You have 3 contribution points left. You cannot use them to exchange for anything. Please accumulate more contribution points. I had 10000 contribution points, right? How did they end up getting spent so quickly? Could you push it to master level? I'll give you an IOU. No can do. Then you should at least tell me how I'm supposed to earn contribution points. The flames of civilization must burn endlessly. The stronger the civilization is, the stronger the fire relayer is. Please hurry up and contribute to civilization so that you can unlock more skills and missions. Chapter 3, I want to get into college. The information only appeared for a brief moment before it disappeared. The pale, golden words turned into sparks that resembled the light from stars. Then, they became the magnificent flame once more. It stopped talking to Meng Zhao. He fiddled with it for a long time, but he did not manage to get any explanation from the system or any instructions for newbies or something along those lines. Refive Ng. Class dismissed. Yandong Xing swept Meng Zhao a glance. A light crease appeared between his eyebrows, but he said nothing. He put away his saber and his monster specimen before he turned around and left the classroom. It was only at that moment that Meng Zhao's classmates remembered that he was still being punished to stand. When they looked around, their jaws fell slack. They could not believe their own eyes. Meng Zhao actually managed to persevere? If a stance was correctly maintained, it was very beneficial to refining human spirit and strength. At that moment, Meng Zhao was like a rusty sword that had been polished once more and shone with brilliance. 
Everyone felt like they were seeing him before he was injured during his second year in high school. Meng Zhao was calm when he saw his classmates' surprised looks and heard their whispers. But his eyelids and the corners of his mouth were twitching. For some reason, he was suddenly very hungry, to the point that he felt as if his stomach was about to melt. He could not move half a step forward, and his vision was blacking out. Oh no, could it be that when kindling helps me repair my body and awakens my skills, I need to restore the energy it uses with my own energy? He was about to faint when a huge, white bear flew at him. Meng Zhao, you actually kept your training for dragon hibernation stance a secret from me and got it to the point where it's so good? It was actually a fatty with a stocky build who weighed more than 100 kilograms. He looked like he was wronged, and his voice was bitter. It made goosebumps break out on everyone's skin. Meng Zhao shuddered. It was a voice he would not forget even if he was reduced to ashes. The speaker was Chu Feishong, his best friend in high school. There was no way he could be anyone else. Quick, Feishong, I forgot to bring money today. Treat me to a meal at the tuck shop. I'll treat you to two meals tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. No way you'd treat me to two meals if I treated you to one. My appetite is thrice as big as yours. Meng Zhao, when have you become so generous? There's got to be a trap in this. What sort of trap could there be? Why would I want to lie to you? We're brothers in all but blood. True that. He he, all our classmates heard it, so I don't think you'd dare to go back on your word. Let's go, I'll treat you at the tuck shop today. Five minutes later, at the tuck shop located in the corner of the school, the huge, white bear started crying like a child who weighed more than 100 kilograms. Meng Zhao, please, be a considerate human. Even if you're cattle, you can't just eat two weeks worth of my allowance. I, I'll fight you. He pounced on Meng Zhao fiercely. Stop fooling around. Meng Zhao opened the last chocolate bar and casually flung his arm while activating reckless bull technique. The huge, white bear weighing more than 100 kilograms was sent flying. The two men looked at each other dumbfounded. Just now. Chu Fei Shang was dizzy. Just an illusion. Meng Zhao's expression did not change. He stuffed the chocolate into his mouth and stared at the shelves. He was not yet full. The instant noodles today look really fresh, and they have all sorts of flavors as well. Enough with it. I don't have a single penny left. Let's go. We have to go to class now. The huge, white bear fled. Meng Zhao was about to chase after him when he saw a handy woman with graying hair standing by a trash can. She had accidentally spilled a large bag of trash all over the floor. Andy, let me help you. Meng Zhao picked up the trash. Then, his eyelids twitched, and a string of notifications popped up. Your act of helping others has promoted harmony in society and developed a healthy atmosphere in Dragon City. Contribution points increased by 0.001. You protected the environment and promoted Dragon City sustained development. Contribution points increased by 0.001. To avoid too many notifications popping up at once, when your contribution points increase by less than one, you will not be notified. However, each contribution that you make will allow Dragon City to become stronger and promote the spreading of civilization as well as upgrading it. Please continue to work hard. The notifications disappeared in a flash, but Meng Zhao was stunned for a long time. At the stairs of the school building, Meng Zhao leaned against the handrail with his head tilted 45 degrees upwards. He appeared to be thinking about something. With a contemplative expression, he stared at the girls who were dressed in miniskirts because it was summer. They were chatting and walking up the stairs. The girls' caps were round, and they bounced around while wrapped with white, knee-high cotton socks. Do you want to die? Chu Fei Shang yanked him from behind him. If you really want to look, at least pretend that you're not doing it and just sneak a few peeks from the corner of your eyes. How could you just stare at them like that? You're such a hooligan. Fei Shang, you don't understand. There was an ancient look in Meng Zhao's eyes. He sighed and said, it's only at this moment that I understand just how beautiful our normal lives are. It's worthy for us to give up on everything to protect them. Meng Zhao, I seriously admire you for being able to act in such a refreshing and refined manner when you're being shameless. Chu Fei Shang dragged Meng Zhao to the side. Stop looking. If you want to, I can lend you the newest learning materials I downloaded. Let's talk about just now. Did you really kill Demon Yan in your dream, and Dragon City was destroyed? Then what about me? Did I become a great general and fight until my last moments? It was the huge, white bear's dream since he was young. 
He wanted to become a great general whose awe-inspiring reputation reached every corner of the world and who led Dragon City's steel-armored army to sweep through all of the other world. Of course, this was a dream shared by every teenager in Dragon City. What do you mean I killed him off? I just saw a few scattered scenes here and there. As for you. Meng Zhao stared at his best friend's face and searched through the depths of his mind. The memories of his previous life were like butterflies that danced in a storm. They fluttered about in random spots and were elusive. The feeling as if he was suffering from a hangover rose in him again. He could not seize the details of the entire affair. Just when he was about to give up, a flash of lightning suddenly illuminated his mind. It was accompanied by a great headache. Meng Zhao saw exceptionally huge monsters that he had never seen before in the depths of the thunderclouds. They were like slowly moving mountains that went toward Dragon City. When they saw the numerous soldiers and citizens there, they rushed over like a wave. Then, like waves crashing against stones, they started destroying everything in their path. He saw himself holding chrysanthemums in his hands and standing on a huge field. People were crying all around him. There were two large screens in front of him. One of them was a list of soldiers who died, and the other was the name list of the citizens who died during the disaster. The words were as tiny as flies, and they were packed densely together. There were tens of thousands of names there. Meng Zhao saw himself searching for Chu Fei Shang's name. A picture showed up on the screen. The huge, white bear was dressed in the standard uniform of soldiers, and he smiled brilliantly on the black and white portrait of the dead. A choked up voice left his throat the next moment. Bro, don't worry, I've already copy pasted all of your learning material onto my computer and deleted all of your browsing and download history. Just rest in peace. My parents left as well. If you see them, please tell them that I will definitely take care of my younger sister, so they don't have to worry about us. Meng Zhao snapped out of his nightmare again. He wrapped his hands around himself and slowly sat down on the steps. He was drenched in cold sweat. Even when girls chatted and giggled while going past him, his attention did not shift to them. Chu Fei Shang was shocked. What's wrong? Aren't you being a little too excited? Meng Zhao wanted to say something, but could not find the words for it. What could he say? Was he to say that his best friend did not manage to get into military school? much less become a general? That in the end he was only a foot soldier on the front lines? Was he to say that the monster war was about to get more intense? That bigger and more brutal monsters were about to come over at a larger number, and that they would keep coming in waves? Was he to say that Dragon City would suffer huge losses in that battle, and many soldiers as well as civilians, including Chu Fei Shuang, along with countless powerful fighters would die? That all of them did not manage to get out of the newbie village and were destroyed? In fact, even his parents were. Meng Zhao did not dare to continue thinking of what was to come. His fear gave rise to anger, and his anger gave rise to indignation. He clenched his fists, and his expression turned monstrous. Were you terrified by your nightmare? Chu Fei Shang clapped his shoulder and said with a grin, Don't worry. Nightmares and reality are always opposites of each other. Even if Dragon City truly ran into danger, we have nothing to fear if we work together. I'm a man who's going to be a general. That's right. Meng Zhao snapped out of his daze and swung his fist fiercely. It wasn't the future. It was just a damn nightmare. If I want to change everything, I have to start for my national college examination. This time, you'll definitely get into military school, and I'll definitely get into college. Apparently, during the era where they lived on Earth, due to colleges increasing enrollment and other factors, the number of undergraduate students increased by the year. But after Dragon City transmigrated, they faced a lack of resources and various dangers. Since everyone's lives were on the line, all the citizens had to carry out their duties with diligence. Even the teenagers had to reduce their education time as much as possible so that they could enter the workforce or battle as soon as possible. A normal citizen's dream was to get into a two-year course in post-secondary specialized schools and get professional training so that they could get a good job in the future. As for colleges, their duty was to cultivate superhumans. Regardless of the present or the future, superhumans were the cornerstone in helping Dragon City seek a dominant position in the other world. They were also existences respected by the citizens, and their statuses were incredibly high. Most of the politicians, soldiers, company bosses, or A-list titles were superhumans. If Meng Zhao wanted to destroy the scenes he saw in his nightmare, he had to become a superhuman. Do you really want to get into college? You're not joking, are you? Chu Fei Shang became serious. He knew that Meng Zhao was seriously injured last year. 
He also understood the reason behind why his best friend decided to live his life however he wanted. Now, the huge, white bear saw a light that had been extinguished for an entire year being ignited once more in Meng Zhao's eyes. I'm not joking. I must get into college. Meng Zhao paused for a moment before he let out a bark of laughter. He was unable to help himself. I was a real idiot last year, wasn't I? Yeah, a major idiot. Chu Feishong extended his fist to Meng Zhao. But if a major idiot like you has really made his decision and you want to give a good push during these last 50 days, I'll definitely help you. Meng Zhao sucked in a deep breath and extended his fist to bump fists with Chu Feishong. I'll get into military school and become a general. I'll get into college and become a superhuman. The best friends returned to their classroom. The next class was a language class, and their classmates started cheering loudly. Thank God. It's finally language class. Hurry up. I want to memorize the Ballad of Mulan, moon over the lotus pond, and analyze the background of the work as well as the underlying meaning behind a madman's diary. I can't wait anymore. Language teacher, our dearest language teacher, wherefore art thou? The students craned their necks and waited in anticipation. Unfortunately, their language teacher did not come. Instead, their class rep Zhu Haoran came over with a cold expression on his face. He stepped on the podium and said, Ms. Huang is sick today. This lesson has been changed to a self-study period. Everyone, line up and follow me to the cultivation room. No way. This again. I want Ms. Huang. Give me my language class. It was a nightmare they expected to happen, and it caused whales of doom to rise. Dragon City was a lone army in a foreign domain, and they implemented a ruthless education system on their children. Most of their classes from kindergarten to college were filled with physical education, cultivation, and fighting that were full with battles and killing. Their mathematics class taught them how to calculate the trajectory of bullets as well as sabers and swords. Their biology classes investigated the structures of monsters. Their physics and chemistry classes were for modulating crystals and researching the minerals of the other world. They took up the majority of the studies. Since there was a limited amount of time, language classes, which could not help them increase their fighting strength, had to be reduced in number. Students in the third year of high school only had two language classes. They had to study hard during their third year, and the two language classes had to give way for more important subjects. Hence, the language teachers had to call for sick leave or take leave every other day so that their classes could be given to the physical education teachers or for the students to study on their own. And when something was rare, it was considered precious. The high school students suffered from a huge amount of pressure from the strenuous cultivation sessions and could barely breathe. Hence, there was no need to mention just how much they loved language classes. It was said that on their home planet, Earth, those at the same age as them could have 10 to 20 language classes a week. They could memorize hundreds of classical poems, could do several sets of language tests every day, and write essays worth 2,000 to 3,000 words. On the other hand, they practically had no physical education classes. What a blessed life they lived. Chapter 4, Reckless Bull Force Even though the students grumbled, they were aware of their status as third-year high schoolers. They stood up while dragging their feet. Someone stuffed a language test into his pocket. While he trained, he could just do it sneakily for fun. Hurry up! Get moving! Zuo Haoran had his hands placed behind his back and shouted in a mighty manner. In this era, Class reps possessed a lot of power because they had to help the teachers do a lot of management work. I really can't stand that guy putting up hairs. Chu Feishong pouted while lining up. Zuo Haoran is too shameless. He reached the standards to get into rocket class long ago, but he just had to stay in a normal class to be our class rep. Do you know why that is? Why? Meng Zhao asked. He had just returned from his nightmare, and his memories were still jumbled up. He was confused about a lot of things. There's a rule that since being a class rep stakes up a student's time and energy, the school has to give them a certain amount of cultivation resources as compensation. This is a hidden rule that is not written in black and white, but Zuo Haoran's uncle is Horse Monkey, the teaching director, so he arranged things for his nephew. The more Chu Feishong spoke, the angrier he became. This guy has a family who owns a big company and a teaching director as his connection. He doesn't like any genetic medicine and monster materials, yet he's staying in a normal class to be our class rep. He's just snatching the poor students' resources. Where's the justice in this? Meng Zhao remembered it then. This was indeed the case. After he was injured during his second year in high school, Chu Feishong's strength became second only to Zhuo Haoran. 
If the teaching director had not laid out an easy path for Zhuo Haoran, he would have had to go to the rocket class. Then, Chu Feishong would have had a high chance to become the class rep of class 6 and obtain more resources. He would have also had more chances to get into military school. It was no wonder why he was displeased. Those at the back, why are you causing such a ruckus? You're wasting everyone's time. Zuo Haoran heard their murmurs and scolded them without mercy. Chu Feishong scowled and was about to go forward when Meng Zhao stopped him. We need to practice cultivation first. We'll have plenty of time to deal with him in the future. The cultivation center was a building with 15 floors. There were more than 40 cultivation rooms with different functions, recovery rooms, and medical offices. The cultivation center was five times as large as the school building. The hot waves of youth filled the air, and it made the blood of all those who entered surge with excitement. Since it was a self-study period, the class rep was the one to manage the class. No teacher was present for it. After Zhuo Haoran gave his orders, the students went straight to cultivation equipment. The clashing from barbells, growls from people exerting strength, sounds of punches and roundhouse kicks cutting through air, and the fierce, banging from people hitting sandbags created a passionate fighting song. It was a familiar yet unfamiliar sight to Meng Zhao, and he sighed non-stop. When earthlings discovered that the super energy, spirit energy, of the other world could be guided into the body to charge the cells and unlock the shackles of their genes, the ancient cultivation methods were given a whole new meaning. But there was one principle in life, those who are poor should study to earn more money, and those who are rich should learn martial arts to protect themselves. This principle held true no matter where human civilization ended up. The milk powder for children from rich and powerful families came from powerful mammalian monsters. Those who were a little older started taking secret medicines and put all sorts of ointments on their bodies. Some of them would even bathe in monster blood. They would also have gravity cabins, medical cabins, and nerve shock cabins helping them, along with the careful guidance from powerful seniors, and scientific cultivation methods set by specialist groups. These chosen children of God enjoyed all the good things since birth and becoming superhumans was basically set in stone for them. If someone as poor as Meng Zhao wanted to stand out, it was incredibly difficult to do. He did not have a sufficient amount of resources and only knew how to train diligently. However, that was a ticket straight to death, because it was the same as running a marathon after starving for three days. He had been young and conceited once. When he was in elementary school and middle school, he was well known as a strong person. He mowed down all obstacles in his way and got into a key high school in the region, Dragon City 9th High School. When he was in the first year of high school, he was ranked first place in his class a few times, but during practical training, he accidentally broke Zuo Haoran's nose. Blood gushed down the class rep's face in front of the entire class, and a grudge was born in him against Meng Zhao. The short period of glory, however, ran Meng Zhao's body dry. When he reached his second year of high school, his classes became harder, and his internal injuries began accumulating. Gradually, he found his abilities falling short of his wishes. He refused to believe it and started cultivating in a frenzy. He only slept for three or four hours a day and even went on education websites to search for secret methods to train. In the end, he ran into huge trouble. He coughed up blood and fainted, and he ended up lying in a hospital for a few months. The doctors said he was too anxious, and his bones as well as organs were all damaged. Without spirit pills or great medicine nourishing him, he was not to go through any high-intensity training within three five years. When Meng Zhao saw his parents' haggard faces as they held the medical report, he made his decision. In any case, Dragon City is getting stronger, and we're slowly running out of monsters to fight. It's fine even if I don't become a superhuman. I'll get into a specialized school and enter society earlier so that I can earn money and help my parents. I can also earn some tuition fees for my sister so that she can live out her superhuman dream. I can use this method to protect my family too. When Meng Zhao remembered this, he really wanted to slap himself. How naive. There's no way the monster war can be won so easily. If my nightmare comes true, then Dragon City is about to face its greatest crisis since it transmigrated to this place. Without strength. How am I supposed to protect my family? Perhaps because he was weak, his younger sister took the dark path and became the dark witch, who was practically at the level of a boss in a game. When he thought about how his cute sister would continuously be corrupted, he began to feel troubled. It might sound awesome that I can become stronger by contributing to society, but I can only get 0.001 contribution points by picking up trash. 
Even if I pick up all the trash in the city, it's useless. I still have to cultivate hard. Men Zhao went to the cultivation machine. After moving around a little, he began gasping for breath. I'm still so hungry. After Kindling repaired his body and helped him activate Reckless Bolt technique, he was like a fighting tank whose all aspects were strengthened, but he also burned dozens of times the amount of fuel that a normal car used up. His best friend had used two weeks worth of allowance to only fill up his stomach a little. There was no way he could withstand high intensity cultivation right now. What a pity. When a few girls saw Meng Zhao sprawled all over the machine, looking like he was about to be blown away by the wind, they sighed in their hearts. When they saw him take up dragon hibernation stance earlier, they had recalled his might from first and second year of high school. Even though he looked careless, he had to have been unable to accept the results, right? Meng Zhao originally had a chance to become a superhuman, but by the looks of it now, he can only become a normal person after losing his abilities. The girls could not help but pity him. Meng Zhao, if you want to train, do it seriously. If you don't want to train, get off the machine. Don't occupy the cultivation machine. Zuo Haoran kept an eye on Meng Zhao constantly. This guy. Chu Fei Shang glared at the class rep and helped Meng Zhao to a corner before he stuffed a sports drink into his hands. Sit here for a while. Take it nice and slow. I'm fine. Meng Zhao shook his head. He was sweating bullets. Damn it, his body constitution was too weak. What the heck was he doing over the past year? Kindling helped me awaken my skill, but it can't produce energy out of the blue for me. I need to buy cultivation resources so that I can give fuel to my main fighting tank. Meng Zhao smiled bitterly. If he could buy cultivation resources, he would not have given up on himself for an entire year. Have you forgotten about your basics because it's been a long time since you trained? Chu Fei Shang thought that Meng Zhao really did not know how to do the moves, so he flung his arms and demonstrated the basic force execution method to him. He was a born strength type fighter. His reckless bull force gave off the momentum of a tiger. Meng Zhao watched with a strange look in his eyes. Chu Fei Shang touched his head. Am I imagining things? I thought I saw. A hint of scorn in Meng Zhao's eyes. Was I bad? The huge, white bear's face turned dark. You don't execute force like that, Meng Zhao could not resist saying. What? Chu Fei Shang could not believe his ears. I treat you like my best friend, and you're here acting cool with me? Meng Zhao quickly explained himself. Don't misunderstand, those words weren't aimed at you. I'm saying that the way we execute force right now is... Is trash? It's not that bad. But it's seriously a little crude. It's not very scientific. His words were incredibly conceited. Reckless Bull Force was created in the new era year 35, and it was born when Zhou Mong, an elite in the military, led a scientific research team to research the biological structure of more than 10 grade 3 monsters like Iron Hammer Beast and Burish Horn. They also included the force execution model of Olympic gold medalists and mixed martial artists from Earth. Their scientific force execution method was researched and tested for a total of five years in an ergonomics research lab before it was made. What was unique about it was that it was simple and could be understood easily. It could be learned quickly, and its explosive power was incredibly great. Aside from stimulating chi, blood, and strengthening the body, it could also stimulate a teenager into excreting large amounts of growth hormones and increase the activity in cells. It had great benefits in promoting cultivation. After it was practiced for more than a decade, Dragon City's education department decided to implement Reckless Bull Force, Ripple Force, and Dragon Snake Force into the compulsory education syllabus, and they became the three great force execution methods that students had to train. But Meng Zhao said that this force execution method was incredibly crude and not scientific? Chu Fei Shang thought that Meng Zhao was incredibly shameless this afternoon. What he did not know was that Meng Zhao was not boasting. War was the greatest way for civilizations to communicate with each other. When dragon citizens fought passionately against the true elites of the other world, their civilizations permeated each other deeply. Dragon citizens used the wisdom of the other worlders to continuously modify their industry, science, and martial arts. Reckless bull force they were using today was just in its first version. In the future, they would run into all sorts of strange otherworldly creatures, and they would dissect them to research them, thus gaining a deeper understanding towards cells and genes. The powerful fighters from Dragon City would then push Reckless Bull Force to its second version, third version, pro version, and plus version. Reckless Bull Force's ultimate version not only increased its user's maximum force by 
It even fixed most of the bugs in the past versions, which were created when spirit energy moved about chaotically in the blood vessels and nervous system. There was a cool down time for this method after its user had his or her muscles overexpand, and the ultimate version decreased that cool down time by 15%, largely increasing its user's maximum punch force and their ability to continue fighting. The ultimate version was no longer called Reckless Bull Force, but Reckless Bull Technique. Through kindling, Meng Zhao awakened to the memories of his previous life, and the skill he awakened was naturally the ultimate version of Reckless Bull Force. Chapter 5, The True Meaning of Contribution Point Come, let's go to the toilet. Meng Zhao's eyes sparkled. They went up by two floors and found the most remote toilet possible. When Meng Zhao saw that there was no one around, he sneakily opened a cubicle and gestured for his best friend to get inside. What do you want to do? The huge, white bear was nervous. Don't worry. I just want to examine your muscles for a bit. Meng Zhao pulled and yanked at Chu Fei Shang until he got his best friend into the cubicle. Before the huge, white bear could shriek, he quickly said, When you circulated reckless bull force until it reached below your ribs, did you feel your ribs going a little numb, and did you feel as if your strength was about to spill out? Chu Feishong was stunned. He pushed down on his ribs, and his expression was a little sour. Also, when I observed your feet, I found that your lower body wasn't too stable, but when I observed the muscles and tendons on your legs, I found that there were not many problems in them. Meng Zhao thought about it. When you stepped on the floor, did you first feel a sharp pain at the soles of your feet, and half a second later, it went to your knees? Chu Feishong was surprised. How did you know? Meng Zhao smiled. You haven't mastered the profound skill of reckless bull force at all. At most, you've only brought out 50% of your strength. The other half is running rampant in your body, and it rebounded on your legs and feet, which brought extra pressure to your knees and ankles. If you continue training blindly like this, you will not be able to bring out your full strength, and if things turn for the worse, you may even suffer osteoporosis. Your joints will age, and the pressure on your blood vessels will exceed the limit. You won't be able to cultivate then but will be marching to an early death. If everyone ignored the toilet behind him, Meng Zhao would actually look like another worldly sage. Chu Feishong was stunned. He obediently let Meng Zhao examine his height, weight, the length of his limbs, body fat percentage, and his muscle distribution in the upper and lower body. Meng Zhao closed his eyes and calculated in his mind for a moment. A series of force execution formulae from the future appeared in his mind. He opened his eyes again, and they sparkled. He raised a sharpened pencil. Come, let's have you execute your force again. When Chu Fei Shang circulated reckless bull force, his muscles swelled up, and his blood vessels popped up. Meng Zhao suddenly poked him with the tip of his pencil. Chu Fei Shang was about to cry out in pain, but he felt numb, as if he had been electrocuted. A strange force was micro regulating every muscle, every blood vessel, and every bundle of nerves. The brute strength which had been scattered through his body was brought together. Soon, the huge, white bear's expression turned from puzzlement to delight. What's this method? It's much easier for me to execute force now, and I'm not hurting anywhere. Even my strength feels like it has increased. That's the result of years of diligent training. I just helped you look for the way to release all of your strength. Meng Zhao moved his pencil as if he was making it fly, and his movements were becoming smoother by the second. He poked Chu Fei Shang from 300 to 500 times before he stopped. He flung his numb back wrist. Give me your punch. Let's see the results. Chu Fei Shang brought forth all his strength. The pain from the acupressure points Meng Zhao had poked with his pencil guided him to put up a slightly different stance. His muscles tensed up to their limit, and he looked as if he had shrunk by half, but his muscles were more sturdy than before. He looked like high density granite. He delivered a punch and a few faint ripples appeared in the air. They tore at the air, making it cry out. The sound was like cloth being ripped apart. His. Chu Fei Shang was shocked by how easily he executed the punch. He had never executed such a comfortable punch before. It gave off the force of a flash flood in a mountain that could easily destroy everything in its path. Even though Chu Fei Shang had not tested it, he was certain that this punch was at least 3% more powerful than his strongest punching strength. With just a few minutes of adjusting his force execution, his punching strength had increased by 3%. Meng Zhao's technique could no longer be described as just extraordinary. Chu Fei Shang's face was full of amazement. At the moment he executed the punch, 
The strange flame at the corner of Meng Zhao's eyes shone magnificently once more. The spark turned into two rows of words. Gave guidance to normal citizen Chu Fei Shang regarding the basic technique, reckless bull force. His learning progress is now at 10%. A normal citizen has become stronger. The overall fighting strength of Dragon City has increased. Congratulations for making your civilization become stronger. Increased contribution points by 10. Huh? Men Zhao was surprised and delighted. There was a great deal of meaning behind what he just read. So, does this mean that I don't need to pick up trash? I just need to teach the current Dragon citizens the martial arts from the future, and I will be considered to have contributed to civilization? Well, that makes sense. A strong civilization is not created by a lone hero fighting for it. No matter how strong I'll become, it'd be impossible for me to fight alone against all the monsters and the extraordinary beings of the other world. But if I can become a top-class teacher who is 100 times better than Demon Yan and teach the martial arts from the future to all the citizens so that we can all be 100 times stronger than we were in my nightmare, then I believe that we'll be able to pummel the extraordinary beings of the other world. So, the true meaning of the contribution points is that the stronger the civilization is, the stronger I will be as well. When he thought of this, the strange flame before his eyes changed. Congratulations to the Fire Reeler on making a contribution that is worth more than one point for civilization. Please choose your reward for your first contribution. You can choose to upgrade Reckless Bull Force from Specialist Level to Master Level. You can also choose to awaken a new skill. Please choose between Basic Gun Technique and Ripple Force. Kindling even kindly put the contribution points he needed in exchange for the three options. If he wanted to upgrade Reckless Bull Force, he needed 756 contribution points. If he wanted to awaken basic gun skill, he needed 3,100 contribution points. If he wanted to awaken ripple force, he needed 1,500 contribution points. They are both from the three basic force execution methods, so why is there such a major difference between the cost for reckless bull technique and ripple force? Meng Zhao remembered that he had spent 3,5 thousand contribution points to awaken reckless bull technique. He thought about it carefully. Reckless Bull Technique was an extremely fierce and powerful force execution technique. After he was injured last year, he did not train it much. But Ripple Force was flexible and long-lasting. It had great benefits for rehabilitation purposes. He had set aside all other cultivation methods over the year, but he still persisted in practicing Ripple Force. Is it because I know bits of Ripple Force, which is why the price to awaken it is cheaper? Meng Zhao thought about it. Reckless Bull Technique and Ripple Force were a fierce and gentle technique respectively. One of them was an upgrade, and the other was an awakening. Which should he choose? He thought about it and chose Basic Gun Technique. Since the option was free, of course he should choose the most expensive thing. Was there even a need for him to think about it? In his mind, he heard rapid gunfire. It was as if there was a bullet shower flying over his head. Meng Zhao immediately remembered countless structures of guns and the essentials for shooting. The memories from his past life flashed before his eyes like crystalline fragments. He saw himself firing and firing and firing at various otherworldly creatures. Some of the otherworldly creatures looked like an octopus which had a roasted chicken stuffed into it. It was much uglier than the monsters they encountered now. Meng Zhao had managed to kill nearly 1,000 of such monsters in an instant. His experience in shooting shot up by leaps and bounds. A tingling pleasure surged into every nerve ending, and he felt so delighted that he started humming. Chu Fei Shang watched Meng Zhao shut his eyes with an intoxicated look and even make strange sounds. He could not help but shudder. The fatty weighing more than 100 kilograms shrank into a corner. After a long while, Meng Zhao opened his eyes. There was a profound look in them. Once he awakened to a new technique, he became even hungrier. Resources. He needed those damn cultivating resources. Chu Fei Shang looked at him like a monster. His skin crawled. Meng Zhao. Where did you learn that strange technique? The huge, white bear stammered as he asked his question. We can talk about that later. Let's test your maximum punching strength first. Meng Zhao made calculations in his mind before his thoughts came to a screeching halt. Wait, let's hear whether there's anyone peeing outside right now, and when we open the door, we have to use our clothes to cover our faces, or else, when someone sees us walking out of a cubicle together, my reputation will be ruined. They ran back to the cultivation room, and Chu Fei Shang strode to a punching force gauge. He activated it eagerly. The huge and exquisite crystal machine let out creaking sounds when it was activated and the display screen lit up. 
The huge, white bear began making loud sounds, and like a gorilla, he punched his chest. Then, based on the force execution technique Meng Zhao had taught him, he put on the starting stance for reckless bull force. He was just about to execute his strength when someone suddenly stood in front of him. It was Zhuo Haoran. The huge, white bear's body was filled with strength, and his muscles were so tense that he felt miserable. What's wrong? He asked stiffly. Zhuo Haoran's face was cold. Who allowed you to touch the punching force gauge? This might be a self-study period, but you need to obey the rules in class. Everyone is training seriously, but you and Meng Zhao snuck out right after class started, and you only came back after around 20 minutes. Then, you immediately said you wanted to test your punching strength. Did you get permission for that? His voice was neither soft nor loud. It was at the volume where all the people in the cultivation room could hear despite him not shouting. The huge, white bear was so angry that his eyebrows nearly bunched together. Don't get angry, Chu Fei Shuang, I'm doing this for your own good. Zuo Haoran looked at Meng Zhao. After all, you're different from a certain person. You still have a chance of getting into college. There's one and a half months left. Just focus on training. Don't mix around with a certain someone anymore, in case your future is ruined. It'll be too late for regrets by then. All right, go and train first. I'll organize everyone into a line and have everyone test their punching strength 10 minutes before class ends. The class rep swung his hand as if all of this was only logical. The huge, white bear was furious. Oh hi and mighty class rep Zuo, do you seriously think you're a teacher now? You're just using the power given to you by the teachers to order us around. I gained some understanding toward reckless bull force, so that's why I was in a hurry to test my punching strength. Even if our homeroom teacher or demon Yan came over, they wouldn't stop me, so why are you butting into my business? Would you be able to make it up to me if you made me waste my epiphany? He was born with a loud voice, and it immediately attracted the students' attention. Everyone perked up their ears. They wanted to know why the two best fighters in class suddenly went into a conflict in public. Zuo Haoran's face turned dark. He did not expect that Chu Fei Shang would make a scene in public. He was trying to be nice by showing respect to him, but he refused to take it. Epiphany? Zuo Haoran sneered coldly. Chu Fei Shuang, I saw your stance when you were going to execute your force just now. It was crooked and stangy, and it's completely off from the standard reckless bull force. If you execute force like this, you will not be able to deliver a powerful punch. How could you be considered to have gained an epiphany? I'm in charge of overseeing this self-study period. Your reckless bull force is clumsy. Forget about delivering a powerful punch, if your strength goes awry. You will end up hurting your tendons and bones, and you'll miss your national college examination. Indeed, I won't be able to make it up to you then. If you truly want to use the punching force gauge, sure. But go to the side and truly understand reckless bull force before you even think about trying. Chapter 6, Save the Children There's a problem with my reckless bull force? Chu Fei Shang was so angry that he grinned. Men Zhao took a step forward and blocked the enraged, huge, and white bear. Since you think that Chu Fei Shang's force execution does not reach the standard, why don't you show us the standard reckless bull force so that we can learn it seriously? He had a smile on his face, and he looked sincere. Zuo Haoran snorted coldly. Since he could become the class rep, it was only par for the course that he had strength that suppressed the entire class. Look carefully, this is the real reckless bull force. A cold glare shone in the class rep's eyes. He put on a nearly perfect stance twisted his hips and turned around to execute a lightning-fast punch. Bang! The punching force gauge swung violently, and the numbers on the display screen jumped violently. 225 kilograms. This is Zuo Haoran maintaining the top score in the class, right? Last time, he had to accumulate strength for a long time before he could execute that punch. Now, with just one casual punch, he reached his previous high score. His strength is becoming more and more terrifying. The class rep has been improving really quickly over the past two months. His maximum punching strength has surpassed a heavyweight boxing champion on earth. He'll definitely be able to get into a famous college. I remember that Chu Fei Shang's maximum punching strength was 220 kilograms. The class rep is much lighter than him, but his punching strength is 5 kilograms higher. The eye-catching numbers cause the students watching by the side to talk about it quietly. The girls were attracted by Zuo Haoran's handsome stance and they could not help their faces turning slightly red. All of them had to acknowledge the class rep's view. 
That was the standard reckless bull force, and it was the one that could allow a person to deliver a powerful punch. Zuo Haoran wrapped his fist in his palm and stared at Chu Feishong while he glanced at Meng Zhao through the corner of his eyes. So, did you two see it clearly? His expression was indifferent, and his voice allowed no room for argument. Some of the students who were close to Chu Feishong were afraid that if a conflict arose, Chu Feishong would end up suffering a loss. They spoke quietly behind him. Big Brother Xiong, forget it. Let's test it later. Meng Zhao, hurry up and persuade him. Stop standing there like a doom bias. Before their voices could fade, Meng Zhao took half a step to the side, and Chu Feishong strode forward. You. Zuo Hao Ran's expression sank. He refused to budge, and both of them clashed into each other. It was reckless bull force versus reckless bull technique. Bang! What happened was akin to a raging bull ramming into a raging rhinoceros. The students could not bear to watch it. Quite a number of people could already imagine the scene of Chu Fei Shang being sent flying and landing pathetically on his back. But they were wrong. The pretty boy was the one who took eight consecutive steps backwards before he fell on the floor. His rage caused his face to turn so red that it was almost purple. The one who fell on the floor was Zhuo Haoran, who had just displayed his might. But that was not all. Chu Fei Shang used the momentum to rush forward. His sneakers rubbed against the floor, and they let out squeaking sounds while releasing the heat created when rubber burned. Each of his muscles looked like red-hot steel, and his fist was like a bag of explosives which had been lit. Boom! With a loud bang, his fist landed squarely at the center of the target. The sound was even louder than from Zuo Haoran's punch. The punching force gauge jumped. The number on the display screen rose erratically, and it would not calm down even after a long time had passed. 2 to 232 kilograms. He surpassed the class rep's record. That's the new class record. The classmates were flabbergasted. Even Chu Feishong could not believe it. He stared at his own fist before he looked at Meng Zhao. The shock on his face could not be described with words. Feishong, you're so despicable. How could you hide this from me and practice the super powerful super reckless bull force? In the absolutely silent cultivation room, Meng Zhao was the first one to jump out and shout at the top of his voice, you even suppress the class rep. Chu Fei Shang was dumbfounded. What the heck? Weren't you the one who taught me this in the toilet just now? The students looked at each other at a loss. Super reckless bull force? Don't you know? Meng Zhao looked around him in astonishment. Right now, there are plenty of powerful people in the army and society. They're continuously modifying reckless bull force and developing upgraded versions which are stronger and more powerful. Those versions are much more amazing than our high school versions. Chu Fei Shang must be using an upgraded version, or else, there's no way he could have defeated the class rep so easily, right? In truth, the difference in their maximum strength was just a few kilograms. There was not a world's difference between them. Zuo Haoran was fast, and his punching frequency was high. He was also more skilled in kicking techniques, so if they were to really fight, he would suppress Chu Fei Shuang. It would definitely not be as exaggerated as Meng Zhao made it to be, where he suppressed and defeated him so easily. But Zhuo Haoran did not notice it for the time being, and his breathing nearly froze because of the clash. He could not speak, which allowed Meng Zhao to slander his name. He was so angry that he could not get up. The students went along Meng Zhao's train of thought and nodded instinctively. Many of the powerful people in the army, the aristocratic families, the rich and powerful families, and martial art research centers were continuously exploring the unknown territories within life sciences. Their upgraded versions were naturally completely different from the common version taught in high school. Everyone was very envious of Chu Fei Shuang. He had learned such a domineering force execution technique before the national college examination. He was now like a tiger with wings. Fei Shuang, you're really ruthless. Meng Zhao gave his absolutely baffled best friend a thumbs up. I heard that some of the high-grade training classes in society teach super reckless bull force, and the starting price for it is around 200,000. You are actually willing to spend so much money for it? But that's reasonable. We're about to challenge the national college examination, and each mark could change our fate. Your strength has increased by several kilograms compared to before. If you convert it, you'll be able to get a few more points. Those 200,000 were a worthy expenditure. It's a pity that I don't have any way to get into a high-grade training class. I heard that many top-class instructors can't be hired even if you have money, or else, I'd sell all my possessions just to learn super-reckless bull force. 
Meng Zhao slapped his thigh with regret written all over his face. A thought bloomed in the heads of all students, and they fell into deep contemplation. Wait! Meng Zhao's eyes suddenly lit up, and he sized up Shu Fei Shuang. Fei Shuang, no, big brother Xiang, won't you teach me super reckless bull force? Don't be in a hurry to reject me. I know that everyone is fighting for every second to improve before the national college examination. We're all competitors during the exam, so there's no way that I'd let you teach me for free. I can pay you. I. Right when Chu Fei Shang spoke up, Meng Zhao interrupted him. We're classmates, so it'd be too vulgar if we talked about money. How about this? I'll pay you with cultivation resources. Gene medicine, high-grade nutrition fluids, cell-strengthening liquids, monster materials. What do you want? Just name it. We'll settle accounts clearly, even if we're besties. You don't have to feel troubled. Chu Fei Shang was not that dumb and he finally understood what was going on. Um. A conflicted look appeared on his face, and he looked slightly troubled. Big Brother Xiang, please, save the children. Men Zhao's eyes became teary. I can consider teaching you. Let's talk in the corner, Chu Fei Shang said incredibly reluctantly. Let's go. Let's go. Meng Zhao was incredibly delighted. Wait. Great desire stirred in the students' hearts as they listened, and finally, someone could not hold back anymore. A plump boy who was not that much smaller than a huge, white bear stepped forth. Big Brother Xiang, you can't just teach Meng Zhao alone. We're students as well, and I'm a child as well. Please save me too. The plump boy was also a strength-oriented fighter. If Chu Fei Shang was fatty senior in the class, then he was fatty junior. But his growth had stagnated lately. In the last few months, his maximum punching strength did not increase, and he was so frustrated that he did not manage to sleep for several nights. When he saw Chu Fei Shang's astonishing punch and with Meng Zhao serving as the precedent, there was no way he would let go of such a great chance. Fatty Jr. spoke with desperation in his voice. I have gene medicine, high-grade nutritional fluid, cell-strengthening fluid, and monster materials. I just need to increase my maximum punching strength by 5%, no, by 3%, and that will do. You can state whatever conditions you want. Aside from someone as extraordinary as Meng Zhao, most of the students who managed to get into the key high school in the region came from rather well-off families. They did not mind spending some cultivation resources to increase their points during the national college examination. Within a short period of time, the students all surrounded Chu Fei Shuang. Big Brother Xiang. We know that you're a man who values chivalry the most. Could you help me? Me too. Aside from cultivation resources, what do you say if I offer you one month's worth of breakfast? Big Brother Xiang, Boss Xiang, we're all brothers, please save this pitiful child as well. Everyone curried favor with Chu Fei Shuang. And they completely forgot about the class rep, who still sat on the floor. Zuo Haoran gritted his teeth, and his handsome face was completely twisted. Since he's going to teach me anyway, teaching more is the same. Why don't we form a study group? Everyone can bring out some cultivation resources as compensation to you, and you can develop your style a little. You'll be able to contribute a little to the class as a whole, Meng Zhao kindly suggested. That's a good idea. I'm willing to join the Super Reckless Bull Force study group. The students agreed to it easily. Since things had already progressed to this point, Chu Fei Shang could only nod in agreement. At this moment, a notification popped up in Meng Zhao's peripheral vision. Your suggestion has promoted harmony in class. The students' drive for studying has increased, and there's a possibility that they will get good results. In the near future, they will be able to contribute more to civilization. Increased contribution points by 11. Chu Fei Shuang, you devote such great care to your classmates. Meng Zhao could not help but sigh. We're at the tense eve of the national college exams, and you're still willing to spend time and energy to help everyone improve. You're such a great person. Everyone, he's such a selfless, great man, and he's strong to boot. Why didn't the teacher choose him to be the class rep in the beginning? Everyone was stunned. Then, they started giggling awkwardly. Zuo Haoran had just climbed to his feet when he became so angry that he saw stars. He nearly fell down once more. The price Meng Zhao set for learning reckless bull technique was low, because he wanted quick returns, even if the margin of profit wasn't high. He taught it half for free and asked for minimal price. Everyone was very sensible. Before class ended, most of the students joined the study group. 
Some of the students who came from rather well-off families even delivered various cultivation resources in advance. There were more than 10 bottles of gene medicine, high-grade nutritional fluid, and bone cell growth hormones. All of them were branded goods that Meng Zhao could not buy even if he sold all his possessions. He brought Chu Feishang to the roof to split the profit and taught him some of the force execution formulae of reckless bull technique, along with the stimulation method for the acupressure points so that he could train their classmates later. Chu Feishang agreed to help Meng Zhao organize the study group, but he refused to take the cultivation resources. The huge, white bear said that his family was better off than Meng Zhao's and could guarantee a steady stream of basic resources for him. If Meng Zhao wanted to get into college, he had to treasure all of the hard-won resources. After using every method to persuade him, Meng Zhao just stuffed one-third of the rewards into Chu Feishang's bag. Then, Chu Feishang asked him about the origins of super-reckless bull force. Meng Zhao thought about it and decided to push the responsibility to the deep web. Chu Feishang was shocked. You're still browsing through those underground ergonomics forums? Those people are all cultivation lunatics and mad scientists. They give off seemingly powerful secret techniques and allow the netizens to download them for free, but they do not have good intentions. They often treat the netizens as white mice to help them gather data. You were injured and hospitalized last year because you went to learn a technique that's still in its testing stage on the underground forum. Haven't you learned your lesson? Meng Zhao could only tell him that he was really careful this time. He researched it for a few months, and once he was certain that there was nothing wrong with it, he finally gathered the courage to share it with others. You know my family situation. If I don't take a gamble, how am I supposed to compete against a rich man's son like Zhuo Haoran? And how am I supposed to protect my family against the fearsome monsters? Meng Zhao fell into deep thought. But your worries are logical. How about this? Help me tell the others that super reckless bull force is still in its testing stage, and there might be a lot of bugs in it. If they think it's dangerous, I can return their cultivation resources to them. Anyway, I set the price so cheap because I wanted to contribute to society. Why should I force them to learn if they don't want to? Chapter 7, There Are Monsters Tonight After his best friend left, Meng Zhao leaned against the railing on the roof and watched the sun set in the west. The stars of the other world were even larger and denser than the sun on earth. The rosy clouds were gathered together, forming a dazzling scene. The sky and city turned into a red sea. A building towering into the sky stood at the center of the red sea. The alloy used to make it had rare metals from the other world fused into it, and its malleability and resistance to pressure was largely increased, which allowed the tower to break the maximum height of the skyscrapers on Earth. It looked to have torn through the sky and reached the universe. Sparkling lights surrounded the tower. They entered and exited it like bees in their hive. The lights were all superhumans. The mighty building which stood out like a sore thumb was known as Supernatural Tower, and it was the headquarters of the Superhuman Association. Neat rows upon neat rows of buildings that resembled pyramids and forts surrounded it. All of them were as sturdy as gravity dams. They could withstand the mightiest charges from monsters. Between the buildings were countless black dots scaling walls or flying over roofs. Those were normal citizens who had just finished work. They did not have enough resources, and space was lacking. There were few private cars and taxis in the Dragon City. The normal citizens had ample strength, and their bodies were agile. Even if they had to run long distances, they were not much slower than public buses which had to stop at every station. There were also 3D mobile gears, which were made using the principles of bionics, and they resembled the limbs of monsters. When a person put them on, they could jump much higher, and the gear could even secrete gas. With a light jump, a person could rise 10 to 20 meters, and traveling at 40 to 50 kilometers per hour was not a problem. In the distance, tamed giant sandworms arched their backs and spat out stones like tunnel boring machines to build subway number 12. Further into the distance was the edge of the city. It was covered by fog. It was like a tall, gray wall that covered the sky and sun. It completely blocked all that was beyond it. Before, Meng Zhao had not liked the fog. He felt that it sealed up Dragon City and prevented Earthlings from expanding their territory outwards and slaughtering their way through the four corners of the world. He did not like the city before his eyes either. Dragon City's houses were built too closely to each other, the streets were too crowded, and the pressure to cultivate was too great. He could not see mountains and seas, and he felt a little aggrieved. He was just like any other teenager. He had read too many books and watched too many movies related to Earth. In his dreams, he saw blue skies and white clouds. The air was clear, it was peaceful, 
and the world was beautiful. He saw a world where the people lived free without worries. He longed for everything on earth. Mountains, seas, farms, rivers, and streams. The high school students there only needed to go through two classes of physical education per week, but they could go through more than ten language and mathematics classes. The adults only needed to work for eight hours a day, five days a week, and they could earn a lot of money, live in huge houses, and take vacations constantly. They could eat pure, green, unpolluted, and tasty dishes that did not have their genes changed. It was so beautiful that it was like heaven. Then, in his nightmare, he saw the real other world after the fog disappeared. He saw how supernatural tower in the city was destroyed when a meteor shower rained fire on them. It was only at that moment that Meng Zhao realized just how adorable everything before him was right now. His eyes started stinging without his knowledge. Earth was a hometown they could not return to, and the nightmare was a future that had yet to come. What stood before him was his only home right now. As Meng Zhao faced a future that he could not predict clearly and a danger that was about to come, he was nervous, excited, impulsive, and a little lost. At that moment, reckless bull technique is spreading among normal citizens. Dragon City's overall fighting strength has increased. Increased contribution points by 1, 3, 2. The strange flame shone before his eyes, and the string of contribution points surprised and delighted him. It's Fei Shang, he's teaching the study group. By the looks of it, even if I don't personally teach them and it spreads out indirectly, I can be considered to have contributed. Even though their contribution points are much lower than when I personally teach, I'll get a lot of points in the end even if I gather them bit by bit. As more citizens become stronger, I'll become stronger as well. We'll definitely survive this other world." In an instant, Meng Zhao felt that his waist was no longer sore, his legs were no longer hurting, and his memories were clear. His vision and hearing also became slightly better. Even the red school emblem on his chest became brighter. His contribution points increased up to 39. The feeling of contributing to society is so good, Meng Zhao thought happily. At that moment, the buzzing sound of propellers spinning in the air reached his ears. More than ten armored flying ships tore through the sea of clouds like a mighty fleet through the waves. They descended in the city. They lacked fuel to fly, and the crystal engines were too clunky. On top of that, Dragon City was surrounded by fog, so they were rather limited when it came to the height and range at which they could patrol. Supersonic fighting jets had long since been sealed up in the underground weapons garage. Dragon City's Air Force was mainly made of armored flying ships which were clunky, slow, but had mighty firepower. When crystals were shattered, spirit energy would gush out, and it could propel six propellers forming three rows to spin at high speed. The crystals released a large amount of spirit energy which could fill up air sacs to maintain the floating power of the gigantic objects. Some spirit energy, however, still spilled out from the gaps in the air sacs. They let out sizzling sounds, and the armored flying ships looked like steel demons that rode on clouds. The armored flying ships let down loudspeakers and made an announcement to all of Dragon City. All citizens please take note, this is the newest information from the city's weather forecast station. Tonight, the fog will descend upon us and monsters will ambush the city. We predict that the monsters will mainly appear at the steel factories in the north. The survival committee will now announce the 93rd order on New Era Year 55. Steel Dragon Organization is to immediately begin Grade 1 war preparations. Ninth Sand Region and River Bank Region are to begin Grade 2 war preparations. The other regions are to begin Grade 3 war preparations. All citizens, please obey the laws, be on guard, and be prepared to fight against our enemies. Remember that we are the expediary force from Earth. Earth is with us. Dragon City will definitely win. The weather forecast was the law. Instantly, the footsteps of all the students, workers, and white collared workers inside and outside the school, the streets, and alleys became faster. There's a monster attack tonight? Men Zhao's heart froze. He quickly flung his bag behind his back and rushed downstairs. He got out of the school and hurried to the public bus stop. The 3D mobile gears were too fast, and their jumping power was too high, which made it easy for accidents to happen. Buying and wearing them required licenses. Meng Zhao was still two months away from becoming 18 years old, so he did not have the right to get a 3D traffic license. He could only take public transportation. Since a monster attack was coming, the efficiency of the city's operating speed instantly increased by a large margin. Soon, the public bus arrived. The public buses in this era also used spirit energy to move. They had a huge crystal engine, 
and they looked as if they were hunchbacks. They were known as turtle buses. They also coughed up spirit gas while making moaning sounds, just like ancient steam trains entering a train station. The fuel of public buses were the lowest grade crystals. They were filled with impurities and could not produce much energy. The spirit gas they produced contained the smell of garlic, and it stung the eyes. The passengers standing at the bus stop began coughing. Dad, Mom, Sis. Meng Zhao rubbed his eyes and eagerly squeezed his way into the bus. Blessed Heavenly Garden was one of the public rental housing areas which could be seen everywhere in the old city. The monster war had gone on for 30 years, so most of the buildings which had transmigrated from Earth had been destroyed. The survival committee imitated war forts and created many new apartments which could not be destroyed. Their main function was defensive, so comfort was a second priority that the citizens could choose to take or reject. The main layout in Blessed Heavenly Garden was a 60-square-meter apartment with two rooms and one living room. It might sound like it was pretty good, but in their world, housing apartments and office buildings had to reserve a lot of space to set up machine guns, anti-aircraft missile spots, and sanctuaries. The breadth of the walls was also three times that of the past. Each wall was a bearing wall. Hence, the shared public area was also twice the size of the apartments on Earth. The saleable area was at most 30 square meters, and each room was as small as a bird's cage. Since there was a necessity to protect the city and to develop the other world, the survival committee encouraged people to procreate. While the population increased, the facilities in small regions aged, and buildings that went against the rules and regulations popped up one after another, and their environment became even worse. Polluted water flowed everywhere, and foul smells filled the air. Pipes which were not maintained for years leaked, and spirit gas made sizzling sounds, as if there were 100 sirens installed. But the residents could not bear to buy high-grade crystals for their houses. They used cheap goods that were of the same level as the crystals used for public buses. They were full of impurities, and the area smelled. The entire region was covered in spirit gas of various colors, and it looked like the whole street was being roasted. The armor on the walls of the resident apartment building was modeled from when it had been corroded by acid spit by the monsters, which made it look even more messy and strange. All the citizens in this area wanted to leave Blessed Heavenly Garden. The adults were free, and they loved to lecture their children. Why aren't you focusing on cultivating? You only know how to memorize Dang and Song Dynasty poems. What's the point of all those? When will you get into college, become a superhuman, and live in a commercial house that's 120 square meters wide? Our ancestors on Earth are about to roll in their graves. Meng Zhao stood at the entrance of the market, but he did not grumble about the smell. Instead, he recalled the memories from here fondly. I'm finally back home. He heard friendly and familiar voices in the market. Sand snail meat. They're recently fished up from the river. Look, they still bite. Fresh demonic halberd pork. Go home and feed your children with this pork, and they'll get full marks for every subject. They'll kill monsters with each punch. Second uncle, would you want one? Why is the iron-armored rhinoceros meat today so expensive? Young C, don't lie to me. The news mentioned that the army has just encircled and cleared an iron-armored rhinoceros nest. They had to bring back at least a few thousand tons of beef. No matter what, you should sell it slightly cheaper. Jade fruit. Newly developed jade fruit from the genetic farm. They're even tastier than the melting peaches on earth. You'll taste their juice in every bite, and they're very sweet. If they're not ripe and sweet, I won't take your money. People hustled about, and the area was filled with life. Meng Zhao smiled. In a slightly greedy manner, he sucked in a breath of the aroma that came from the cooked food stall before he moved through the market and entered Blessed Heavenly Garden. Chapter 8, The Dark Witch is His Younger Sister Blessed Heavenly Garden was located at Tiger Forest region, and it was to begin Grade 3 war preparations. Everyone had been fighting for decades, so monsters attacking the city was something normal for them. The old men and old ladies still went to the field and nonchalantly practiced ancient martial arts. The children flung around polished monster skulls and ran around the elderly as they played a game of earthlings beating up monsters. Some of the middle school students who had finished school earlier started talking nonsense, since they had nothing to do. They talked about whether Dragon City should gather up all its resources to develop a transmigration skill so that they could return to Earth. Big Brother Meng Zhao moved past the field when he heard his name being called. He turned his head around and saw a girl dressed in a middle school student's uniform. She was dragging behind her a large and heavy metal bucket, which made her look like a diligent ant dragging food that was several times bigger than her. 
The girl was very adorable. She was like a flower bud that was about to bloom. Her eyes were crinkled in amusement, which gave her a mischievous air. Her uniform was a size too large, so she appeared petite and adorable. She jumped about and waved her hand. Hurry up and help me. I'm seriously tired. Okay. Meng Zhao felt a little dazed as he walked to his younger sister, Bei Jia Kao. When he saw the petite and pretty face which had not fully grown, his head hurt. It was as if there was a red-hot steel needle poking into it and stimulating the deepest parts of his mind so it could release crystalline memory shards. The girl's glossy, long, and black hair turned into burning purple hair. Her crystal-like black eyes shone with an enchanting light, and she had a pair of huge wings that were covered in blood vessels. She looked like a demon that came out of the depths of a blood-soaked hell. A mysterious and evil smile played on her lips. She was beautiful, just like the girls in portraits painted in thick and heavy colors. It was enough to terrify half of the living from the other world to the point that their hearts shattered. She was the Dark Witch. Wherever she went, she brought about eternal darkness. Big brother? He he. Meng Zhao could see before his eyes when his younger sister had stomped on him in the distant future after she became the Dark Witch. At that time, she had smiled coldly and mysteriously. Meng Zhao was absolutely baffled. I didn't expect that you would be this sort of younger sister. Big brother, what's wrong? She swung her hand in front of him with puzzlement. You look like a rat who saw a cat. No, it's nothing. What's this? It's seriously heavy. Sigh, it's dad's fault. He heard that the army took down an iron-armored rhinoceros nest, and he quickly went to line up at the supply and marketing department. He actually managed to buy a huge bucket of beef. He said that it was much cheaper than the ones at the market, but it's just too heavy. The girl pouted. Where's dad? Why is he asking you to carry the bucket on your own? Dad is lining up a second time at the supply and marketing department. He wants to see whether there will be any rhinoceros bone marrow, so I had to drag this back. He he, I'm great, aren't I? The girl placed her hands on her hips and puffed out her chest. Pride shone in her eyes. Let go. Let me do it. Let's carry it together. You were injured. Dad and Mom said that you're not supposed to do heavy manual work. This isn't heavy manual work. Let go. Be careful not to let the bucket hit your feet. Help me carry my bag. Meng Zhao bent down. His shoulders sank, and he hefted the entire bucket of iron-armored rhinoceros meat. Bei Jia Kao sighed in relief and rubbed her incredibly numb arms and legs. But she also felt a little nervous. She carefully observed her big brother's footsteps and posture, worried that he would injure himself again. Meng Zhao felt his eyelids twitch. He was a little overwhelmed by such care from the dark witch who would bring harm to all of the other world in the future. When he thought of this, he suddenly stopped moving. Ack! Bei Jia Kao did not stop in time and knocked into her brother's back. She rubbed her nose and let out a displeased cry. Meng Zhao turned around with a strange look in his eyes. Big brother, what's wrong? Bei Jia Kao felt her skin crawl. Let me ask you something. Is there something about me that displeases you? No way. Big brother, why should I be displeased with you? What nonsense! Of course I am displeased. You're horrid, stupid big brother. Am I usually bad to you? Do I bully you often? Of course not. You're the best to me. You never bully me. Of course you're bad. You bully me every single day. You're a demon. How could you be shameless enough to ask me such a question? If, I'm just saying if, one day, you obtained great power, would you stomp on me? Oh my god, my beloved big brother, what on earth are you thinking? Why would I want to stomp on you? Would I be that brutal? He he, you guessed it. If I became strong one day, the first thing I'd do would be to stomp on you, you evil big brother. I'll stomp on you with all my strength. And I'd do it several times. Oh oh ho ho ho. Bei Jia Kao tried her best to control her facial expression. But when she thought about how she could turn the tides, become someone superior, and stomp on her bully of a big brother happily after she finally broke free of being suppressed, she simply could not control herself. Meng Zhao narrowed his eyes. He suddenly extended his evil claws, hand, and placed it on his younger sister's head to ruffle her hair as much as he wanted. Big brother, did I offend you again? Why are you bullying me again? Bei Jia Kao was livid and anxious. Her face puffed up and turned red. A big brother needs no reason to bully his younger sister. Meng Zhao was absolutely pleased with himself. Well, it's your fault for stomping on me after you turned into the Dark Witch. 
since I can still defeat you right now, I'll just have my fill of toying with you first. Speaking of which, since he returned from that nightmare, he would definitely not allow any sort of misfortune to fall upon his family. Sis, I won't let you turn into the dark witch feared by all. You should be the most blessed, beautiful, and loved princess in the whole city, no, the whole other world. As Meng Zhao thought about this, he messed up the little prince's hair even more. Soon, they reached Unit 3, Block 19, Blessed Heavenly Garden. Since there was a shortage of electricity and monsters were attacking them, buildings seldom installed elevators. The adults were used to scaling walls and getting into their houses through the windows. Teenagers took the stairs, but it did not use up much of their energy. Meng Zhao and Bei Jiakao pulled and pushed the bucket with iron-armored rhinoceros meat until they brought it to door number 704. A plate that read, family with five outstanding virtues, was nailed to an alloy door with its paint peeled off. Under the plate were 65 skulls with deformed long horn spray painted on it. There was a red cross over each skull. This meant that this family had killed 65 monsters. It was a familiar scene, but unfamiliar at the same time. It caused Meng Zhao's eyes to sting. He had grown up in a normal family. Seventeen years ago, during a monster attack on the city, a retired soldier Meng Yishan had heard a baby's cries in some ruins. He summoned all his courage to save the survivors and not only did he manage to save the baby, he also managed to find a teenage girl whose legs were reduced to a bloody mess in the depths of the ruins. The girl was badly injured. Meng Yishan took care of her meticulously, and both of them fell in love. The baby was their matchmaker. It had lost its parents during the monster attack, so they chose to take care of it. That baby was Meng Zhao. Even though they were not related to each other by blood, his adopted parents still treated him like their own flesh and blood. Even after Bei Jia Kao, the product of their life, was born, their love for him did not change. In his nightmare, their family of four lived a simple and happy life for 20 years before it came to an abrupt end in chaos. Once Meng Zhao returned from that nightmare, he made a decision to protect everything until eternity. Mom, I'm back. He had a key in his pocket, but he could not resist shouting. The narrow but clean apartment was as hot as a food steamer. Their tiny living room was squashed together with an open kitchen. Bay Suxon, who suffered from leg disabilities, was sweating bullets in front of the stove. When she saw her children come home, she was filled with joy. The wrinkles on her face smoothed out. Aren't your nose as good? You came back just in time. Bay Suxon brought out a plate of golden food. Eat the spring rolls while they're hot. The filling is made of nine-eyed fish meat. They're a new bread that has just mutated. Since no one has ever seen it, not many people dare to eat it. It's sold cheap, so I bought a lot of it. If it tastes good, I'll make more of it in the future. Mom. Meng Zhao sucked in a deep breath and took the spring rolls his mom made with trembling fingers. He nibbled it and paid extra attention to the taste. So fragrant. The meat is sweet. It was a sweetness he had not tasted in years. You silly boy, you're just eating spring rolls, so why are you crying? Bei Suxin looked at Meng Zhao, then at Bei Jiakao. Bei Jiakao pulled a funny face and tapped her own temple. She gestured at her mother. Big brother lost a few screws in his head today. A thought appeared in Meng Zhao's head. The memory shards in his mind sparkled, and he was eager to try something out. Mom, young cow. Go and rest in the apartment. I'll make dinner tonight. You know how to cook? Bei Suxin was surprised and moved, but she waved her hand and said, Just rest. You're tired from school. I'll be done after I stir fry some pork liver. Keep an ear out to the door. Your dad just called and said he bought rhinoceros bone marrow. It's fine. I'm tired from studying, so I'll just cook a few dishes to change my mindset a little. Meng Zhao did not listen to protests. He removed Bei Suxin's apron and tied it around himself before he picked up a knife and brandished it. He seemed very familiar with it. K.R., you've grown up, Bei Suxin said with a smile. Big brother, are you sure you'll be okay? Pork livers from demonic halberd pigs are very difficult to handle. If you're the slightest bit careless, it'll end up smelling rank, and it'll stink. Bei Jiakao refused to believe him. Her stupid brother could only cook instant noodles or boil dumplings. Making fried eggs was his absolute limit. The procedure to make pork liver from demonic halberd pigs tasty was extremely complicated. Even housewives found it difficult to make it taste good. I'll do it. Move, you stupid oaf of a big brother. The girl walked over habitually. Usually, when her mother suffered from pain in her legs, she would cook. 
but before she could take the knife from Meng Zhao's hands, it turned into a ray of silver light. Chapter 9, The Entire City Is On Guard Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The pork liver, which was irregular in shape and shuddered like a piece of tofu, was perfectly sliced into seven parts. Huh? The mother-daughter pair's eyes sparkled. The livers of demonic halberd pigs contain a lot of nutrition unique to the other world, and they also have a lot of spirit energy. They provide great help to youngsters when they cultivate. But since it's difficult to handle and tastes foul, rich people don't like it, and it's rather cheap. This was the reason the livers became the main food source from which salaried people obtain spirit energy. Meng Zhao brought out a box of embroidery needles and started quickly handling the ingredients. But the foul taste exists simply because the blood vessels and enedzma in the liver aren't taken care of properly. As long as you get rid of the impurities carefully and put in a lot of ginger and spring onions while you stir fry it over a large fire, it'll taste great. The taste won't even lose to the liver of a three-legged flying dragon. While he spoke, he shook his head, which made it sound like he had eaten a three-legged flying dragon's liver before. Bejaya cow pouted. She was about to say everyone understands that logic, but can you actually pick out all the impurities? She suddenly froze. Meng Zhao took two embroidery needles in each hand, and the four tips turned into shadows that created a silver blur. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The tips of the needles pierced into the pork liver like a storm falling on the ground. Meng Zhao's movements were as quick as lightning, but his strength was light, like that of dragonflies tapping against water. It was perfect. He did not destroy the overall structure of the pork liver nor burst any blood vessel or anadzma. Instead, he peeled off the anadzma, which was as thin as a cicada's wing. He then embedded the needles into the liver's blood vessels and peeled them off as well. The removed pieces did not look like waste in a kitchen. Instead, they looked like an artistic piece made with such great skill that it looked better than anything produced by nature. This is. Beijia Cow and Bei Suxin were both dumbfounded. They did not think that Meng Zhao's hands would move so quickly and that he would have such a clear understanding toward the layout of the anadzma and alignment of the blood vessels in the liver of demonic halberd pigs. Meng Zhao was happy. Looks like I wasn't completely useless in my previous life. As my contribution points increase, my memories from my previous life will also subtly become one with my body. I'll definitely help everyone live a better life this time. Under his mother and younger sister's astonished gazes, he only took half a minute to smoothly stir-fry a plate of demonic halberd pork liver. Taste it. Meng Zhao looked at his younger sister with a confident expression. There was a smile on his face. Bei Jia Kao looked at the demonic halberd pork liver that looked good and smelled good. While harboring some doubts in her mind, she used a toothpick to pick up a piece and put it in her mouth. Gah! She burned her tongue. But she could not bear to spit it out. Her face turned red. Still, her eyes could speak, and shock as well as admiration were written in them. With great difficulty, she swallowed the fresh and tender demonic halberd pork liver and stuck out her tongue. There were tears in her eyes while she stuttered, tea tastes good. The future dark witch was subjugated by her older brother's stir-fried demonic halberd pork liver. Just as she swung her toothpick and was about to get another piece, familiar footsteps rang outside the door. The, still uncorrupted, Dark Witch hesitated for a moment before she picked up a large piece of demonic halberd pork liver at the speed of lightning and stuffed the plate into her mother's hands. She skipped over to open the door. She had her mouth stuffed full of meat while she mumbled, Dad, is bad. Your zons possessed. Meng Yishan dragged his feet, which were as heavy as lead, back into his home. He was instantly enveloped by the warm atmosphere in the apartment, and his fatigue disappeared. But he felt that his family members were a little strange today. It was especially so for his son, whose eyes were red-rimmed. Even so, he did not look like he was possessed. As for his wife, she looked like she just finished watching the ancient Korean dramas from Earth. He did not understand what was going on, but he still smiled. A hey cow, what's wrong? His smile was like a bullet that made Meng Zhao crumble. In his memories, his father was a mighty and indomitable man. It was only after being reborn that Meng Zhao noticed that his father's temples had started graying a long time ago. His thick shoulders had started slumping, and his back was slightly hunched as well. The tough man who could work for three days and three nights straight and could crush a monster's skull with one hit from his hammer was quietly becoming old. Why have I never noticed that coming back home was so difficult for my dad? Meng Zhao forced himself to smile. It's nothing. Dad, I'm home. You can rest for a while he said softly but firmly. Dad, 
I'm not lying. Big Brother is really possessed. He made this stir-fry demonic halberd pork liver, and he did it like magic. Beijia Cao jumped up and hugged her father's neck. Really? Meng Yishan sized up his son with a serious look. He was fine with the fact that his son knew how to cook, but he felt that his son's expression had become different. After he was injured last year and could no longer cultivate, he became dispirited and depressed. He tended to force himself to appear nonchalant, but all of that was gone now. His son was standing up straight once again. Then I'll have to drink two cups. The middle-aged man smiled happily. There were three dishes, one bowl of soup, and one plate of snacks on the tiny dining table. Aside from the stir-fried demonic halberd pork liver, there was also a plate of spicy twin-tailed scorpion, along with some stir-fried vegetables. The soup was tomato lizard egg soup, and there was also a plate of spring rolls. It was all common home-cooked food. The dishes could not be considered to be delicacies or very tasty, but they were unique and could not be exchanged with money. Men Zhao listened to his sister talk about the fun things that happened in middle school, watched his father remove his coat with a gratified expression, and listened to his mother praise him. He might not have drunk any wine, but he felt warm all over, like he was tipsy. Joy overflowed in the family, and everyone ate two more bowls of rice more than usual. As for Meng Zhao, he ate five bowls extra, and his tummy was round from all the eating. After dinner, Bei Jia Kao volunteered to wash the plates. Meng Yishan turned on the television. Monsters would invade their city that night, so all the channels were full of programs broadcasting the war preparations live. Latest news, tonight, at 1855, the Army's War Crab Commandos entered the battlefield to the north of the city. The screen showed six-legged war machines that looked like steel war crabs. They had reactive armor installed. Their slightly clunky shells were engraved with a large amount of profound and complicated runes. The gaps in the armor were embedded with dark red crystals. Spirit energy resembling flames traveled along the lines of the runes and intersected with each other. They went to the end of the limbs of the war machines. Spirit gas gushed out continuously which made the bionics crawling war trucks into creations that were a combination of technologies from the era of steam and futuristic science. They looked strange and powerful. All citizens of Ninth Sand region have prepared for war. All regions have been fortified. The underground battle fortresses have risen. Superhumans are now on guard in the air. In the screen, all of Ninth Sand region had their weapons drawn and were full of murderous intention. Most of the citizens in the region had sealed up their doors and windows. Guns and anti-aircraft missile spots filled the ground. There were also soldiers with guns patrolling the area. Hundreds of powerful fighters with astonishing presences levitated in the air. Their weapons pulsed and shone with a sharp light which reflected on the guns and cannons of the soldiers on the ground. June and July are the breeding season of Black Beetle and a dozen other monsters with outer shells. Fog has descended on us three times, and the main attacking force invading our city has always been made up of shell-type monsters. When fighting against these monsters, we suggest that citizens use armor-piercing shells more often. Here, we invite our monster specialist, Professor K. Jun Dong of Dragon City University's Department of Biology to give a detailed explanation of the habits of shell-type monsters and their weaknesses. Hello, Professor K. Hello, Miss MC. Greetings, everyone. The MC and the monster specialist started speaking with fervor. The grade 6 superhumans are moving. Master Luo Wu, who's known as Soul Breaking Saber, is a mighty fighter ranked at the 17th place on the annual hunting rank. He's currently leaving Luo Mansion to head to the place where Steel Dragon Organization has stationed itself. Everyone knows that Grade 6 superhumans have already reached the unbelievable stage of spirit energy turning into armor. Spirit gas can gush out of their bodies to turn into sturdy and unbreakable spirit energy armor. They can even spread it dozens of meters around them to strengthen an entire battle unit so that the battle power of people within dozens of meters of them would increase by leaps and bounds. Every grade 6 superhuman fully deserves to be called a mighty fighter and a god of war. I wonder how many monsters Master Luo Wu will kill today. Will he be able to kill a nightmarish beast that is ranked grade 4 or above? Heavenly I Live Broadcast Station is currently broadcasting Master Luo Wu's fight live so that you will not miss even a single second of his fight. You can personally witness the straightforward, shocking, and brutal clash between a mighty fighter and a nightmare. On the television, a bald, built man with a tattoo of a tiger's skeleton on his head jumped into the air from a mansion. He had two nine-ringed broadswords with ghost heads at the handle on his back and an X. Complicated spirit marks rose on his skin and intersected continuously. 
They shone and gradually left his body to surround him. They turned into an energy armor that could change at will. Ah! Bejiakao was midway through washing a plate when she was attracted by the picture on the television. She stared at it fixedly. But she was not staring at the grade 6 superhuman. She was staring at the mansion he left. That's Dragon City number 1, where Master Luo Wu is staying. Bejiakao sighed. I heard that even the smallest houses in Dragon City No. 1 are 200 square meters in size. The decor is as beautiful as that of a palace, unlike in our small and smelly region. Everyone uses the purest, high-grade spirit gas delivered to them in pipes, and their smell is sweet. Also, their property management companies have their own main battle tanks. Most of the people staying in the region are superhumans. Even if they run into nightmarish beasts, they don't have to be afraid. She stopped talking for a moment before she shook her head. Why did she mention those things? Even a toilet in Dragon City No. 1 would be more expensive than an apartment in Blessed Heavenly Garden. The girl pouted and looked away to continue washing plates. A thought came to Meng Zhao's mind. Grade 6 Superhumans? Master Luo Wu? Dragon City No. 1? He had returned from the nightmare, so he could become a superhuman too. Dad, soon, I will ensure that you won't have to work so hard anymore. You won't need to be troubled about our livelihood, and you would be able to do whatever you want. Mom, your legs are impaired, and they often hurt when it rains or when the fog comes, but as long as you substitute your joints with bionic celloid joints, most of your life will change. I'll definitely earn that money this year. Sis, you want to stay in Dragon City number 1? I want to as well. Don't be impatient, just wait until I get into college. Chapter 10, Return to the Peak While Meng Zhao was thinking, the doorbell rang. It was Madame Cao of the resident committee. Behind her were three men with war goggles dressed in camouflage uniforms. They had buzz cuts and wore fierce expressions. All four of them had red armbands wrapped on their upper arms with words joint defense. Oh, your whole family is here. Have you eaten? Madame Cao looked into the house. Tonight, we have a monster invasion. We're here to check the weapons in each house. Oh. You're drinking. We didn't drink much. We're definitely not drunk. Meng Yishan found himself a little embarrassed. He offered the people in the camouflage uniform cigarettes. The leader shook his hand and refused the cigarette. He brought out a breath analyzer and asked Meng Yishan to blow into it. When he saw that the alcohol content in Meng Yishan was indeed not high, he nodded, and his expression relaxed. This is Captain Li. He's the newly appointed captain of the Joint War Defense Tactics Team in the region, Madame Cao introduced him. Meng Yishan quickly shook hands with him. Hello, Captain Li. Li Daong. The captain of the joint defense team shook hands with Meng Yishan. I heard from Director Cao just now that you're a veteran and was an ace sharpshooter when you were in the military. So, do you have enough ammunition for your weapons in your house? He asked in a low voice. A good man does not talk about his past glories. It has been years since it happened. Meng Yishan waved his hand. A hey, Cao, bring them out. Okay, Meng Zhao answered and moved the couch away. He knelt down on one knee and lifted the floorboard. From the secret compartment, he brought out a submachine gun, a semi-automatic rifle, a handgun, and two grenades. Meng Yishan wanted to disassemble the weapons based on procedures, but when he took half a step toward him, Meng Zhao's hands turned into a gray blur. Cracking sounds rose, and all anyone saw was a blur. As if he was performing a magic trick, the guns in front of Meng Zhao turned into the most basic compartments. Meng Yishan was stunned. Captain Li gasped in surprise. Meng Zhao remained calm. As if his fingers were living fairies, they moved about with great agility. In just a few seconds, he separated the compartments which had been placed together and formed three guns. Basic gun technique felt pretty good, even if it was only at normal level. He did not get up right away. He first placed the semi-automatic rifle on his shoulder, and in a familiar motion, he checked its optical sight. The rifle looked as if it was an extension of his limb and gave off a faint murderous vibe. Half a second later, Meng Zhao nodded and tossed the semi-automatic rifle to Captain Li. The leader grabbed it and positioned the rifle on his shoulder. With just one glance, he became visibly moved. It's a good rifle. It has been maintained well, and the alignment is done even better. You'll hit whatever you aim. That's Meng Zhao, a top student from 9th high school. Madame Cao smiled so brightly that her eyes became closed. It was rare for a public renting housing area like theirs to produce a student in a key high school. I see, you're a good lad. 
If you join the military, you'll definitely become an ace sharpshooter. Captain Lee praised him. So, do you have enough ammunition in the house? We have 300 normal bullets, but we only have two cartridges of armor-piercing shells left. Each has 20 bullets, Meng Yishan said. All right, since there are two gun experts in this house, you shouldn't be low on bullets. I'll give you 20 armor-piercing shells and 100 normal bullets. If monsters do come, I hope that you'll bring glory to the region. Captain Lee waved his hand, and the other two people in camouflage uniforms calculated the bullets before asking Meng Yishan to sign. The trade was done quickly. Meng Yishan took the cartridges with a grin and decided to ask for a mile when offered an inch. 20 armor-piercing shells is just too little, and we don't have enough grenades as well. Can't you give us a little more? Captain Lee sighed. I'm afraid not, sir. Our region did not manage to hit the target for monster kills last year, and we didn't become a five-star region. The higher-ups only give us this little ammunition. You can't make something out of nothing, you know. You can't blame us for that. Blessed Heavenly Garden doesn't have any cowards, but we're an old region in an old part of the city. In the past, we killed a lot of monsters here, and now, they're scared of us. They haven't been coming to our region for a long time. Where are we supposed to find monsters to kill here? Captain Lee smiled. Isn't that great? Do you want a monster horde to come here on a daily basis? Put up with it, sir. As long as we can get ranked as a five-star region this year, the basic number of ammunition we can get next year will increase by 20%. We'd have ample ammunition then. By the way, if we do get monsters to kill later, don't forget to gather the shells. We don't have enough resources in Dragon City, and we need to reuse the bullets. Got it. I've been fighting monsters for decades. I'd know this. Meng Yishan sent Madame Cao and Captain Lee away. Then, they went to knock on number 706. Madame Cao whispered to Meng Yishan, Old Meng, number 706's Granny Wang lost both her son and daughter-in-law. Her granddaughter is staying in school, and she's the only one in the apartment. She's stubborn, and she refuses to go to a sanctuary. If we do have monsters bothering us later, please pay some attention to her. All right, if anything happens, I'll have the old lady come to my house, Meng Yishan agreed. What are you grumbling about? Are you gossiping about an old lady behind her back? The door to number 706 opened, and a white-haired old lady with wrinkles all over her face and all her teeth fallen out swung her extra-large shotgun. After taking a lot of effort to trick Granny Wang into promising to come to their house later, Meng Yishan returned home to distribute ammunition. A cow. I didn't expect that the gun education in your high school would be so good. Okay, I'll let you have some fun today. Use the Type 22 assault rifle. I'll give you 20 armor-piercing shells. Remember this, when you use armor-piercing shells, you need to add strength and components to the rifle. Suxon, hold the handgun. Your legs hurt, so don't stand. I'll modify your wheelchair to battle mode. Meng Yishan picked up his submachine gun and rubbed it in familiar motions. Then. He gasped in amazement. He did not expect that Meng Zhao would be able to assemble guns so well. He had actually given consideration to Meng Yishan's shooting habits when he aligned the optical scope for the gun. Dad, what about me? Bei Jiakao gazed expectantly at Meng Yishan. Have mom give me her handgun. We already learned how to use guns in class. My scores at shooting with real bullets are ranked number one. You're still young, why would you play with a gun? I'll give you this. Meng Yishan brought out a cookery made of cold steel from behind his waist. It had the shape of a dog's leg, and it shone with a cold glare. This is good stuff. When I used it last time, I beheaded a desert wolf with a single swing. You've told that story more than 800 times already, Bei Jiakao grumbled. Meng Yishan glared at her. What did you say? Bei Jiakao hunched her shoulders and pursed her lips. Dad, many of the families of my classmates are already letting them use guns. My deskmate Lily used a rocket launcher last time. Meng Yishan smiled coldly. So, since Lily used a rocket launcher, you want to use one too? But last time, during the parent-teacher meeting, when the teacher said that Lily could maintain the standing stance for three hours straight, why couldn't you? Bei Jiakao remained stubborn. I, it's not that I can't maintain that stance for three hours. I just think that the stances in middle school are too simple and boring. Her parents did not believe her. Meng Zhao came over and said with a stern expression. It's true, but the requirements for stances in the national college examination are getting higher. Our teachers in high school have been emphasizing that we mustn't be afraid of hardship and fatigue and we mustn't find it troublesome. Stances, 
breathing techniques, and meditation techniques are to be combined together, and they are the basics of cultivation. Dad, Mom, I think my younger sister has been a little rash lately, so you need to educate her properly. When she comes home every day in the future, why don't you make her keep a stance for two hours? Beijia Cao sucked in a sharp breath. She stared at Meng Zhao in disbelief. Why you? You're so evil. Meng Yishan and Bei Suxin looked at each other, and they smiled kindly. Young Cao, your brother is right, why don't? Why don't I use that cookery? Many of the peerless fighters in the world use sabers. Beijia Cao hurriedly grabbed the cookery and brandished it a few times beautifully. She grabbed the sheath and tied it to her calf before she glared at Meng Zhao discreetly and went off to wash the plates in anger. At 8 o'clock sharp, electricity and spirit energy supplies in the entire region were cut off. All forms of energy were gathered together to provide for the searchlights, high voltage grid, and the automatic defense system. An alloy armor that was more than 20 centimeters thick came down to cover all the windows. Only fist sized embrasures and observation holes were left. The automatic war fortresses rose from the ground beneath the market, mini supermarket, field, and small schools. A battered old style anti monster self propelled gun was driven out by the resident committee members. The Joint War Defense Tactics Team took out a rusty infantry fighting vehicle to form their mobile force. Blessed Heavenly Garden was now completely fortified. The apartment was dark. Everyone lay on the ground with closed eyes to gather strength so they could be ready to fight. Only the crystal radio continued to announce the news from the front lines intermittently. The first wave of monsters has appeared at the steel refining factory in the north of the city. It broke through the defense line at 5 Blessings Street. The main fighting power of the monsters consists of flaming black beetles. There are about 1,000 of them. The army and superhumans have joined the battle. A small number of monsters has appeared in the Ninth Sand region. The citizens are currently hunting them on the streets and within the districts. Attention, please. The fog has descended. Spirit energy has been thrown into chaos, and it might interfere with human brain waves. Many of the monsters are now able to launch mental attacks. To increase morale and ensure that all citizens have great mental health, we will now broadcast a classical military song from Earth. Onward! Our vigor and vitality cuts down the edges of weapons and intimidates fearsome beasts. As the fog became thicker, the wandering spirit energy in the air became even wilder, and the interference of radio waves became worse. The enthusiastic military song gradually became blurry, and only static remained. The citizens turned off their radios and listened to the cannons in the distance through the reinforced concrete and alloy armor. The cannon fire allowed them to feel at ease. It was the roaring of humans. Children slept sound in their parents' arms as they listened to the rumbling cannon fire. Men Zhao locked his room door from the inside. There were only two rooms and one living room in the house. Originally, his parents slept in the master bedroom and Beijia Kaso slept in the second room while he slept on the folding bed in the living room. But during the second half of Meng Zhao's third year, Bei Jiakao switched rooms with him temporarily so he could prepare for exams at ease. Gulp! Meng Zhao opened a high-grade nutritional fluid bottle and gulped down its contents. The teachers in school said that high-grade nutritional fluid contained a lot of spirit energy, and their contents were 100 times higher than those of a normal monster's flesh. Every time anyone had a bottle, they were to be careful. The best way was to pour the contents into the bottle cap and use a small spoon to take it. After drinking the contents, they were to immediately take a standing stance, charge, punch, and do high-intensity training to release the medicine's power and nourish every cell in their bodies. But Meng Zhao drank it swiftly like cold coke during the afternoon of a hot summer day. As a wild wave of spirit energy surged into his veins, his body let out a series of thunderous sounds. Something unexpected happened. After living however he wanted for a year, his arms and legs had gradually shriveled, and even his chest had done the same. But now, all of them swelled up and filled up with muscle. His hair and skin started to glow, and he could see wisps of heat spreading out of his pores to form the presence of a beast around him. His gaze turned intense, and it was as sharp as an eagle's. Meng Zhao enjoyed drinking the high-grade nutritional fluid, and he drank bottle after bottle. He finished all the nutritional fluid and medicine he had earned before he finally let out a loud burp. He was full, but he still craved for more. Feels so good. He felt like a tank filled with fuel and ammunition. He laughed and casually threw a punch. It broke through the air and let out hissing sounds that were identical to those of a snake. Compared to Chu Fei Shang's heavy punches, the sounds Meng Zhao created when he punched were sharper, 
as if all his power was gathered in one spot. In an actual fight, he would produce even more terrifying and destructive force. My strength came back. Men Zhao clenched his fists tightly, and he felt as if he held a bar of burning hot steel in his palm. Even though his healing had not reached 70%, he felt that he had already surpassed the peak of his strength when he was in his second year of high school. This feeling of getting stronger non-stop and seizing fate's throat feels so good. He delivered more than 1,000 punches in one go, then spent three minutes doing intermittent hiney running in place. By then, he was drenched in sweat and had absorbed all the medicinal effects. He was about to lay down with his semi-automatic rifle to rest when he heard a light crack on the other side of the wall. Chapter 11, Nip the Problem in the Bud Someone was assembling a gun. Behind the wall was the living room, not the master bedroom. Men Zhao's gaze turned a little dangerous. He picked up the emergency flashlight and, like a ghost, quietly left his room. The sound of his footsteps was a little strange. When the tips of his feet landed, they slid forward a little. He was moving like a leopard on a hunt. He did not make a single sound. Breathing came from the corner of the living room. Bei Jia Kao seemed to have fallen asleep. Meng Zhao smiled and suddenly turned on his flashlight and shone it in her direction. He was just in time to see the girl with her eyes sparkling brightly. She was not sleeping at all, but was toying with a strange gun. Bei Jia Kao wore a pink set of pajamas with pictures of puppies printed all over them. When the light shone on her, she looked just as dumbfounded as the puppies on her pajamas. Half a second later, she quickly hid the gun behind her, but she was not as fast as Meng Zhao. The girl's vision blurred, and the gun landed in her brother's hands. Where did you get this gun? Meng Zhao sized up the gun and found it incredibly familiar. The gun turned into red soldering iron in his hands, and pain seeped from the tips of his fingers to the center of his eyebrows. Memories of his previous life started dancing like butterflies, and the nightmare appeared in flashing bits again. Sparks, screams, and mysterious monsters. Bei Jia Kao, in her puppy pajamas, held a gun tightly in her hands. She fired while trembling. Sparks flew, smoke filled the area, and the recoil threw her back. Things burned and collapsed. Their father shouted in anger, their mother screamed in pain, Meng Zhao himself shouted, and his younger sister cried in regret, but it was too late. It was this gun. Meng Zhao came to a shocking discovery. Before the fog descended in his previous life, Bei Jia Kao had acted like the reckless teenager she was and used a gun to fire a shot at a mysterious monster. It attracted the monster's attention, and it rushed to their house. Since their mother suffered from leg disabilities, she was heavily injured. Because of it, Meng Zhao became short-tempered. When he went to school the next day, he could no longer stand his class rep's mocking words and started a fight with him. But there was no way he could be Zuo Hao Ran's opponent. He was injured by the class rep, who used incredibly diabolical methods against him. At that time, he did not notice it, but a few days before his national college exam, his breathing became painful, and his maximum punching force plummeted by 30%. In the end, he did not manage to get into a higher vocational college because he lacked a few points. Bei Jia Kao blamed herself greatly and believed that her mother's severe injuries and her brother failing his national college examination was all due to her recklessness. This matter turned into her internal demon and was the starting point of her road down the demonic path. Big brother, what's wrong? You're scaring me, big brother. The girl's voice finally reached Meng Zhao's ears. He shuddered and snapped out of his thoughts with a hum. Bei Jia Kao sighed in relief. We made this during our handicrafts class. I snuck it back home to play with it. Big brother, hurry up and give it back to me. If our old-fashioned father finds it, I'll be scolded. The girl had an obsequious smile. The only thing missing was her wagging her tail. She reached out to grab the gun but missed. I'm confiscating it. Kacha, Kacha. Meng Zhao disassembled the gun into individual pieces with one hand. Ah, my gun. The obsequiousness instantly turned into anger. The girl jumped up from her folding bed and bared her teeth. I went through a lot of trouble to make this. The survival committee announced that when the fog descends, all citizens above 14 years old are allowed to legally wield cold weapons and firearms to protect their lives and their homes. I have the right to fight. Just go play on the side. What right do you have to say that to me? Because the gun you assembled is rubbish. Your compartments aren't polished finely, and you actually dared to go for the highest firepower possible? This sort of scrap will release a lot of smoke and sparks when you fire it, which will make it even more eye-catching than firecrackers. 
You'll definitely be discovered by monsters if you fire this. Bejaya Cow was exasperated. She swung her fists and threatened him. Who said that? I rank first place in my class when it comes to assembling guns, and I got 99 points in my midterms. Stupid big brother, bad big brother, awful big brother. Give it back, or else I'll snatch it. Snatch it? Meng Zhao asked as if he had heard a joke. That's right. Don't force me to take action. You have no idea just how strong I am right now. Bei Cow rolled up her sleeves and said smugly, Big brother, I'm not lying to you. You're really not my opponent right now. It's still not too late for you to surrender now. With your abilities? Meng Zhao beckoned her to fight against him. The future dark witch flew into a rage. Like a hungry tiger pouncing on a lamb, she jumped on her big brother. Ever since she beat up eight hooligans in the alley behind her school, she had become incredibly confident in her monstrous strength, which was increasing by the day. She even gave a few reminders to herself. Hold back. You must absolutely hold back. You can't injure your stupid big brother, or else, when he cries out and tells dad, it'll be bad. But unexpectedly, when this thought flashed in her mind, Bejaya Cow felt the world spin, and she was flung back not too heavily, but not too lightly either. All her strength scattered. Her older brother even reached forward with two fingers at lightning speed and pinched her nose. His fingers were like a pair of iron pliers. He showed absolutely no mercy. Gah! The girl could not breathe through her nose, and it hurt so much that she started crying. Her head was in a mess. What's going on? I'm supposed to be the beauty with monstrous strength who is unbeatable throughout middle school. Bejaya Cow struggled with all her might and tried her best to escape from Meng Zhao's devilish claws. But she was suppressed. Meng Zhao showed no mercy to her. Say that you're wrong. Wrong, my foot. The future dark witch had a lot of backbone. Well, yeah. Your foot's indeed wrong. Meng Zhao nodded, and amusement appeared in his eyes. You. Bei Cow sucked in a deep breath in preparation to scream. Go on and shout. Get dad and mom here. Let them see the gun you assembled. Meng Zhao was very calm. His words struck Bei Cow's weakness. The girl's eyes went wide, and she lost all her fight in an instant. The stalemate lasted for a few more seconds before fat tears started falling from her eyes. Big brother, I, I was wrong, she said reluctantly. That's better. Good girl. Meng Zhao let go of her, satisfied. Bei Cow cupped her nose and rubbed it for a long time. She looked at the gun she had assembled with a lot of effort taken apart in her big brother's hands, and she found that she really wanted to cry, but had no more tears. Help me. My big brother turned into a demon king. Please save me, an innocent girl who has to go through all sorts of torture. The future dark witch covered her nose and mouth and used her softest voice, which was as soft as a mosquito's buzz, to screech. She swung her fist in her heart and made an oath. Don't you look down on me because I have nothing right now. One of these days, I will defeat you, you demon of a big brother. I'm going to stomp on you. Hmm? Meng Zhao narrowed his eyes and gave off a bit of murderous intent. What's that sound? It's... a mosquito. Bei Cow was so terrified that she stuttered. The fog is getting denser, and the mosquitoes have all mutated. I just saw a really big Aedes mosquito fly past. It's fine. If I hear it again, I'll kill it with a smack. When Meng Zhao saw how docile his younger sister had become, he became incredibly satisfied. After taking away the self-made gun so the mysterious monster would not be attracted, the tragedy in the nightmare would not happen. His younger sister would not blame herself, and she would not turn into the Dark Witch anymore, right? As he thought about this, the strange flame shone before his eyes, and a notification popped up. Special Citizen Bei Jia Kao, Dark Witch's possibility of being corrupted has been reduced by 1%. The degree of chaos in Dragon City in the future has been reduced. Congratulations for making an outstanding contribution to civilization. Increased contribution points by 500. I knew it. Meng Zhao was delighted. He had just received a huge amount of contribution points. He remembered vaguely that when his younger sister turned into the Dark Witch, not only had she caused huge trouble in Dragon City, she also went all over the other world and made countless enemies. The trouble she caused even affected Dragon City. If he could prevent his younger sister's corruption, he would definitely be encouraging a healthy atmosphere and promoting harmony so that their future would be brighter. It was a great thing. Wait. Why did the possibility of her corruption only drop by 1%? If he thought about it carefully, 
his younger sister should have been at least 95% corrupted or even 100% corrupted in his previous life. Only 1% had been removed from the 100% corruption rate. Didn't that mean that the stupid girl was still not changing her ways and there was still a high chance that she would get corrupted? Meng Zhao smiled with absolutely no joy as he stared at his sister. Bei Jia Kao sensed danger from the darkness, and like a fox meeting a tiger, she shuddered. Big brother, W what's wrong? She forced out a smile and said obediently, I promise you that I won't toy around with guns anymore. I'll definitely listen to the most handsome and best big brother in the world. Will you? Hey! Meng Zhao exercised his limbs and wondered about how he should teach the future dark witch a lesson. Suddenly, the piercing shriek of a siren came from outside the window. After three urgent buzzes, a long horn followed. It was the signal for grade one war preparations. The fog had descended, and the monsters had appeared. A cow, get ready for battle. Meng Yishan rushed in like a whirlwind. Young cow, get the medical box and food cans ready. Keep an eye on your mom. I'll go and get Granny Wang from next door. When he opened the door, the alarm became even louder. Rapid but orderly footsteps could be heard upstairs and downstairs. Regardless of whether they were men, women, children, or the elderly, all the citizens moved. The young adults and those who were skilled with swords, sabers, and other cold weapons were assigned to the bayonet team. They gathered downstairs and prepared to engage in close quarters combat. The elite sharpshooters of the past were all stationed at their windows or balconies to form crossfire paths through the embrasures. The old, weak, women, and children went to prepare emergency food and medical boxes. They also picked up daggers, steel thorns, and military shovels. If monsters invaded the resident buildings, they would be the final defenders. After decades of being baptized by hardships, dragon citizens had become very strong mentally. Even if monsters appeared in a toilet, they would calmly grab the toilet plunger to fight to the bitter end. Chapter 12, First Battle The sibling duo could not care about fighting against each other anymore. Bei Jia Kao scrambled to her feet quickly and found the medical box. With practiced movements, she prepared forceps, gauze, syringes, and epinephrine. Meng Zhao dragged his semi-automatic rifle out in front of the window in the living room. With skilled movements, he got the couch cushions to form the kneeling position for shooting. He narrowed his eyes and looked outside through the embrasure in the armor. It was dark. The fog which stayed outside the city started heading inside like the feelers of a demon. In the depths of the fog, red and blue lights flashed and intersected with each other. The lights squirmed about. The monsters showed their savage figures bit by bit. The fog was not actually fog, but torrents formed when space and time transmigrated. If Dragon City were a stone, then the other world would be a pond. When a stone fell into the pond, it was only natural that ripples formed from it. When they transmigrated from Earth, they were lucky that Dragon City did not descend on a place where a foreign civilization was flourishing and had plenty of powerful fighters gathered in it. Also, the space and time torrent protected them for 50 years in the form of a fog so they were not discovered by the other world elites. Unfortunately, Dragon City transmigrated to a place that was infamously known in the other world as a cursed place, Monster Playground. The tall mountains formed a natural barrier. They were like fangs that intersected with each other and struck fear in the hearts of all who saw them. Hundreds of crystal veins were buried underground, and they slowly released poison as well as radiation to form a strange spirit geomagnetic storm field, so the plants and animals grew at a crazed speed and mutated. Just how many monster nests were hidden there? How many new monsters were formed from mutation? No one knew the answer. Since their dimensions overlapped, whenever the space-time torrent formed a tide, the fog invaded the city and tore open a dimensional rift, so the monsters were able to appear wherever they wanted in Dragon City. In the beginning, Dragon citizens were incredibly troubled by the monsters who came in endless droves and respawned in random places. They were afraid of the fog and of the night. Fortunately, there were martyrs in the early days who sacrificed themselves one after another, and many people managed to survive through that period. With time, Dragon citizens basically cleared the region of the other world that overlapped with their city, and they gained a firm hold over this living space. It had been a long time since old districts like Blessed Heavenly Garden had a huge wave of monsters invade them. All citizens, please pay attention, the flaming black beetle horde has appeared near the kindergarten, and it is quickly passing through the Jericomium and the recycling center. In five minutes, they will reach the field. When friends arrive, they're served with fine wine. When jackals and wolves arrive, they're served with guns. Everyone, 
work hard. It'll all depend on whether we can be graded as a five-star district tonight. The crystal loudspeaker positioned above the resident committee fort screeched with Madame Tsao's loud voice. The spirit energy oscillator set at the center of the field continuously released infrasounds that could not be heard by human ears to attract the monster's attention. Shack, 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 shack. More than 100 flaming black beetles were attracted. They formed a black wave that headed to the field. Each flaming black beetle was the size of a calf. Their black shells shone with a metallic glow, and marks resembling flames covered them. The beetles had a pair of extra-large arthropod mouth parts, which were like shears. They could bite through an iron rod as thick as a bull. But the fortified citizen district was completely empty of people. The buildings were protected by armor, so the monsters were unable to display their abilities. When the monsters surged into the field. Whoosh! The searchlights positioned above the citizen building were suddenly lit. More than ten thick light pillars tore apart the darkness, causing the monsters to be unable to hide their tracks. Shick, 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 shick. Dozens of high-voltage electricity towers rose from the ground around the field and fired more than 100 blinding electric arcs. The monsters hit were electrocuted to the point that smoke came out of their bodies. They could not move. Shick, 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 shick. Dozens of automatic battle fortresses that resembled turtle shells crushed crystals inside their bodies to release spirit gas of high heat and high pressure to propel bullets forward. They shot through the air and flew toward the monsters like a shower. The principle behind it was almost the same as that of the air guns on Earth. But since they were operated by spirit gas, they were naturally much more destructive than compressed air. The flaming black beetles were electrocuted to the point that they were dizzy, and then, they were shot full of holes. No matter how sturdy their shells were, insect blood gushed out all over the place. Many of the beetles were dead or injured. A cow, how's the situation? Meng Yishan brought Granny Wang from next door. He also got her pet. It was a hunting dog whose genetics had been modified before, and its fangs looked like those of a saber-toothed tiger. Both families were very familiar with each other. Right after the saber-toothed hunting dog entered the apartment, it started running around in circles around Bei Jiakao and wagging its tail vigorously. It's still all right for now. We've stabilized the situation. Meng Zhao turned his head around. Granny Wang, are you all right? Brat, are you looking down on me for my old arms and legs? Granny Wang lifted her shotgun. Her face was flushed red with a healthy color. She looked down on Meng Zhao because of her age. Have you ever seen the chaos when we just transmigrated to this place? During the time the virus broke out, how many zombies did you kill? How many years did you fight in the monster war? In the past, my husband and I? Granny Wang, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I knew that you'd definitely be fine. Please, keep an eye over my mom and my young sister. Thanks. Meng Zhao found a headache coming. Don't worry, I might not be able to chew on rhinoceros meat anymore. But this old fella in my hand isn't some toy. Granny Wang swung her shotgun and shoved Meng Zhao away without any reservation. With a standard kneeling position, she drew close to the embrasure. Phew, so many flaming black beetles? Our district is going to be rich. The old woman grinned. The dragon citizens in the current era were full of confidence. After arriving in the other world for decades, Earth's industries had gradually fused together with spirit energy technology and genetic martial arts. The fighting power of dragon citizens increased by leaps and bounds, and it had been a long time since they had stopped treating monsters as a threat. The fierce creatures were just food and materials to build up the city. Dragon City was surrounded by fog. It had little space and faced a shortage of resources. Every time a wave of monsters attacked, it was a blessing from heaven. The monsters were covered head to toe in treasures. Their flesh was filled with rich nutrients. If dragon citizens ground their shells and bones, they could use them to refine incredibly powerful alloy. The sticky liquid from their bodies was a great additive or fuel. Many of the powerful monsters had all sorts of etherealized organs or crystals. They were the best form of cultivation resources. When other world monsters invaded, they were giving earthlings money, equipment, and experience. But Meng Zhao knew that things would not be so simple that night. And just as he expected, even though the first wave of flaming black beetles was defeated and scattered, the fog was unusually thick. More flaming black beetles surged out of the depths of the fog, and they crowded the streets until there was no space left. They let out piercing sounds, and their shells rubbed against each other. Sparks flew out from them. Hundreds of flaming black beetles rushed to the field like moths to a flame. 
They crashed against the first high-voltage electric tower without regards to the deaths and injuries of their own people. Their carcasses piled up high and blocked off the embrasure with the automatic guns. So many? Granny Wang's expression changed. The old lady had a lot of fighting experience, and she could sense danger. Boozts. When the second wave of monsters attacked, quite a number of flaming black beetles' armor cracked open to reveal a pair of huge transparent wings. The creatures started flying around clumsily. Those are mutated flaming black beetles. They're flying flaming beetles. Meng Yishan frowned and wiped his face. He knelt down on one knee in front of the embrasure next to Granny Wang. Hey cow, we're going to be in slight trouble tonight. Take care to preserve bullets. Only fire when they're close to us. They were hundreds of flaming black beetles, and around 30 of them were mutated and knew how to fly. They flew over the high-voltage electricity towers and battle fortresses to reach the residential buildings. The people there instantly opened fire. The firing lines intersected with each other. Unfortunately, the flying flaming beetles drifted about. They did not have a set trajectory. Their shells were smooth and curved, so it was difficult for the bullets to pierce them. Even if the bullets hit their target, as long as the angle was not perfect, they ricocheted from the shell. Damn it! Meng Yishan missed the target with his entire first cartridge. He only managed to make a few holes on the transparent wings of a flying flaming beetle, and the monster was still flying around. He cursed with slight irritation. Then, he immediately became remorseful. He should not have lost his composure in front of his son, or else, the youngster would become nervous. But Meng Zhao did not have time to be nervous. He stared at the notification that floated in front of his eyes. The fires of civilization must be protected with steel and blood. Will you activate your first fighting quest, Hunter of Foreign Insects? Kill Flaming Black Beetles X-10 and Flying Flaming Beetles X-3 in tonight's battle so that you can contribute to protecting your home. Reward for your first battle, 1,500 contribution points, and you can also increase the level of any of your basic skills. I'll activate it. Meng Zhao adjusted his breathing and heartbeat while ignoring all the gunshots and shrieks from the monsters before him. Everything became silent. All the details from basic gun technique turned into electric signals for his nerves, and like electric shocks, they surged into the tips of his fingers, making his fingers stick firmly to the gun. His gaze seemed to be unfocused. He was not looking at any monster. However, he was scanning through the entire battlefield, turning the monster's moving trajectory, the vibrations of their wings, wind speed, and wind direction into dazzling data. K.R., are you scared? Want me to have a go? Men Zhao had been kneeling and aiming for a long time, and Granny Wang misunderstood him. The old lady was equipped with her extra-large shotgun, but since the shooting range was too short, it was not suited to fight against flying targets in the distance. When she saw Meng Zhao holding the semi-automatic rifle for a long time but not firing a single shot and looking like he was terrified by the monsters, she became anxious, but a slight desire to fight also started burning in her. But before her voice could even fade away. Bang! 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 Meng Zhao attacked. Chapter 13, Light from Earth A flying flaming beetle's left wing was torn from its root, and fluorescent green liquid gushed out. The beast fell down while swaying in the air. Not bad, K.R. Granny Wang did not see the situation outside, but based on the energetic way Meng Zhao fired the three shots, she could sense that they were good shots. You weren't much worse than my husband when he was still alive. Meng Zhao's lips twitched. He had been aiming at the center of the arthropod mouth part, which was the greatest weakness of the black beetles. He had fired three consecutive shots, which should have made the creature explode. But he was distracted by Granny Wang's chatter. Are you on my side or? Meng Zhao found himself not knowing whether he should cry or laugh. A notification jumped in his field of vision. Severely injured a flying flaming beetle. Increased contribution points by 1.1. Skillfulness of normal level basic gun technique increased by 0.8%. It is now at 25%. How stingy, it just gave him one contribution point. But the feeling was still pretty great. His familiarity with guns grew a little, and his ability to handle them the way he did in his previous life gradually returned to him. Meng Zhao composed himself and fought at full strength. The more he attacked, the smoother his movements became. The strange flame shone, and notifications started jumping about. Killed one flaming black beetle. Congratulations on your first kill. You have contributed to defending civilization. Increased contribution points by 10. 
Increase skillfulness by 8%. Current skillfulness is at 53%. Killed one flaming black beetle. Increased contribution points by 1.9. Increased skillfulness by 0.9%. Current skillfulness is at 55%. Killed one flaming black beetle. Increased contribution points by 3. Increased skillfulness by 2.5%. Current skillfulness is at 58%. Menjiao whistled. He was completely in the zone now. The rising and falling of gunfire caused Meng Yishan's heart to crawl. He was busy with work and seldom paid attention to his son's education. He did not know that the high school student's gun techniques had become so good. I was injured last year, so it was really hard for me to continue practicing martial arts and I decided to practice shooting more, Meng Zhao explained. Okay. Meng Yishan nodded with his heart aching a little for his son. As the father Sun Duo and the other sharpshooters in the district worked together, the offense of the monsters came to a temporary halt. Only one flying flaming beetle landed on a residential building. It brandished its sharp arthropod mouthpart, stabbed into the armor of the outer walls like a can opener, and started tearing at it madly. It only managed to tear open half of the armor when the crossfire shot it full of holes. The dense bullets ignited the flammable sticky liquid in its body, and the creature turned into a ball of flames that fell from the building. Cheers came from quite a number of embrasures. Meng Yishan sighed in relief as well, and a smile appeared on his face. But Meng Zhao narrowed his eyes. He continued to search through the area for the mysterious monster that appeared in the fragments of the nightmare he recalled just now. Suddenly, he saw a large black beetle with bright spots levitating quietly in the dark sky shrouded by blood-red fog. Whoosh! It opened its wings, but they were not transparent. Instead, they were golden. There were two profound spots resembling ghost eyes on them. The ghost eye golden wings were more than 10 meters long. Every time they vibrated, golden powder spread out like golden flames. That's it. The evolved form of flying flaming beetles. It's the ghost eyed golden winged flame beetle. Men Zhao's pupils shrank as a terrifying name resurfaced from the depths of his memories. What's that? The expressions of the citizens in the embrasures, the fortresses behind the field, and the trenches changed drastically. They had never seen such a strange flying flame beetle before. Their skins crawled at the sight of the terrifying ghost eyes. Super Beast, Captain Lee Daeyong of Blessed Heavenly Gardens Joint War Defense Tactics Team said through gritted teeth. His face was already pale white. Humans were categorized into normal humans and superhumans. Monsters were also categorized into normal monsters and super beasts. Normal monsters were just strength and monsters. They were slightly larger, faster had sharper teeth or claws, tougher skin, and were cunning as well as brutal. Normal humans could win against them as long as they used firearms, worked with military organizations, and were not afraid of sacrificing their lives. But super beasts were something completely different. No one had expected that Blessed Heavenly Garden would have such horrible luck. They did not run into monsters for half a year, and when they did run into monsters, a super beast decided to drop by. And it had just evolved. So it was a mysterious, inscrutable, unidentified superbeast. They had no idea of its weaknesses, its fighting style, or its attacking style. Gather all your firepower together and kill that superbeast. Lee Daeyong gave an order and grabbed the communicator to start shouting into it. We discovered an unidentified superbeast at Blessed Heavenly Garden. I repeat. We discovered an unidentified shell-type flying superbeast at Blessed Heavenly Garden. Please send superhumans for support. Unfortunately, the fog had descended, and spirit gas surged about. They created interference for radio waves and only static could be heard in the communication channel. There were monsters invading the entire city, so no one knew whether any superhumans who were all already in fights had heard Blessed Heavenly Gardens cry for help. Bang 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 bang. Bang 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 bang. Bang 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 bang. The citizens were no longer stingy with their bullets when a super beast appeared. More than 100 lines of fire instantly filled the sky. The ghost hide golden winged flame beetle beat its wings and stirred up a golden whirlwind to avoid the first wave of concentrated firepower. Then, it opened its four sectioned arthropod mouth part and revealed a gaping mouth. It spat out balls of red fire at the ground. The fireballs were like napalms. Flames quickly spread over the buildings. Even though they could not burn through the armor, the crackling fire and thick smoke interfered with the sharpshooters behind the embrasures. The other flying flaming beetles took the chance to break out and land on the surface of the building. 
They brandished their mouthparts to damage the external walls. But that was not all. The powder that fell from the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle's wings stimulated the normal black beetles who still did not know how to fly. Smoke was coming out of many of the flaming black beetles because of the electricity, but once the golden powder fell on them, it looked as if they had stimulants injected into them. It returned them some of their fierce nature. The black wave charged over again. A few of the high-voltage electricity towers and automatic battle fortresses were pushed down. The defense line was in danger of collapsing. Bayonet team, get ready. When faced with the aggressive insect horde, Joint Defense Captain Lee Dae-yong tore apart his camouflage uniform to reveal his scar-ridden and built physique, his scars were left behind by knives and intersected with each other. He jumped on the infantry fighting vehicle and shouted loudly, Citizens of Blessed Heavenly Garden, I've already called for reinforcements. The army and superhumans will arrive soon, but before they come here, we must make these bastards know just how powerful we are. Attack. Kill those bastards. Let them see how strong earthlings are. The bayonet team shouted at the top of their lungs. Most of the citizens were normal workers, white-collared workers, chefs, teachers, couriers, and food delivery workers. They did normal, boring, and dull jobs. But when fog descended and monsters appeared, since Dragon City did not have any walls, they became its walls, its warriors, weapons, and shields. They were also the last line of defense between their families and monsters. The Black Beetle Swarm was only 100 meters away from the citizens. Dragon City will definitely win. Lee Dae-yong drew his saber. Dragon City will definitely win. The shadows of weapons flashed. The Black Beetle Swarm was only 80 meters away from the citizens. Humanity will definitely win. Lee Dae-yong brought out a pen-shaped syringe and stabbed it into his chest. Humanity will definitely win. The citizens in the bayonet team also brought out burning medicine which was extracted from epinephrine. They injected it into their hearts. As they sucked in sharp breaths, their muscles started swelling at a visible rate. Thick veins popped up on their skin, and they looked like dragons flashing their teeth and claws. The veins circled around their extremely sturdy bodies. The black beetle swarm was only 60 meters away from them. Earth will definitely win. Lee Dae-yong looked at the horizon briefly. The night sky was shrouded in thick fog. He could not see a single star but he could clearly see their blue home planet in the distant shore of the ocean of stars. It sparkled brilliantly like a blue crystal and was staring at them from far away. Earth will definitely win. The warriors raised their sabers, allowing the fearsome monsters from the other world to see the light of Earth's civilization. The black beetle swarm was only 30 meters away from the humans. The defenders could already see the monster's sharp mouthparts and savage looks. At that moment, a series of incredibly unique gunshots rose from the residential building behind them. The ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle swayed. A large ball of golden powder gushed out from it. It was shot. What? Regardless of whether it was Lee Dae-yong or the residents, all of them were incredibly shocked. The fireballs the super beast spat out lit up the external wall of the building. Even though the armor was resistant to fire, there was still thick smoke and fire all around the place. Visibility was practically zero. So who could make such an accurate shot? In number 704, Meng Yishan shouted, Someone managed to hit the super beast, and the bullet seems to have come from our direction. I didn't expect that there would be someone so powerful in our unit. A cow, hurry up and bring your mom, sister, and Granny Wang outside. I can hold this bastard back. Dad, you won't be able to do it alone. Mom and the others should run away first. We'll defend this place. Meng Zhao gritted his teeth. Enough with the nonsense and stop being a nuisance here. This is a super beast. It's not something you can handle. Meng Yishan said anxiously. I know. What this bastard is. Meng Zhao said softly. His gaze was cold and filled with killing intent. Through the optical sight, smoke, and fire, he kept his eyes fixed on the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle. It was this bastard. In his memories of the previous life, it was this bastard who had killed many of the residents in Blessed Heavenly Garden. It even injured his mother severely, which resulted in his sister walking down the path of darkness. I won't let you get your way this time. Meng Zhao pulled the trigger again. At the moment the armor-piercing shell shot out, the muscles on his arms and shoulders twitched by reflex to negate the recoil so that the bullet trajectory would be more accurate and stable. The armor-piercing shell had runes carved into it, which gave it the effect of armor break. With spirit energy surrounding and pushing it, it could travel at a much faster speed than normal bullets. 
It tore through the smoke and flames with the intention of piercing into the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle's right wing. The ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle flapped its wings fiercely and dodged it by a hair's breadth. But the bullet tore through a part of its wings, and the mark of the ghost eye on its right wing was no longer in a complete shape. It seemed to have been destroyed. The ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle flew into a rage. It let out buzzing screeches as it searched for the source of the attack. Men Zhao cursed under his breath. This bugger is flying too fast. I can't kill it with just normal level basic gun technique. The super beast is enraged. Let's go. Meng Yixiao shouted. Leave? Meng Zhao had a savage look on his face. Flee, and let the nightmare come true? Never. Chapter 14, Crush the Nightmare Meng Zhao investigated the notifications carefully and found that he had already killed nine flaming black beetles and four flying flaming beetles. At that moment, his skillfulness with basic gun technique was at 87%. Meng Zhao sucked in a deep breath of hot air and decided to stake everything on one last chance. Bang 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 bang. He adjusted the muzzle and fired at the flaming black beetles on the ground. The low-grade creatures formed black insect hordes on the field. Meng Zhao did not even need to aim. The bullets immediately blew open a few of the flaming black beetles' shell. Some of the unfortunate souls had their flammable liquid sacks shot, and they were reduced to fireballs. A sea of fire raged in front of Block 19. Flames rose into the air, and the strange flame before Meng Zhao's eyes burned even more magnificently. Killed a flaming black beetle. Increased contribution point by 1. Skillfulness of normal level basic gun technique increased by 1%. It is now at 88%. Congratulations to the fire relayer. You have completed your first battle quest, Hunter of Foreign Insects. You used great strength to protect your civilization, and you obtained 1,500 contribution points. You are also allowed to increase the level of any of your current basic skills. Would you like to immediately level up one of your basic skills? Wait. Meng Zhao held his breath and continued to fire at the insects madly. As the bullets whistled, the flaming black beetles were shot through and burst apart. The strange flame in front of his eyes burned fiercely. Skillfulness increased by 1%. Skillfulness increased by 2%. Skillfulness increased by 3%. Congratulations. Your skillfulness with normal level basic gun technique has reached 100%. It will now be upgraded to specialist level. All sorts of information regarding guns instantly appeared in his head. His bioelectricity went from his central nervous system to the ends of his nerves, allowing every muscle fiber to be in control of even better gun techniques. At that moment, the numerous gunshots attracted the attention of the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle. The super beast did a 180-degree turn. The golden powder on its wings sparkled, and the ghost eyes widened. The terrifying presence it gave off seemed to have gained substantial form, and it stared at Meng Zhao's window. Crack! The strength and glass could not withstand the charge of the super beast's breath. Intersecting cracks that resembled a spider's web appeared on it. Whose house is that? Do they want to die? The bayonet team on the ground had also noticed the super beast's rage. Li Daeyong and the neighbors could not help but break into sweat for the crazy sharpshooter. Now, pour all my contribution points into basic gun technique. Increase its skillfulness to the max. Meng Zhao shouted in his heart. He had obtained more than 30 contribution points for teaching reckless bolt technique, 500 contribution points for reducing the possibility of his younger sister being corrupted, and 1,500 contribution points for completing the Hunter of Foreign Insects quest. When they were added up together, he had more than 2,000 contribution points, and he poured all of that into basic gun technique. His skillfulness instantly started flying up at a crazed speed. 15%, 26%, 48%, 55%, 78%, 99%. His brain and hands began burning. Countless memories of shooting in his previous life sparkled brilliantly like burning meteors exploding madly. They were all burned into the surface of his mind in this world. Congratulations! Your skillfulness with specialist level basic gun technique has reached 100%. It will now be upgraded to master level. A clear and pleasant gunshot rose in his mind. It was accompanied by a pain of his mind tearing apart, and it was a pain worse than death. Details that were ten times greater in number given to him for specialist level basic gun technique poured into his mind. No. This isn't enough. Meng Zhao held his burning mind and felt as if his brain was about to gush out of his mouth, eyes, nose, and ears, but he still gritted his teeth and shouted in his mind, Now, 
I'll redeem the reward for the Hunter of Foreign Insects quest. Increase the level of Master Level Basic Gun Technique. Reward for the first battle quest confirmed. Congratulations for increasing Basic Gun Technique from Master Level to Perfect Level. Basic Gun Technique, Perfect Level. Ah! Meng Zhao felt as if his mind was about to explode. An incredibly violent stream of information surged into his mind. Not only did it give him the shooting experience he obtained in his previous life, it also gave him all the experience of the hundreds of veterans who had died with him when Dragon City was destroyed. All of it was stuffed into his brain in this life, and he felt as if it was about to turn into magma that would surge out of the seven orifices of his body. Aside from the knowledge of how to micro-regulate every bunch of muscle fiber and even every cell and the perfect knowledge of controlling most normal guns, the body structure charts of hundreds of monsters also appeared in his mind, including their weaknesses and the best way to shoot them. Aside from the ghost-eyed golden-winged flaming monster, he also received information about many other monsters. They were all creatures that the current dragon citizens had not seen before, but he knew very well. It was as if he had stood in front of an operating table in his previous life and personally dissected countless monsters. Yes, it's this feeling. He endured the pain of his brain wanting to spill out of his body and used his hands, which were about to combust, to put in his last armor-piercing cartridge. He did not even look and fired three consecutive shots. The armor-piercing bullet flew off and hit the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle's curved shell. It did not pierce the shell, but it did manage to completely enrage the superbeast. The ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle reached the area above Meng Zhao's unit. Screech! The piercing screech tore at all the resident's eardrums. It opened its mouth part, and a red fireball so dark in color that it was almost purple quickly formed. The super beast in front of Meng Zhao overlapped with the creature he had seen in his nightmare. He saw how this bastard went on a rampage, how it tore humans apart, and how it burned his home of 17 years to a crisp, how it hurt his mother, father, younger sister, himself, his neighbors, and all the people in blessed heavenly garden. His eyes burned with pain and a spark that was similar to that of a bullet gushed out from the depths of his pupils. This time, die. Bang. Just as the super beast spat out destructive flames, the final armor-piercing shell exited the rifle. Basic gun technique, perfect level, activate. Meng Zhao was now one with his gun. The light in his eyes and his intent to murder the creature were bound to the bullet. It sliced through the air in an instant. It accurately pierced the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle's mouth part igniting the fireball that it was about to spat out. Boom! The ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle's mouth part instantly burst apart. The organs next to it were also blown to smithereens, and a large amount of sticky, faint golden liquid gushed out. Then, like a kite with its string snapped, the monster fell to the ground. Someone blew that super beast apart. Countless residents in the buildings and the ground let out ecstatic cheers. The ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle was the monster's commander. Once it fell, the insect swarm was immediately left without a leader. Not only did the flying flaming beetles fly around and crash into random places like headless flies, the surging insect swarm split up into multiple groups. The flaming black beetles ran around in circles like ants in a hot pot while humans roared. I think it's from Block 19. It's Unit 3, Number 704's Old Meng. He was once an ace sharpshooter in the army. I didn't expect that he would still be as fit as a fiddle despite his age. Joint Defense Captain Li Daong was surprised and delighted. He swung his saber and shouted at the top of his lungs. The monsters have fallen apart. Residents, for Blessed Heavenly Garden, for Dragon City, for Earth, charge. The bayonet team roared and charged into the insect swarm like a hungry tiger pouncing on sheep. The flaming black beetles were hesitant to advance, and after seeing the humans, they fled in a panic. Their army collapsed, and they tried to run back to the depths of the fog. But the dimensional rift had already been sealed. They were creatures bound to be destroyed. They had nowhere to run. I. At number 704, Meng Yishan could not believe his eyes. The super beast had clearly been shot by a bullet from Block 19, but there was no other sharpshooter greater than him over here. Could it be that when in a panic he had sprayed bullets all over the place with his submachine gun, he was able to perform even better than he usually did, and it was out of sheer luck that he shot it? He had a vague feeling that something was off, but he could not tell what about it was strange. Thud. The sound had come from next to him. His son had fallen limp on the floor. A cow. Meng Yishan was shocked. He quickly went up to hold his son, only to notice that his skin was burning. 
He was around 40 degrees Celsius, and all his muscles were twitching madly. Men Zhao could not say anything. His nose bled as if a tap was open to the max. His mind felt as if a tank had run over it, and it hurt so much that he wanted to cry. Instantly awakening so many of his past life's memories meant that his brain cells were stuffed full of information, and with his weak 17-year-old body, that was practically suicide. Fortunately, he succeeded in his gamble with the last bullet. The three consecutive shots earlier were all to lure the enemy. It was all to make the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle face him and reveal the depth of its mouth part, which was its only fatal weakness. Then, he used the final armor-piercing shell to interfere with the formation of the Super Beast's killing move. It created a chain reaction, causing the spirit energy in the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle's body to run out of control. His bullet was not the one that killed the Super Beast, but the Super Beast's rampaging energy was the one who did it. This was what was meant by perfect. Men Zhao shut his eyes. The scenes of the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle running rampant in blessed heavenly garden in his nightmare had shattered. They swiftly turned dark and scattered away. Very soon, they disappeared with the wind. I knew it. The nightmares can be shattered. The future can be changed. In the end, fate still lies in my hands. He smiled in his heart. Suddenly, he felt a sweet taste on his tongue. Bei Jiakao had pried his mouth open and stuffed a medicine inside it. Big brother, don't you dare die. I haven't taken my revenge, I mean, I haven't repaid you. How could you just die like this? Boohoo. The girl cried so much that she looked like she was about to cry her lungs out. Who's talking about me? Meng Zhao opened his eyes weakly. Big brother, you're okay? Bei Jiakao broke into a smile and seized the chance to pull Meng Zhao's face violently. So? Can you feel anything? Is your mind clear? Ow! Let go! As expected of the Dark Witch, what an evil girl! Kaer, are you okay? His father, mother, and Granny Wang looked at him worriedly. Meng Zhao did now know how he should explain things to them. He was also too tired to speak. He forced himself to give them a thumbs up. I'm fine, just a little out of strength. Dad, you killed the super beast, you're so awesome! Meng Yishan blushed. As he looked at his son, who was trembling head to toe and was completely drained of strength, he thought about things for a moment before he gave Meng Zhao a thumbs up as well. Son, you are awesome too. Rest well. We're all here. You don't have to be afraid, he said in all seriousness. That's right, with me around, no monster can dream about bullying you. Bei Jiakao said as well. Men Zhao giggled and closed his eyes. A moment later, his eyes flew open. That's not right. If he killed the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle, why did the notification not pop up and tell him how many contribution points he obtained? Chapter 15, Harvesting Season Could it be? Meng Zhao felt his skin crawl. He did not care about the world spinning when he got up. While his family cried out in surprise, he pounced on the embrasure and looked outward. Just as he expected, the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle had crashed into the ground, but even though golden liquid flowed all over, it was not completely dead. It had faked its death for a moment. As the golden liquid gradually coagulated, its wound squirmed and started healing. Its wings also started trembling a little. No. In the end, my body is still too weak. My internal injuries aren't completely healed yet, and I don't have powerful spirit energy. Even though I have the mindset of perfect level basic gun technique with me and my previous life's memories of the monster's weaknesses, my body is not cooperating with my mind. I will need a long time for my body to get used to this. There were slight problems with the accuracy and timing of the shot just now, and I didn't manage to blow its head off. Despair rose in Meng Zhao's heart. It's just like how my younger sister still has a high chance of being corrupted. Could it be that fate is like a running river and we can't change it with human power? But I must change it. He gritted his teeth, and his eyes turned bloodshot. Just as he wanted to climb downstairs and use reckless bull technique to fight against the super beast, a ray of lightning tore through the fog and pierced right through the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle. Shick. The ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle had just risen half a meter when it was pinned to the ground once again. Lightning crackled, and like hundreds of bright sabers, it stabbed into the super beast's body. Each of its organs were struck so many times that they were reduced to mush. The super beast let out a miserable cry. The scales which were its armor, were electrocuted to the point that they curled up. The flesh inside burst apart, and the creature died. Then, the lightning faded away, 
and Meng Zhao saw that the thing that had pinned the beetle down was a 12 feet long silver spear. It was curled up like a coiled dragon, and the end of the spear trembled non-stop with a prideful whine. A person in white landed lightly on the end of the spear like an immortal who had descended to the mortal world. His powerful aura instantly enveloped all of blessed heavenly garden. Many of the low-grade monsters were intimidated so badly that they did not dare to move. A superhuman. All the residents were delighted. Things had become better than they expected, and they cheered loudly. They were people who had just survived a disaster. In the end, Meng Zhao had still crushed the nightmare of blessed heavenly garden. He delayed the fight by five minutes, which were necessary for a superhuman to arrive before the super beast could devastate the area. A notification finally arrived. You assisted a superhuman in killing the ghost eyed golden winged flame beetle and were crucial in the fight. Increased contribution points by 758. Your performance in the defense of Blessed Heavenly Garden was outstanding. You made the greatest contribution in the district and saved a large number of normal citizens. Dragon City has become stronger because of you. Increased contribution points by 436. The ghost eyed golden winged flame beetle is a creature that surpasses the level of what you can kill. Congratulations for being brave and risking your life, Fire Relayer. You won against something stronger than you. If your achievement becomes known to the public, normal citizens will regard you as their role model and fight for civilization until their bitter end. Increased contribution points by a further 899. Special Citizen Bei Jia Kao, Dark Witch's possibility of being corrupted has been reduced by 1%. The degree of chaos in Dragon City in the future has been reduced. Increased contribution points by 500. You now have 2,478 contribution points. You can awaken a new basic skill, Dragon Snake Force, or a support skill, Basic Harvesting Skill. Nearly 2,500 contribution points flashed non-stop in front of Meng Zhao. A few gray skills also popped up. They were waiting to be activated. If he added in his basic gun skill, which had been pushed to perfect level in one go, his rewards could be said to be incredibly great. But Meng Zhao found himself a little dazed. He leaned against the corner of the wall and sat there for a long time while grumbling to himself. He was unable to accept the results. Superhumans, huh? When a superhuman appeared, there was no longer any need to wonder about who would win the fight. The battle ended within half an hour. Aside from two residents who accidentally broke their arms, Blessed Heavenly Garden did not suffer any casualties. In the eyes of those from Dragon City, a broken bone could be healed with just a few band-aids. We won. We finally killed those bastards. Superhumans are so awesome. Block 19's old man is awesome as well. He was the one who dealt a heavy blow on that super beast. As expected of the ace sharpshooter from the military. Stop arguing. In the end, Blessed Heavenly Garden is awesome, Dragon City is awesome, and Earthlings are the most awesome things in existence. The shooting squad and Bayonet team praised each other. The residents smiled, and the district was full of joy. What was up next was the rewards segment, which was what the residents loved the most. It was not that much different compared to when in the villages on Earth they killed pigs for Chinese New Year. The Crystal Horns broadcasted a happy song called Today is a Good Day. The old and young men went up the fray, polishing their sabers while they were at it, and started harvesting the monsters. All the normal monsters belonged to Blessed Heavenly Garden. The flaming black beetles might look ugly, but the flesh under their shells tasted very fresh and good. After boiling it for a while, they could dip it in ginger vinegar and eat it, and it would taste the same as the Chinese mitten crabs from Earth. Just thinking about the imitation crabs which were the size of drumsticks made many of the residents drool. Besides, the abundant sticky liquid was an excellent fuel additive. It could be sold for a lot of money. The newly evolved ghost eyed golden winged flame beetle had high research value, since it was the first time it had appeared in Dragon City. The superhuman would send it to the Monster Research Center, and a large amount of cash, ammunition, and cultivation resources would be sent over to Blessed Heavenly Garden. Meng Yishan wore chemical protected clothing, anti corrosion gloves and boots, and swung his butcher knife and scalpel. He looked like a savage butcher or a crazed witch doctor. Not only was he one of the best sharpshooters in Blessed Heavenly Garden, he was also the best harvester. No one could compare to him. In truth, he was a professional harvester. Whenever the fog descended and monsters surged forward en masse, he and some of his friends were hired by a resource recovery company to clean up battlefields. Meng Zhao was tired. He leaned against the balcony and watched the residents work with great excitement. 
After injecting a few high-density nutritional fluids and eating up all the emergency compressed food in the house, he finally recovered a little. But he was still hungry. In fact, he was as hungry as someone who had just been fired in the stomach by a main battle tank. The pain in his head did not go down either. He pressed ice against it until his teeth went numb, but he still felt dizzy, and his head was still throbbing. He held his head and rubbed his tummy while he recalled the battle just now and thought about his next step in development. Since the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle appeared, it means that the monsters are getting stronger, and the war is about to go out of control. I have to use every second I have to get stronger as fast as possible. He thought about things for a long time and came to be certain of one thing first, his memories of the previous life were blurry, but it was to protect his brain. Matter determined consciousness. A human only had a limited number of brain cells, and the capacity of memory cells was limited. No one could remember every detail and every skill that they had learned in a couple decades. If all the information from the decades of memories had gushed into his young, 17-year-old brain at the moment he was reborn, his brain would have been damaged, and he would have ended up mentally disabled. By the looks of it, only if I continue cultivating and get stronger will I be able to get stronger brain cells and a stronger central nervous system. It's only then that my memories will be able to return to me in a steady stream. That makes sense. Every time I awaken to a new, short memory and a new skill, I feel like my head is about to explode, and I get really hungry too. If I instantly awaken to dozens of years of memories and activated hundreds of skills, either my brain would explode, or my life would be instantly drained. It's like my memories from the previous life are sealed in a sustained release capsule. They'll be released to me bit by bit so that my brain and body can absorb them safely. I wonder if this is a principle of rebirth, or whether it's something kindling does to protect me. Aside from that, Meng Zhao also noticed that even if he had a perfect level skill, it did not mean that it was necessarily perfect. Awakening to the memories of his previous life only helped him possess perfect consciousness. His mind said, I have perfect level gun techniques. I'm super strong. But his body said, no, you aren't. That seemed to be the logic behind it. Even if I manage to increase my skillfulness with contribution points and get perfect level whose effects can reach straight up to the ends of my nerves, there are still a lot of flaws. I have to keep using the skills in real battle so that my consciousness and my body can reach uniformity. But without cultivation resources, I'll be so hungry that I'll turn into a shrimp. I was gasping for breath after killing a flaming black beetle, so how am I supposed to fight like this? After going round in circles, he returned to the age-old problem. My family's poor. I have kindling in my memories from my previous life. My learning efficiency is much higher than that of others. But in comparison, the amount of cultivation resources I need to use is also five times higher, perhaps ever more. Where am I supposed to get those resources though? Relying on the study group to get my classmates resources isn't a long-term plan. I mean, how rich could a student be? If I go too overboard, the school will not allow it either. Should I open a training group and focus on teaching super reckless bull force? Impossible. I need qualifications and fame for it. I also need to register a company and put out ads for it, then hire powerful people to be the spokesperson for my brand. Without at least a year to develop my market value and promotion, when I'm just a student in his third year of high school, no one will come. It'll also waste too much time, and how am I supposed to take my national college examination if that happens? Meng Zhao scratched his head. The problem troubled him. The flaming black beetles were cut into pieces below him. The pungent smell of the sticky, flammable liquid rose into the air, and suddenly, he found it rather familiar. The sight of his father swinging his butcher knife and cutting up the monsters stimulated the fragments of memories from his previous life. They were shining. Huh? Meng Zhao noticed something. Among the two new skills that appeared, the exchange rate for dragon snake force was rather normal but basic harvesting skill was very cheap. Regardless of whether it was reckless bull force, dragon snake force, or basic gun technique, he could obtain all of them with just 2,000 to 3,000 contribution points, which was about the price for guiding 100 normal citizens or killing more than 100 monsters. This price was still rather reasonable. As for basic harvesting skill, he did not need to pay 3,000 for it since not even 2,000 were needed for it. In fact, he did not even need to pay 1,000. Instead, it only costs 998. Is it especially cheap because it's a support skill? Wait, I just remembered. I became a harvester for 10 years with my dad in my previous life. Meng Zhao shut his eyes, and a few scenes flashed in his mind. 
In his previous life, when his mother was severely injured by the super beast, he failed his national college exam. To be able to survive and get money for his mother's medical bills as well as earn tuition fees for his younger sister, his father brought him to the job. They harvested a lot of monsters during the monster war, and his skills became pretty decent after all the practice he had. Being a harvester. Is pretty good money, isn't it? Chapter 16, Harvester. The other world was filled with spirit energy and all sorts of radioactive sources, which increased a living being's metabolism. The cells became more active and the genes more unstable, which is why it was very common for new organ shapes and supernatural abilities to evolve. After a creature died, they quickly started rotting and their meat became spoilt. Various types of ancient and mysterious bacteria could also reproduce in the corpse and take control of the nerve cords and muscle bundles which had yet to rot, which turned the corpses into undead beings similar to zombies or even incredibly dangerous biochemical bombs. Monster carcasses were valuable resources for the development of Dragon City. In fact, with the fog shrouding the entire area, the monster carcasses became their only strategic resource, and they had to race against the clock to harvest it. If the organs mutated and the materials rotted away, the harvested resources would not be able to compensate for the resources they used to kill the monsters. Even if they managed to kill all the monsters, they would still lose out. There were plenty of times when the powerful people would throw themselves completely into the fight. Once the intense fighting was over, the monsters' carcasses would either turn into the undead and have to be killed again or rot to the point that they lost their original form. All the resources would then be ruined. The worst possible situation was when a carcass swelled up to ten times its size and exploded with a bang. It flung sticky liquid containing fatal diseases more than 1,000 meters away, polluted the air and water, which sometimes resulted in a plague. As time passed, a support-type occupation known as harvesters was born. Their task was to follow behind the powerful people and clear the battlefields as fast as they could. They did not leave behind even a single drop of monster blood or a piece of monster poop. To me. Being a harvester is the best support type occupation right now. I can gather valuable materials and expand my social circle by getting to know all sorts of strong fighters. Besides, since I'll be close to the battlefield, it'll be easier for me to get benefits from it. I'll be able to get cultivation resources much easier than others. Since I've done it for 10 years and it's not very expensive activating it and leveling it, I might as well do something I'm familiar with. Menjiao threw in contribution points without hesitation and activated basic harvesting skill. As a sharp pain pierced his temple and all his facial muscles spasmed, a large amount of details rose from the depths of his mind. The harvesting method for shell type monsters. The harvesting method for mammal type monsters. The harvesting method for reptilian type monsters. The harvesting method for flying type monsters. There were also a lot of complicated monster structure charts, the ways to remove hearts, livers, spleens, lungs, and kidneys, identification methods, ways to locate sticky liquid, acids, and poisons, the various signs when a monster was about to turn into an undead creature, and the symptoms of when a monster was about to turn into a biochemical bomb. Along with all that came a large amount of memory shards. All of them were of Meng Zhao harvesting together with his father. Countless scenes overlapped with each other, burning the rich experience of a veteran harvester into his mind. Pain and pleasure followed like a shadow. Meng Zhao could not help but reach out with his hands to grab a non-existent butcher knife and scalpel. His fingers danced lightly as if they were harvesting things. Meng Zhao was sure that he had made the right choice. It required 998 contribution points to activate basic harvesting skill. Then, he spent 1,355 contribution points to reach a breakthrough a normal level and upgraded it to specialist level. Then, Specialist level basic harvesting skill and perfect level basic gun technique formed something akin to a link. A large amount of strange monsters weaknesses and structures appeared in his head. All of them were new monsters which had never been heard of or seen in the Sarah. That's right. To harvesters, the most important thing is to understand the organs and structures of monsters, and to a good sharpshooter, the most important thing is also to know a monster's structure and weaknesses. These two skills are highly connected. In my previous life, since I was a harvester with my dad for 10 years, I had dissected more than 10,000 monsters. Later on, I managed to perfect my basic technique with guns, and that's how I was able to barely reach the standards of a third-class fighter. Ha, most of the monsters in my memories haven't yet evolved. Doesn't that mean that when they appear, I'll be the one who understands them the most in Dragon City? Meng Zhao grinned. And his nose started bleeding again. This time, 
It was in streams. Meng Yishan came back and hurriedly packed up before he made to leave again. Suxin, we've wrapped up work downstairs. Later, remember to go out and get our share. They insisted that I was the one who injured the super beast, so they gave us an extra portion of flaming black beetle meat. It cannot be kept for long, so cook some for the kids in the morning and have them bring it to school. A cow, young cow, go to bed earlier. I'm going to the battlefield in the north. They're waiting for harvesters there. Meng Zhao covered his nose and stood up. Dad, I'm coming with you. Huh? Meng Yishan was stunned. With my current state, I might not be able to get the results I want during my national college examination. Instead of getting a job at random, I might as well become a harvester and test my luck. Meng Zhao shrugged. Meng Yishan looked at his son's weak state and knew that his son was most likely not going to get into college. If he could not get into college, then becoming a harvester was indeed the best job that a normal person could find. But of course, the danger coefficient was also very high. The battlefield could change in the twinkling of an eye. No one could guarantee that there wouldn't be any new monsters charging out at them while they reaped the spoils of war. Some of the monsters had great vitality, and even when it seemed like they had died, they could still launch a fatal attack. Undead monsters, poisonous blood, acid, and fatal spores were all things that could be the reason why a harvester kicked the bucket. But on the other side of high risks were high rewards. Even if forgetting about everything else, just the fact that they were exposed to monster carcasses for long periods of time meant that they would be nourished by monster blood and bathed in the radiation from crystals. Their chances of awakening to supernatural powers were much higher than of anyone with a less risky job. Ever since Meng Zhao was injured, he was constantly forcing himself to smile, but there was no way Meng Yishan could not doubt that his son was dejected. As his father, he was constantly wrecking his brains over his son's future, and he had long since spoken to the leader in his company. All right, I'll bring you to experience it. During the day's battle, he had seen his son's growth, and he made his decision. Big brother, are you really going to become a harvester? Bei Jiakao grabbed her big brother's hand at the entrance and refused to let go. When Meng Zhao saw the girl's concern, a wave of warmth filled his heart. In the end, the love between siblings ran deep. Even the dark witch was a little worried when she heard that her big brother wanted to do such a dangerous job, right? If you run into tasty monsters like the flaming black beetles again, remember to bring some home. The girl instructed him seriously. Meng Zhao sucked in a deep breath. It's my fault. I shouldn't have held such high hopes for the Dark Witch. The fog gradually scattered, and the communication channels became clear once more. The results of the battle in the north of the city were already set in stone. Monster carcasses piled up in stacks that were as high as mountains, and harvesters were required to show their skills. Military trucks were already parked at the entrances of the districts, and the words resource recovery were painted on both sides of them. The father and pair used safety belts to tie themselves to the compartment. With the truck bouncing up and down while it drove over the monster carcasses, they traveled to the north of the city. The further north they went, the thicker the fog became, and the corrosion between Dragon City and the dimension of the other world became greater. Everywhere they went, they could see the hideous carcasses of monsters, which were like strange-looking statues that released a pungent smell. There were also trees and vines which had mutated madly and climbed up the buildings. If given a few short hours, they could devour practically an entire building which would turn a city of steel and concrete into a primeval forest filled with lush, green trees. Meng Zhao even saw a huge creature that resembled a T-Rex. It had a hole in its chest left by an anti-tank missile. Blue blood flowed all over the ground. But the creature was not dead just yet. It opened and closed its fang-filled mouth repeatedly. A cow, the more I think about it, the more I find that the situation is off. I don't think that I was the one who shot the super beast just now, Meng Yishan suddenly said. Dad, you have great eyesight. It's true that you're not the one who hit it. I was the one who shot it. Meng Zhao was very honest. You, Meng Yishan could not help but chuckle. You don't believe me? Meng Zhao asked. Haven't you heard before that humans will gain endless potential during dangerous situations? For example, a frail mother will become capable of shifting stones worth hundreds of kilograms barehanded just to save her child buried under debris. I awakened to supernatural abilities to protect my family. What's so strange about it? He wanted to foreshadow his own strength. Makes sense. Meng Yishan slapped his thigh after having come to a realization. You just reminded me of that. Could it be that I subconsciously awakened to supernatural powers to protect you, which is why I suddenly became stronger? 
Dad, I didn't expect that you'd still want to have supernatural powers despite your age. Meng Zhao gasped in astonishment. What are you saying? Everyone wants to have supernatural powers in Dragon City. How can I be too old for that? Meng Yishan was displeased. Are you youngsters the only ones who are allowed to dream? Who's to say that middle-aged people can't become superhumans? Don't get angry, Dad. That's not what I meant. Meng Zhao gave an awkward smile. If you really want to become a superhuman, I can make arrangements. Next time, we can spare some time and make our entire family turn into superhumans. Oh, except for Jia Kao. It'll be too troublesome for her to become a superhuman. We'll have you and mom turn into superhumans, then please make sure that you keep an eye on her. Brat, you're getting more and more out of line. Meng Yishan could not resist reaching out to whack his son's forehead. Let's talk about something serious. It's not easy to be a harvester. You have to be brave, attentive, and fierce. Don't be nervous later and learn what you can. Dad, I'm not nervous. How could you not be nervous? A real battlefield is completely different from the fight we had in the district. There are a thousand to ten thousand monsters there. Corpses pile up like mountains, and there are seas of blood. How could you not be nervous, huh? Dad, I'm really not nervous. If you're nervous, just admit it. You're my son, so you don't have to be shy with me. In the past, when I first became a harvester, I saw a lot of monster carcasses and smelled the pungent scent from them. I was so nervous that I peed my pants. Have you peed your pants? I'm seriously not. Ah, fine. I'm nervous. I peed my pants. That's the way to go. Let me teach you a secret. The first time you become a harvester, you need to put on a diaper. I'm being serious here. Many of the smells from high-grade monsters will stimulate the human central nervous system, and you won't be able to control your bladder no matter what. All newbies put on diapers, and some even use them for years. Dad, it's midnight. How the heck are we supposed to get diapers? My good son, look at what I have. When we get to the place later, just go to a corner and put it on. I'll keep a lookout for you so that you won't embarrass yourself. Dad, I'm suddenly filled with confidence toward my national college exam. I don't want to be a harvester anymore. Please let me go home. As the father son duo spoke, the truck jolted fiercely. The run-flat tires drove over the monster carcasses with crunching sounds. The foul smell was like a tentacled monster that pushed its way into the compartment of the truck. Even if the two men held their breaths, they could not stop the smell from entering their noses. It stung their eyes as well. They reached the north of the city. The tires ran over a huge shell creature, and most of the people in the truck jolted. The smell of gunpowder and blood became stronger with each wave that wafted into their noses, and shock filled the hearts of the passengers. There were a few buildings in the distance with sharp roofs. Half of them had collapsed, while the other half was burning. With the help of the flames, Meng Zhao saw a few broken six-legged crystal war truck crawlers. Their thick armor had been easily ripped apart by the bladed limbs of the monsters. Some of the soldiers were also cut into pieces and lay scattered in the compartment. Some of the other soldiers were missing arms or legs. Their faces were pale, but they received treatment without making a sound. The monsters had suffered a much more miserable end compared to the humans. Regardless of whether they were snakes, insects, rats, ants, jackals, wolves, tigers, or leopards, they were all burnt to a crisp and torn to pieces. The monsters who had been trampled by the steel army did not have any value in harvesting. The soldiers are too crude. The harvesters shook their heads disapprovingly. It was part of the reason why the army was only used as support when fighting against monsters. Humanity relied on superhumans during critical moments. If everyone worked like the army and wantonly bombed the monsters, reducing them to smithereens, they might feel really good about it, but they would waste a lot of ammunition and precious lives while they would not be able to get anything good from it. Within a few short years, Dragon City would be drained of resources, and the citizens would starve to death while trapped inside. Today, our company is going to be in charge of recovering resources from the east side of the steel factory in Five Blessings Street. The superhumans used cold weapons to kill thousands of monsters, and their carcasses are in a good condition. It'll depend on us as to how much resources we can recover, Meng Yishan explained to Meng Zhao. The truck was parked at the entrance of Dragon City Steel Organization. Quite a number of superhumans flew in the dark sky. Like colorful shooting stars, they continued heading north to chase after the scattered monsters. They were harvesters all around the place. They worked under different banners and were distributed to different regions. They were all racing against the clock. Big Brother Meng. 
more than ten honest-looking middle-aged men with dark skin and sturdy muscles came forward. Chapter 17, Meng Zhao's Skill Uncle Zhang, Uncle Luo, Big Brother Luo Meng Zhao recalled all of the familiar faces. In his previous life, together with his father, these honest and kind seniors had taught him a lot. A cow, you're here too? Everyone nodded at him in an unsurprised manner. Learn properly with your father. You'll have a good future as a harvester. Where is big brother Shen? Meng Yishan asked. Then, he turned around and explained to his son, big brother Shen is the leader of the company. He decides whether you can become a harvester. Be smart later. No, I mean, be good later. Big brother Shen is enjoying the air conditioning over there. Mr. Who killed a grade 3 monster today, and big brother Shen is in a good mood. Take a cow to him and say a few good words. He'll definitely be able to get in. The director of Prosperous Resource Recovery Room was Shen Rongfa. He was a man with a small, square face and huge nostrils. He did not need to take action by himself, but he wore a medical mask that provided the greatest filtration, and he even wore three sets of protective clothes. He was short and fat to boot, so it was no wonder why he was drenched in sweat and had to stay in the refrigerated truck that stored the monster materials to enjoy the air conditioning. Old Meng, last time, you mentioned that if your son didn't manage to get into college, he would want to join our company. But why did I hear that he was injured? He asked with ill intent. He was mildly injured last year, but he's fine now. The boy has had a pair of deft hands since he was young. I'll teach him personally, and in less than two years, he'll definitely become a skilled harvester. Meng Yishan bent his back and smiled in a very humble manner. Big brother Meng, please help us. Shen Rongfa did not show his attitude. Well, I'd like to help as much as I can, but I'm not the one who opened the company. I won't be able to explain things to my brother-in-law when it comes to your son's situation. I understand. That's why I can only come to you for help. Meng Yishan's head was almost touching the ground now. He held Shen Rongfa's hand and pushed it back to Shen Rongfa gently. Meng Zhao was very observant, and he saw his father stuffing a store card into Shen Rongfa's hands. Colorful pictures of monsters could be seen on the store card, and he guessed it was the consumer card for Golden Dragon Trade City. It was a very high-class city mall in Dragon City. It sold rare and raw materials from monsters. The minimum top-up rate for member consumer cards was 10,000. In his previous life, Meng Zhao had not known how he got the harvester job. His father was usually reluctant to even smoke half of a good cigarette, and when his underwear or pants were torn, he would just sew it back and make do with it for a few more years, but he had actually stored up money that was worth 10,000. Meng Zhao narrowed his eyes and started thinking carefully. Should I wait until the moon is dim and the wind is strong to put a gunny bag over Shen Rongfa's head and snatch the card back? When the store card appeared in his hand, Shen Rongfa laughed so much that his fat started jiggling. He used his wet and hot hand to smack Meng Yishan's shoulder. All right, since your harvesting team is only attached to the company, you can bring whoever you want as your disciple, and it will have nothing to do with the company. I just have one condition, don't cause trouble. I don't care if you cause me trouble, but it'll be bad if you make my brother-in-law vexed, don't you think? Got it. We won't cause you or Mr. Hu any trouble. Meng Yishan quickly nodded and turned around to tug at his son. A cow, thank Uncle Shen, quick. Meng Zhao sucked in a deep breath. He moved up and said, Thank you, Manager Shen. Whatever. Shen Rongfa waved his hand impatiently. Enough with the chit-chat. Hurry up and get to work. He patted his butt and went back to the refrigerated truck to rest. Off to work. The harvesters checked their masks and protective clothing one last time. They prepared metal pliers, scalpels, washing liquid dispensers, adzes, chisels, axes, saws and all sorts of tools that could help them cut a monster into pieces. A cow, you're not to offend Manager Shen. Meng Yishan noticed how hostile his son had sounded, so when he helped Meng Zhao into his gear, he whispered softly to him. Meng Zhao was quiet. For some reason, when he saw Shen Rongfa, he was filled with anger and even hate. The negative emotions he had toward him were even stronger than for Zuo Haoran. I think. This guy made dad's life really miserable in my previous life. The sudden thought slightly surprised him. He thought about it for a moment before he decided to get straight to the point. Dad, you've been a harvester for more than 10 years. Everyone acknowledges you as their leader, so why do you insist on working for Prosperous? Can't you set up your own company? Regardless of whether Shen Rongfa was a good or a bad man, since Meng Zhao returned from his nightmare, 
there should be no reason for him to depend on someone else for a living. He should build his own faction of power and get stronger step by step. It was only then that he could control his own fate. Seriously, this is what a child would say. It's not that easy to open a company. Meng Yishan sighed. He had been in the business for many years, and he had thought about building his own company before. But opening a company required initial capital. The living costs of the Meng family were very high, and every month, they could not make ends meet. He did not have that much money to spare. Besides, the most important thing to a harvester was not the skills, but connections. Only with connections to the strong could they get sources for carcasses. Meng Yishan did not like Shen Rongfei because he could end up harvesting the most common demonic halberd pig until it was a complete mess. But his brother-in-law Chin who was a superhuman. His team called Frenzied Saber Squad was also rather famous. Every time the fog descended, they could kill a lot of monsters and Shen Rongfei would get to handle them. Many of the harvesting teams could not find carcasses to harvest, so they could only work under Prosperous and bear with Shen Rongfei exploiting them. Meng Yishan's harvesting team did not know any powerful people. If they really chose to work on their own, they could only work for the military. But the military used a lot of firepower to kill monsters, and the monsters were often scorched by flames. Not only would they be dirty and smelly, the harvesters could not get a lot of useful resources from them. If that wasn't enough, the military was giving out less and less jobs. After all, they were running out of monsters to fight. Meng Yishan did not know how he should explain all of that to his son, who was not familiar with the ways of the world. He could only say, just endure it for two years. Once you become familiar with the trade and your sister enters the college, we can talk about it again. I won't make you suffer this all of your life. Dad, have you ever thought about the possibility of the number of monsters increasing again? Meng Zhao asked with an intense look in his eyes. Meng Yishan was stunned. What do you mean? Meng Zhao opened his mouth and started rambling. This is something our biology teacher mentioned. Over the past decade or so, the monsters have been reducing in number, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're really afraid of us. There's a possibility that the monsters might be hibernating or evolving. If that is true, once all the monsters complete their evolution, they will appear in front of us in larger numbers, and they'll be even more violent than the ones now. There's this possibility? Meng Yishan was shocked. He was not very educated and instinctively believed the teachers of a key high school. Which teacher was it? Have I met him or her before during the parent-teacher meeting? He's a famous teacher from another school who came over for short-term training in our school. I went for a special interest class and heard him speak. If monsters do increase in number, we won't need to worry about not having enough carcasses, right? Meng Zhao asked. Um. Meng Yishan was hesitant. Today, didn't our district manage to fight off the monsters? Meng Zhao said anxiously. Dad, this is a threat, but also a fortuitous event. If we want to build up our family fortune and shoot up the social ladder in one go, we must seize this chance. His son was always Meng Yishan's greatest pride and joy. Once Meng Zhao got into a key high school, he always brought back convincing theories and his parents became unable to win an argument against him. Meng Yishan knew Shen Rongfei's character. If it were not because he had no other way, he would not wish for his son to work for the stingy bastard. However, if he wanted to open a company, he needed capital, connections, and skills. The graying middle-aged man was a little troubled by this. Let's work first. We'll talk about it later. Come here, we'll teach you how to harvest monsters. The main attacking force of the monsters before them was made up of armor-type monsters. Aside from the flaming black beetles they saw at Blessed Heavenly Garden, there was also a large number of arachnid monsters but the main monsters were giant yellow patterned tail scorpions. This sort of monster was about 1.2 meters long. Its two front limbs were huge. They were shaped like crab pincers and full of fine meat. The arachnid's hard shell was made of chitin, and it could be used as an armor. It could also be ground into powder and refined into unique alloy. The sticky liquid in its body could be used as fertilizer for farms or to rear gigantified earthworms and provide dragon citizens with a sufficient amount of protein. The large, faint, golden scorpion tail contained precious poisonous liquid. It could be refined into cell activation liquid and gene medicine. A small amount of poison would stimulate a person's immune system to evolve and activate the supernatural abilities lying deep in their genes. The scorpions also possessed an incredibly sturdy poisonous needle. If it was carefully polished and carved with runes, it could be combined with a heavy anti-material sniper rifle as the best sniping bullet. Aside from piercing through armor, 
It also contained the corrosion and poison effects. Young Zhao, you've never seen so many monsters before, right? Isn't it exciting? This is called a giant yellow pattern tail scorpion. It looks rather terrifying, but it's already dead. It's fine, come and touch it. There are plenty of us here, so there's no way we'll let you get hurt. Look, this pincer is still moving. Ha 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 ha. Scared you, didn't it? Actually, it's a response from its nerve cord being stimulated. It's very normal. The harvesters were all not very educated people, and they had no filter when they spoke, but they were good people. They truly cared about Meng Zhao like their own son. Thanks, uncles. Meng Zhao forcefully kept his mouth from twitching. He kept a very low profile. Hundreds of monster structures that were much more complicated than the giant yellow pattern tail scorpion were in his mind. His fingertips trembled from eagerness to dissect the creature before him. A cow, look carefully. Meng Yishan and his harvesters worked well in a group. With just a few movements, they managed to fully dispose of the giant yellow pattern tail scorpion. To take care of Meng Zhao, they slowed down a little. Every time they harvested a part, they would explain what they were doing in detail. All right. It's your turn. When it was time to harvest the next giant yellow pattern tail scorpion, Meng Yishan wanted to see whether Meng Zhao was talented in this. Your school has a special interest class for dissecting monsters, right? You should have used these tools before, yes? Don't be afraid. They're not very valuable items, so just use them. If you damage the creature, we can rectify your mistakes. Okay. Meng Zhao put a heart clearing antidote into a filter of the mask. He lifted a scalpel and shell plier. Then, he went to the operating spot to the right of the giant yellow pattern tail scorpion. Naturally, the countless experiences he had harvesting similar monsters in his previous life appeared in his mind. For his first slice, he cut into the gap of the shell between its head and shoulder at an angle of 25 degrees. The tips of his fingers trembled slightly, and he changed the direction of his scalpel. He separated the central nervous cord perfectly and put it in a nerve cell activation solution with a density of 37% to keep it fresh. For his second cut, he used the best armor breaking saber to cut off its two front limbs before he switched to an 18 cm long hilt which curved downwards. Then, he added a number 34 butterfly knife blade to the hilt. They used the curve of the knife to separate the flesh and the shell in the plier. Next, he used a vacuum suction device to suck it gently and the scorpion meat that shuddered like tofu landed in the vacuum container. For his third cut, he switched to a number 11 blade. He used the reverse picking style, one, and first picked out the thin shell sinew before he had the knife enter deep into the shell. It was as if the sturdy chitin shell was nothing. He separated what was inside its chest before he used the vacuum suction device to suck all the valuable sticky liquid inside until there was nothing left. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. When Meng Zhao used the knife, the sound was like the pitter pattering of rain in spring. It fell quietly on all that was on earth and provided moisture to all that were living. Chapter 18 Golden Spirit Very soon, Meng Zhao sorted out the entire giant yellow pattern tail scorpion, including the rather corrosive acid and the fatal poisonous needle. Everything was put aside in perfect shape or contained in bottles. A notification popped up at the corner of Meng Zhao's eyes. Congratulations for completing your first standard gathering of materials, Fire Relayer. Resources are the most important factor for the survival and development of a civilization. All the wars of civilizations are centered around resources. The ones who gather resources are the most important soldiers of all civilizations. Your civilization will become stronger because of the resources you gathered. Increased contribution points by 3. The skillfulness of your specialist level basic harvesting skill has increased by 1.1%. Meng Zhao whistled. But he then noticed that the area behind him was silent, and the atmosphere was a little strange. When he turned his head around, he found everyone, including his father, looking at him as if they were staring at a ghost. Meng Zhao realized that due to his eagerness to try out his past skills, he had dissected the scorpion a little too quickly and vigorously. Even though he was only at the second level of his basic harvesting skill, what he mastered was the future version of the skill, which had been improved for the sake of achieving perfection. Besides, his muscle fibers and nerve endings had just been polished by perfect level basic gun technique, and his control over his breathing, heartbeat, and other minor actions were much higher than those of normal harvesters. This was not the standard of a high school student. This was the standard of a veteran in the field of harvesters. Dad, uncles. Now that things have progressed to this point, 
I have a secret that I must tell you. After being silent for a while, he forced himself to give an explanation. In truth, since I was young, I've had the dream of becoming an ace harvester. Whenever my dad went to work, I'd practice hard in secret. In this era, it's not hard to find specimens and monster models that are incredibly similar to the real deal. It's also easy to find monster diagrams and lively 3D images online. When I was injured last year, I knew that the chances of me getting into university were slim to none, so I became even more determined to become a harvester. I descended into a frenzy and practiced 10 times harder than before. Ninth high school is a key high school, so my biology teachers are all monster specialists. They gave me private classes, and I learned a lot from them. Besides, I was influenced by my surroundings and learned from my family. And since you know that the heavens will always reward the faithful, I managed to reach my current standard. The harvesters all looked as if they had just woken up from a dream. They were uneducated folk, and they had an instinctive respect toward legendary key high schools, so they subconsciously accepted this explanation and looked at Meng Yishan in envy. Big brother Meng, you're so lucky. With such a great successor, you can enjoy your life in the future. But Meng Yishan was puzzled. A cow, you wanted to be a harvester since you were young? I've never heard you mention this before. Why? Meng Zhao's face turned red. It's because. You're the person I idolize the most. I believed that the job you took was the greatest in the world, and I swore when I was young that I'd turn out to be someone like you. Meng Yishan was stunned. Then, he thought, well, that's true. When I was young, I was rather cool. It's only logical that my son would treat me as his model. Meng Zhao's face turned even redder. As for why I didn't mention it. I just found it embarrassing to admit that I idolized my own father. It's too cheesy. His father laughed. You silly boy. Even if you didn't say it, did you think I wouldn't be able to tell that you idolize me? He completely believed in his words, and he found himself gratified as well as sad. He was gratified because his son was mature and skilled, hence making him a natural-born harvester. But he was sad because he was useless and could not get enough resources for his son to get into a college. It had to be known that the qualifications to become a harvester were very low, even if it could offer a lot of money. Any person could harvest a normal monster. It was no different from killing cattle. But if someone wanted to harvest the kings of monsters, such as the nightmarish beasts, hell beasts, and apocalyptic beasts, they had to possess supernatural abilities. With his son's talents, if he became a superhuman, he might actually have the chance to become an ace harvester. By then, all of the peerless fighters in Dragon City would respectfully ask him to take care of their monsters. But now, his son could only work at the lowest level of the harvester circle, just like them. Dad, should we continue? Meng Zhao interrupted his father's thoughts. After going through the real deal just now, I found that it disconnected to the theories I learned in class. I think I've found the correct feeling for harvesting. The father-son pair worked together and harvested seven more giant yellow patterned tail scorpion. Meng Yishan's group was amazed time and again. Everyone regarded Meng Zhao differently now. He gained a lot from his work. His skillfulness with the basic harvesting skill continued accumulating, and the memories from his previous life became clearer and more solid in his mind. Every time he swung his knife and cut off a monster's limb, separated a bundle of nerves, or sucked out a ball of sticky liquid, the feeling he had at his fingertips was so amazing that he could not put it to words. Suddenly, he froze. Golden Spirit? The Golden Spirit was the mutated form of a giant yellow patterned tail scorpion. It was slightly smaller than a normal giant scorpion, but it was five times more poisonous than the normal giant scorpion. Its poison needle and poison liquid could be fired to a distance of dozens of meters. It also possessed a certain degree of mimicry skills. It often pretended to be a normal giant scorpion to launch a fatal attack on its prey. The battlefield was filled with smoke and fire, so when this golden spirit joined the other giant yellow patterned tail scorpions, no one noticed it. You can even identify golden spirits? The harvesters observed the creature for a moment before they cried out in surprise. My biology teacher taught it just recently. Meng Zhao smiled faintly and exercised his wrist and fingers. Prepare number 9, number 14, and number 20 hilts, along with number 5, number 8, and number 11 knives, as well as armor shattering hammers and bone exploration needles. Also, prepare some cooling and stabilizing liquid with a density of 35%. Please add 1% of mithril into it. We might be able to get high-grade materials from Golden Spirits, so we need to properly preserve it. He did not notice it, 
but he accidentally revealed the domineering air of someone at specialist level. Meng Yishan and the others put on hesitant faces. A cow, we should just leave it. We can use a cooling spray to make sure that the carcass is preserved at perfect condition. Later on, we'll have Superintendent Gu handle it. Superintendent Gu was the best harvester in Prosperous Resource Recovery Company. Meng Yishan and his party were all uneducated people. They were built large and strong. After being in the field for more than 10 years, they did not have a lot of problems with handling normal monsters. But Golden Spirits were ranked near the top of the pyramid of normal monsters. They were just one line away from becoming super beasts. Their internal structures were complicated. They had poison liquid and acid in them, and they sometimes even had etherealized organs and crystals. This sort of high-grade monster was usually handled by Supervisor Gu or the superhumans who killed it. For example, if Mr. Hu killed it, Supervisor Gu would handle the monster's carcass. Men Zhao had forgotten about this rule. But. He drew close to the fatal wound on the golden spirit and sniffed it. Then, he cautiously dipped his finger into the sticky liquid that flowed out of the wound to sense its stickiness. No can do. The part connecting this golden spirit's body and tail has been pierced. Its nerve cord and neurosphere have been exposed to air for too long. If we wait any longer, its flesh will start changing. The spirit energy in it will run rampant, and it might turn into an untimed bomb that will blow up at any moment. He shook his head and said, It's impossible for us to wait for others to come over. We have to race against the clock and get as many materials from it as possible. The harvesters stared at each other at a loss. Meng Yishan sniffed at the monster. The smell is indeed a little off. Even if it's a little off, we can't do anything about it. One of the harvesters spoke out of goodwill. A hey cow, you don't understand. Our skills are not good enough, and it's difficult for us to handle such a high-grade monster. If we make a mistake and Mr. Who blames us, our lives will be miserable. But if the materials get spoiled? That will not be our problem. The battlefield is very chaotic, and no one can guarantee that they can harvest each monster perfectly. Men Zhao was still unwilling to give up. He knew that his father was affiliated to Prosperous, and the basic salary the company gave was very low. Everyone had to rely on their performance to get extra money. Based on the difficulty of harvesting normal monsters, their level of danger, and the condition of the materials harvested, the value of the materials should be around 2 to 4 points. The value of the golden spirit was several times higher than that of a normal giant yellow pattern tail scorpion, so how could he give up on it so easily? Shik. Light flashed, and the knife went straight into the fatal wound of the golden spirit. With another flash. The shell around the armor was completely removed, revealing the shuddering contents under it. It's fine. Uncles, please rest for a while. Dad, help me out please. Remember the famous teacher who came from another school to 9th high school for training? Coincidentally, he taught me the way to dissect golden spirits, Meng Zhao said faintly. Ah. When everyone saw how reckless he was, they were shocked. Meng Yishan frowned a little as well, but his son had already pulled open the wound and the materials of the monster were quickly rotting and getting spoilt. Hence, he could only move behind his son with great determination. Rest for a while. I'm the one who cut open the golden spirit. If anything happens, I'll take the blame. He waved his hand. The harvesters were stunned. Then, a moment later, they surrounded the monster. Big Brother Meng, how could you say that? A cow is like our son. We can't let you take the blame on your own. We might be uneducated, but we can still handle one golden spirit. Big Brother Meng, don't even think about taking all of the profit from this golden spirit. If there's money, we have to earn it together, and if something happens, we have to bear it together. As he listened to the teasing, Meng Zhao's heart filled with warmth, and his hands moved even faster. Everyone saw that his stability, accuracy, and meticulousness had increased compared to earlier. His fingers were like feathers, but also like scalpels. They quickly removed a large amount of materials. The faint, golden materials released a light but strange aroma. The creature before him was completely different from a normal giant scorpion. When it was submerged in a stabilizing solution, it would be like a delicacy. The group started drooling. Meng Yishan was originally a little worried, but his son's masterful skills allowed him to relax and filled him with delight. So he decided to hold the full set of tools in his hand and just focus on serving as his son's assistant. The father-son pair worked well together, and soon, they dealt with the most crucial part of the golden spirit. Switch to a number 11 knife. Widen the incision by another 3 millimeters. Use the liquid suction device to clean up the operating area. 
Spray microporous polysaccharide hemostatic powder of 5% density to delay the speed at which the cells decay. Meng Zhao's instructions were clear and orderly. At the moment the sticky liquid at the operating area was sucked clean, Meng Zhao used two scalpels. One of them was large and straight, and the other small and curved. The two scalpels turned into two balls of silver whirlwind. The harvesters could no longer see Meng Zhao's actions clearly. They only heard whooshing sounds as the golden spirit's tail was emptied out. With a light hook, Meng Zhao got himself a yellow crystal in his hands. An etherealized neurosphere. The experienced harvesters were shocked. Chapter 19, Hope in Darkness Quick, use methyl-based cooling and stabilizing solution. Meng Zhao put the yellow crystal into stabilizing solution and shut the lid tightly. It was only then that he relaxed. It's really an etherealized neurosphere, and it's really fresh. It's at least 80% active. And it's in perfect condition. The harvesters stared at the container for a long time as they kept crying out in surprise. An etherealized neurosphere was a mutated organ unique to high-grade monsters. They were normal neurospheres which were nourished by spirit energy and crystallized after spirit energy permeated them after a long time. They were often used to create high-grade nerve growth liquid, and they were extremely useful when repairing damaged spine nerves. They could also be placed into small battle machines to create thinking war trucks. The etherealized neurosphere was incredibly fragile and unstable, so it was not easy to bring it out of a monster's body without damaging it. Hence, the royalty given to harvesters who got them out was much higher. No matter how harsh Shen Rongfu was, he still had to give them three points, which were worth at least 10,000 or 20,000 when converted to money. The uneducated men could no longer find any words to compliment Meng Zhao as a natural-born harvester. It can't be just because he's in a key high school that his skills are so good. Could it be because of a girl? Meng Zhao was very happy. He lifted the semi-transparent container and stared at it for a long time. Be careful, freshly removed etherealized neurospheres are very active. They cannot withstand heavy tremors, Meng Yishan reminded him with a laugh. At some point in time, his son had surpassed his imagination. Truly, he had been worried for nothing. Meng Zhao answered with a hum. He slowly turned the container around to admire the neurosphere before his expression suddenly changed. He drew closer to observe it, and greed shone in his eyes. A cow, you. Since a father knew his son best, Meng Yishan knew that Meng Zhao was tempted. One of the harvesters suddenly said, By the way, big brother Meng, young Zhao was injured last year, and his injury is mainly at the spine, right? That's right. Another harvester's eyes light up. Won't an etherealized neurosphere from a golden spirit be the best medicine for him? He asked excitedly. The group looked at each other, then looked around them. There seemed to be no one around them, and their breathing became heavy. Enough. Meng Yishan frowned deeply and grabbed the container. A cow, don't even think about it, he said with a dark expression. This is the spoils of war belonging to the person who risked his life to kill this monster. We're just harvesting the monster on his behalf. Meng Zhao wanted to defend himself. Dad, I didn't. I know that you want to get into college, and I know just how much of a shock you went through when you were injured last year. At the end of the day, I'm useless. Meng Yishan's eyes turned cloudy with tears, and his voice grew hoarse, but he still sounded determined. But no matter how poor or desperate we get, we can't take someone else's things. Meng Zhao scratched his head. Dad? Seriously misunderstood me? But there's too many people around. I'll explain things to him later. I'll tell him that my injuries are almost healed. It's my fault. I'll do everything I can to help you get into college, but we really can't do this. If we leave behind a stain in your life, your entire life will be ruined. Even if no one discovers it, you'll feel guilty, and you'll never be happy." Meng Yishan spoke solemnly. A cow, I have nothing to say about your harvesting skills, but the most important thing about being a harvester isn't your skill but knowing how to keep your hands to yourself. This is a job that will allow you to see the treasures in the world. Sooner or later, you'll start harboring impure thoughts and touch what you shouldn't touch. In the end, your reputation will be ruined, and you'll have a miserable end. This is something that often happens to people in our field. If you really can't control yourself, no matter how talented you are, I won't bring you into this job. You can do whatever you like, as long as you remain dignified and a proper human being who can stand with his back straight and eat happily. As long as you do that, you'll forever be a son I will be proud of." As Meng Zhao faced his father's stern lecture, which was born out of a sense of justice, he thought about it, 
and he decided to bring his father to a corner later for a talk. Dad, enough with it. I'll be able to control myself. He stopped looking at the container. A cow, you should go and rest on the side. Meng Yishan could no longer bear looking at his son. Young Zhao, come over here and eat something. The harvesters found it a great pity, so they called Meng Zhao over to eat. Harvesting shell-type monsters was a physically taxing job. Meng Zhao might have excellent willpower, but no matter what, he was only 17 years old. During the first half of the night, he fought against monsters for two hours, and during the second half of the night, he fought monsters for another two hours. Now that he relaxed, he found that his arms were numb, and his fingers hurt a lot. He took a bite of a warm, high-calorie nutritional meal which could heat up on its own and slowly use the secret technique given to him as a bonus when he achieved perfect level basic gun technique to exercise his fingers. Connections, money, and a source of carcasses. He thought about it all. Just when he was about to come up with an excuse to call his father out so that they could have a heart-to-heart, -heart, he suddenly heard an abnormal sound in the moaning wind. A fragment of a memory from his previous life flashed in his mind. His ears perked up, and his expression filled with delight the moment he discovered the etherealized neurosphere. He wasn't mistaken, right? Could it be? Meng Zhao got up quickly, and he was instantly filled with energy again. He might have the chance to get their first bucket of gold this time. Dad, uncles, I'm suddenly really tired. Please work hard. I'll be going to the harvester's camp to rest for a while. The camp is at the entrance of the steel factory, right? It's fine, just go on ahead with your job. I can go there by myself." After saying that, Meng Zhao ran off. Slow down. Be careful not to trip over carcasses and cut yourself. Meng Yishan could only shout behind him. When he saw his son disappearing into the dark night, he clenched his fists tightly. Hello, is this big brother Shen? We dissected a golden spirit just now. Meng Yishan told Shen Rongfa on the phone. What? All the harvesters heard the screech from the other side of the phone. Are you mad? You're not qualified to dissect a golden spirit. Why didn't you wait for Superintendent Gu? If you damage the materials, Mr. Hu might kill you. Meng Yishan was scolded badly through the phone, but he did not even bat an eye. He waited until the moment he could speak again and said a few words. He hung up the phone and picked the container carefully. Hey, you lot. I'll be bringing the etherealized neurosphere for Big Brother Shen to handle it. This thing isn't stable, and even if we placed it in a mithril container, it can go out of control very easily. All his friends knew what he was thinking. Big Brother Meng, you want to buy it from Big Brother Shen? Meng Yishan's eyes shone. He looked down at his dirty anti-corrosion boots and said softly, This is a cow's only hope. Big Brother Shen isn't someone who's easy to talk to. His friends shook their heads. He won't give you a staff price, and he might even try to rob your wallet dry. Besides, even if he gives you a staff price, will you have the money to pay for it? I've thought about it. I can still work for a few years. At most, I won't be your captain anymore and sign a long-term contract with Big Brother Shen so that I can get him to pay me a few years worth of salary in advance," Meng Yishan said. Big Brother Shen has been thinking about making me sign a level 2 contract with him for a long time. He'll agree to it. Are you mad? His friends were so shocked that their faces turned pale. A level 2 contract means that you will need to handle incredibly dangerous high-grade monsters. They have very powerful spirit energy in their bodies, and it's very common for their carcasses to mutate into the undead or even biochemical bombs. Harvesting those creatures is even more dangerous than sweeping landmines. You'll be torn to pieces in no time. It's fine, I know what I'm doing. Continue with your work. I'll be back soon. Meng Yishan said stiffly. He held the container as if he was holding a fragile piece of hope as valuable as crystal. He stepped over the savage and ugly monster carcasses and headed into the darkness while treading on a difficult path. There was a still-burning collapsed building two streets away. Next to it was a monster which resembled a spider but was 100 times larger than one. It also had a lot of the characteristics of a jackal and a wolf. The organs of shell-type monsters and mammal-type monsters had fused in a bizarre fashion within it and a layer of short, coarse, golden fur covered its body, which gave it a unique presence of a king. At the spot connecting its head and chest was a fatal wound that split it open, but the creature was not completely dead. The shell on its back was filled with thorns, and all seven of its red eyes were moving about as it released its last bit of savagery. The creature's abdomen was still rising and falling, and the shrill sounds it made sounded like a terrifying curse. Two harvesters, one old and the other young, 
stared at the savage monster like a piece of fish on a chopping board. The old man had white hair but a youthful complexion. His eyes shone brilliantly, and there were halos surrounding his pupils. The teenage girl had a youthful face, and there was a faint hint of pride on her face. She crossed her arms over her chest, which hid her hands that wore a pair of white gloves that were not made of gold or metal but were as thin as Cicada's wings. Zueshi. Lately, your progress in learning the seven dissection methods performed in reverse has gotten pretty good. Today, I'll have you practice on this seven-eyed wolf spider. The old man's voice was sonorous and relaxed. Eight minutes, Grandpa. I'll finish the task in eight minutes. Ning Zueshi knelt down on one knee and opened an exquisite silver-white toolbox. The toolbox was like the Ling Long Tower. When she opened it, it was separated into eight layers. Each layer was filled with a dazzling array of strangely shaped harvesting tools. They were much more exquisite than Meng Yishan's abzes, chisels, axes, and saws. Whoosh! 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 The teenage girl tapped about with her fingers, and a knife started flying between them like a butterfly. Suddenly, it disappeared, and she let out a light huff before she looked to the side in displeasure. Thud! 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 Someone ran over while stumbling from the other end of the street. Meng Zhao had been fighting and harvesting the entire night, so he was so tired that even his bladder was hurting. He panted and gasped for breath as he placed his hands on his knees. Grandpa, there's someone over there. Ning Zueshi quirked an eyebrow and grumbled softly, does he even know the rules? No Tom, Dick, and Harry is allowed to watch my family's techniques. The old man looked up and saw Prosperous logo on Meng Zhao's protective clothing along with the red band that said in turn on his arm. He could not help but smile. Oh well, he's just an intern from a small commoner company. He's not a real harvester, so it's only natural that he doesn't know the rules, the old man said gently. These young guns living in society are actually very pitiful. They can't inherit any legacies and can't learn any ingenious techniques. It's very easy for them to get hurt when they harvest monsters. They're all working with their lives on the line. Since he has the heart to improve, let him watch. It'll depend on him just how much he can learn. Grandpa, you're becoming more and more soft-hearted lately. Ning Zueshi was displeased, and she glared at Meng Zhao again. Hey, lucky boy. You're interning nearby, but you came over to steal our technique? Well, at least you have good judgment. If you really want to learn, then be smart about it. See that teacup on the side? Serve my grandpa tea, and do it well. This is a chance people can't get even if they fight for it. Chapter 20, Becoming Talented Through Self-Study Meng Zhao calmed his breathing. He knew that he had arrived abruptly, so he could only respectfully serve the old man tea. He hesitated for a moment before he asked, Senior, don't you intend to do anything? When Ning Zueshi heard this, her pretty face turned red. You're being picky even when you're stealing techniques? This is just a grade 1 super beast. Why would my grandpa need to take care of it? Grade 1 super beast? Meng Zhao was surprised and his expression became strange. Ning Zueshi frowned. You can't possibly be unable to identify a seven-eyed wolf spider, right? If that's the case, don't cause us trouble here. You won't be able to understand. Don't waste your time. Meng Zhao looked at the dying super beast and could only brace himself while he said, I know that it was originally a seven-eyed wolf spider, but it's not that now. Right now, it's a seven-eyed dragon wolf spider which is currently evolving and is stuck between a grade 1 and grade 2. Even though it still retains the outward appearance of a seven-eyed wolf spider, many of its organs have already started mutating. Its newly born organs are very weak, and they're much harder to handle compared to those of a mature seven-eyed dragon wolf spider. What? Ning Zueshi was dumbfounded. An evolving super beast? The girl turned her head around and moved her mouth to ask for help from her grandfather. The old man sank into deep thought, and his expression became grave. He stared at Meng Zhao with an intense gaze. How did you know about that, boy? I've checked it carefully just now. Its outward appearance has not changed in the slightest. You ran over here and did not even look at it. How can you be sure that it's currently evolving? I heard it, Meng Zhao said. This super beast isn't completely dead yet. Isn't it shrieking right now? Seven-eyed wolf spiders and seven-eyed dragon wolf spiders might be from the same race, but they share a difference in grade. There's a slight difference in their shrieks before they die, and it's not hard to differentiate it. Not hard. Ning Zueshi and her grandfather were rendered speechless. Stop trying to intimidate us. My grandpa didn't manage to hear it, and you managed, in turn? Ning Zueshi placed her hands on her hips. 
her gaze was wary, as if Meng Zhao was a liar. But the old man did not dare to underestimate him. I haven't asked for your name. He said cautiously. I'm Meng Zhao. My family is about to open a resource recovery company. Meng Zhao was unwilling to let go of a chance to widen his network of connections, and he bowed to the grandfather-granddaughter pair. It was the greeting between harvesters, and it was done meticulously and perfectly. The old man became slightly more confident in him. He nodded and said in a reserved manner, I'm Neng Shuo. They stared at each other. Three seconds later, Meng Zhao came to a swift realization, and he tapped his head. Ah, it's you, Senior Ning? Your name travels far and wide, and I've heard of you a long time ago. Enough with that. You've never heard of my grandpa's name before, right? You don't even know white-haired ghostly hands Ning Shuo? What kind of harvester are you? And you're saying that you can tell apart the shrieks of a seven-eyed wolf spider and a seven-eyed dragon wolf spider? What a joke! Ning Zueshi was angry. Zueshi, be quiet. Ning Shuo was a person with great self-restraint. My young friend, your hearing is great, and you've allowed me to widen my perspective of the world. Might I know of your master? I'm self-taught, and I've been a harvester for decades, Meng Zhao said honestly. The old man sucked in a deep breath. What's the number of your company's leader? He asked cordially. Meng Zhao shut up. He took two steps back and crouched down on the ground before he made a gesture. I'm going to stop talking now. Please continue with your performance. Ning Zueshi was so angry that she felt like she was going to explode. She swore that she was going to teach the boy a lesson later. The seven-eyed wolf spider was losing the last of its life, so she had to race against the clock to harvest the freshest materials. She got rid of all other thoughts and treated Meng Zhao as if he did not exist. Just when she was about to take action, Ning Shuo suddenly came up beside her. Let me do it. Grandpa? I'll remove the outer shell first and suck away the sticky liquid to have a look. If none of the organs have mutated, you can take over. Ning Zueshi stomped on the ground furiously. She was so livid that she felt her world spinning. Ning Shuo took a scalpel in each hand and started moving with familiar ease. But his fingers started trembling lightly, and the tips of his scalpels also trembled slightly. I see, so Mr. Ning is injured, Meng Zhao mumbled. No wonder. This sentence lit up the fuse in Ning Zueshi. She whirled around like a tornado and rushed in front of him. There was a scowl on her face. Do you know the rules at all? Are you supposed to be running your mouth off right now? Meng Zhao's face turned red. When a harvester was performing meticulous work, their worst fear was someone bothering them. He had broken a law in the field, and he was in the wrong. He fell into contemplation and thought that while the girl was a hot-tempered one, the grandfather was a pretty good person, and he was worthy of Meng Zhao lending him a hand. Miss Ning, could you let me take a look at your tools? I need nine of the thinnest bull hair exploratory needles and three soft hooks. Meng Zhao lowered his voice. By the way, do you have 300,000 cash in your account? Ning Zueshi was confused. This is what's going on. Evolving seven-eyed dragon wolf spider infants are very fragile especially their newly formed poison sacs. The sac membrane is as thin as a cicada's wings, and it will tear at the slightest touch. The poison liquid will flow through the entire stomach, and all the materials will become useless. Meng Zhao explained everything with a sincere look on his face. Mr. Ning has problems with his nerves, right? He might not be able to complete the entire harvest on his own. That's why I need to familiarize myself with your tools so that I can make some last-minute preparations. His explanation just added oil to fire, and Ning Zueshi ground her teeth in anger. Even if Grandpa is injured, he's still the white-haired ghostly hands. How can a mere seven-eyed wolf tiger cause any trouble to him? Besides, I'm here, why should I let you help? Wait. 300,000 worth of cash? What's that money for? Naturally, it's the money to hire me. Meng Zhao calculated with his fingers. With your grandpa's current condition, the things he harvests will definitely not be in a good condition. If you add all the things together, at most, he will only be able to harvest materials worth 300,000 to 500,000. But with my help, my experience and your grandpa's skills will work well together and increase our efficiency. We should be able to perfectly extract the poison sack, which is the most valuable item. It will sell for more than 500,000 alone, and when you add all the materials together, you will get nearly 2 million. There's a price difference of more than 1 million in there. Since I'm still an intern and an assistant, and since it's fate that we got to know each other, I can offer you a discount and just take 300,000. 
Consider this as me making a contribution to society. Ning Zueshi stared at Meng Zhao with her mouth open. After a moment, she sucked in a deep breath, but just as she was about to explode. Zueshi, come here. It was her grandfather's voice, and it was quivering, which was something that rarely happened. The girl hurried to her grandfather's side. In just a few minutes, the old man seemed to have aged by five years. His white hair lost their spirit, and they drooped all over his face, sticking to his forehead, which was drenched in cold sweat. Ning Zueshi looked in the direction of the old man's rather unfocused gaze, and she saw balls of hideous-looking organs inside the seven-eyed wolf spider after its shell was removed. They looked like deformed, mutated tumors, and they released a pungent smell. After a single look inside, all the anger froze on her face, and she cried out, These organs are wrong. This isn't a seven-eyed wolf spider. It's indeed not a seven-eyed wolf spider, but is the much rarer seven-eyed dragon wolf tiger, and it's evolving, to boot. Ning Shuo smiled wanly with dejectedness on his face. Before him was a low-grade super beast which had not even reached grade 2. Its carcass was only worth a few million, which was nothing to Ning Shuo. When his nerves were still in perfect condition, he could activate his supernatural abilities and use his naked eye to see through the layout and structure of the organs. But now, he had lost his power and influence, and he was subjected to indignity. The white-haired ghostly hands was about to be defeated by a low-grade super beast. Ning Zueshi opened her mouth to say something when she suddenly remembered Meng Zhao's words. Shock filled her face. By then, Meng Zhao had already arrived behind the grandfather-granddaughter pair. He stood on tiptoes and cast a glance at the seven-eyed dragon wolf spider's abdominal cavity. He remembered the rules of the harvesters. Even if Ning Zueshi turned her head around to look at him, he still kept quiet and his lips closed tightly. Ning Zueshi felt gloomy. But she gritted her teeth and said, Please speak up, boy. It's still okay, Meng Zhao said. What do you mean it's still okay? Ning Zueshi's eyes went wide. I'm saying that this seven eyed dragon wolf spider had a decent mutation. It's a common one. It didn't go through some sort of super evolution that's rare and strange. Meng Zhao sighed in relief. Common? The grandfather granddaughter pair was dumbfounded. A few hundred thoughts raced in Ning Zueshi's head. And she asked in disbelief, Why you? Can you really help my grandfather complete the harvest and will only take 300,000 for it? 500,000. Ning Shuo stared at Meng Zhao. Lad, if you can really help me, even if you can't handle the harvest perfectly, as long as it's acceptable and the poison sac retains 70% of its poison, I will immediately transfer 500,000 to you. Meng Zhao whistled. He could not help the corners of his lips curling up. I haven't become a superhuman yet so my strength and senses are just average. I can't harvest a super beast directly, I can only. Meng Zhao originally wanted to say I can only guide you to finish the job, but when the words arrived at his tongue, he swallowed them and switched them to I can only serve as your assistant. Then, be my first assistant. Hand me the tools, spray the antidote, expose the incised area, mark the incision, and monitor the decaying rate of the organs. My granddaughter will serve as the second assistant. Will that do? Sure. Meng Zhao nodded. He brought out an antidote gel from his waist pouch and spread it over his hands. Then, he switched it to spray mode and sprayed himself from head to toe. He then stood to Ning Shuo's right as his assistant. Ning Shuo focused and calmed his breathing before he said, Number 3. Before he finished speaking, a number 4 hilt with a number 7 rhombus shaped blade into his hands. Ning Shuo frowned slightly. The boy had a lot of theoretical knowledge so he did not expect that he would hand him the wrong instrument right from the start. Could it be that he was just full of hot air? I know that you intend to use a number 3 hilt with a number 12 pincer shaped blade so that you can first separate the book long. Regardless of whether it's a 7-eyed wolf spider or a mature 7-eyed dragon wolf spider, this would definitely be the perfect move for it. But this is an evolving monster, and there are a lot of leaf-shaped wrinkles on its sack-shaped book long. Please look carefully. Its structure is very fragile and it's connected tightly to a lot of other areas. If we act recklessly, we might damage its appearance. Meng Zhao tapped it lightly with an exploratory needle. I suggest that we start from the vessel located behind the book lung. We'll separate the veins in reverse and clear up its surroundings before we deal with the book lung itself. Don't worry, these veins are much sturdier than they were previously, and they won't snap easily. Elder Ning, what do you think? Chapter 21, Elite Monster Ning Shuo was stunned for half a second before he nodded repeatedly. That's what I was thinking as well. 
A notification popped up in front of Meng Zhao's eyes. Elite citizen Ning Shuo has received guidance from you, and his knowledge regarding the semi-mature seven-eyed dragon wolf spider has improved. Increased contribution points by 15. Wow, looky here, an elite monster. Meng Zhao was delighted. By then, he had discovered three types of citizens. There were normal citizens like Chu Fei Shuang, elite citizens like Ning Shuo, and special citizens like Bei Jia Kao. Since there were normal, elite, and special citizens, were there golden citizens, epic level citizens, immortal citizens, and pseudo perfect citizens? That's right. There'll be countless heroes who will emerge in Dragon City in the future, and they're all hot blooded boys and ignorant girls right now. It's a pity that I don't remember their names and faces, or else, I'd immediately find them. If I could just guide them. Meng Zhao's eyes sparkled. This was something for him to consider later. He had to seize the elite monster and farm as many contribution points as he could. In the next 10 minutes, Ning Shuo performed his most comfortable harvest in 10 years. The young lad seemed to have crawled into his mind. He never needed to open his mouth before he was handed the perfect instrument. There were two times when he wanted something, but the young lad gave him something else. But just as he was about to scold him, he realized that the boy's choice was even better. The marks Meng Zhao made for incisions were also easy spots for him to cut. He could perform the perfect separations from those places. And when Ning Xinwo started feeling pain in his nerves and subconsciously started to tremble, Meng Zhao sprayed some gel on him to provide support so that he could rest for a while. The young lad was not an assistant. Instead, he was using a feather to tickle his old bones. Just who is his master? With this sort of skill, he should have become famous a long time ago. Ning Shuo was incredibly puzzled. As the second assistant, Ning Zueshi had nothing to do. She could only be dumbfounded by the side, and her pride was completely shattered. In almost no time, they harvested most of the materials. Only the poison sac remained, and it was located at the deepest part of the lower abdominal cavity. It was an organ which shuddered and looked like tofu pudding. It was covered in nerve cords and blood vessels. Forget about touching it, it looked like it would shatter even if someone blew on it. Young Meng, if it were you, what sort of method would you use to remove it? They had saved up three and a half minutes before reaching the last step. The decay of the organ was controlled very well, and Ning Shuo felt slightly relaxed. He began to admire Meng Zhao's talent. I'd do it from below, along the central apophysis. I'd use the fourth dissection method from the seven dissection methods performed in reverse, the three consecutive diagonal plucks. Meng Zhao held a curved bladed needle that was as thin as hair and spun it a little to tap the organ lightly three times, as if he was tapping it with a feather. This was an advanced method mentioned in the future version of basic harvesting skill. It was incredibly difficult, and his skillfulness had to be at ultimate level before he could even have a 10% chance of success. Before becoming a superhuman, a normal harvester could forget about using this method. Meng Zhao did not quite understand it. He just put on airs while the electric signals in his nerves controlled his body. This is. Ning Shuo sucked in a sharp breath, and his white hair stood up on end. No one knew just how much were the emotions in his heart surging. The seven dissection methods performed in reverse were a top-tier technique discovered by the veterans in the field. It was known as a harvesting skill made for the next ten years, and it was only spread within an incredibly small number of people. The technique itself was incredibly high tier and each move was still in its testing stage. And Meng Zhao's fourth dissection method was slightly different from the fourth dissection Ning Shuo knew. As Ning Shuo pondered it carefully, he noticed to his shock that Meng Zhao's fourth dissection was even more precise and effective. It could reduce harvesting time by 5%, and it could ensure the wholeness and freshness of the material. This was a modified version of the fourth dissection method. Someone had already upgraded the seven dissection methods performed in reverse, and he was behind this mysterious teenager. Who is he? Who is his teacher? Just how large is the faction of power behind him, and just how massive is the research team behind him? In an instant, Ning Shuo thought of many things. At the same time, a notification popped up in Meng Zhao's field of vision. Elite citizen Ning Shuo has received your guidance and his understanding toward the fourth dissection method of the seven dissection methods performed in reverse has increased. Increased contribution points by 55. The elite monster's learning ability is great. I just made a few random motions and he understood them? Meng Zhao was delighted. 
He had been trying his hardest to recall all of the memory fragments regarding the fourth dissection method of the seven dissection methods performed in reverse, and he performed the three consecutive diagonal plucks based on the pulses from the electrical signals in his nerves. His movements were, of course, stiff, clumsy, and even in pieces. But the spirit contained within them was ahead of its time. In Ning Shuo's eyes, he opened a brand new, shining door. The old man could see Meng Zhao's goal, and he asked in disbelief, My young friend, W won't your parent? Won't your parent punish you if you casually teach the secret ultimate technique they spent their blood, sweat, and tears researching to someone else? Since Meng Zhao was dealing with an elite monster, he could not fool him by saying that he learned it on his own. He thought over his words and said, I'm sorry, I was just joking with you now. But please forgive me, because I have my own troubles. I can't tell you who my master is. But before my master asked me to come out here to train, he said that regardless if it's the seven dissection methods performed in reverse or the knowledge of monsters, they're all the accumulation of knowledge slowly gathered together by all dragon citizens fighting to survive. Skills must be exchanged, and they do not fear exchange. If we can make the seven dissection methods performed in reverse even more perfect through an exchange of skills so that we can provide more resources for warriors and superhumans, Dragon City will have more hope to rise in power. This is a great thing that has endless merit, so why should we keep it to ourselves? Phew! If Men Zhao's rich theoretical knowledge and solid foundation of basic skills had resulted in Ning Shuo regarding him highly, then his enlightening words increased the old man's appraisal of the boy to a whole new degree. This boy is not even 20 years old, and yet he has such a magnanimous heart already? Ning Shuo's heart trembled in shock. Ning Zueshi was incredibly perplexed as well. She had just learned the seven dissection methods performed in reverse, and she could not tell how profound were Meng Zhao's skills. She just felt that his hands were twitching. But based on her grandfather's expression, she knew that this boy who was even younger than her possessed unimaginable knowledge regarding the seven dissection methods performed in reverse. And hilariously, she had just been mocking him for coming to steal their technique. Unbeknownst to her, he had an ultimate technique with him, and he did not even bother to hide his skill. They were of the same age, yet they were a whole level apart. The girl's face flushed red and shame, but her stubborn nature made her grumble softly, then why did you ask for 300,000 from me? Miss Ning, it's been a short time since we've come to know each other, and I'm afraid you have some misunderstandings about me. Meng Zhao smiled faintly and looked up at the bright red moon. Honestly, I don't have a lot of interest in regards to money, but recently, I came to a great revelation. I wanted to do my best to contribute to society. And to better achieve this goal, I wanted to form my own group. I'm not asking for this 300,000 for myself. It's just an initial capital for me to contribute to society. It's so that I can allow Earth's civilization to burn brightly in the other world. It's the first amount of money I want to use to pass down our legacy. The expressions of Elder Ning and Miss Ning changed at the same time. Let's not continue talking. Come, I'll support the operating area for the last poison sack. Please separate the nerve cord. Men Zhao was worried about his father, so he increased his speed. Ning Shuo nodded, and his knife flashed even brighter than before. The semi-transparent poison sack shaped like a polygonum multiflorum was swiftly removed. It was in perfect condition. Not a single nerve or blood vessel was destroyed, and not a single drop of poison had spilled out. It was even thumping like a heart. Its appearance was perfect. Ning Shuo held his breath and put the poison sack into mithril stabilizing solution. Then, he removed his mask before he took the secret ointment from his granddaughter's hands to take care of his hands. He did not even take a look at the poison sack, which retained a perfect appearance. Instead, he used a complicated gaze to stare at Meng Zhao for a long time. Meng Zhao seemed downcast as he admired the notifications that popped up in his field of vision. A large amount of skillfulness points and contribution points were given to him after he served as the first assistant to harvest a mutated superbeast. He was wondering what sort of skill he should level up or awaken next. The old man saw his expression, and he thought that the young lad was level-headed, humble, and kept a low profile. Zueshi, how much money do we have in our account? Ning Shuo suddenly asked. Ning Zueshi was slightly stunned. I think. It's about 800,000? Send it all to our young friend here. Don't keep even a single cent, Ning Shuo said. Grandpa? Ning Zueshi was incredibly shocked. Senior, that's too much. We agreed on 500,000. Meng Zhao gulped. My young friend, 
Those three consecutive diagonal plucks just now aren't just for removing the poison sack for the seven-eyed dragon wolf spider. You can remove the poison sacks for nearly 100 poisonous monsters with this technique. The level of bleeding is low, the speed is fast, and the possibility of poison spilling is also low. If we have to talk about it, then this technique is worth more than a few hundred thousand, but because of having to treat my injuries, I'm a little short of money lately. Keep that money first. Once I examine the materials, I'll talk to you again, Ning Shuo said sincerely. Meng Zhao immediately spoke up. Since you gave me this money, I'll appear vulgar if I continue to reject your offer. How about this then? In truth, I have some findings regarding the remaining six dissection methods of the seven dissection methods performed in reverse as well. But I think you'll need another year and a half before you can fully recover from your wounds. Should we exchange our skills in the future? My young friend. Why you know about my injuries? Ning Shuo's voice suddenly rose in volume. Meng Zhao was stunned. I saw that your hands shuddered once every three to five seconds just now, and the veins on the back of your hands are protruding slightly. They're a deep purple color, and there's faint hints of black wafting out of them too. They stretched up your hand, and this is the sign of the ulnar nerve, radial nerve, and median nerve in your hands being poisoned by the purple crowned Elise Viper. In fact, it has affected your vision as well, right? Since you can tell that my grandpa is injured, how could you say that he'll be recovered in a year and a half? This is clearly an illness with no treatment. Ning Zueshi spoke with a quiver in her voice. A terminal illness? Meng Zhao was shocked. Based on the memory fragments from his previous life, it was an injury that harvesters often got. Even though it was rather troublesome, it was not to the point that it was untreatable. He thought about it for a moment. Oh, right. Our wars haven't gotten more dangerous yet. Many of the monsters haven't mutated. The purple crowned Elise Viper is still a very rare monster. The monsters were evolving, but humans were evolving too. Once the number of purple crowned Elise Vipers surpassed the number of earthworms, humans naturally figured out all sorts of antidotes and treatment methods. Many of the terminal illnesses were no longer untreatable based on the memory shards from his previous life. Chapter 22, Dad. Boy, you can treat my grandpa's injuries? Ning Zueshi did not dare to believe it, but she could not help but want to believe him. Ever since her grandfather was poisoned, he had sought treatment everywhere. They had exhausted every method possible to treat him. But the purple-crowned Elise Viper was a new creature which had just mutated. Most of the doctors, harvesters, and medicine brewers had not even seen it before, so how were they supposed to treat its venom? The white-haired ghostly hands pride and joy, his ghostly hands, were destroyed when the viper's venom invaded his nerves. His divine eyes, which could see through super beasts' organs, were gone as well. 90% of his abilities were robbed from him, and he lost his former glory. He was even humiliated by the hooligans in the field, all of them told him that he should just retire. And now, an intern popped up on the roadside. A notification popped up before Meng Zhao's eyes. Will you activate your first treatment quest? Quest details, resources are the fuel that will help a civilization move forward. Resource collectors are the most important soldiers of a civilization. If you treat Ning Shuo, you will contribute to Dragon City's rise to power. Quest time limit and rewards. A month later, you will be rewarded between 200 to 2000 contribution points based on how much Ning Shuo recovers. Activate it. Meng Zhao just loved elite monsters. I can try, but treating this sort of unknown viper's venom is very troublesome. I don't have any antidote recipe on the ready, so I might have to search for a few weird ideas. That's already very good. I know most of the antidotes, but right now, the doctors don't even have any idea of might help and work as a treatment plan. Ning Shuo smiled bitterly. With his connections, he could get most of the valuable medicine, and he was also acquainted with a lot of the veteran medicine brewers. The key was to settle down on an idea to write a recipe. The senior wanted to talk about the treatment fees, but he did not have a lot of cash in his account, and the boy had an inscrutable background. If he just offered 300 to 500,000 to him, he would just be humiliating him. He thought about it for a moment, then his eyes lit up. My young friend, didn't you mention that you want to open a resource recovery company later? Yes. Elder Ning, do you have any instructions for me? Meng Zhao asked with partial sincerity. Ning Shuo smiled and said, I wouldn't dare to give you any instructions, but would you be interested in signing a contract with Thunderbolt Fighting Squad to harvest monsters with them? Thunderbolt? Meng Zhao felt that he had heard the name before. Thunderbolt Fighting Squad was created by 5-star superhuman Lake Yinjin, 
who is also known as Wind Thunder Saber. Aside from him, the team is made up of two four-star superhumans, five three-star superhumans, and dozens of one-star or two-star superhumans. They have a pretty solid foundation, and they also have a good reputation in being trustworthy. Ning Shuo stroked his white beard. Last year, they managed to kill 125 super beasts. The number of normal monsters they killed is far too high to have been counted. They will definitely have no problem with providing carcasses for your harvesters. We can also discuss the ratio of profit allocation. Thunderbolt hired me to be the chief inspector of their resource planning, and I can negotiate normal contracts for them. Men Zhao thought about it carefully. My company is still in the planning stage, and our skills are rather limited for the time being. Let's not talk about super beasts for the time being. We can handle normal monsters, though. We don't need too many of them. With how big Thunderbolt is, the random, small cases they throw at us will be enough for us to survive. How about this? You can't keep a dragon wolf spider's poison sack for too long, so how about you have someone process it into medicine first? I'm working at 5 Blessing Street, and I might have to continue working there for the time being. You should send the materials away first, and we can talk later. Once Ning Shou gathered a total of 800,000 worth of cash, he transferred the money to Meng Zhao through his phone, and Meng Zhao left with his pockets full. The grandfather-granddaughter pair watched his retreating back and sighed with emotions. Zueshi, that young friend of ours isn't a simple man. If you have the chance, you should get to know him, Ning Shuo said. Ning Zueshi seemed to have thought of something, and her face turned red. She said softly, Grandpa, even if he's really good, it's not necessary for me to befriend him. Of course, there are plenty of youngsters in Dragon City with great backgrounds and ultimate skills in their possession. Am I supposed to have my own granddaughter go out of her way to curry favor? Ning Shuo glared at her. His skills and his background are secondary. I asked you to befriend our young friend because of one single sentence from him. Which one? He's not interested in money. He only wants to contribute to society. No way, Grandpa. You actually believe those lies? Hey, when I was young, I was known as Divine Eyes Ghostly Hands. My jade assessment skill allowed me to see through a monster's organs and sense the slight changes in the muscles of a person's face so that I can tell whether they're lying or not. Even though my eyes are mostly useless now, I'm not a youngster anymore. Would I not be able to tell the depths of a boy still wet behind his ears? Ning Shuo stroked his beard and said, I don't know whether he was lying or not when he mentioned that he isn't interested in money, but when our young friend mentioned that he wants to contribute to society, his eyes were shining, so those words were definitely sincere. Huh? Ning Zueshi was bewildered for the umpteenth time. They lived in an era in which monsters appeared everywhere, and everyone was filled with material desires. Yet there was a strange boy who did not like money and wanted to contribute to society. When Ning Zueshi saw that Meng Zhao had long since disappeared, she found herself absolutely perplexed. With loaded pockets, Meng Zhao walked with light footsteps. Even his pores were singing with joy. He was going to open his account in front of his father later and shock him senseless. His father might demand whether he had done something wrong, but Meng Zhao would calmly reveal what had happened. His father's expression would then be, Ha hey hey. When he returned to Five Blessings Road, he was puzzled. Why is he gone? The sound of an argument could be heard faintly from the refrigerated truck for materials. Shen Rongfa's incredibly piercing voice could be heard over there. 280,000. Old Meng, I'm already selling it to you cheap. Meng Zhao's pupils shrank, and he ran over. The harvesters stood behind his father with their heads hanging dejectedly. As for Shen Rongfa, he looked like a fighting cock who had just won. He gestured about, and his saliva flew in the air. Two of his sturdy bodyguards stood behind him brandishing stun batons, which made crackling sounds. Meng Zhao suppressed his anger and tugged at a harvester. What's wrong, Big Brother Zhou? Zhou Kuiang Kun had an incredibly thick wrist. Even so, when Meng Zhao tugged at him, it still hurt him so much that he gasped. Oh, hey cow, you're here? He asked with a bitter look on his face. Your dad went to Shen Rongfu to buy the etherealized neurosphere. I think Shen Rongfu refused to sell it even after he offered a high price for it. Both of them tugged at each other for a while, and then, unexpectedly, the item fell on the ground and was damaged. What? Meng Zhao was shocked. He looked through the gaps between people, and just as Zhou Kuiang Kun said, there was a crack on the container because of the fall. The stabilizing solution had spilled all over the floor, and once it came into contact with air, it started producing bubbles. 
The monster material was exposed to the air. Its outer shell, which was originally like a yellow gemstone and shone with a crystalline quality, was starting to turn dark. The etherealized neurosphere was an incredibly sensitive material. Even if it was placed in a stabilizing solution, it could not withstand jolts and tremors. The container could not be completely sealed either, or else, the rampaging spirit energy could not escape, and it would turn into a biochemical bomb at any moment. It was very common for this sort of material to be tarnished because the steps to preserve it were not done well. An etherealized neurosphere with a perfect appearance could be sold for approximately 300,000. Now, its appearance had been tarnished, so they would only be able to sell it for 70,000 or 80,000. Wait, why does my dad want to buy that etherealized neurosphere? Can he even afford it? Meng Zhao was a little confused. Zhou Kuiang Kun gave him a troubled expression, and Meng Zhao instantly understood. My dad wants to treat me so that I can get into college. Zhou Kuiang Kun sighed. This thing has gone completely out of hand. Meng Yishan's eyes were as red as a piece of coal in a furnace. He stared at the bubbles on the ground and did not see his son trying his hardest to squeeze over. Old Meng, just answer me. Axiang and Abao both saw that you slipped and damaged the material, Shen Rongfa said impatiently. I. Meng Yishan's mind was a mess. What happened moments ago spun in his mind like a kaleidoscope. He remembered that the item had fallen on the ground by accident after it had been placed in Shen Rongfa's hands. But there were no CCTVs in the place, and there were two bodyguards who could serve as witnesses for Shen Rongfa, while he was still earning his living under this man. He simply could not explain what had happened clearly. Dad? At this moment, Meng Yishan heard his son's voice. The middle-aged man felt his mind go numb, and he forced out an awkward smile. What are you doing here? Go back. This has nothing to do with you. Go back and rest for a while longer at the camp. Go on. What's going on? Did we really drop the goods? Meng Zhao went forward and supported his father. He also stared at the aggressive-looking Shen Rongfa coldly over his father's shoulder. The memory shards from his previous life surged forward, and certain emotions that were incredibly sharp stimulated his cells and nerves. They made him really want to punch Shen Rongfa in the face and make him lose a few teeth. Shen Rongfa snorted. He found it under him to pay any attention to a boy who had not even graduated yet. A cow, this thing is beyond you. Meng Yishan saw his son's fierce gaze. Worried that he would act rashly, he quickly held him back. This is just a mess of a problem. Men Zhao knew his father. He was the most serious and responsible person he knew when it came to work. If he were really the one who dropped it, he would definitely not mince matters. Since this was a mess of a problem, it was highly likely that it was not his father's fault. Men Zhao's gaze landed on the side of the refrigerated truck. A folding table stood there with a few self-heating dishes that had beautiful packaging. There was also wine on it. When his father sent the materials over, Shen Rongfa had to have been eating supper with his bodyguards. The harvesters working at the front lines worked hard for half the night, and even then, they could only eat high-calorie nutritional fluid that tasted like paste. Yet these bastards could eat really good food. Their hands were even greasy. Men Zhao knelt down on one knee and examined the shell of the container. Then, he raised his head swiftly and stared fixedly into Shen Rongfa's eyes. Shen Rongfa felt guilty and shuddered. The fat on his face started trembling wildly. Chapter 23, Too Rash Meng Zhao was now confident of what had happened, so he said calmly, Manager Shen, since we can't be certain who exactly dropped the item, based on the rules, we have the responsibility, and we're willing to pay half of the price difference as compensation. Half. Shen Rongfa sounded as if he had just heard a joke and snorted through his nostrils. Kid, you haven't even gotten into college yet, and yet you sound really high and mighty. When the item falls, its condition will fall by at least two grades, and the price difference is 200,000. Half of it would mean 100,000. There are plenty of people who can't earn 100,000 even after they work hard for a year, and yet you're giving me a promise so lightly? He looked at the two bodyguards, who chuckled. Meng Yishan tugged at his son. A cow, ignore this. This is my problem. Dad, you've been working hard over the years. Since I'm back, what's the most important thing for you to do right now is to enjoy your blessings. Meng Zhao took a step forward in front of his father to stand as a wall. He stared at Shen Rongfa. We all know whether my father really dropped the item. I can't be bothered wasting my breath and time with you. Let's end this after we settle accounts. And once they settled accounts, he would immediately take away the entire team of harvesters. There were plenty of chances to earn money outside. 
Why should they continue mingling with a thief like Shen Rongfa? What do you mean? The boy's calm expression angered Shen Rongfa. Like a puffer fish that rose out of the surface of water, his plump face puffed out. I have witnesses. Are you going to refuse to admit to your mistakes just because there are no CCTVs here? Besides, your dad wanted to buy that etherealized neurosphere through force. I was unwilling to give it to him, and he started yanking at the container. If he didn't do that, how would it have fallen on the ground? He stopped talking at that moment as if he had just swallowed a fly. He realized he was arguing with Meng Zhao, which degraded his status. He faced Meng Yishan once more. Old Meng, if you want to continue staying in the field, you should know the rules of harvesters. You are the one who was tempted first, and you wanted to claim this item as your own, but you damaged it, and now, you refuse to admit to your mistakes and do not wish to take responsibility. If these two things spread out, forget about working with me, you can forget about working anywhere else. Meng Yishan shuddered. I wanted to buy it. Then you could buy it. Didn't I already agree to sell it to you for 20,000 cheaper? Shen Rongfa suddenly changed his stance and said with a grin, We can fix up the contract. Sign a three-year level 2 contract, and you can take the item away immediately. After all, we're friends, aren't we? Meng Yishan stared at the black etherealized neurosphere. If it were in perfect condition, it would really not be expensive for 280,000. But in its current condition, even if it was made into a spinal nerve regrowth liquid, the medicinal effects would be much worse. Could it even heal his son's wounds? Why are you still thinking? The more you hesitate, the longer the etherealized neurosphere will be exposed to the air, and the effects will be worse. A thought appeared in Shen Rongfa's head. How about this? Sign a two-year contract with me, and I'll pay you 80,000 in advance. You can buy some supplements for your son, and he might be able to pass the exam. His words struck Meng Yishan's weakness. He remembered how his son had tossed and turned restlessly on the hospital bed when he was injured the year before. Then, he remembered how his son had managed to get into a key high school three years ago. At that time, he came in front of him and his wife and pretended that he had not done well. When the two of them wanted to comfort him, the brat suddenly brought out the admission letter to boast about his success, and they had been so angry that they chased him around with a whisk broom. Then there was the time even farther in the past. For the sake of the entire family's future, he had trained madly. When a rich person's child trained for one hour, he would train for two to three hours until he suffered cramps. But Meng Zhao just bit down on a towel so that they would not hear him grunting. Say no more. Meng Yishan gritted his teeth. Pay me 100,000 in advance, and I'll sign it. 100,000, huh? So be it. Shen Rongfa grinned. He quickly brought out the tablet he had prepared a long time ago. This is the general terms and conditions. You don't have to look through it carefully. Just put your handprint over here and sign your name, and it'll do. Before his father could take the tab, Meng Zhao grabbed it. What is this? Meng Zhao swept his gaze over the tablet, and his pupils narrowed until they were as thin as needles. A work contract for employees who will recover resources at a danger level of level 2? Hurts. It hurts. My head hurts. The words level 2 contract were like a fire bomb that set his mind on fire. It brought nightmarish scenes set in the flames. He remembered it now. In his previous life, his mother was burned by the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle. To pay the large medical fees, his father signed a level 2 contract with Shen Rongfa and went to harvest high-risk monsters, which were highly poisonous, very corrosive, could easily turn into the undead, and had a risk of exploding. Soon, he was injured badly because an accident happened during an assignment. But when Meng Zhao wanted to help his father claim his medical insurance so that he could be treated, he found that even though the bastard Shen Rongfa had claimed that he deducted money from his father's wages to pay for the special insurance for those who took high-risk jobs, he was taking money from his father's wages to pay for a normal insurance, and the price difference went into his own pocket. That was the darkest hour of the Meng family during his previous life. Meng Zhao went to settle accounts with Shen Rongfa, but the bastard went into hiding. When Meng Zhao sued Prosperous, he found that the contract had been tampered with, and there were many conditions in it which were not beneficial for the employee. He had a hard time fighting in the lawsuit. This matter had taken away his younger sister's last vestiges of trust in the justice system. She said something like the laws only protect the rich. The poor can only rely on themselves, and they have to use every means possible to live in this cruel other world. This matter was another important catalyst behind why she turned into the Dark Witch. Meng Zhao's eyes turned completely bloodshot, and the tablet started cracking in his hands. 
Shen Rongfa glared at him. How dare you snatch what's mine? Crack. Before his voice could fade away, the tablet broke in Meng Zhao's hands. The shards flew everywhere, and sparks scattered. Some of the sharper components stabbed into his palms. Meng Yishan, your son has no respect for the law. Shen Rongfa flew into a rage. As the brother-in-law of a superhuman, he could do whatever he wanted in his company. The harvesters in his palm had to be careful even when they breathed. He had never run into a reckless fool like Meng Zhao before. He pointed at Meng Zhao and screeched, throw this brat away. The two bodyguards pounced on him. Meng Yishan had once seen the two bodyguards beat up five harvesters from another company just so that they could snatch materials. He immediately went up. How dare you? The two bodyguards shoved him, and he staggered five steps backward before he fell on the ground. Dad? The way his father fell on the ground overlapped with the way he lay on the hospital bed with his incomplete body, and Meng Zhao's mind went blank. All he saw was red. The two bodyguards swung their stun batons toward his shoulder. Get lost! Meng Zhao shouted. His specialist level reckless bull technique exploded forth. His body first shrank before it expanded, and he let out a shout from his chest. He was just like a raging rhinoceros. Bang! He rammed into the first bodyguard's chest. That bodyguard fell on his back and started coughing up blood. Sizzle! The second bodyguard's stun baton stabbed into Meng Zhao's shoulder, but due to his roaring anger, he did not notice it. He took a huge step forward and crashed into that bodyguard, and with a flip, he threw him 30 meters away. It nearly shattered all of the man's bones. There was no way he could get up on his feet. The electricity had shocked Meng Zhao so much that his hair stood up. His bones crackled loudly, and his features twisted into a mask of ruthlessness. Kindling, activate ripple force and push it to specialist level. He shouted fiercely in his heart. All sorts of details instantly appeared in his head, and like waves, they surged into his blood, muscles, and nerve endings. Meng Zhao took his first step toward Shen Rongfa. With monstrous strength, he jumped up. The strength surged from his calves to his waist, and his legs were like two piled drivers when they rammed fiercely into the ground. He took his second step. An endless wave of power flowed from his chest to his arms, making them tremble. Then, it reached his fingertips. His muscles seemed to have turned to monstrous waves that pushed a violent and boundless sea quake to his burning palms. With just three steps, he arrived in front of Shen Rongfa. He looked down on him with a savage expression. Shen Rangfei was so scared that he curled into a ball. His features were scrunched up, and he shuddered. We can talk. Go talk to your ancestors but... Future version of Ripple Force, specialist level. Go to hell, bastard. Meng Zhao's right arm formed the shadow of a whip. His palms were now as red as burning steel, and he swung a hand at Shen Rongfa fat face. Slap. His first slap made all the people in the area hunch their shoulders. Their cheeks ached from pain. Shen Rongfa's fat body weighed more than 140 kilograms, and he was struck so hard that he spun three times like a top. He felt half of his face burning. Slap. Slap. The next two slaps brought Shen Rongfa up. His face became so swollen that he looked like a tottering brazed pork head. Slap 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 slap. Meng Zhao swung both his arms wide, and they moved like lightning. He delivered his slaps like a storm, and all those who heard felt their faces hurt. But he had an accurate control of his strength, and he did not make Shen Rongfa faint. He just made him start foaming at his mouth. Shen Rongfa was in so much pain that he wanted to die, and he did not even have the strength to cry for help. Meng Zhao might have finished executing the entire set of Ripple Force, but his anger had not disappeared yet. He took two steps backward, and the shoelaces on his rubber work boots almost snapped. He swung his leg and kicked Shen Rongfa's abdomen, sending Shen Rongfa flying more than 10 meters away like a ball. Bang! Shen Rongfa crashed into the compartment of the refrigerated truck, and the truck quivered. The man fell to the ground like a boneless heap of flesh. His expression was part dumbfounded and part pained. There was a patch of wetness at his crotch, and it stank. The patch continued spreading. A cow! It was only at that moment that the harvesters snapped out of their stupor. They looked at Meng Zhao as if they were looking at an apocalyptic beast. Meng Yishan rushed to his son and held him tightly. Enough! Do you want to go to jail? Meng Zhao sucked in a few deep breaths and gradually calmed down. Dad, are you okay? He carefully sized up his father. Of course I'm fine. Meng Yishan forced himself to smile through great difficulty. 
But his smile looked even more horrible than someone crying. But what about you? The harvester sighed. Men Zhao was too young and reckless. It was easy for him to throw a punch, but how was he supposed to put an end to the situation now? I was too rash. Meng Zhao felt a little frustrated as well. If I really wanted to beat up that Shen Rongfa, I should have waited until it was completely dark. I could have beaten him however I wanted then. Forget it, I already beat him up. Should I go and kick him a few more times though? I'll get my fill of beating him up, and next time, I'll be absolutely calm and remember my identity at all times. I'm supposed to be a gentle and elegant high school student. Once he made his decision, he exercised his fingers and walked to Shen Rongfa, who was puking and peeing himself. Blood gushed out of his nose. When he saw that Meng Zhao still wanted to hit him, he screamed like a eunuch who had gone back. Meng Yishan and his friends quickly stopped Meng Zhao. A cow, you're mad. Are you going to kill him? Dad, I was wrong. I'll change. Next time, I'll definitely change. Just let me kick him three more times today. Just three more. If not, just two more. If you really won't let me, just let me kick him one last time. Next time, I won't kick him anymore, I promise. Meng Zhao was engaged in a tug of war with his father, and even if eight men pulled him back, they could not manage to do it. Stop. At that moment, a man who was pale, had no facial hair on his face, and looked like an Alaf Kurinata strode over with a dark face. Behind him was a large, built man who was covered in a cloak soaked in monster blood. Superintendent Gu, Mr. Hu. The harvester's expressions changed drastically. Chapter 24, A Delightful Surprise Gu Ming was the business executive of Prosperous Resource Recovery Company and the direct superior of all the harvesters in there. In Meng Zhao's memory fragments, he was in cahoots with Shen Rongfa and did plenty of immoral things as well. The huge man in the bloody cloak behind him was the big boss of the company, a superhuman who was known as Tiger Down the Mountain. He was Chin Hu, and he had killed countless monsters. Who beat up manager Shen? Gu Ming stomped and screeched. Ugh. When Shen Rongfa saw his brother-in-law, he looked like a dog with broken legs would when it just found its owner. He could care less about his pain and crawled to Chin Hu. The two bodyguards also calmed down. They ran over in a panic and exaggerated what had happened when they retold the story. You broke a rare material, destroyed the company tablet, and even beat up a person? Gu Ming glared at Meng Yishan. Your son did this? Meng Yishan did not even look at this snake of a man. He just stared a tiger down the mountain. The unyielding attitude the middle-aged man gained from all the hardships in the military spread out from his body. Meng Yishan could endure plenty of things for his son's future, but once someone overstepped his limits, he would not back down, even if he faced a superhuman. Meng Yishan took a step forward and said loudly, Chairman Chin, I was the one who was in a conflict with Manager Shen. I'll pay for whatever losses were suffered. This has nothing to do with my son. His friends could not stand by and watch anymore. Prosperous was usually very harsh to them, and now, they even twisted the truth. There was absolutely no meaning for them to continue with this job. Manager Shen and his bodyguards were the ones who attacked first. Besides, Big Brother Meng might not have been the one who dropped the thing. That's right. I refuse to believe that there's no law in Dragon City. Are the Supernatural Tower and Survival Committee blind and deaf? Do we have no place to seek justice now? The harvesters stood out to protect Meng Yishan and Meng Zhao. All of them spoke at once to reveal the truth. You. Gu Ming's face turned dark. Half of the harvesters in the company were causing a ruckus, so the matter turned a little troublesome. He snuck a look at Chen Hu. When he saw that tiger down the mountain was still silent, he cursed Shen Rong for a few times before he braced himself and said, Stop with the ruckus. Of course the company is reasonable. Let's not talk about anything else. At the very least, Manager Shen was beaten up by this boy, no? He looked at Meng Zhao and smiled coldly as he said, Young man. I heard that you're still in high school and are about to sit for your national college examination, right? But now, you beat him up really badly, and if you're captured, you'll definitely be sentenced to jail. If you're imprisoned for a few years, your entire life will be ruined. You can't capture him. Meng Yishan cried out anxiously. Old Meng, this isn't a normal fight. Look at Manager Shen's injuries. Your son committed a crime. Tell me, should I capture him or not? Gu Ming said. Meng Yishan and the harvesters looked at each other at a loss. Young man, you were too rash. You shouldn't have done this. Gu Ming smirked coldly and shook his head as he criticized Meng Zhao. 
Meng Zhao did care about his words. If you want to call the police, you should hurry up and send Shen Rongfu to the hospital. You need to determine the severity of his injuries, after all. Gu Ming was lost. Why is the boy still being so stubborn? Chin Hu let out a huff under the bloody cloak and extended two fingers to pick up his brother-in-law. It's a perfectly executed ripple force. Tiger down the mountain lifted Shen Rongfu like a piece of foul-smelling meat, even though the man weighed more than 100 kilograms. The fierce light in his eyes was quite bright. It might seem as if he's beaten up miserably and is in a state worse than death, and hidden force from the hits will probably stay in his body for a few days so he'll be rolling around in pain when he drinks water, but not a single bone or important organ was damaged. He did not even lose a single tooth. If he's sent to test his injuries, he would not even be considered to be injured lightly. After saying that, he tossed his brother-in-law on the ground. Shen Rongtha wailed in pain and rolled around. High school students nowadays are becoming more and more remarkable. Chin Hu stared at Meng Zhao. His killing intent swept out at Meng Zhao like a saber. If Meng Zhao were a normal high school student, no matter how outstanding he was, he would be scared witless by Chen Hu's killing intent. But Meng Zhao remained calm. So? Chin Hu, are you interested in beating up a high school student to take revenge for your brother-in-law? Chin Hu let out a bark of laughter. Who do you think I am? Naturally. He would not hit Meng Zhao. All Dragon citizens knew how to fight, and Dragon City was made of a fearless and determined society. When the citizens had a conflict, they did not like to report to the authorities. They were much more used to using their fists to settle the matter. But they had a principle, soldiers could only fight against soldiers, generals could only fight against generals, normal people could only fight against normal people, and superhumans could only fight against superhumans. Within their ranks, they could fight to their heart's content and shed blood, but those who were willing to fight had to be willing to admit defeat. However, if superhumans used their strength to bully the weak and beat up normal people, they would be considered to have broken the laws of heaven. Shen Rongfa and his bodyguards were normal people. If they fought against Meng Zhao and were beaten up badly, at most, the police would come forth to settle the matter. But if Chen Hu attacked Meng Zhao, the nature of the fight would change. The supernatural tower would naturally send out elites and subjugate him as they would a monster. Boy, the ripple force you practiced isn't the normal ripple force we know, Chin Hu said faintly. You gained guidance from a master and learned a secret version of ripple force. I have a general understanding of what happened now. For the sake of your ripple force, tell me, how do you want this matter settled? Uck, ah. Shen Rongfu was so anxious that he started making incoherent sounds, but it affected his damaged teeth nerves and it hurt him so much that he started peeing himself again. Many of the harvesters did not expect that Mr. Hu, who was usually tyrannical and domineering, would be so cordial today. Meng Zhao knew that Chin Hu had managed to tell that the future version of the Ripple Force was extraordinary. This person could not decipher the exact details of his strength, which was why he pretended to be generous. He did not hold back. We can't tell who ruined the rare material, so both sides should cover half of the loss. Estimate a price and I'll immediately pay you. Also, since this happened, we definitely can't work in Prosperous anymore. Remember to have Shen Rongfa pay the performance bonus he owes my dad and his harvester team. We might as well use the chance to settle accounts now." Chin Hu frowned. What are you saying? You beat him up really badly. Even if we can't determine the severity of his injuries, don't you think you should still compensate for medical fees? Gu Ming immediately said. Shen Rongfa is injured. But my dad is also injured, Meng Zhao said. Shen Rongfa's bodyguards used an ancient martial art that has been lost in time but deals heavy blows. They shoved my dad away, and he fell on the ground like a kite with its string snapped. Who knows whether my dad's organs have shifted place or whether his bones have cracked. An ancient martial art that deals heavy blows? Everyone, including Meng Yishan had dumbfounded expressions that mirrored Ning Shou and Ning Zueshi's shock. Even if my dad is fine. They were still the ones who dealt this wound to me. Meng Zhao yanked his collar open to reveal the wound left behind by the stun baton. In truth, the bodyguards had brought out the stun batons to intimidate him. They did not have the courage to turn the settings to the highest voltage. When they hit someone, the victim will just feel slight pain. But an electrical burn left marks, and with the testimonies from the harvesters, if Meng Zhao insisted on saying that the electrical shock had been so bad that he could not even take care of himself, the situation would become troublesome. Boy, you're good. Chin Hu chuckled strangely. High school students nowadays are really interesting. Chairman Chin, 
If you think what I said is not appropriate, then tell me, how do you want this matter solved? Meng Zhao ignored Qin Hu's increasingly aggressive murderous intent. If he demanded an exorbitant price, Meng Zhao would cut down on the price he had to pay. Qin Hu cast a glance at Gu Ming. Gu Ming made some calculations and said softly, Mr. Hu, lately, the Golden Spirit's etherealized neurospheres are worth around 300,000 in the market if their condition is perfect. Then, it's 300,000. Boy, bring out 300,000, and we'll consider this matter to have ended. You can leave, and I will not cause you any further trouble. If anyone from Prosperous Stairs touch you, I will cut them up. Meng Zhao refused to take up his kind offer. Half of 300,000 is 150,000. I don't care who destroyed that etherealized neurosphere, and I'm not lacking that other 150,000, but even if Shen Rongfa is a bastard, he's still my family, Qin Hu said darkly. Am I, tiger down the mountain, not worth that other half of the 150,000? Meng Zhao fell silent. If you can't bring it out for the time being, it's fine. You can write an IOU. As I said, I'm not lacking money. Chin Hu's eyes flashed fiercely, and his voice turned cold. But if you don't treat me with respect, even if I don't move a finger, I will still crush you like an ant. His last sentence turned the atmosphere in the area grim. The people's visions became blurry. It was as if they were really watching a tiger staring at the teenager. Meng Zhao sighed. Chairman Chin, do we really have no room for discussion? Are you seriously going to sell this rare material to me at full price? Chin Hu was impatient. I'll say this one last time. 300,000, and then scram with that item. All right, then we don't need to sign any sort of contract. There are plenty of people watching here, and I believe in your reputation. Meng Zhao brought out his phone. I'll transfer the money now. A hey, cow? Meng Yishan was shocked. You have the money? Gu Ming was surprised. He knew about the Meng family's situation somewhat, and he refused to believe that Meng Zhao could bring out 300,000 without blinking an eye. Erk. Shen Rongfei could not care about his pain anymore. He started screeching like a pig being slaughtered. He's lying. He's definitely lying. Dad, I'll explain things to you later. It's clean money. Meng Zhao was calm. Chin Hu frowned slightly. There were plenty of superhumans and harvesters who were working at the battlefield in the north of the city. There were eyes everywhere, and he would not sink to the level of bullying a normal teenager in public. Superintendent Gu, take the money. Chin Hu did not care about measly 300,000. Gu Ming looked a little doubtful. Even after the money was transferred and he saw the five zeros behind the number three, he still could not wrap his head around what had happened. Chairman Chin, I gave you the 300,000. Now, this rare item is mine, right? Meng Zhao asked for confirmation. Chin Hu glared at him. It's just an etherealized neurosphere, so why would I break my promise? Tomorrow. Have your father come to the company to complete the procedures. Prosperous will not be taking in his harvesting team anymore. A hey cow, this is. Meng Zhao had had 300,000, but he spent it on a material that might end up useless. Meng Yishan was puzzled, and his heart ached. Many of the harvesters were also puzzled. They just stayed silent in a group around them. Dad, uncles, don't stand around daydreaming. Hurry up and help me use absolute ethanol to make silver nitrate. Meng Zhao pushed down the nervousness in his heart and picked up the black material as he observed it carefully. Meng Yishan was stunned. Silver nitrate was a common solution that was slightly corrosive and could kill bacteria. It was often used to clean the rotting flesh around a monster's eyes so that they could perfectly extract its eyeballs. This was not a monster's eyeball, so why did his son want silver nitrate? But his son brought about too much shock to everyone that night, and Meng Yishan had come to trust him somewhat. He did not ask further questions and used absolute ethanol to create a silver nitrate solution. Meng Zhao held his breath and used a pair of forceps to put the rare item into the silver nitrate solution. Ah! Someone cried out in surprise. How could Meng Zhao place the fragile etherealized neurosphere into a corrosive solution? No one could not stop him in time, and something unexpected happened. The outer shell of the rare material was swiftly corroded. Small bubbles emerged and started swirling slowly in the silver nitrate solution. Every time they swirled around, a little more of the black oxidized marks on the neurosphere's surface fell off, and it started glowing even brighter than before. In half a minute, the outer shell completely fell off. The rare item turned into a diamond that looked like a cat's eye. It was even more dazzling than the normal etherealized neurosphere. This is. 
Everyone's eyes sparkled because of the mysterious and unfathomable cat's eye stone. Meng Zhao released a sigh of relief, as if a huge burden had been removed from his shoulders. His protective clothing was drenched in cold sweat. This is a crystallized neurosphere, which is even rarer and more valuable than an etherealized neurosphere. Its market value is about one million, he said softly while holding his father's hand. If it were a normal etherealized neurosphere, Meng Zhao would not have acted in such a strange manner. He would have told his father on the spot so that he would not keep thinking about it. But the ability to identify a mutated etherealized neurosphere was definitely not something a high school student could have learned from a teacher or the internet. After all, the probability of a crystallized neurosphere appearing was less than 1%. If his father wanted to get to the bottom of things, it would be difficult for him to explain what had happened. But if he found a suitable excuse, Meng Zhao did not mind sharing some of his secrets with his family. In truth, he had been thinking about chatting with his family after the day was over once he smoothed out his thoughts. He could not just keep making his family worried about him over his wounds. But right then, there were plenty of harvesters watching them. Besides, Meng Zhao's memory shards were all over the place. Many of his techniques were in a disorderly mess. He could not be certain whether what he obtained was an etherealized neurosphere or a crystallized neurosphere. He was only 10% sure that what he had was a crystallized neurosphere. Hence, he had wanted to rest for a while and search for an excuse, such as. He peed himself because he was scared, and when he wanted to wear a diaper, he could get his father to a corner, and they could talk about this in private before they looked at the item carefully. But at that moment, he heard the screeches of a seven-eyed dragon wolf spider before it died. He decided to hurry and get his first bucket of gold, which was why he stopped caring about the rare material that did not belong to him. After all, the harvesting fee for a crystallized neurosphere was only a few tens of thousands. He did not expect that after many twists and turns, the rare material would end up being a crystallized neurosphere, and it even ended up in his hands. Chapter 25, Head Hunting One million? When all the harvesters heard the figure, they were shocked. Chin Hu's expression sank, while Gu Ming and Shen Rong for shuddered. Meng Zhao ignored them and explained to his father seriously, Dad, I admit that I did indeed want to examine it just now. After all, I've only heard about crystallized neurospheres, and I couldn't be sure. I just wanted to learn about it. But Dad, you were right. I have to be a righteous man. If it's not mine, I cannot take it, no matter what. So I thought, I'll let Superintendent Gu and Manager Shen worry about what it is. I had the same thought just now. When we entered that conflict with Manager Shen, that's that, and this is this. The item is theirs, I can't snatch it. That's why I suggested splitting the cost in half. If it's really a crystallized neurosphere, none of us will need to lose a few hundred thousand from this, and it'll be a good thing for all of us. I didn't expect that Manager Shen would refuse to accept my suggestion, and Superintendent Gu would not even bother to look at the material. That's why I could only take a big risk in buying the material. If I was wrong, then I'd accept the loss. If I was right, at least I would have bought it fair and square, right? When Meng Yishan heard this, he released a breath of relief. He looked at his friends, and a smile bloomed on his wrinkle-covered face. Meanwhile, Shen Rongfa and Superintendent Gu looked more miserable than if they had swallowed a kilogram of poop. They did not dare to look at Chin Hu's expression, so they could only glare at Meng Zhao. Chin Hu was so angry that he laughed. You're Meng Zhao, right? You're an interesting high school student. I'll remember you. He looked at the increasing number of onlookers around them, and the flesh on his face trembled from anger. Take your crystallized neurosphere and go. The crystallized neurosphere gave the harvesters confidence. They no longer felt as lost as they before, and they left with Meng Yishan and Meng Zhao. As they walked, their chests were puffed out. Wait. At that moment, the leader of another harvester team working under Prosperous called out to them. Old Meng. What are you going to do next? Old Li, you. Meng Yishan was a little surprised. Meng Zhao blinked and spoke before his father. My dad has already found a new source for carcasses. He also has the initial capital for his own company. He's going to start it now. Do you really have a new source of carcasses? Captain Li's eyes lit up. He fell in contemplation for a moment before he gritted his teeth and said, Big Brother Meng, how many carcasses will you have? Could you bring us with you? Meng Yishan was slightly stunned, but when he thought about it carefully, he did not find it strange. Under Shen Rongfa's management, all the harvester teams working for Prosperous were treated harshly, but every person there could only bear their anger silently. 
Even so, there was a limit to their patience. If Prosperous truly overstepped their limits, they would go to work for someone else. They had arms and legs, so there was no way they would go hungry. Even if Meng Yishan had really dropped the item, what happened today was still something that was commonly seen in the harvesting world. In truth, if Meng Zhao had not been quick, the Golden Spirit would have rotted away a long time ago, and they would not have been able to retrieve even a single material. At this moment, the managers who were more humane would just wave it off and put matters behind with just a few words. At most, they would just symbolically cut off some of the performance bonus. They would not act like Shen Rongfa and keep on demanding reparations. Many of the harvesters had a lot of grudges against Shen Rongfa. Captain Lee complained about him a lot when he drank, and what happened today was the last straw. He simply could not stand it anymore. Meng Yishan could understand Captain Lee's feelings, but it was something concerning many harvesters' livelihood. He had to think about his son's words carefully. A new source of carcasses? Meng Zhao decided to spill everything then. Unless it was absolutely necessary, he did not want to offend Chin Hu, because he was a superhuman. Hence, he had suggested for them to split the cost. If he did manage to unravel a crystallized neurosphere, he would not end up with room for maneuver. After he bought the item, if he were not afraid that the condition would be affected if he had it exposed to air for too long, he would not have chosen to reveal it in front of Chin Hu. But he had already offended the man, so he had nothing else to be afraid of. The battles were about to become more difficult. At that time, carcasses would not be lacking, but skillful harvesters would. If he wanted to make the company bigger and stronger, he had to fight hard whenever a chance arrived. A single Chin who could not stop him from seizing his fate in his hands. Uncle Li, we will definitely not lack carcasses. Forget about your harvester team, even if three or five more teams came, everyone would have a job to do and money to earn. You'll live a much more comfortable life as well. Meng Zhao said firmly. Meng Yishan did not know what had happened to his son, but he knew that his son would not speak without thinking, so he nodded and stood behind his back to support him. All right. Captain Li might not truly believe Meng Zhao, but he was unable to continue working in Prosperous anymore. He removed his protective clothing and said loudly, Mr. Hu, my harvester team has been working under your company for a few years, and Manager Shen as well as you have been taking care of us over this period of time. We get along pretty well, but all good things come to an end. We'll work with you until the end of the month, what do you say? Old Meng and Old Li are leaving? The other harvester teams who worked under Prosperous might not have publicly turned against Prosperous like Meng Yishan and Captain Li, but a few of the captains started whispering with their team members. Their eyes began sparkling. By the looks of it, if Meng Zhao had truly found a new source of carcasses, they would jump ship. Shen Rongfa and Superintendent Gu did not expect that Meng Zhao, who was a teenager who had yet to even graduate from high school, would be able to cause such a storm. They felt dizzy, and they did not know what they should do. A fierce light shone in Chin Hu's eyes. He could endure losing one measly crystallized neurosphere, but once the brat opened his mouth, there was a possibility that many of the skilled harvesters in his company would leave. The brat was headhunting. Brat. I've already asked you to leave with your crystallized neurosphere, but you just don't know how to be content, do you? You think that you can work on your own? Hey, looks like you just don't know how dark this field is. Chin Hu laughed strangely, and his bones started cracking under his cloak. They sounded like firecrackers. The expressions of Meng Yishan and the others changed swiftly. The strength of superhumans was simply too astonishing. But Meng Zhao remained unmoved. He was certain that Chin Hu would not dare to attack him in public. As for a few days later? A few days later, he would have contributed to society a lot more, and his strength would have increased by leaps and bounds. Why should he be afraid of one tiger down the mountain? Chin Hu did indeed not dare to fly off into a rage in public. He could only gather his murderous intent together and send it flying at Meng Zhao's face like a blade. But in his heart, he was shocked. Just what are the brat's nerves made of? He's not reacting at all. Isn't he a little too dense? He had been ready to fight him for a long time, but Meng Zhao was not scared at all. When he found that it was a little difficult for him to get out of this situation in a dignified manner, he suddenly heard a bark of laughter. My young friend, we're here. Chin Hu exploded in anger. Who is it? He saw an old man and a young girl walking slowly out of the corner of a street. They were not intimidated by his presence at all, but just stared at him curiously like they were observing a raging wild boar. Chin Hu was about to lose his temper when Gu Ming grabbed him. Ending. Gu Ming stuttered. 
Ning what? What's wrong with you now? Chin Hu shouted at him. White-haired ghostly hands Ning Shou Oh. Master Ning. Gu Ming was incredibly worked up. Ghostly hands Ning? Chin Hu observed him. He did not know Ning Shou Oh, but he knew the handsome man standing behind the grandfather-granddaughter pair. He was dressed in a white bio-fighting suit and had a long sword behind him. He had a pair of amorous eyes as well. Chin Hu sucked in a sharp breath. There was no place for him to have a fierce expression anymore. It morphed into a grotesque one for some time before he finally put on an obsequious smile as he jogged over. Big Brother Peng, why are you here? The Vice Captain of Thunderbolt, Zhang Yu Peng stared at him for a while as he tried to recall who he was. Old Hu, it's you. Young Hu, you mean. You can just call me Young Hu. I wouldn't dare to refer to myself as Old Hu in front of you. Chin Hu rubbed his hands and bent his back while he curried favor with Zhang Yu Peng. I was fortunate enough to hunt down a nine-winged golden eagle with your team last year. You know, it's that Hal Beast? That earth-shattering slash you delivered was simply amazing. I didn't expect that you would still remember me. It's seriously just, ah. It's just. Zhang Yu Peng smiled. I was free, actually. Elder Ning said that he had a young friend over here, so I came over to take a look with Elder Ning to see whether we'll have a chance to work together. A young friend of Ghostly Hands Ning? Chin Hu looked back at Meng Zhao in shock. Then, he saw Meng Zhao chatting with Ning Shuo, and, with great familiarity, he even showed Ning Shuo the crystallized neurosphere so that he could admire it. They looked like great friends despite the great difference in age between them. Chin Hu looked as if he had been punched in the face. It was only at that moment that he knew that he had made a misjudgment. No. It was not that he had made a misjudgment, but Gu Ming and Shen Rongfu were two pieces of trash who could not do anything but make things worse. It was especially so for Shen Rongfa. Chin Hu glared at Shen Rongfa, who shuddered. He really wanted to just crawl into a hole and hide. Now that things had progressed to this state, Chin Hu absolutely could not use force. They were both part of monster hunting superhuman fighting squads, but Thunderbolt was several times larger than Frenzied Saber Squad. He could not make an enemy of Meng Zhao in front of Zhang Yu Peng. He could only suppress the bloodthirst in his heart and put on a smile to wish Meng Zhao a safe journey. Meng Zhao pinched his father's waist so that he could snap out of his daze. Let's go. We have to look for a quiet place to talk to Elder Ning and Captain Zhang. The group was about to leave when Meng Zhao suddenly remembered something. He turned his head around and strode to Shen Rongfa. Shen Rongfa was so scared that he started shrinking into the ground like an earthworm. Manager Shen, don't be scared. I'm actually a gentleman. I just want what belongs to me. Meng Zhao extended his hand and said loudly. My dad gave you a store card worth 10,000 so that I could work in Prosperous. I would have let it slide, since we were both willing to work with each other, but now, I don't want to spend even a minute longer in Prosperous. Please return the store card to me." Shen Rongfa was dumbfounded. He had completely forgotten about this matter. Chin Hu was also shocked. He was talking about a store card worth 10,000 in front of the Vice Captain of Thunderbolt. It was complete disrespect to him, Tiger Down the Mountain. Ning Zueshi could not hold it back. She snickered. Her bell-like laughter crept into Chen Hu's ears, and it was like a bolt of lightning that was about to send fire gushing out of his eyes. Shen. Rong. Fa. Shen Rongfa brought out the store card while trembling. Meng Zhao grabbed it with satisfaction. He then thought about it and said, Oh, by the way, there's something else. Tomorrow, my dad and my dad's friends will be coming to the company to settle accounts. I remember that you have been deducting their wages to pay for their insurance, and you said that you have been paying for their insurance with the highest criterion, right? So you must have the original copy of the insurance policy, right? Please prepare the documents. In the future, we will be paying for the insurance on our own. We'll be coming over tomorrow to verify it so that the accounts are clear and we can have proof. Then, we won't get engaged in any sort of argument in the future. That's all. I'll have to trouble you for that, Manager Shen. And thank you, Chairman Chin. Meng Zhao put the store card into his pocket and left without turning his head around. As Ching Hu watched the group leave, he scowled so much that the frown looked as if it was going to become a permanent fixture on his face. He turned his head around and saw his brother-in-law's panicked expression. He thought about it and asked in disbelief, The heck? Did you actually take the employee's insurance as well? Brother-in-law, please listen to me. Shen Rongfu was scared witless. He could no longer care about the pain in his cheek and just spoke while crying. I was just. I was just blinded for a moment. What's the point in me keeping you around? 
Chin Hu slapped Shen Rongfei's swollen face. The sound was ten times louder than when Meng Zhao had slapped him. Shen Rongfei screamed in pain and tumbled eight times. He also coughed up blood. Meng Zhao had been kind enough to let him preserve his teeth, but Chin Hu made him lose them. Chapter 26, An Amazing Person in the Deep Web Meng Zhao had a pretty good time negotiating with Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt was currently building a youth training camp, and it specialized in training new blood. They killed a large number of monsters, and they needed normal harvesters with a lot of experience. These harvesters were expected to work perfectly with the youths immediately after they were deployed. Meng Yishan and his team were veteran harvesters who had been in the field for almost 20 years. While they could not take care of super beasts, they had no problem in dealing with common monsters. They quickly became partners. Now, forget about two harvester teams, even if all the harvester teams from Prosperous came over, they would not have a problem. While everyone was delighted, Meng Zhao asked Ning Shuo to handle the crystallized neurosphere so that he could buy himself some cultivation resources. Coincidentally, there will be a rare materials trading fair three days later, and the standard is pretty high. You might be able to sell the crystallized neurosphere for a high price there. My young friend, will you be interested in taking a look-see? Ning Shuo asked with a smile. Meng Zhao agreed with delight. The change in the situation and the delightful surprise during the night caused the harvesters to be incredibly excited. While they were on their way back to the main city, they talked about it while they dreamed about their bright future. Meng Zhao lay in the deepest part of the compartment with his father's coat over his body. He closed his eyes, pretending to be asleep, but he was really thinking. Too many things had happened, and he needed to comb through everything carefully. First was the way for him to earn contribution points. Meng Zhao had noticed something. When he taught normal citizen Chu Fei Shang reckless bull technique, he only managed to teach 10% of it, and he only gained 10 contribution points from it. But when he guided elite citizen Ning Shou in executing the three consecutive diagonal plucks from seven dissection methods performed in reverse, he also earned only a dozen points. Logically speaking, the difference between a normal citizen and an elite citizen should not be this small. As he thought about it, he found that there were only two possibilities for it. One. When it came to the seven dissection methods performed in reverse, he did not cause too much of a change in the future. Even without him, there was a possibility that Ning Shuo would understand a brand new three consecutive diagonal plucks soon enough. In fact, in his memory fragments, the future seven dissection methods performed in reverse might have actually been perfected and upgraded by Ning Shuo. This was highly likely. Since Ning Shuo's hands and side had been damaged and he could not be treated, he had to retire from the front lines. This meant that he had to put all his attention into theories and research, which meant that perfecting the seven dissection methods performed in reverse would happen naturally. The second was simply because Ning Shuo was old. His future was basically set in stone. Chu Fei Shuang, however, was still young and in his prime. He had endless possibilities in his future. After Meng Zhao returned from the apocalypse, he refused to believe that he could not change the future. The countless ways he could explore it might be the key to how many contribution points he could earn. This means that I should search for the young and ignorant youths who have bright futures and trick them, I mean, guide them, right? This posed an entirely new problem. If he guided them one by one to harvest their contribution points, the efficiency would be too low. What then if he posted Reckless Bolt Technique and the future version of Ripple Force online so that everyone could download it for free? Or what if he looked for the survival committee and the supernatural tower to tell them part of the secret? Could he get a large amount of resources and support from the officials? And would his contribution points instantly jump up to exorbitant figures? After Dragon City transmigrated, many of the citizens awakened to supernatural abilities. In the beginning, quite a number of people chose to hide their abilities and refused to say anything no matter what. They were afraid that if they said something, the officials would capture them and cut them up for research. Meng Zhao could understand their thoughts, and he partially supported their cautious attitude. But the problem he faced was different. On one hand, Dragon City was about to face danger. He could not change the tides with his power alone. Besides, all Dragon citizens were transmigrators. Many of the citizens had unique supernatural abilities. If they were really captured for research, that meant that tens of millions of citizens would end up on the dissection table and come out as sashimi. After decades of development, the officials and the normal citizens' attitude towards supernatural abilities was pretty mature now, and by that, he meant that they were very calm about it. Many of the citizens took the initiative to report to the officials after they awakened their abilities. 
they would then be praised by the local authorities and surrounded by flowers and passionate citizens. However, being reborn or being able to predict certain shattered scenes from the future was rather unique. Meng Zhao could not treat them at the same level as common supernatural abilities like molding fireballs. Also, how much should he tell his dad, mom, and younger sister, and through what sort of way should he tell them? Even if he would not be mentioning his rebirth, he should at least let them know that he had recovered to how he was before, and he would be getting stronger as well. Then, he would ask them to not be worried about his future. Besides, the danger was around the corner. Their family had to prepare itself beforehand. This was an important matter. Men Zhao thought about the pros and cons about it calmly, and he paid special attention to the hidden dangers. By the looks of it, if he worked together with the officials, the efficiency of him contributing to society would increase by a hundredfold, and he would even become a hero who was the center of everyone's attention. His family would naturally enjoy the best possible treatment as well. He could give his dad and mom treatment only given to public servants, have his younger sister enter a key middle school, and his family could move to apartments available only to high-level talents. He would not be going overboard with that, right? But why was the center of his eyebrows aching, and why was he feeling so uneasy? There's something wrong. There's a hidden danger I haven't thought about yet, and it's very dangerous. It's highly likely that it will threaten my family's lives. In fact, we might even end in a state worse than death. Men Zhao shuddered. Suddenly a blotchy picture appeared in his mind. He saw a street bustling with people and a normal citizen suddenly scream in a strange manner. His brain split apart like a man-eating flower, and several tentacles covered in spikes came out from his cranial cavity. In an instant, those tentacles wrapped themselves around the head of the citizen. Screams and chaos rose. When the police and superhumans arrived to kill the monster, the citizen who was bound by it had long since stopped breathing. Brain maggots a unique monster that appeared at the later stage of the war. It can stick itself to a human's brain as a parasite and control the central nervous system and the reactions of the muscles. They can turn humans into monsters in human skin. This is the common tactic the monsters use during the later stage of the war. They use brain maggots to assassinate important people in Dragon City with the intention to destroy Dragon City from the inside. Then, bits of red appeared in Meng Zhao's mind. His eyes filled with wisdom and looked incredibly profound. That's right. Even now, there are plenty of monsters who are skilled in attacks on the mind. Once the war becomes more violent overall, a lot of super beasts who can control the mind will pop up. The laws in the other world might be strange, but there is a certain pattern to them at the end of the day. As long as math, physics, and chemistry laws still work, monsters that are incredibly large but agile and invincible will not appear. After Dragon City completes the upgrade of its heavy industry and a large number of soldiers appear, we will no longer be lacking in heavy firepower and ammunition. It will be difficult for monsters to fight against humans head on. But during the long period of war against humans, monsters will also become increasingly smarter. Many of the super beasts will learn how to communicate, work together, and form groups. Gradually, they will form something that is similar to a civilization. Monster civilization is the thing that will threaten the civilization of Dragon City. If I reveal my secret, there's a high chance that I will end up as a target of assassination. In fact, there's an even worse outcome. I'll get captured by monsters and sent to the high-grade super beasts who are really smart and have secret mind-related techniques. It will open up my head and eat my brains. My brain is still too weak. I can't obtain all of the memory fragments hidden in the deep parts of my soul, but if a king of super beasts who has a brain that weighs several tons ate my brain, could it digest it and instantly predict the future? Even if I am provided with tight protection by the supernatural tower, could the monsters attack my family instead? If I tell my family all of my secrets, would their brains then turn into the monsters' targets as well? Even if we end up destroying all monsters, in the period of time where we fight to conquer the other world, there will be plenty of people who will betray Dragon City like Zuo Haoran, and there will also be people who will have their minds controlled by the creatures of the other world. How would I know who deserves my absolute trust aside from my family? Meng Zhao's thoughts raced. He was not a saint. Saving Dragon City was one thing, but if he had to sacrifice himself and even his family for Dragon City, then it would be an entirely new matter. I can't say it. Before I have the strength to suppress all of the other world and find a suitable method, I absolutely can't say it. But I'll need to spread a lot of future technology and martial arts to be able to contribute and increase my strength so that I can become the teacher of countless youths who are lost. I'll also have to be known as a monstrous genius by all the elites in the field. 
I'll have to perform outstanding feats time and time again. Sooner rather than later, I'll end up showing my might, and I won't be able to hide my skills. Then, I'll need to come up with a suitable explanation, one that will help me cover everything. While he was thinking, his father came over to tuck him firmly under the coat. A thought appeared in Meng Zhao's head, and he opened his eyes to look at his father. Dad, you don't have to worry about what happened today, he said as he deliberated his words. Half a year ago, I got to know of an amazing person in the deep web, and he taught me many strange and rare abilities. I'm already mostly recovered from my injuries, and I might still be able to get into college. At that time, you and mom can just wait to live a blessed life. Meng Yishan was shocked. Why are you still going to those harmful websites? Dad, I told you multiple times that the life science forum in the deep web isn't a harmful place. Many of the martial arts maniacs and mad scientists spread their profound insights there. It's a place filled with risks and fortuitous chances. Don't worry, I've already suffered once last year. I know my boundaries this time, Meng Zhao said in a firm voice. Meng Yishan did not quite trust his son's words, but when he thought about it, he found that he was old now. If his son had not shown his might, the day would have been very different. He sighed and did not say anything. He was just worried about whether Chin who would take revenge. Dad, you need skills for everything you do. If we're not skilled, everyone can just walk all over us. But as long as my fist is strong enough. Ha <laughs> hey. Even if Chin who pretends to be Hello Kitty and comes up to me, he'll still be unable to do anything but pretend to be cute. Min Zhao's words were crude, but he was incredibly logical. As long as I can get into college, I'll have the college as my backup. Will he dare to hurt an undergraduate? Chapter 27, Getting Rid of Pests Meng Yishan's eyes lit up, but he started getting anxious about the possibility of Meng Zhao getting into college as well as that he might not get in. It's not easy getting into college. Are you really confident that you'll be able to get in? Etch. Social ethos is getting worse. Almost 20 years ago, you wouldn't see people like Shen Rongfa and Chin Hu around. Meng Zhao understood what his father meant. When Dragon City had just transmigrated, even though they lacked resources, had to live in a harsh environment, and faced great pressure from just trying to survive, the social ethos had been incredibly good. The citizen spirits were pure and bright, like pure gold. Everyone worked together to fight. There was no distinction between whose status was higher or lower. They just had different jobs. At that time, people like Zhuo Haoran, Shen Rongfa, and Chen Hu were few and far in between. Those who dared to flaunt special privileges, act high and mighty, and put on an act were all despicable scum, and everyone spat on them if they saw them. But humans were beings who would only share their misfortune together, never their riches. This was human nature. In the ten years after the transmigration, monsters became fewer, and their lives became richer. The threat to their survival was no longer around, and they became sure that once the fog dissipated, Dragon City's Steel Army would sweep through all of the other world, just like how the colonists in the past used hundreds of guns to conquer other people's lands. The social ethos in Dragon City gradually turned flighty. Many of the superhumans who were 40 or 50 years old gave birth to children. Powerful superhuman families started appearing, and social ranks were gradually set in stone. All sorts of bad traditions that existed on Earth started emerging once more. Things such as the sons of rich families bullying the weak with their power, the survival committee making insider dealings, or the extravagant lifestyles of those powerful superhuman families were not news. Zhou Haoran, Shen Rongfa, and Chen Hu were just the epitome of the flighty era. Meng Zhao could vaguely remember that due to the conflicts in the internal parts of Dragon City, they would suffer a huge setback when they went up against the other civilizations in the other world. When Earthlings noticed that the other world was not as simple as they thought it to be and had to face the threat of death again, they became united once more, but not all cracks could be mended, because there wasn't enough time for that. It's because we have plenty of pests that eat up the inner part of Dragon City. The glorious extraordinary disaster ended up hurting us badly because of it. Meng Zhao could not help but think about things he remembered. If I start slapping faces and completely get rid of these people's flighty and arrogant behavior, will I be considered to have protected the harmony of society and promoted our civilization's rise to power? Is it a major contribution? After he managed to make his father stop worrying about him, he received another delightful surprise. Special Citizen Bei Jia Kao Dark Witch's possibility of being corrupted has been reduced by 2%. Increased contribution points by 1000. In his previous life, there were two major reasons that resulted in his younger sister being corrupted. 
The first was his mother being injured by monsters, and the second was his father being cheated by Shen Rongfa. Now, the two landmines had been swept aside. This meant that the possibility of her being corrupted was reduced. Men Zhao smiled, but his expression stiffened the next moment. Hang on a minute. This time, it's 2%. Last time, it was 3%. I've just gotten rid of two landmines, and you're telling me that this only reduced the possibility of Bei Jiakao being corrupted by 5%? So the whole event had nothing to do with external factors? All this talk about the darkness of society and the loopholes in laws are just excuses, right? That stupid girl is just born to be the dark witch, huh? Meng Zhao gritted his teeth. Once he got back, he shook the girl awake. It was 5.30 in the morning, and the girl was deep in the throes of sleep. When she was suddenly woken up, she was about to throw a temper tantrum. Meng Zhao smiled and said gently, Young cow, I got you tasty stuff. Wanna eat some? Bei Jia Cao's eyes immediately lit up. I'm eating it. Of course I'm eating it. You're awesome, big brother. Come. Drink it all in one gulp. It's sweet, and it tastes great. Meng Zhao pulled out the ring of a concentrated can of nutritional fluid. The girl did not know what was going on and just drank it all in one go. Suddenly, her eyes became even wider than eggs. Just when she was about to spit the liquid out, Meng Zhao pinched her nose and forced her to swallow it. Ack! What's that? It's so bitter. It's seriously bitter. The girl stuck her tongue out and grabbed her throat as she rolled around on the bed. This is called the highly effective tranquilizing and brain nourishing fluid. It's a high-grade medicinal fluid thunderbolt made on their own. It can stimulate the activity of brain cells and promote the growth of the central nervous system. It can also increase your mental strength, so it's the best for people like you, whose minds are filled with who knows what. Meng Zhao smiled faintly. Earlier, he had asked about cultivation resources from Ning Shuo, and the man recommended two medicinal fluid meal sets that Thunderbolt used to cultivate new members based on the different situations of Meng Zhao and Bei Jiakao. It would provide them great help in their cultivation, and their contents were pure. There were absolutely no side effects, and they were not available on the market. The fluid's only weakness was that. It was rather bitter. Usually, everyone drank it together with a rather sweet drink. Meng Zhao just forgot about it because he was in a hurry to give some supplements to his sister. Mom. Big brother is bullying me again. Bei Jiakao wailed. What's wrong? Bei sucks and limped out of her room. Mom, keep this medicinal fluid. Next time, when I'm not at home, please monitor Jia Cao and make sure that she drinks it every day. Meng Zhao brought out a week's worth of cultivation medicinal fluid set meals for middle school students. With words that every mother could understand, he said, if she drinks these, she'll be able to get into a key high school. And this is really expensive. One costs a few hundred. A few hundred for one bottle? Bei Suxin was shocked. In an instant, she stood on the same side as her son. Then I'll make sure that your sister drinks it all, until not a single drop is left. Bei Jiakao was rendered speechless. She looked dumbfounded, and her enraged expression amused Meng Zhao, because all she could do was seethe. She did not have the guts to say anything. All right, stop pouting. I seriously brought something good for you. He brought out a few fast food packs Thunderbolt used when they fought in the wilderness. The monster jerky in them was surprisingly good. You didn't poison it, right? Bei Jiakao looked wary. Nope. You didn't put laxatives in it either, right? The girl was still hesitant. If you're not going to eat it, fine. I'll eat it myself. Who said I'm not eating it? At least you still have a conscience. The future dark witch quickly snatched the pack over and tore open the packaging. She took a deep breath of it, and her eyes instantly crinkled. While she was happily munching away, Meng Jiao told his family everything that had happened during the night in a simple fashion once he got rid of all the unnecessary parts of the story. He also told them that he had mostly recovered. Of course, he also told them the source of his strength came from the teachings of an amazing person in the deep web. What? Bia Jia Kao cried out in surprise. Why are you still going to those harmful websites? Meng Jiao felt gloomy. Why is your reaction the same as Dad's? I already told you that life science forums aren't harmful websites. Besides, you're still young. How would you know what's harmful and what's not? Bei Jiakao placed her hands on her hips. Stop looking down on me. If you have the guts, bring your handphone and laptop over. We'll check it. Meng Zhao stuffed her mouth with a large piece of monster jerky. He coughed dryly. Anyway, 
The case with the crystallized neurosphere tells us that you have to be like dad and me. You must be upstanding, honest, and kind, because good people will be rewarded. Also, we have to believe in the law, because most superhumans are good people. Chin Hu is really powerful, but why didn't he dare to hurt me when I'm just a powerless and weak high school student? Because there's laws, and they are supported by the supernatural tower and all of Dragon City. At the same time, they're supporting the millions of other normal Dragon citizens. So if you run into anything, don't take unnecessary pains to solve a problem, alright? You have to give the law a chance, got it? Bei Jiankao did not seem to have understood him. She only cared about eating, and her mouth was oily from all the stuff she ate. Meng Zhao sighed. Ah, forget it. I am unable to explain things clearly for the time being. In any case, don't cause trouble. If anyone bullies you, come back and tell me immediately. I'll help you exact vengeance 100 fold. If you want to bully others, tell me as well. I'll beat them until they start crying for their parents. The future Dark Witch immediately raised her hand. What if you're the one bullying me? Men Zhao thought about it and comforted her. Then endure it. If you endure it, you'll get used to it. After Meng Zhao ate the egg pancake with steamed bread pieces stuffed with luncheon meat, he took a nap for half an hour. Then, he went to school. Even though there were still some monster carcasses left in the district and the air was filled with a pungent smell, the residents had already returned to their previous lives. Elderly men and women woke up early in the morning to train, and children could be seen playing around. The breakfast stalls were already set up at the entrance of the market. The pan-fried dumplings, fried dumplings, and egg pancakes let out sizzling sounds on metal baking pans. The owners and customers chatted and laughed with each other, and their voices formed the music of the world. They were like the sturdiest shields that blocked off the presence of monsters. Men Zhao ran into Granny Wang at the foot of the apartment. The old woman held her bio pad and hummed a pop song from when she was young. Her kindly appearance was a stark contrast to how she had been swinging her shotgun the night before. Granny Wang, you're taking your dog out on a walk? Meng Zhao greeted her. What's wrong with me taking my dog out today? We just had a few bugs come to our district. No monster in the world will be able to stop this old woman from taking her dog out for a walk, Granny Wang said in a voice full of power and glared at him. Meng Zhao smiled. Indeed. Regardless of whether it was zombies, monsters, the extraordinary beings in the future, or any sort of evil spirit, their lives had to go on. No one could stop dragon citizens from living out their plain and happy lives. Chapter 28 The Study Group Has Been Cancelled When Meng Zhao entered the classroom, the students were talking in groups. During the monster invasion, many of the students had fought together with their parents, and those who had killed some monsters felt smug. They bragged about their achievements while exaggerating things. One of the boys was injured lightly and he unwrapped his dressing so that the girls could see his terrifying wound. They screeched in a semi-genuine manner. Meng Zhao, I heard that a mysterious super beast appeared in Blessed Heavenly Garden last night. Was it terrifying? Was it exciting? When the students saw him enter, they immediately surrounded him. Fighting monsters was a pastime dragon citizens loved hearing about, and some monster fanatic had posted the picture of the ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle online. Even though its brain was reduced to a bloody mess, the people could tell how extraordinary it was by the bewitching eyes on its golden wings. Men Zhao thought about it. It was rather scary, but also a little exciting. His classmates were really disappointed. But when they thought about Meng Zhao's average and sloppy fighting strength, they realized that when the mysterious super beast appeared, he was probably hiding in a sanctuary while shivering. How would he know the details? So, they decided not to get to the bottom of it and reveal his shortcomings. Chapter 29 are you a demon? Everyone, including Zhuo Haoran, were dumbfounded. In the absolute silence, the homeroom teacher walked into the classroom with a hearty smile. Students, we're halting the morning self-study session for the time being. I'd like to praise Chu Fei Shuang. Not only are his results good, he is also the pride and joy of the entire class. He walked to the podium, threw his head back, and drank tea from a transparent glass bottle. He got some tea foam into his mouth before he finally noticed that something was off with the class. Class rep, what's going on? Zuo Haoran looked as if someone had stuffed a bad egg into his throat. He could not swallow it, but he could not spit it out either. Meng Zhao stood up and lowered his head to say, Mr. Wang, I made a mistake. Please scold me. Meng Zhao, what did you do this time? The homeroom teacher was puzzled. He just heard from Chu Fei Shang that Meng Zhao had decided to work hard and his learning attitude was pretty good. 
Wang Longjin was rather happy about it, so what happened now? Here's what happened. Yesterday, I did egg on Chu Fei Shang to form a study group, but I was only thinking about helping the whole class get better together. Meng Zhao spoke in a troubled tone, but after class ended, Chu Fei Shang came to me and said that the super reckless bull force was too high end, and he did not quite understand it when he practiced it. He could not bear the responsibility if he taught the class wrong and caused a setback before their national college exam. He had only agreed to it because in a moment of impulsiveness. After he calmed down and saw that the matter was getting out of hand, he became frightened because he's an honest kid, you know? So he asked me whether there was any way for him to back out. He didn't want to deal with it anymore. The homeroom teacher and the students were entranced by his words. Okay. And what happened afterwards? I thought he was right. If we really misled our classmates, we wouldn't be able to make up to them even if they killed us. So, I came up with a stupid idea, we'd pretend that the super reckless bull force came from the deep web. Didn't I suffer from it last year? That's why I thought of it. Meng Zhao looked like he was about to cry, but there were no tears in his eyes. Fei Shang is an honest kid, you know? He actually believed in my words and seriously told that to some of the students. In the end though, some bastard who should fall into a ditch, step on poop, get diarrhea, trip over his own feet, and never get married ratted us out. I see. The students realized what had happened. Complicated gazes went to Zhuo Haoran. His handsome face turned red, then green, then white, then black. It was as if he were poisoned. The homeroom teacher coughed loudly. Meng Zhao, manners. Please remember them. I'm sorry. I'm just blaming myself and just got too angry, that's why all these crude words came out of my mouth. Everyone knows that I'm usually very polite. Meng Zhao bit his lip, and with hope, he said in a quivering voice, Mr. Wang, does the super reckless bull force really have no problem? Of course it doesn't. The homeroom teacher cleared his throat and said with a beaming smile, Everyone, you heard it, right? It's all a misunderstanding. Chu Fei Shang's super reckless bull force is not a deviant martial art from the deep web. It's a peaceful technique that allows you to get stronger progressively, and it's a basic force execution method that is very orthodox. As long as I teach it to you, you can practice it with no worry whatsoever. The homeroom teacher was beaming, and his voice was much louder than usually. Yesterday, after he was scolded by the teaching director, he searched for some of the students who stayed in the dorms and asked them about it. Then, he learned that there was really a method called super reckless bull force, which could instantly increase their strength by a few percent. When he heard about it, he knew that it was nothing good. He was so anxious that he could not sleep the entire night. The National College Examinations regulations in regards to forbidden medicine and deviant martial arts were becoming stricter by the year. If he did not stop this in time and there were some serious consequences, forget about being a homeroom teacher, he could also kiss his career as a teacher goodbye. So, in the morning, he called Chu Fei Shang over with the intention to scold him and make him dissolve the study group. But what he did not expect was that once Chu Fei Shang executed his super reckless bull force, he would be absolutely stunned. No one else but the homeroom teachers in the third year of high school could tell just how valuable was this basic force execution method. When it came to fighting power, homeroom teachers might not be able to compare with the monster hunters who often went into the fog to fight monsters. But when it came to the standards of teaching and analyzing basic techniques, most of the superhumans could not compare to the veteran teachers. Wang Longjin immediately realized that he had just struck gold. After watching Chu Fei Shang demonstrate the technique a few times, he gained a vague understanding of it, and he became eager to try it out. The urge, in fact, was about to explode from his blood. He was shocked and beside himself with joy. If Chu Fei Shang was willing to teach the entire class such a powerful force execution technique, then how high would Class 6's average score during the National College examination be? Marks were not just the student's lifeblood, but also the teacher's lifeblood. There were eight third year classes in ninth high school. The two rocket classes, of course, fought hard to compete against each other, but the other six strolling classes were also fighting hard with each other. If Class 6 managed to take the lead in terms of scores, he he, he could get promoted, get an increase in salary, marry a fair, rich, and beautiful girl, and reach the pinnacle of his life. The homeroom teacher had grand ambitions in his heart. He made the decision on the spot to stand firmly on his student's side. Even if he had to go up against the teaching director when it came to this, he would do it without flinching. I see, so that's how it is. Once Meng Zhao heard the homeroom teacher's explanation, 
He finally released a sigh of relief and patted his chest with a smile. Thank goodness. Trouble is over, and everything is fine now. Wait. The conflict has already escalated to the point that it's really bad. I wonder if Fei Shang will still be willing to teach us. He frowned. The students felt their hearts clench. Fei Shang, everyone believed in those slanderous remarks just now and refused to trust you. They wanted to leave the study group. You were wronged by us, so do you feel aggrieved and even dispirited? Do you not want to teach us anymore? Meng Zhao stared at Chu Fei Shang. Chu Fei Shang was absolutely lost. Why? The students were also dumbfounded. They were just hesitating. They did not say that they wanted to quit. I know that you're an honest person, and it's very easy for honest people to be bothered by something and unable to let it go. You must be so mad right now but unable to throw a temper tantrum because of your dignity, right? Meng Zhao kept winking at him. I, the huge, white bear scratched his head. I wasn't able to react to what happened just now, but now that I think about it, I do feel a little sad. Chu Fei Shuang. The homeroom teacher turned pale with shock. All his dreams about promotion, higher salary, marrying a beautiful girl, and reaching the pinnacle of his life were dashed with his words. The students glared at Zhuo Haoran. What the heck? This pretty boy was the one who misled them with all his talk about deviant martial arts and cheating during the national college examination. He even put on such airs when he said that. Now that they thought about it carefully, Meng Zhao's analysis was definitely right. Zuo Haoran was definitely the one who reported them. What a bastard. Zuo Haoran was dumbfounded, but he still wanted to defend himself. Even if he could not be considered to be innocent. Mr. Wang, we have to think of a way to comfort Chu Fei Shang's injured heart, or else, he'll feel morose and might miss a few key points when he teaches us, so we won't be able to learn the real deal by then. What should we do if that happens? Meng Zhao asked seriously. The students sucked in sharp breaths. Teaching something? Learning, and answering questions was something that had a huge difference depending on how serious the teacher and the learner were. Chu Fei Shang was the only one who knew super reckless bull force, so who could tell if he only taught half of what he knew? Immediately, the students began to hate Zhuo Haoran even more. The homeroom teacher immediately said, Chu Fei Shang, you'll be contributing greatly to the entire class. Everyone, including me, will be very grateful to you. Mr. Wang, gratitude alone won't be enough. I think he needs material stimulation. Chu Fei Shang is shy, so he won't be able to find it in himself to speak. But I made a huge mistake, so I can be shameless to help him ask. Since we're going to promote it publicly, this will no longer be something limited to the students only. Won't the school reward him, such as favoring him with cultivation resources? Meng Zhao stared at his homeroom teacher. His current self did not possess the fear normal high school students had toward their homeroom teachers. He treated them as negotiation targets in a business field. They should make the trade fairly and benefit each other, no? The homeroom teacher's expression became stiff. If the super reckless bull force spread through the entire school, the school would definitely not hold back in rewarding him. But he wanted to lead the charts in terms of scores. At the very least, he wanted class 6 to raise above the others in the national college examination. Since he did not want the other classes to know about it, he could not have the school favor Chu Fei Shang in terms of resources. I heard that the school has originally distributed extra cultivation resources to each class so that they can compensate the class leaders when they manage a class, because they need to waste time and energy to do so. If Chu Fei Shang really has to bear with his grievance and teach everyone super reckless bull force, the time and energy he'll waste will be even more than that of normal class leaders. Isn't it logical to give him part of those resources? Meng Zhao's eyes lit up as if he had only thought of it by pure accident. The students began talking among themselves. The school did indeed give each class an extra amount of resources, but not every class leader had them. Based on the rules, only the class rep got them. The class rep was usually the strongest person in a class. The rules were clear and transparent. Whoever could not accept it could challenge the class rep. They could let their fists do the talking, and no one could say anything about it. The homeroom teacher scowled. The teaching director had personally placed his nephew in class 6, and his intentions were very clear, even if he said nothing about it. Even though Wang Longjin was not afraid of the teaching director, he did not want to offend him just like that. Mr. Wang, you don't have to create trouble for yourself. If we were any other class, perhaps we might end up fighting for that bit of cultivation resources, but we will definitely not do that. Our class rep is a kind person. He thinks about the glory of the class all the time and cares about us. 
for the benefit of the class, while he might not give up all the resources, he will definitely not hesitate to give up half of them. Isn't that right, class rep? Zuo Haoran stuttered. He could not say anything. The students could not help but snicker. The entire class was filled with a happy atmosphere. Wang Tao, do you think the class rep will hesitate? Meng Zhao turned toward Fatty Jr. Fatty Jr. snorted a few times coldly. Gu Fang, tell me, what sort of person is our class rep? Meng Zhao asked the prettiest girl in class. In his memory fragments, Gu Fang was the most eager among the girls when she pounced on Zhuo Haoran during their high school reunions. When she was drunk, she even mentioned that Zhuo Haoran and her had once flirted a lot with each other during high school. Gu Fang's face turned red. She lowered her head and said, the class rep isn't a petty person. Look. Everyone is able to see the truth. Men Zhao looked at the homeroom teacher, then at the class rep. His gaze was like a whistling arrow. In an instant, all the students' gazes turned into sharp arrows that could pierce through hearts. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. All of the arrows shot at the class rep until he was full of holes. Zuo Haoran noticed that even Gu Fang was staring at him with a complicated look. His mind went blank, and he struck at the table. Mr. Wang, as long as it's beneficial to the entire class, I will definitely not complain about it. While he appeared to be full of righteousness, his heart was bleeding. If he knew this would happen, he would not have let his mouth run to provoke Meng Zhao. With just a few words, half of the cultivation resources his uncle got for him after a great deal of effort was gone because he was turned into a scapegoat. Meng Zhao was a demon. Meng Zhao, you were in a hurry to go back yesterday and didn't join the study group, right? You seriously missed something great. Another student said with a grin. He was Fatty Jr., and his real name was Wang Tao. Last night, Big Brother Xiong taught us the super reckless bull force, and it was really amazing. I just practiced it a bit, and I felt my strength grow by leaps and bounds. I feel like I can kill a monster with just one punch. Fatty Jr. put on a bodybuilder's pose. You didn't see what happened at that time. Everyone looked like they had contracted the mad cow disease. They were so violent. You're the one who contracted the mad cow disease. Another student who joined the study group laughed and rebuked him. Meng Zhao, don't listen to Fatty Wang run his mouth off. Big Brother Xiong's super reckless bull force is the real deal. You don't rely on your power rampaging in your body to fight like a madman. You can stay back to learn today. After you try it, you'll understand. That's right, after you test it, you'll definitely be singing praises to it. Train well with Big Brother Xiong, and we'll guide you as well. We'll definitely help you catch up to the training you missed. Fight to get into. The best college. Aside from offending the class rep, Meng Zhao actually had a pretty good reputation in class. Chu Fei Shang even mentioned in the study group that if Meng Zhao had not said anything, he would not have revealed super reckless bull force in public. Hence, everyone was especially friendly to Meng Zhao. While everyone chatted animatedly, they suddenly found that the main character of the entire discussion was not around. Huh? Where's Big Brother Xiong? Big Brother Xiong is in the teacher's office. I was passing by just now, and I saw the homeroom teacher looking for him through the window, a student said. This is bad. At this moment, another student staggered into the classroom. He could not even be bothered to wipe off his sweat and just said loudly, someone told the homeroom teacher about us privately organizing a study group. Now, Old Wang has decided to speak to Big Brother Xiong, and he wants him to cancel the study group. What? The students were first dumbfounded, then, they grew furious. Who's so evil? Is he crazy or what? Meng Zhao was slightly stunned before he immediately looked at the spot where Zhuo Haoran sat. The class rep was studying a supplementary text called Monster Encyclopedia with great concentration. He was like a meditating monk and did not hear their discussion. Meng Zhao slapped his table and got up. That's right. Who's so evil that he would destroy what's good for everyone? He said loudly. Practically everyone has joined the study group in our class. Those who have not joined us yet can get some epiphany when they watch the others train during self-study period. Everyone can gain something from it. Who exactly is so bored that he would report this and make a fool of himself? Could it be someone from another class? Is it because they can't deal with watching us getting stronger than them? But the study group has just been organized for one night. How could the other classes learn of this so soon? Or, could it be that the fat bear offended someone lately? No way. I know him. He's as sincere and honest as I am. Who could he have possibly offended? He didn't get into any sort of conflict with anyone lately, 
and he did not send anyone sprawling on the ground, or make them lose their dignity. As Meng Zhao spoke, his voice died away. He cast Zhuo Haoran a glance while not quite able to believe himself. His face was full of disbelief. The students looked in the direction of his gaze and went along his train of thought. They immediately reacted to the situation. That's right. Zhuo Haoran was sent flying by Chu Fei Shang last night. And he made a fool of himself. To high school students, who demanded to be treated with respect, this was practically the same as them declaring each other mortal enemies. Class rep, you're being unfair. Fatty Jr. was the first to jump out. If you have a conflict with Big Brother Xiong, then act based on the code of Dragon Citizens. Go and fight alone in the training room. You can even settle your score in a forest. Your fists will show your real abilities and determine who is the winner. Why must you do this and destroy what's good for everyone? Wang Tao's body size was the closest to that of Chu Fei Shang, and they were known as Fatty Senior and Fatty Junior in class. They were quite close to each other and he was the one who gained the most benefits from the previous night's super reckless bull force. He could already see hope in breaking past his bottleneck. But Zhuo Haoran just had to do something so sinister at this moment. Fatter Jr. would beat him, even if the guy was the class rep. In fact, he would hit him even if he was the person with the most power in Dragon City. That's right. Class rep, how could you do this? You just don't want to see everyone's marks increase, right? Your punching force is over 200 kilograms, and mine is just at 190. I'm not being greedy here, I just wanted to increase to 200 kilograms. I won't be able to surpass you. Why did you have to do this? Their national college examination would determine their fate, and they had to fuss over every mark. While the students could accept being managed by their class rep, their class rep was nothing to them when it came to their marks. The class began to burn with rage. Even the girls who had flirted with Zhuo Haoran and acted like hooligans during their high school class reunions and Meng Zhao's memories were glaring at him. Zhuo Haoran was finally unable to continue pretending. His handsome face turned red, and he slammed his monster encyclopedia on the table with a loud bang. He stood up swiftly. Meng Zhao, stop making unfounded accusations. I didn't state names and point fingers. Class rep, you just admitted to it on your own. Meng Zhao grinned. You. Zuo Haoran sucked in a deep breath and said loudly, My dear students, don't listen to his nonsense. I did not tell the homeroom teacher anything. But he did accidentally tell his uncle about it, who also happened to be the teaching director. He stopped talking for a moment before he schooled his face and said, Besides, I don't think that the student who reported this had any malicious thoughts. The study group should have been cancelled right from the start. His words just caused a greater reaction. The students became even angrier and started causing a ruckus. Class rep, what's the meaning of this? I'm doing this for your own good. Zuo Haoran regained his usual level-headedness and said calmly, There's no such thing as a free lunch in the world. There are plenty of secret techniques that will instantaneously increase your strength in Dragon City, but all of them require you to pay a devastating price. Chu Fei Shang's super reckless bull force is incredibly domineering. If my guess is correct, it mobilized a secret technique that stimulates human potential, which means that it will severely drain the body and result in all sorts of hidden injuries. It's a typical case of haste makes waste. The students remained doubtful, but they were beginning to believe in him. When Zuo Haoran saw that he took control of the situation, he smiled coldly and threw a bomb at them. I know that many of us don't care about sequelae just to get a few more marks during the national college examination. After all, we can just slowly nurse ourselves back to health after we get into college, but you should know that the checkups during the national college examination are becoming stricter. Once they discover that you have taken forbidden medication or are practicing some deviant technique, you will be considered to be cheating, and your marks will be cancelled. We have been taking in a lot of gene medication, cell activation fluid, and growth hormones while we cultivate, and we also practice all sorts of secret techniques that could increase our potential, but there is a limit to everything and the limit to cultivation is that we do not severely harm our bodies and minds. Once we overstep those limits, we might lose our right to take the national college examination. Are you really going to take that risk? Err. The students hesitated. How would you know that Big Brother Xiong's super reckless bull force is a deviant technique? Wang Tao could not accept it. Zuo Haoran sighed, and his expression was one that said I didn't want to say it, but for everyone's sake, I'll have to do it. Because I was worried about everyone's future and the glory of Class 6, I went about looking for information from various sources, and I realized that Chu Fei Shang's strange reckless bull force came from the deep web. 
The students sucked in sharp breaths. Everyone, you know what sort of place the deep web is. Many maniacs and lunatics search for lab rats to test experimental martial arts which are incredibly dangerous. Last year, Meng Zhao was unlucky and fell into their trap. His future was destroyed because of it. Zuo Haoran looked at Meng Zhao pitifully and said with great distress, Chu Fei Shang is best friends with Meng Zhao. I believe that he must have accidentally received the link and account from Meng Zhao, and by pure accident, he walked onto a stray path. Of course, I believe that they have good intentions and don't want to harm all of you. But a mistake is a mistake. How can we just watch them walk further down the wrong path? Once he said those things, a few students' expressions became strange. Yesterday, Chu Fei Shang had indeed told them honestly that super reckless bull force had come from the deep web when he went to them to teach them. At that time, they had not thought about it carefully. But when they heard their class rep speak in such a manner, they found that there were plenty of problems with it. Wang Tao was exasperated, but he could say nothing about it. He sat down furiously and nearly broke his chair. All eyes went to Meng Zhao. Meng Zhao was about to retort when a notification suddenly popped out before his eyes. Normal citizen Wang Longjun has indirectly received your guidance and understood the profound secret of reckless bull technique. His learning progress is 30%. His fighting strength and level of teaching have both increased. In the future, he will be able to produce stronger students in larger numbers. Dragon City's overall fighting strength has increased. Congratulations in contributing to your civilization. Increased contribution points by 50. Wang Longjin was the homeroom teacher. Men Zhao was stunned. Then, a thought entered his mind. While he suppressed his amusement, he said, All right. This is my fault. If Fei Shang really gets angry later and stops the study group, you can just scold me. The students looked at each other. Was Meng Zhao admitting defeat? When Zhuo Haoran saw the dejected look on his face, he wanted to laugh loudly, but he endured it and just started coughing. At that moment, Chu Fei Shang pushed the door open and walked in. He went to Meng Zhao with a conflicted look on his face. When everyone saw his expression, they knew that the situation was not good, and their hearts leapt to their throats. Chu Fei Shang did not notice the strange atmosphere in the classroom. He drew close to Meng Zhao's ear and whispered, Old Wang is very interested in super reckless bull force, and he wants to promote it to the whole class. It's yours, so I didn't dare to make the decision on my own. What are your thoughts about it? Meng Zhao smiled faintly and spoke loudly. What? The homeroom teacher really wants to cancel the study group? Sigh. Loud sighs went through the classroom. The last hope in Wang Tao and the other's eyes faded away. Zuo Haoran stood up. Everyone. Stop entertaining foolish ideas. There is no shortcut when it comes to cultivation. The only thing that exists is the principle of God rewarding people accordingly based on their hard work. Forget about that super reckless bull force or whatever it's called and work hard with me with every second we have. Men Zhao waited for him to finish speaking before he slowly completed the second half of his sentence. So, the homeroom teacher wants to cancel the secret study group so that he can promote super reckless bull force to the whole class? Chapter 30 getting serious for the National College examination. The matter of the study group was settled in a chaotic fashion. The homeroom teacher did not want to be bothered by this matter for too long, so he used the blackboard eraser to tap at the podium and said loudly, All right, let's set aside everything else first. Now, I want to talk about taking the exams to get into college. College. The students shuddered, and all of them forgot about the farce just now. If you want to get into a better college so that you can get a job that can guarantee a good life, you can prepare for your exams at ease. You just need to enter the exam hall one and a half months later, but the legendary undergraduate course is a whole new concept. You will need to clear three stages, and soon, the first stage that will decide your fates will arrive. The homeroom teacher told everyone that the undergraduate course was divided into three gates of hell, the initial test, the second test, and the ultimate practical test. The first test was held in the school. The students were tested on their maximum punching force, their 100-meter dash, and their shooting skills. There was a limited number of people who could advance to the next stage, so half of the people would be eliminated from key regions. The second test was held in the regional education department. They used a supercomputer VR system to test the students' mental strength, which passed only a few students. The third test was the national college examination during the second half of July. The National College examination was divided into theory and practical tasks. When it came to the theory test, the test for college and higher vocational college was the same. 
But when it came to the practical test, the type 2 examinees, who were applying for higher vocational college, had to go to the monster research centers to fight against bio-monsters who had already been tamed, modified, and controlled. Type 1 examinees were applying for college, and they had to go to the edge of the city, which was close to the fog. They had to enter a real battlefield. The test this year has already been brought forward. It'll be held a week later, and the school has 150 slots for the first test. Those who pass it can advance to the next test. Everyone, don't start thinking that 150 slots is a lot. You must understand that there are already 100 people in the rocket classes, and based on our experience from previous years, the six strolling classes will only be able to get 50 to 60 slots at most. Each class can get around 10 slots. The ones ranked at the top 15 can try getting those slots, those remaining are in danger of not getting any spot. Every time the homeroom teacher said a sentence, he smacked the podium with a blackboard eraser. The taps caused everyone's faces to turn solemn. The ones ranked at the top were relaxed, while the ones ranked at the tail end had long since given up on fighting for a slot. Only those ranked at the 10th to 20th place started talking with each other. Mr. Wang, why do they have to make things so complicated for us to get into college? Can't they make it the same as the tests for post-secondary specialized colleges and let us take it in one shot in July? This way, we'd still have one month to work even harder," said someone loathfully. It's simple, because a large amount of resources has to be spent to escort the examinees to the edge of the fog so that they can fight against real monsters. The military and the powerful fighters have to be mobilized to protect the examinees, and the thing Dragon City lacks the most is resources, the homeroom teacher said coldly. Besides, walking down the path of superhumans is a path of life and death. It can bring you endless glory, but it is also very dangerous. If you aren't someone who stands at the top and possesses extraordinary talent, there's no need for you to have any sort of lavish hope and give yourself additional worries. It would be better for you to get rid of those thoughts early on and focus on getting into post-secondary specialized colleges. His words caused many of the students to bow their heads. Since they were in the strolling class, Many of the students had already accepted their fate. A qualification from a post-secondary specialized college was also valuable. After all, getting into higher vocational colleges would still make them people with a good financial situation and a rather high social status. The student who had spoken earlier continued grumbling. This is unfair. Even if my mark during my 100 meter isn't that great, it doesn't mean that I won't have an epiphany during a real fight and suddenly reveal my talents. Fair? When the homeroom teacher heard him. He frowned and slammed the podium so hard that it jolted. There has never been fairness in this world. When Dragon City transmigrated here, we had nothing, but we had to face the invasion of zombies and monsters. Are we to talk about fairness with zombies or monsters now? Superhumans were slowly born among us so that we could survive the danger and hardship. The superhumans stand above us and possess all sorts of special privileges, but all that they enjoy is handed to them on a silver platter. They have to use their fists weapons, and even teeth to snatch them from the monsters. This is the greatest fairness you will see. I'm telling you. Don't just look at the glory that the superhumans enjoy. You don't know the mortality rate of the superhumans in Dragon City. It's five times the number of normal humans. And every year, during the Type 1 practical test during the National College examination, there is a quota of the injured and dead. Last year, the quota for the injured was 100, and the quota for the dead was 10 people. This year, that number was doubled. What? The students cried out in shock. If the quota for the injured and dead was twice the number compared to last year, did that not mean that the National College examination this year was very dangerous? Men Zhao thought of something. The regional government must have noticed some clues and realized that the war against monsters was about to become more dangerous. Hence, they needed to train up more superhuman fighters who were stronger, more determined, and even more fearless. That was why they decided to be serious in the practical exam for college this year. You understand now, right? The homeroom teacher asked. If we filter all of you earlier, we can eliminate the normal people who are not suited to become superhumans. This is our way of being considerate to your lives. The students' expressions turned dark. It wouldn't get to the point where we reached the quota, right? Someone asked. When they thought about it, they found that he was right. There had seldom been years where the batches of examinees had hit the quota during the practical test. Usually, only five people would be injured at most, and the number of dead would be around one to two people. In fact, there were two years where the examinees had been lucky and no one died, which was something that delighted everyone. Stop thinking about it. 
The national college examination this year is different. I can disclose a secret to you. The school has already released a notification to all teachers telling us to get the parents prepared. Very soon, the survival committee, the military, and the education department of the city will release a statement at the same time. The injured and dead examinees of the national college examination this year will receive the same treatment as injured and dead soldiers. The homeroom teacher spoke firmly. In other words, this won't be a normal test. It will be a real battle. The students were shocked. I'll be honest with you. For my sake, I'd want a lot more of you to get into college and become superhumans. The homeroom teacher clenched the blackboard eraser and said softly, but for your life's sake, if your results aren't really that good and you aren't very confident when it comes to your fighting power, I suggest that you don't try to get into college. I'm being serious here. His words were sincere, and the students digested the shocking news with pale faces. But Meng Zhao just clenched his fists. Now, more than ever, he desired strength. All right, go to the testing room and check your strength. If you can't reach the speed of an Olympic champion in short distance running or the punching force of a heavyweight champion, you will not be able to pass the test in school, and you will not need to bother with this anymore. Wang Longjin waved his hand at them dismissively. At the end of the day, the students were all a bunch of carefree youths. While they were sighing in the corridors, once they reached the cultivation center, everyone became fired up again. The death quota had been doubled, which meant that it was now 20. If they compared it to the number of examinees, that quota was less than 1% of their total number. No one believed that they would be so unlucky as to die. Besides, they were born in Dragon City. Everyone understood the logic that if they did not face high risks, they would not get high returns. Since the national college examination would be much harder, the local authorities would not just watch them march to their own deaths. They would definitely increase the outpour of cultivation resources to them. And just as they expected, Wang Longjin told them that as long as they passed the test in school, they would be provided double the amount of cultivation resources as compared to previous years. In the past, they would only provide bone growth hormones to the students once every three days. This year, they were giving them one per day. Since those were great rewards, there were definitely students who were brave and wanted to take up the challenge. The time has come for us to use our weapons and fists to expand the living space of Dragon City. It's time for us to have our names spread far and wide. When the youngsters entered the testing room, they were so excited that they started hollering. Of course, they did not miss out on the show of humility that they had to put up. Sigh, those monsters bothered us for an entire night last night, you know? I didn't manage to sleep well at all. I'll definitely not be able to bring out my full strength. Ah, I'm doomed. I'll definitely flunk my test. A student Wu, stop pretending. Everyone knows that your maximum punching strength is among the top five in class. I'm the real pitiful one here. I sprained my ankle yesterday, so I'm limping today. I might end up over 10 seconds during the 100 meter dash later. Sigh. Ace student Zhao, stop being so sleazy. If you manage to finish the 100 meter dash in less than 9.7 seconds, you'll have to treat the whole class to milk tea. Do you have the guts to take up the bet? Could you all please start acting like decent human beings? All of you are ace students in the class, but you're all pretending as if you have myasthenia gravis. Is there a need for you to do that? The students started their tests while laughing and fooling around with each other. All of them started pretending to be weaker than flowers. Even the tall and built boys started acting coyly while whining. But once they stepped on the running track or stood in front of the punching force gauge, they looked like rabbits who had transformed into wolves. All their whining turned into growls. This was especially the case for the people who had learned super reckless bull force. Even though they did not manage to get an increase of 3% in their maximum punching force in one go like Xu Fei Shang, which was a really over the top increase, and only gained an increase of half a percent, it meant that their mark would increase by a point or two, and it was enough for them to get rid of a lot of competition. Besides, reckless bull force was not a pure punching technique. It was a highly scientific way of using the entire body to execute force. It also provided help when they were doing short dashes. For a period of time, the testing room was filled with cries of surprise. Ace student Wu broke the record of his maximum punching strength. In just a few days, he got an increase in half a kilogram? And he said that he didn't sleep well? What a monster! You're a bastard, jerk, scum! Ace student Zhao, your 100 meter dash is 9.57 seconds. You already surpassed Usain Bolt's world record. Limping, my foot. Milk tea. You have to treat the entire class to milk tea. 
Chu Fei Shuang. Big Brother Xiang. Your maximum punching force is 233.5 kilograms. You just renewed the class record. Even Earth's boxing king, Mike Tyson, can't compare to you. The students started yelping, and when they looked at Chu Fei Shuang, their gazes were filled with shock and idolization. The homeroom teacher's expression was very complicated. The average score of the entire class and their records O were renewed repeatedly, and when he observed the marks carefully, he found that all the students who had reached the breakthrough were those who had joined the study group. All his experience gained from teaching for 20 years was shattered, and he became even more interested in super reckless bull force. Meng Zhao put his hands in the wide pockets of his worn out uniform and leaned against a corner of the wall comfortably. With a smile, he admired the waves on the girls' bodies when they performed the 100 meter dash and threw their strongest punches. Those waves were created when the force the girls exerted was reflected back on their bodies. Trash. Suddenly, Zuo Haoran walked over. He had a friendly smile on his face, but he spoke in a voice only the both of them could hear. Even if Chu Fei Shang breaks the record, gets into college and becomes a superhuman, it's useless. He's him, and you are you. He can soar to the skies, but you'll forever be trash. Meng Zhao quirked an eyebrow. There we go. Here comes the class rep's trash talk. In his memory fragments, he had been agitated when his mother was severely injured by the creatures in the other world and had argued fiercely with Zuo Haoran. This guy was very polite when he argued with someone in public and would say things like, Meng Zhao, you're going overboard. But when there was no one in the area, he would come up with the most wonderful insults ever. The profanities he spewed were. Few, they made Meng Zhao's ears want to puke. Of course, Zuo Haoran did not lose his rationality and was not just venting. Instead, he was trash-talking Meng Zhao to provoke him into attacking. Meng Zhao had fallen into that trap in his previous life. The class rep used dirty tricks to leave behind hidden injuries in his body, and those injuries acted up during his national college examination, which was why his ranking plummeted, and he could not even get into a higher vocational college. But what about this life? Meng Zhao smirked and simply enjoyed Zuo Haoran's act. Chapter 31 I Want to Hit Meng Zhao When the class rep spoke, no sign of anger or savagery could be seen on his face. His standard upright look was on his heroic face. The students saw him from a distance. They thought that he was encouraging the backward student who was at the last place in their class. But they did not know that Zuo Haoran was actually saying you're thinking about getting into college? Do it in your next life. Meng Zhao seemed like he wanted to say something, but he did not say it. Zuo Haoran continued smiling. Oh? You can't accept it? Do you want to hit me? I'm giving you a chance to fulfill your dreams, so don't go around saying that I'm not letting others hit you. You're injured, so I'll only attack you with one hand. Do you have the guts to hit me, trash? Chu Fei Shang strode over. A thought appeared in Zuo Haoran's mind. He patted Meng Zhao's shoulder and said loudly, Meng Zhao, it's your turn. Good luck, we'll all support you. He then left with a smile. His elegance allowed him to regain some of his image in his classmates' eyes. What did Zuo Haoran say to you? Chu Fei Shang frowned. He knew that if the class rep came over, he definitely said something bad. It's nothing. I'll handle it on my own later. Is it my turn? Meng Zhao could not be bothered to remove his coat, but he slowly exercised his limbs. Meng Zhao, good luck. We're all supporting you. Don't fail class 6 now. Work hard and fight. You'll definitely be able to get into a higher vocational college. Just now, he had defended them and all the students appreciated his kindness, so they started cheering for him to boost his morale. I'm not in a good condition today. Meng Zhao acted gloomy. But he wasn't lying. He was indeed in a bad condition. The previous night he had fought against monsters for an entire night, and he was exhausted. His limbs were weak, and his hidden injuries were not completely healed yet. At most, he could only deliver 50% of his strength. His classmates snickered. When have you ever been in a good condition over the past year? It would have been great if you stayed and learned super reckless bull force with us. But if you work hard now, you can still make it. I'll teach you personally during our self-study period in the afternoon. Fatty Jr. encouraged him loudly. He just broke his personal record, so his confidence was off the charts. Don't you know super reckless bull force? Chu Fei Shang asked softly. Meng Zhao thought about it. If he used reckless bull force right now, he would definitely appear to have been pretending to be we call this while, right? I just researched the theory, but I've not used it myself. Super reckless bull force is very tough and fierce. 
My body is weak, so I can't handle it, he said softly. Ah! There's only one week left. You won't be able to make it. Chu Fei Shang was so anxious that he stomped on the ground. Come! Meng Zhao is about to try 100 meter dash now. Everyone, clap for him. Zuo Haoran said loudly and started clapping. Scattered claps rose around him. Some people found that the class rep was being a little sarcastic, and they did not know whether they should clap or not. I'm seriously not in a good condition. Stop clapping. The more you clap, the more anxious I become. Meng Zhao pouted. Don't worry, Meng Zhao. Everyone knows about your condition. What's important for a person is to win against themselves. Don't compare yourself to us. If you can become stronger even by the slightest compared to yourself in the past, it'll be a great result. Zuo Haoran smiled brilliantly. All right, I really can't use reckless bull force, but I've been using ripple force to treat my wounds in the past year, so. I guess I'll try using ripple force? Meng Zhao mumbled and walked to the starting line. He knelt down on one knee. Most of the students did not have any sort of expectations toward him. They were only watching as a show of courtesy. The homeroom teacher did not look at Meng Zhao either. His eyes were stuck on a tablet while he observed his top students with glee. Their results were about the same as the average scores of the rocket class. Zuo Haoran crossed his arms over his chest with the ghost of a smile on his lips. At that moment, wind rose up. But the window of the testing room was clearly not open. Even so, the people could feel a gust of wind brush past their faces. No, it was not just a simple gust. There was more than one, and each one was stronger than the last. The astonishing gusts were like ripples that spread out from beneath Meng Zhao's feet. This is. The students were all shocked. They looked at the source of the ripples and found that even though Meng Zhao's legs were on the ground, they were a little blurry, and that was because his muscles were vibrating at high speed. There were fine after images around his legs. Class rep, step aside. I'm about to move, Meng Zhao said faintly. Ripple force, future version, specialist level, activate. Whoosh. The students on the sides of the running track, including Zuo Haoran, felt a bone-chilling wind blow at them. It irritated their eyes so much that they closed them. It was as if a tidal wave had blown past their faces. When they opened their eyes, Meng Zhao's legs had already conquered half of the running track. What a powerful ripple force! The entire class was shocked. The homeroom teacher jumped up as well, and his tablet crashed on the floor. Meng Zhao's stance was a little strange. He was unlike the others pushing forward like a bull. He looked to have been pushed forward by a huge wave and even left several after images. Beep, beep, 9.59 seconds. Even though Meng Zhao had clearly become slower during the second half of the track, he still managed to get an astonishing result by relying on his ridiculous starting speed. He was ranked among the top three in class, right next to Zhu Haoran and a student Zhao, whose speed had increased drastically. For a period of time, the atmosphere in the class was strange. Not a single sound was heard. Meng Zhao gradually slowed down and massaged his feeble legs while smiling wryly. He knew that he had not been pretending to be weak. He was really not in good shape. Damn it! This body is still too weak. I've neglected practice for an entire year, and it's not something that I can make up for in just one day. 9.59 seconds. My 100 meter dash is just 9.59 seconds. Compared to the king of short distance running on earth, I'm slower by 0.01 seconds. I can't even surpass Usain Bolt's record. I don't have the right to get into college. Meng Zhao punched his legs fiercely while looking upset. Then, he realized that the atmosphere was a little strange. When he looked up, he noticed that everyone, including the homeroom teacher, the class rep, the class princess, and his bestie, were all staring at him with shocked expressions. What's wrong? Meng Zhao was puzzled. Your speed. Chu Fei Shang said in disbelief. I know. I was pretty slow. I feel really vexed about it. Meng Zhao sighed. The students sucked in really, really deep breaths. Then, with great effort and through great difficulty and great pain, they squashed down their urge to kill the fraudster for pretending to be weak. M. Meng Zhao. The homeroom teacher was the first to regain his senses. He was so worked up that he jumped in shock. Have you recovered from your wounds? Meng Zhao had been the top in class during his first and second year of high school. If he had not been injured, he would definitely have been the ace of class 6. If the ace recovered, the homeroom teacher would become rich because of him, Chu Fei Shuang, and Zhu Haoran. I haven't recovered fully, 
but I've been practicing ripple force hard over the past year. I found some new styles and learned from them, so I suppose I got a blessing in disguise, Meng Zhao said. If you want it, I can teach it to you as well. You can pay me according to the standard you pay to Chu Fei Shuang. Just give me some gene medicine, high-grade nutritional fluid, cell growth fluid, monster materials, or give me a discount on stuff. I'm okay with anything. The homeroom teacher and the students sucked in deep breaths. They could have two upgraded versions of force execution techniques. It meant the entire class scores were bound to soar. Zuo Haoran felt that his face had been slapped by Meng Zhao and Chu Feishong, on both sides, loudly. His cheeks were swollen now. Meng Zhao could not be bothered to look at him. He just went to the punching force gauge. I is your maximum punching force just as ridiculous as your 100 meter dash? Chu Feishong asked. No way. Do you think I'm a monster? My punching strength is sloppy and average. Besides, I harvested monsters for an entire night with my dad, and my arms are so numb that they're almost completely useless, Meng Zhao said honestly. Harvesting monsters was a heavy physical work, especially when one had to continuously remove the sturdiest parts of shell-type monsters from their bodies, their shells. When Meng Zhao ran into poison sacs or other fragile organs, he had to pay attention to the details like a surgeon when they performed surgery. His muscles and nerves had to tense up tightly, and it was very taxing to the mind. Meng Zhao was barely able to raise his arms. After calming his breathing for a long time, he finally raised his fist toward the gauge. When everyone saw how tormented he looked and that he did not seem to be pretending, they came to believe that his punching force was probably normal and nothing special. Meng Zhao's speed is among the top three in class. Even if his punching strength is only at 180 kilograms, as long as his shooting skills don't drag him down too much, he will be able to get into the class top 10. Ah! Then, he'll have the chance to pass the test in school. His classmates made some calculations and cried out in surprise. He had been at the last place in class, but now, he might achieve outstanding results during the test in school. That was clearly sorcery. Can't say. Do you remember that his maximum punching force was around 150 kilograms or 160 kilograms when we last tested our punching strength? This will be a little difficult. You have to know that ripple force isn't suitable for the instantaneous output of force. Someone shook his head. Before his voice could fade away, Meng Zhao exploded. His fist, arm, and body all turned into a blur. Waves of increasing strength surged into the punching force gauge. It did not produce the loud, thunderous bang that would be created when someone used reckless bull force. Instead, it was more similar to waves crashing on a shore. They overlapped with each other as they struck the machine. The hidden force combined and exploded. The numbers on the monitor screen rose by stages. In the beginning, it was just 120 kilograms. Then, it jumped to 150 kilograms, and later on, 180 kilograms. But even when it reached 200 kilograms, it showed no signs of stopping. It only stopped at 218 kilograms. Meng Zhao's classmates were shocked again. Chu Fei Shang's maximum punching strength was 233.5 kilograms, Zuo Haoran's was 225 kilograms. A student Wu, who was famous because of his punching force, had a maximum punching strength of 223.6 kilograms. At 218 kilograms, Meng Zhao's punching strength was now ranked fourth place in their class. It was higher than Fatty Jr.'s by 2 kilograms, and he had learned super reckless bull force and overcome his bottleneck. Most importantly, no one could usually reach a high score for both their maximum punching force and the 100-meter dash at the same time. Only rich men's sons like Zuo Haoran could practice both at the same time, because they had a lot of resources. Chu Feishong, a student Wu, and Fatty Jr. were strength-type fighters. Their maximum punching force was incredibly high but their speed was somewhat lackluster. Ace student Zhao was a speed-type fighter. He was very good at 100-meter dash, but his punching force was a little weak. Meng Zhao, however, was the same as Zhuo Haoran. He showed the unique attribute of both his speed and strength being at equal level. If they did not include his shooting skills, his overall results were at second place in class. He was only behind the class rep. Isn't this... ridiculous? Is Meng Zhao even human? Without a single sign, he recovered to the point of being so powerful. He didn't even give us time to prepare ourselves mentally for this. Oh gosh, he's terrifying. Our strongest from last year has returned. Sob. I thought that you and I were elites in the world of pretending to be weak, ace student Zhao, but today, 
I saw Meng Zhao, and I finally understand the principle of there is always someone better than you. I lost. I completely lost. While his classmates were staring at him in surprise, envy, and anger, Meng Zhao exhaled and walked away from the punching force gauge. Fei Shang, I didn't lie to you, right? I'm seriously not good at reckless bull force. The punches I threw with ripple force are really weak. They don't have any strength at all, he said with a wan smile. He used every ounce of his strength, and his maximum punching force only reached the maximum punching of Mike Tyson, the boxing king of Earth. Aside from smiling wanly, Meng Zhao could not put on any other expression. Chu Fei Shang sucked in a deep breath. Suddenly, he raised his hand. Mr. Wang, could you go out for five minutes? I want to hit Meng Zhao. All his classmates raised their hands as well. We want to hit Meng Zhao as well. We'll kill this fraudster. Chapter 32, The Key is Gun Techniques If you don't want us to beat you up, then treat us to milk tea. You have to treat us to one week's worth of milk tea. Milk tea isn't enough. You have to treat us to one week's worth of breakfast. You're too shameless, you bastard. Meng Zhao's classmates were indignant. But the homeroom teacher was so happy that he was flashing a blinding, megawatt smile. He waved his hand and spoke heartily, which was something rare for him. All right. Meng Zhao recovered, and I'm even happier than any of you when it comes to this. When you go to eat at the canteen tonight, I'll treat all of you to milk tea out of my own pocket. Mr. Wang, you're amazing. The entire class cheered. Of course, that was excluding Zhuo Haoran. He appeared to be in a daze. He stared at Meng Zhao and gnashed his teeth. Only God knew what was on his mind. Meng Zhao's gaze turned sharp, and he finally turned it on the class rep. Thank you, Mr. Wang, but I'll treat my classmates to milk tea. It will be the most expensive one, and all of you can add pearls, grass jelly, or whatever you want in there. Meng Zhao had earned more than one million last night, so he was feeling smug as was usual for those who would become rich overnight. He then stopped talking and looked around himself. But Mr. Wang, I'd like you and all my classmates to help me uphold justice for something. He calmly went in front of Zhuo Haoran, who seemed to be alarmed. Class rep, I'm back, he said softly. He then glared at Zhuo Haoran and pointed at his nose before he started yelling at him. Zhuo Haoran, you've humiliated me multiple times, but I've always tolerated it because we were classmates. Yet I didn't expect that you'd keep pestering me. I can't stand it anymore today. Let's settle this now. When he said these words, the entire class burst into a ruckus. The teacher quickly came forward. What's going on? Don't be rash. Don't worry, Mr. Wang. I won't go overboard. I just want to tell you that something really bad happened to me. The class rep yelled at me. Meng Zhao put on a fierce face, placed his hands on his hips, stomped his feet, and acted as if he was incredibly wronged. His classmates did not know whether they should laugh or cry. Meng Zhao had made it sound so serious, so they thought that something bad had happened. But it turned out that the class rep had just scolded him a few times. That was nothing. The homeroom teacher was also stunned. So? You're reporting that someone rebuked you? Are you in the third year of high school or kindergarten? Is there some kind of misunderstanding? There's no need for that, is there? The homeroom teacher wanted to minimize the conflict. Meng Zhao, I was just trying to motivate you, and at most, my tone was a little stern. It was for your own good. I didn't expect that you'd be so mentally weak. Zuo Haoran had already regained his composure, and he scoffed. Without another word, Meng Zhao brought out a recording pen from his pocket. Click. He pressed the switch, and Zuo Haoran's clear voice instantly came out of the recording pen. Trash. You'll forever be trash. I'll only attack you with one hand, trash. Meng Zhao moved the recording pen under the class rep's nose and waved it. Zuo Haoran was stunned. His classmates were also dumbfounded when they heard it. They did not expect that their class rep, who was usually righteous and dignified, would be so mean. Everyone's gazes shifted to Zuo Haoran and filled up with disdain. When they linked this knowledge to what had happened earlier, they became even more certain that he was the one who reported Chu Fei Shang and nearly disbanded the study group. The class princess, Gu Fang, covered her mouth. She did not expect that the boy she had a crush on was a person like this. The prince charming in her heart instantly turned into a frog. The homeroom teacher was shocked. Meng Zhao, that recording pen. Why you're framing me? Zuo Haoran reacted very quickly and retorted with a red face. Who would bring along a recording pen on a daily basis? Don't believe him. Things aren't as they appear to be. 
That's right. Usually, no one would bring a recording pen around, but after you humiliated me multiple times and cursed me like this around 20 times, did you actually think I wouldn't learn my lesson? Men Zhao's face was calm, but there was a quiver in his voice. When the girls looked at him carefully, they even found crystalline sparks trembling at the corners of his eyes. Men Zhao held back his tears and said, Mr. Wang, my dear classmates, I'm finally able to say this. Ever since I beat up Zhu Haorong in that monthly test in the first year of high school, he has hated me. When I was injured in the second year of high school and became weaker, he always searched for chances and cursed me behind everyone's back. On some days, his words were even worse than what I recorded today. Everyone was shocked. Getting injured during a sparring session between classmates was something normal. Even though Zuo Haoran was beaten up pretty badly at that time, there was no need for him to seek revenge for something as small as this and refuse to let it go even after two years, right? Zuo Haoran was so angry that he nearly fainted. He did indeed have malicious thoughts when he wanted to provoke Meng Zhao into attacking him by trash-talking him. He had wanted to use the chance to teach Meng Zhao a lesson. But while he had mocked Meng Zhao over the past two years, when did he ever humiliate Meng Zhao and used words that were even worse than today's? You're just throwing dirt at me. My dear classmates, he's trying to put a stain on my name. Zuo Haoran wanted to cry out that he was innocent, but Meng Zhao spoke faster than him. Why did I want to become a lab rat and search for the demonically modified Ripple Force online to train, even though it carried a high risk? Because I couldn't stand the class rep humiliating me anymore. I'm a hot-blooded man with a backbone. Even if I die, I will stand up and walk in front of the class rep in a dignified manner. Men Zhao threw his head back and roared, but why did I not dare to tell the teacher and everyone else that I was practicing the demonically modified ripple force in secret? Because I was scared that I would become useless and that something will go wrong with the method again. I was afraid that I'd drop into an even deeper abyss and would be laughed at by the class rep. That I'd forever be trash. His classmates came to an understanding. Indeed, if Men Zhao had mentioned that he wanted to get back to his feet but failed, the class rep would mock him even more. Everyone was young, and all of them valued their dignity. It was completely understandable that he hid his true strength now. This is too much. Fatty Senior Chu Fei Shuang, Fatty Junior Wang Tao, and many of the boys in class clenched their fists tightly and glared at Zuo Haoran. The girls whispered to each other, shook their heads, and sighed. They simply did not expect that the class rep was rotten to the core despite having a good appearance. Fortunately, I worked hard and I was lucky. I managed to stand up once again with demonically modified ripple force. Zuo Haoran, we should settle the score between us now, what do you think? Men Zhao wiped away his tears, and the recording pen let out cracking sounds in his hands. The homeroom teacher looked conflicted. Meng Zhao. Meng Zhao said loudly, don't worry, Mr. Wang. I definitely won't make things hard for you. I know that this can't be considered real proof, because the class rep didn't mention any names in the recording and his uncle is also the teaching director. I won't be able to obtain justice with just this recording, and I regard seeking justice with this sort of method and disdain as well. Crack. With force, he crushed the recording pen into pieces. Huh? His classmates cried out in surprise. The pen was key evidence, but it was destroyed just like that? Whoosh. Meng Zhao flung his arm, and the pieces of the recording pen flew at Zuo Haoran's face. Zuo Haoran tried to avoid it. He was not injured, but he was reduced to a pathetic state when the pieces still landed on him. Zuo Haoran, do you dare to accept my challenge? Meng Zhao asked loudly. Everyone understood clearly that Zuo Haoran had been provoking Meng Zhao in the recording just now so that he would challenge him. Yet now, Meng Zhao was acting according to those wishes. Besides, there was a rule in all the high schools in Dragon City that the strongest student in a class was to be the class rep so that he or she could enjoy the largest amount of cultivation resources. At the same time, he or she was duty-bound to accept the classmates' challenges. Zuo Haoran gritted his teeth. You want to be the class rep? Men Zhao laughed. I don't care whether or not I become the class rep. I'll accept whoever in class becomes the class rep willingly, but you're the only one who doesn't fit that title. Men Zhao. The homeroom teacher smiled bitterly. He did not expect that things would progress in this manner. Mr. Wang, don't worry. I already told you that I'm a gentleman. I won't do something as crude as hitting someone, but it'll be the first of the three college tests next week. Why don't I compete against Zuo Haoran with our overall results? This won't be against school rules, right? 
this challenge method was perfectly reasonable, and the homeroom teacher had nothing to say about it. Everyone cast their gazes on Zuo Haoran. Zuo Haoran had no other choice. He could only nod solemnly. All right, I accept your challenge. Then, we'll settle everything next week. Meng Zhao smiled and blew off the pieces of the recording pen from his palm. He then sashayed his way back to his classmates. When the homeroom teacher saw that the two people did not get into a conflict in public, he breathed a sigh of relief. Everyone, please train on your own for the time being. Class rep, follow me. The homeroom teacher glared at Zuo Haoran, but he did not rebuke him in public. Instead, he summoned him outside. Zuo Haoran's face was dark, but before he went out to be scolded, he suddenly walked over and hissed, Meng Zhao, don't say that I'm bullying you with this, but there's still one week left. You should practice your gun technique properly. After he left, Meng Zhao's classmates surrounded him. Meng Zhao, I didn't expect that you would have gone through so much suffering in the past. The class rep is too crafty. Why didn't you say so earlier? Ah. But even if you said it, it's useless. If you don't have proof, who would believe that the righteous and dignified class rep was actually a person like this? But you were too rash just now. You should have brought the proof to the teaching director or the principal. That would have been a little more useful. Why were you so impulsive as to challenge the class rep? That's right. Did you hear his last sentence? The key is gun techniques. Meng Zhao blinked. He looked at the corner of his field of vision. Stated over there was the status of his gun technique. Basic gun technique, perfect level. Meng Zhao, you're an idiot. Even if you have demonically modified ripple force so your strength and speed are on par with Zuo Haoran, it's useless. The first college test includes three tests, your maximum punching force, 100 meter dash, and basic shooting. The one that will widen the gap between scores the easiest is gun technique, you know? Fatty Jr. Wang Tao shook his head inside. He found that it was extremely unfair for Meng Zhao. In this era, the biggest difference between children of the poor and children of the rich was in their gun technique. All the ace sharpshooters gained their skills by training non-stop with their guns. However, Dragon City was a lone army in the other world. They were surrounded by fog, and they lacked every single resource. SP ammunition was especially expensive. Normal families would only get a limited amount of ammunition whenever they needed to fight monsters when the fog descended. The parents were very strict with the use of ammunition. Their houses were small as well, so it was impossible for them to let the children practice their shooting skills readily. While there were shooting courses in school, the majority of the classes were filled with explanations of theories. They only had practical classes once or twice every week, and they could only fire a pitiful number of three to five bullets each class. There was no way they could get any sort of skill from that pitiful amount of practice. But it was different for rich people. Many of the gun clubs could provide an endless supply of bullets as long as the members were willing to spend, so the members could become elites who were at the level of superhumans. They might even gain personal guidance, and the coaches would teach them all sorts of secret techniques. If normal children could still grit their teeth and compete with the rich children when it came to speed and strength, they did not have even a single shred of hope to compete against the rich when it came to shooting. Chapter 33, Ripple Force Princess I heard that Zuo Haoran is a member of Falcon Gun Club, and he does target practice over there every weekend. The number of bullets he fires in a year is more than 10 times the number of bullets a normal student fires. Many of the students in the rocket classes can't even compare to him. Meng Zhao, you were too reckless this time. The class princess, Gu Fang had seen through Zuo Haoran's true character, and she told Meng Zhao the news she had found out after a lot of effort on her part. Then what should we do? Meng Zhao's gun technique is dozens of marks lower than Zuo Haoran's. No matter how fast he runs and how hard he hits, he won't be able to close the gap, right? Meng Zhao, you're too reckless. But I have to say, I wanted to hit Zuo Haoran when I heard all that trash talk just now. It's only normal for you to be reckless. Forget it. Just go and compete against him at ease. Even if you lose, your spirit is still commendable. That's right. Meng Zhao. Even if you lose to Zuo Haoran, it won't be embarrassing. I have to say that as long as there is only a 50 mark difference between you, you can be considered to have won. Among the three categories, as long as you win in one against Zuo Haoran, be it strength, speed, or gun technique, you could be considered to have won. We have high hopes for you. Men Zhao's classmates motivated him, and it made him feel warmth in his heart. He thought about it and felt that he should not pretend to be someone he was not. He had to be sincere as well. 
Thanks, everyone, but my gun technique is actually pretty good. Hey! How good are you? His classmates smiled politely to let him preserve some dignity. Meng Zhao recalled all the ways to disassemble guns in his head, along with the essence of shooting. He also remembered the scenes where he had drawn his gun, fired, thrown his gun, and obtained headshots. He had even performed blind shooting before. There was also his experience in shooting and killing all sorts of monsters in his previous life. If I have to describe myself, I should say that it's perfect, Meng Zhao said in a reserved manner. The dispute in the testing room filled everyone with excitement for an entire day. Meng Zhao did not keep his knowledge to himself during the self-study period in the afternoon and taught his classmates the demonically modified ripple force. But the results were not as he wished. Aside from the homeroom teacher, the other students could not understand the profound secrets. But that was normal. The comprehension of normal citizens was limited. It was impossible for them to become excellent right after they received a secret skill. The day before, Meng Zhao had to work his mind a lot to help Xu Fei Shang adjust his acupressure points. That was even more tiring than cultivating on his own. So he was not interested in adjusting all his classmates' acupressure points. Besides, ripple force was a technique that imitated endless waves. The difficulty of learning it was even higher than reckless bolt technique. Even if he taught it hands-on, he could not teach it by poking at acupressure points. He had to press his hands against his classmates' skin so that he could feel the movement of their muscles. It was like how a blind person would massage another person. He had to touch all the muscles on them before he could slowly adjust the spots which were wrongly used to execute force. There was a problem there. Even if the boys were willing to let Meng Zhao touch them all over to adjust their muscles, Meng Zhao did not want to. He did not even want to touch Chu Fei Shuang. And the boys did not really want him to touch them either. As for the girls, Meng Zhao was very willing to help them, but they seemed to think that he had ulterior motives, and they avoided him like the plague. Even the class princess, Gu Fang, disappointed Meng Zhao by refusing his goodwill. They're all regarding the generosity of the noblemen with petty hearts. I'm trying to contribute to the whole class. Do you actually think that I want to touch you? Meng Zhao was furious. After the self-study period, he only obtained 76 contribution points. Twelve of those points came from the homeroom teacher, while each of his classmates only gave him around one to two points. Meng Zhao made some calculations. He needed a little over 1,000 points to use an initial stage healing skill. If he wanted to cure all of his internal injuries, he needed three more treatments, which meant he needed 3,500 points. If he wanted to push reckless bull technique and ripple force from specialist level to master level, he needed more than 1,000 points for each one. There was not even a need for him to mention the points needed for basic gun technique to move from perfect level to ultimate level. He also needed to upgrade his basic harvesting skill and activate Dragon Snake Force. With all that added together, he needed 10,000 points. But he had not even added 100 Saber Technique and Thunder Rapier into the mix, and they were both cold weapon techniques that were compulsory subjects in high school. If he accumulated around 100 contribution points every day, he would only get around 700 or 800 points in a week, so he could not even get one initial stage healing skill. I have to open a new channel to get points so that I can have a chance to score well in the national college examination," Meng Zhao thought in his heart. After school ended, he went to his best friend. Fei Shuang, look for Demon Yan later to show super reckless bull force. Chu Fei Shuang was shocked. Why? Demon Yan doesn't just teach us. If he teaches super reckless bull force, we're going to end up exposing the technique. There are two benefits to it. First, you want to get into military school, right? Demon Yan was once a ruthless instructor there. Even though he retired from the force, he still has thousands of connections in the army. If you talk about super reckless bull force with him, he will definitely view you in a different light, and you'll have an easier time in the military. But I can't use your, Chu Fei Shang became worked up. Men Zhao waved his hand to interrupt him. Don't get worked up. Listen to me. There's something even more important. I want to challenge the class rep, but I have to be on guard against his uncle. Old Wang is good, but he's not strong enough to go up against the teaching director. In this school, aside from the principal, only Demon Yan can possibly stand up against the teaching director. In truth, there were three reasons. Ever since Meng Zhao saw an elite monster, he had been thinking about who fit into the criteria of elite citizens. And in ninth high school, aside from the principal, only Demon Yan had the aura of an elite monster. It can't be that bad, right? Even if you defeat the class rep. You will do it according to the rules. 
The teaching director will have no reason to target you. Chu Fei Shang still did not quite understand what was going on. What if I'm not just thinking about defeating him, but crippling him? A fierce light shone in Meng Zhao's eyes. In his previous life, Zhuo Haoran caused him to fail his national college examination, and later on, he betrayed Dragon City and harmed countless people. There was no way Meng Zhao would let him have a good life after that. Chu Fei Shang was shocked. What did you say? It's nothing. Anyway, just listen to me, and you won't go wrong. Besides, we won't be able to hide this for long. We'll be taking the test next week, and our speed as well as our maximum punching strength will have increased by a lot. Do you think others are stupid and won't get to the bottom of things? Meng Zhao slapped the huge, white bear's shoulder. So, instead of waiting for others to come sneakily to steal our technique, why don't we be more straightforward and leave a good impression on Demon Yan and the principal? I can also get some benefits from this. Besides, I've learned a lot of secret techniques from the life science forum in the deep web. I have plenty of trump cards. It was only then that Chu Fei Shang relaxed. Then come with me to Demon Yan. Let's get into military school together. Meng Zhao shook his head. Military school is too strict. Hunting on my own is more suited to me. As for demonically modified ripple force, I'll have to look for someone powerful to exchange tips with them as well. Who should I look for? Demon Yan is someone who prefers fierce and tough fighting styles. He'll be perfect to teach you. I want to look for someone who is better at ripple force. Chu Fei Shang thought about it. Then, why don't you look for Ripple Force Princess? She's best at teaching and guiding youths in Ripple Force. She's definitely better than Mr. Wang and Demon Yan in this. Ripple Force Princess? Meng Zhao's eyes lit up. Ripple Force Princess Yan Feru was a sophomore in Dragon City University, the vice president of Dragon City Martial Arts Research Center, and a two-star superhuman. Her grandfather, Yan Hangbo was the person in charge of the research team who created Ripple Force. Even though he was injured severely during an intense fight many years ago and could no longer regain his strength, his sharp observation skills and astonishing wisdom regarding martial arts made him a grandmaster. Yan Feru's father, Yan Zenin, had developed Yan family's Ripple Force further during a real fight, and he was a very famous monster hunter. He often went into the depths of the fog, and he was even more brutal than monsters. Yan Feru wanted to promote her family's martial arts, and she organized a public class on the largest broadcasting channel in Dragon City, Heavenly Eye Broadcast. Very soon, with her youthful and beautiful appearance as well as her perfected ripple force, she attracted countless fans. Every time she organized a class, the number of views, likes, comments, in video comments, viewers' payment and rewards would be among the top of the entire platform. Hence, she was promoted as Ripple Force Princess by the broadcasting platform and social media. She was the goddess in multiple hot-blooded youth's hearts. After Meng Zhao was injured in the second year of high school, he used Ripple Force to recuperate, and he often watched Ripple Force Princess public classes. When Chu Fei Shang reminded him of this, his head began to hurt slightly. Some of the memory fragments rose from the depths of his mind. Yan Feru's achievements in the end seemed to have surpassed those of her father and her grandfather and she became someone fully deserving of the title Ripple Force Queen. She was an existence that Meng Zhao could only look up to, since she was a third-class fighter. The future version of the Ripple Force Meng Zhao had activated seemed to be the refined version Yan Feru created after she went through multiple bloody fights and absorbed all the advantages from the multiple versions of Ripple Force. Of course, right now, Yan Feru was just a delicate sophomore in university. She was known as a princess because those who loved creating chaos decided to lavish praise on her. Her ripple force was still in its spotting stage, and she was in urgent need of a kind soul providing her guidance. Meng Zhao was excited. Suddenly, he found something odd about the situation. Wait, Fei Shuang. I thought you have been focusing on reckless bull force and thinking about using only fierce and tough fighting styles. You mentioned before that only sissies practice ripple force. Why are you so familiar with Ripple Force Princess? Chu Fei Shang coughed. You know. The fatty who weighed more than 100 kilograms winked at him. Meng Zhao instantly understood. While on his way back, Meng Zhao went to the market to buy two items. One of them was a demonic halberd pork, and the other was the most tender piece of tofu he could find. He would be using this to guide Ripple Force Princess later online. There was no one in the house. His father and his friends had gone to resign from Prosperous. His mother went to the community clinic to have her legs massaged, 
while his sister's school organized a tour to a thermal power plant so that they could understand the concept behind using firecolins and other fire-type monsters to generate electricity. Menjiao turned on the broadcasting platform. Coincidentally, a link to Ripple Force Princess Yan Feru's public class was posted on the homepage. She was conducting a class. The thumbnail was of a girl with her cheeks flushed. She wore yoga clothes and was incredibly lively. The broadcasting platform even used special effects to put a small princess crown on her hair. Her ripple force was a technique passed down through generations, and she had long since perfected it. She also gave off a healthy and pretty image, so it was no wonder why there were 30,000 people from Dragon City watching her live when she conducted her public class. Chapter 34, Do As He Pleases Meng Zhao clicked on the video and saw Yan Feru standing in a corner at Dragon City University. There were eight assistants standing around her, and they threw eight buckets of water at her. Even though there was the entire wireless network and a phone screen between them, Meng Zhao could still hear a buzz, and Yan Feru's figure swiftly became blurry. An astonishing scene appeared. It was as if she was protected by an invisible shield. Not a single drop of water from the eight buckets landed on her. Instead, she used the pulse of her muscles to bounce the water back. She looked like an immortal who was throwing flowers into the air. The water was flung dozens of meters away and formed a perfect circle. A rainbow instantly appeared under the sun. Beautiful ripple. Meng Zhao slapped the table and praised it. The netizens who shared the same goals as he did started posting in video comments and comments madly as well. Beautiful. As expected of Ripple Force Princess. I didn't expect that a basic force execution technique would produce such an exquisite and peerless effect. As expected of the Yan family, they're indeed the creators of Ripple Force. This is the strongest Ripple Force I've ever seen. Once Yan Farah finished her demonstration, she drew the camera closer and pointed it at her chest and stomach. Among the three basic force execution techniques, Reckless Bull focuses on explosive force, Ripple Force focuses on lingering force, and Dragon Snake focuses on accumulating power. All three techniques have different breathing methods. The greatest characteristic of Yan family's Ripple Force is its unique breathing technique. Please take note of the tremors in my chest and stomach when I breathe in deeply. Yan Feru's voice was very sweet, and not like it belonged to someone from a martial arts family. Instead, she sounded like an idol who had just debuted and still retained some of her innocence. It was no wonder why the broadcasting platform would give her the image of a princess based on her characteristics. Her sweet voice and the tremors of her chest and stomach naturally caused many of the netizens to jump forth and speak. The broadcasting platform and Yan Feru herself knew that she wanted a peaceful life, so the broadcasting platform instantly deleted most of the R18 and video comments and left behind only the comments seriously asking for opinions regarding the martial art. The broadcasting platform even highlighted some of the comments from netizens who use their real names to authenticate their accounts. A netizen whose authenticated username was Dragon City University Martial Arts Research Center typed, Vice President Yan's Ripple Force is authentic. Youngsters who have just started learning the martial art, be serious when you try to understand it, and you'll definitely gain something. A netizen who used his real name to authenticate his username and was known as the creator of Zhao Family Ripple Force and the club master of Fierce Waves Fighting Club typed, There are plenty of people in Dragon City who are researching Ripple Force. But even I have to admit that Yan family's Ripple Force is the origin of Ripple Force, and it's definitely one of the strongest Ripple Forces in existence. A netizen whose authenticated username was Dragon City University of Technology Martial Arts Exchange Club asked, Senior Sister Yan, when will you come to the University of Technology for an exchange again? Last time, you came over to provide guidance to us, and all of the martial art hobbyists in the University of Technology managed to learn a lot from you. For a period of time, the atmosphere was harmonious, and the in-video comments were focused on learning. Meng Zhao also stared at Yan Feru's chest and stomach seriously. But his reaction was different from the praises and gasps of amazement from the in-video comments. After some time, he clicked his tongue. I knew it. Right now, Yan Feru is still wet behind the ears. She's still Ripple Force Princess and not the Ripple Force Queen. She's far from executing the future version of Ripple Force. By then, Ripple Force would have gathered all the advantages from various schools to reach the peak of its strength. Meng Zhao's future version of Ripple Force was only at specialist level, so he only knew how to execute Ripple Force but not the essence of it. He knew how to practice it, but had absolutely no idea as to why he should practice it this way, why he should execute force from this particular vein instead of that particular vein, and the scientific concepts hidden behind it. But he did not need to teach it in detail. 
as long as he provided some guidance and pointed out a few flaws, even if he did not know the correct answer, it would be fine. He could just let Ripple Force Princess figure it out on her own. However, his phone screen was too small. He could not see the faint ripples clearly. Men Zhao thought about it and decided to connect his phone to the TV. Then, he used a magnifying glass to search for the choppiness and immaturity in the ripples. Hence, when Bei Jia Kao opened the door to her house, she saw her older brother crouching in front of the television with his butt out. He had a strange expression on his face, and he had his eyes narrowed while his face was stuck to a magnifying glass as he watched an older girl jumping around in yoga clothes. Bei Jia Kao sucked in a deep breath, took half a step back, and dropped her school bag on the ground. The girl who had to become mature far too early because of her family burdens and the future dark witch thought of many things. She shut the door behind her. Then, she turned her head around and said to her mother, who was at the stairs. Mom, we're going in later. Bei Suxin was confused. In a flurry of motion, Meng Zhao opened the door wide. Sis, Mom, since you already opened the door, why did you shut it? Big brother, can we go in? Bei Jiakao asked tentatively. Duh. I just lectured you a little in the morning, I didn't say that you can't come back home. What's with that expression? Meng Zhao was puzzled. He did not understand what was going on. Did I end up being too mean to the middle school version of the Dark Witch when I was teaching her a lesson? Why is she being so timid? Oh well, I'll have to take it slow in changing the Dark Witch and pay more attention to the method. I can't be too crude and brutal. Look at her, she's scared. The living room was too small, and his mom still had to cook, so Meng Zhao could only go back to his room and stare at his phone. Fortunately, he had already found some of the problems he wanted. Meng Zhao thought about it for a while and changed his username to a name that would make him sound like an elder, then made his suggestion in a straightforward manner. Hence, a discordant comment appeared in the row of harmonious in video comments and comments below the video. A netizen with an authenticated username of something something Ripple Force Research Center posted. Yeah and family breathing technique is indeed perfect. Even if I slow down by 5 times the speed, I still can't understand it completely. Old Fire Relayer posted. There's clearly a problem in this breathing technique. Based on Yan Feru's height and her upper and lower body ratio, the center of her breathing should be 3.2 mm above her thoracic diaphragm, not 3.5 mm. And based on her weight judging by her body size, I believe that the best breathing frequency would be 4.6 times every 10 seconds instead of 4.2 times while she fights, because that will be the amount of oxygen her blood needs to provide. It's slightly slower right now. A netizen with the authenticated name Dragon City Military Academy posted. Thank you for selflessly providing guidance, Ms. Yan. Last week, I ran into a three-headed poisonous scorpion in Jiang Nan Major District, and they're infamous for being persistent. With the scale you taught me, I used Yan Family Ripple Force to fight against it for a total of half an hour before I was finally able to kill it by whittling its life away. As expected of Ripple Force, it's indeed the basic force execution method that is the best when it comes to making your fighting abilities last and when it comes to saving physical strength. Old Fire Relayer posted. Did the three-headed poisonous scorpion you ran into have a red radial pattern on its head? If it didn't, that's good. That means it hasn't mutated yet. If you run into a mutated form which has a red radial pattern on its head, just run. Your chances of winning aren't high if you rely on this ripple force. A netizen with the authenticated username of 9th of Furious Waves Fighting Club posted. Yan family ripple force is amazing. After receiving guidance from Ms. Yan, the frequency of my 3-minute punching rate increased by 5%. My average punching force increased by 7%, and my 10,000 meter dash shortened by 15 seconds. Old Fire Relayer posted. That's great for you. But I think that you have a lot of room for improvement still. If you're interested, you can PM me. I'm in a good mood today, so I can provide you guidance for free. The repeated criticisms angered the netizens. Who is this Old Fire Relayer? Is he a very good Ripple Force expert? He doesn't even have real name authentication. He only shows part of himself, so he must be someone who could appear in public. Hey! We've seen people like this who like to pretend to be experts so that they can become popular. Just ignore him. Where's the lesson superintendent? Mute him, kick him out, and delete his account. Old Fire Relayer posted right after. Everyone, don't misunderstand. It's not that I'm trying to hide a part of myself, and I'm not targeting the Yan family ripple force either, much less harbor any sort of bad intentions. I just want to do something for society with my abilities and increase all of our fighting strength. 
the netizens refused to listen to him and started cursing him. Meng Zhao initially spoke the truth and tried reasoning with them. He tried bringing out a large number of formulae and diagrams to verify his views. But in video comments and the comments section were not good places to talk about academics. After exchanging a few comments, he became angry as well. What was wrong with trying to contribute to society now? Hence, Meng Zhao let his fingers fly and started shouting back at the netizens. But once he started fighting back, he was muted for five minutes. This sure went out of hand. Meng Zhao calmed down and felt that he was a little too rash. The broadcasting platform was not a place to talk about serious things. The profound secrets of the future Ripple Force was not something that could be explained clearly with just a few words. He should look for the uploader herself and talk to her in private to exchange information. He believed that with Yanferu's judgment, she would be able to see just how powerful the future Ripple Force was. After all, her future self created it. But Meng Zhao reckoned that the netizens who spammed Yan Fair with PMs every day were as numerous as the stars in the sky, and most of them were fishing for fame and had ulterior motives. He should be the only one who would so kindly and selflessly contribute to society. How could he attract Ripple Force Princess' attention so that she would notice that he was different from everyone else? Meng Zhao gritted his teeth and decided to throw money into this. After all, he had become rich overnight, and right now, he had money. With red rimmed eyes, he charged up 10,000 to his account and exchanged it for 1 million broadcasting coins. Then, he threw it all at Yan Feru. When 1 million sparkled and drifted over the screen, everyone in the broadcasting channel was stunned. Even though Yan Feru was very popular, she did not have rich people who were willing to reward her with 1 million broadcasting coins every time she put on a broadcast. And when the people looked at the person who gave her that money, they found that he was the one who had been spewing nonsense and picking out flaws in others to cause trouble. Do the rich people nowadays play such high-end games? Do they first do everything they can to belittle their target to lower their target's expectations before they throw in a bomb that would allow them to instantly turn the tides? And by doing so, leave behind a deep impression in their goddess hearts? The netizen sucked in sharp breaths. Some people even secretly gave Meng Zhao a thumbs up. You rich people seriously know how to play. Even Yan Feru stopped moving on the screen. She had learned about the conflict in the in video comment zone and the comment zone just now. Ever since her broadcasting classes became more popular, the discordant comments showed up practically every class, and muting them was something they normally did. She did not expect, however, that when the person was muted, he would throw one million broadcasting coins at her. This shocked her a little. The Yan family did not lack money, but if she wanted to promote Yan family ripple force, she needed the support from various people. Yan Feru thought about it and smiled before she said, Thank you for supporting me, old fire relayer. There are still plenty of places where my ripple force is lacking. I hope that we can all research it and improve together. As she spoke, she bowed slightly to express her gratitude to the rich person. At the same time, she immediately unmuted Meng Zhao. Of course, the people who had been arguing with Meng Zhao were still muted for five minutes. They did not have a single second reduced on their sentence. This made the netizen so jealous that they wept. You can seriously do whatever you want if you're rich. This was true on earth, and it's true even in the other world. Chapter 35, Yan Feru's Shock Meng Zhao breathed a sigh of relief. Now, Yan Feru would definitely treat his PM seriously, right? After thinking about this, Meng Zhao went about at length about the future ripple force. From his memory fragments, he regurgitated a large amount of the profound secrets of the future ripple force, the formulae that he could not quite understand, and the calculations to transfer force. Once he finished regurgitating, he looked at his message, and he did not understand what he just wrote. But it was fine. Even if he did not understand, ripple force princess would definitely understand. Even if she did not understand, her dad and grandpa were around. Once Meng Zhao was done with the message, he brought out the items he had prepared. He placed his phone on a stand and turned on the recording function. He was now prepared to use the future Ripple Force to turn the pork into mince meat. Ripple Force Princess, please witness what is a real ripple. Meng Zhao smiled. But he had forgotten something. His phone was still connected to the television, and the television was not turned off. And the interface of those who gave rewards was different from the interface of normal viewers. They had an upgraded one which sparkled and had flowers raining down on the screen. Once they rewarded a broadcaster a certain amount, a few colorful words would also pop up saying thanks to whatever the name is for a gifting insert amount of coins here. Hence, 
Beijia Cao, who was waiting to eat in the living room, saw that her big brother, who was usually mega stingy, had gifted that older girl one million broadcasting coins. She calculated with her fingers for a long time before she figured out that this was worth 10,000, and it was enough to feed her family for three months. She jumped up from the couch and ran into Meng Zhao's room. She was right on time to see her brother staring at the phone with a strange smile. He even held a large piece of pork in his hands. Bei Jia Kao looked as if she was struck by lightning. Meng Zhao's face turned dark, and he glared at Bei Jia Kao. There is something seriously wrong with Jia Kao today. She's really excitable. Is her head a little funny because of the lecture today? When he thought about this, he realized that his expression was a little fierce. He quickly moved his facial muscles and put on a gentle smile as he said, Sis, do you need something? Bei Jia Kao put her hand on her chest to suppress the urge to scream. In an instant, the dark witch, who had to grow up far too quickly, thought of a whole lot more things. She gulped down with great difficulty and shook her head a little. She then bowed deeply to apologize for her rash behavior and left the room with her head lowered. Her movements were very gentle, slow, and considerate when she closed the door to make sure that she did not make a single sound. Yan Feru had just finished conducting a public class in a corner of Dragon City University's gymnasium, and her course mates and assistants cheered. Yes. Your popularity has increased by 15% compared to your last class. Feru, you're becoming more and more popular. We're currently ranked at the 13th place on the popularity poll, and we're more popular than many of the powerful fighters killing monsters. Feru, you even won against the online lecture Professor Wang posted. The course mates gasped in amazement. Yan Feru smiled. We can't make comparisons this way. Professor Wang Cicada Listening Force is a very high-grade advanced force execution method. Many of the university's students don't understand it, and the normal netizens are absolutely baffled by it. Our Ripple Force is a basic force execution method that is good for both the elderly and the young, so it's only natural that we have a wider audience. Stop trying to be humble. Professor Wang just praised you yesterday, saying that as long as we master the Yan family Ripple Force and practice his Cicada Listening Force, will definitely improve by leaps and bounds, a girl said with a smile. She had the look of someone who was really good at forming social connections. Then, her phone rang. She lowered her head and glanced at it. Her eyes instantly lit up. Look, the president of Martial Arts Research Center heard that you broke the popularity record again, and he's eager to treat us all to a meal to celebrate the occasion. Is he treating us or just Ripple Force Princess? Yan Faru's classmates giggled while teasing her. Yan Faru's face turned red, and she said, of course he's treating the entire class. Some of his friends who have joined the workforce will also be joining. By the looks of it, he wants to promote Faru as the brand of our research center. Dragon City University was a famous university among famous universities even when it was on Earth. The students in it were all blessed. Before they graduated, all sorts of clubs, fighting squads, companies, and forces of power extended invitations to them. They were used to it and they did not treat themselves as normal students. Yan Feru thought about it. There were great benefits in promoting her family's ripple force to the business partners, so she could not reject them. All right, go on ahead of me, everyone. Tell the president that I'm going back to my dorm to get changed. Yan Feru parted ways with her course mates and looked through her phone while she walked. She wanted to see the effects of her class just now. Right away, she saw old fire relayer's private message. Since he was someone rich, if she could afford not to offend him, she would try her best not to offend him. Yan Feru tapped open the private message function to give a few perfunctory remarks, but then, she saw a series of profound and complicated formulae and could not help but laugh. Now, everyone gave a huge stress to the economy of attention. Throughput was everything. There was nothing secretive about a basic force execution method. This was especially so for Ripple Force. The education department of the city had spent a lot of money to buy this intellectual property, and it was disseminated to the citizens from the moment they attended elementary school. The original version of the force execution formulae and the breathing technique were printed clearly in the textbooks. There were also plenty of demonically modified versions, evolved versions, and upgraded versions of the technique online. However, the Yan family's ripple force was the source of all ripple forces. They were continuously refining it and they published a new version every year. No one in Dragon City had the ability to call the Yan family out for flaws when it came to the force execution formula of Ripple Force, since they always revised it carefully. In the past, 
The Yan family had run into many similar situations like that of Yan Feru. People who thought too highly of themselves would often bring out the breathing techniques and force execution formulae they had modified carelessly to boast shamelessly in front of Yan family's face. Your ripple force has these weaknesses and can be modified this way. Hey! Such people were known as crank scientists on Earth. The short form of that term was crank. They were just deluding themselves and were trying to curry favor by doing something impressive. They were not worthy of being treated seriously. He spent 10,000 just so that I would comment on the crank version of his ripple force? Yan Ferry shook her head. She simply could not understand the thoughts of rich people. But since he gave her 10,000, she decided to spend half a minute on old fire real air's message. She could only spend 30 seconds on this sort of whimsical force execution formula. If she spent even one second longer, it would pollute her eyes. While thinking this, Yan Feru stood by the road and quickly scrolled down the message as she read it casually. Ten seconds later, the speed at which she scrolled down slowed. Twenty seconds later, her eyes grew wide, and her gaze focused bit by bit. Thirty seconds later, her jaw fell slack to the point that someone could stuff a peach into her mouth. Forty seconds later, Yan Feru took a few steps back. Her legs had gotten weak, and she had to lean against the wall to remain standing. Fifty seconds later, Ripple Force Prince's heart raced, and she could not regain her composure even after a long time had passed. A whole minute later, she opened her chatting software with a complicated emotion to send a message to the chat group named Dragon City Martial Arts Research Center. Sorry, I have something to do tonight. I won't be able to come. What? Everyone was shocked. Feru, you're the main character today. What do you mean you're not coming? Even the president of the Martial Arts Research Center asked, Feru, what happened? I invited some friends from Whirlwind Fighting Squad and Thundercloud Gene Company over tonight. It'll be good for our development after we graduate. Aren't you going to come over to chat with them? I have some things to do, and it's very urgent, Yan Feru gritted her teeth. Very soon, a senior from the Martial Arts Research Center came looking for her. Junior sister? The senior was shocked when he saw how shocked and absent-minded Yan Feru was. Senior brother Zhao. Yan Fei could only force herself to smile. Zhao Nan was not just her senior by one year, but also her father Yan Zanan's direct disciple. He was among the top successors of the third generation of the Yan family ripple force. Both of them were legitimate students under the same teacher, so it was only natural that they shared a deep relationship. Senior brother, you came at the right time. Look at this carefully. Yan Feru handed her phone to him. Zhao Nan lowered his head to look, and he immediately frowned. Which crank martial artist harbored delusions of his own grandeur this time? You'll understand if you continue reading. Yeah, I'm looking at it. His version does seem legit, and it's different from the other crank martial artists. Huh? This breathing method is a little interesting. He imitated the essence of the Yan family ripple force pretty well. He even tried to improve her foundation? How vain. Seriously, he's just tooting his own horn. How arrogant. Zhao Nan continued scrolling down. But the deduction process of this formula is pretty meticulous. He used the Navier Stokes equation to solve the entire process of how energy travels from the feet to the fingertips. He also explained the flow separation of energy and high speed circulation. Look at this as well, he mentioned the mutual interference from shock waves and boundary layers, which led to the problem of an imbalance in force execution. He also mentioned seven unknown stress directions that seal the problem. It's a new style, all right. Hmm. Look at this. Huh? This as well. He pointed out several weaknesses in the current ripple force, and they seem to truly exist. As Zhao Nan read, he started trembling. Cold sweat broke out on his face, and he could not stand properly. This is. His eyes became unfocused, as if they were seeing through Yan Feru in the lecture building into the horizon. Who sent this? There's a short video down below. Take a look. Yan Feru tried to control herself and stopped trembling. Zhao Nan tapped open the video. He saw a person whose face and body were censored by a mosaic. Only his arms were revealed. In them, he held a piece of pork and a piece of tofu. He executed the force and made the pork tremble so much that it turned into mince meat, but the tofu remained perfectly unharmed. This control is? When normal people execute ripple force, their biggest problem is that they can't control their energy from surging like waves through their entire body. They usually end up either not being able to execute force in their arms or executing force with both. The left part of this expert is vibrating at high speed, 
and he controlled the vibrations of his left hand's muscle. In just half a minute, he turned the piece of pork into mince meat, while the tofu in his right hand did not shatter. This accurate control means that he has already mastered ripple force. Zhao Nan cried out. Yan Fair nodded. Look at it closer. Which school does this method belong to? Zhao Nan slowed the playback speed of the video three times and rewatched it. Each time, he became more shocked. This seems to be the Yan family ripple force. But it also has at least the essence of eight other schools mixed into it. There are also a lot of minute adjustments in the technique. I've never heard of it before, and I've never seen it before for Master. How could this be? That's right, Yan Faru agreed. This is a ripple force that uses the Yan family ripple force as its base while it has also gathered together all the perfected super ripple forces. But that's not the strangest thing. Look carefully at the image behind the mosaic. Take a look at the clothes the person is wearing. Zhao Nan took a look at the video, and when Red almost began bleeding into his irises, he finally noticed it. A school uniform? He cried out. This is the school uniform of high schoolers in Dragon City. Could it be that the person who executed this ripple force is a high school student? Chapter 36, A Great Disturbance Zhao Nan's views of the world, of his life, and of his morals shattered into bits. Even if he's dressed in a high school student's uniform, he might not necessarily be a high school student. But based on how smooth his hands are, he should not be too old. He is indeed in the same age group as us. In fact, he's probably younger than us by a few years. Yan Feru spoke with a complicated emotion. Besides, I feel that his strength isn't great. His maximum punching strength shouldn't be more than 250 kilograms. He is purely relying on the ingenuity of this ripple force to deliver all of his strength continuously and steadily into the piece of pork. Zhao Nan was silent. He believed that he could execute the martial art the teenager used in the video. In fact, he could do it in a shorter amount of time. He could turn a piece of pork into mince meat in 10 seconds. The problem was, he had been learning ripple force from Yan Zanin since he was young, and when he was 19, he awakened to supernatural powers. Now, even if he did not use his supernatural abilities, his maximum punching strength was still over 500 kilograms. The maximum strength of the teenager in the video was only slightly above that of an average high school student. Even so, he managed to fully draw out and utilize every bit of power from all his muscles and even his cells from the ingenious aspects of ripple force. He used an incredibly terrifying ripple. Junior sister, this is a serious matter. You have to tell master, hurry. Zhao Nan's expression became stern. He did not want to delay her more, but he could not help but ask, where did you get this ripple force? What's the goal of this person telling you about such an amazing ripple force? What benefits does he want? If you ask me, no matter what sort of thing he wants, it's worth it for us to exchange it for his ripple force. I don't know. Shock and puzzlement that could not be described with words appeared on ripple force Prince's face. She was stunned for a long time before she mumbled, he didn't ask me for any benefits. Instead, he even gave me 10,000 for it. He also told me that he's not asking for anything. He just wants the Yan family to not keep this a secret. He wants us to promote this new version of Ripple Force so that he can contribute to Dragon City's raise to power. While Ripple Force Princess was being deeply shocked and could not compose herself, Meng Zhao was talking to his father on the balcony of the public renting house. Meng Yishan had finished settling things with Prosperous. As a show of respect to white-haired ghostly hands Ning Shou and Thunderbolt, Chin Hu did not dare to attack him for the time being. More than ten harvesters left the company while accompanied by a retinue. They looked like an army who had returned victorious. As for Shen Rongfa, rumors said that he was currently staying in a plastic surgery hospital, but no one knew what sort of illness he had. Meng Yishan was in a good mood. As he watched his son become more mature every day, he felt relieved. But just now, his wife told him some things, and he felt that it was rather awkward for him to breach this topic. He also found it really embarrassing to put his thoughts to words. A hey cow, you've really grown up. You can become the pillar of our family now. After mulling over his words for half a day, the middle-aged man shut the door separating the balcony to the bedroom and brought out a wrinkled pack of cigarettes. Would you want one? This was him recognizing that his son had become an adult, and he could give up his spot as the head of the family to him now. Dad, I don't smoke. You can just get straight to whatever you want to say. Meng Zhao felt that his father was a little strange today. What was with his gaze? It's nothing. I just want us to be able to talk like good friends, Meng Yishan said falteringly. You sister told your mom. Some things just now. And your mom told them to me. 
Um, I'm just going to say a few words, alright? Even if you don't like listening to it, don't get upset. I'm saying that, you know, we earned a lot of money yesterday, and we never earned so much money in our family before. It's a pretty happy thing, huh? That's right. It's a pretty amazing thing, Meng Zhao said. Dad, aren't you happy? Of course I'm happy. It's just that, we've just started building our company, and those good days are still far ahead of us in the future. We still need to be very careful with our spending. We can't forget ourselves after we become rich overnight, yes? Meng Yishan shifted the topic of the conversation. I saw that you've been going to online classes often. It's that. What's her name? That Ripple. Ripple Force Princess Yan Feru. I learned Ripple Force from her to recuperate. Is there something wrong with it? Meng Zhao frowned. No, 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 of course not. You need to repay kindness when it is shown to you. Her online classes helped you recover, so it's only normal that you want to express gratitude to her. I fully support that. But, you know, you need to understand your limits when doing everything. She comes from a well-known family, and she's a blessed child in Dragon City University. She's also an online celebrity that the broadcasting platform is supporting fully. She's not in the same world as us. That money you have might be a lot in our eyes, but it's nothing to her, Meng Yishan said earnestly. The more Meng Zhao listened to his father, the more puzzled he became. Dad, I don't understand what you're saying. Youth is filled with ignorance. No one has ever understood it, Meng Yishan said with a sigh. I was young once, and I was hot-blooded as well. No matter what I did, I was always impatient. Sometimes, when I was overcome by impulse, I couldn't control myself. Hang on a second. Meng Zhao felt that there must be a misunderstanding somewhere. Dad, I wasn't impulsive, and I'm not impatient either. If you put it that way, then you're not treating me like your friend. I'm a man too, and I was young once. I know exactly what you young guns are thinking about. You're hot blood youths at 17 and 18 years old. As long as you don't have physiological diseases, how could you not be impatient and impulsive? Meng Yishan cast him a sidelong glance. I, ah, uh, fine. I was impatient and impulsive. Meng Zhao submitted to his father. That's the spirit. We're both men. We can understand each other in everything. But still, no matter how impatient we are, we have to pay attention to the time, our target, and the method we use, Meng Yishan said. You're about to take your national college examination. It's better if you put all of your attention on your cultivation. Wait until your national college examination ends. Then, you can forget about whether you've done well or not. If you have a girl in class that you're rather close to, you can invite her out to sing, watch movies, or stroll about Monster Park. If she doesn't mind how old and dilapidated our house is, you can even bring her over to rest. Then, forget about spending 10,000. Even if you spend 20,000 or 30,000, I'll have nothing to say about it. If you don't have enough money, I will support you. Of course, you'll have to be sincere. You can't bully the girl, but I trust that you won't do it. The man and the Meng family are all sincere when it comes to our relationships, right? What? Dad, let's stop for a moment and get ourselves on the same channel, yeah? Cause I feel like we're on completely different worlds here. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't. Ahem. Anyhow, just. Pay attention to what you're doing. Also, one last thing. The environment in Dragon City is pretty bad. There are monsters running amok outside and we occasionally have zombies and plagues going around in the city, so you should. He finished smoking his cigarette and flicked away the cigarette but Then, as if he had come to a huge decision, he quickly said, you should pay attention to your personal hygiene and safety precautions. Alright, that's the end of the father-son talk. I'm going to wash the dishes now. Before Meng Zhao could register what happened, his father had already opened the door and fled. Darling, I've successfully completed my mission. Our son understands it now. I have no idea what you were saying. Meng Zhao felt so frustrated that he was about to die. As he thought about it carefully, he felt that this definitely had something to do with Bei Jiakao, and he became so angry that he gnashed his teeth. Damn you, Dark Witch. You're seriously the bane of my life. What on earth did you tell mom? Just when he began polishing his knives and wanted to get back at his little sister, a notification suddenly popped up before his eyes. After you provided guidance, elite citizen Yan Feru obtained an epiphany in terms of ripple force. Increased contribution points by 99. This was his second elite monster. As expected of the future ripple force queen, 
the woman who left her name in the history books of Dragon City's martial arts history. She's still in university, but she's already a legendary elite citizen. Meng Zhao was so happy that he was almost floating. He knew it, it was much better to farm elite monsters. When Yan Feru praised and admired the Ripple Force, her passion for learning and her subjective activity was so great that he did not even need to spend any effort to be able to get a huge amount of contribution points. And this was just the beginning. Very soon, like the floodgates of a dam were opened, a large number of notifications came charging at Meng Zhao. Elite citizen Yan Feru was shocked by your Ripple Force, and she is currently spreading out the new Ripple Force. More normal citizens are learning the new Ripple Force, and they gain varying degrees of understanding from it. Dragon City's overall fighting strength has increased. Increased contribution points by 12. Increased contribution points by 9. Increased contribution points by 22. Increased contribution points by 17. I finally found the right way to use kindling. Meng Zhao felt tears pool in his eyes. When he used Chu Fei Shang to indirectly teach his high school classmates, everyone just gave him one contribution point on average. But when he used Yan Fer to indirectly teach others, they were probably her university course mates or professional users of the Yan family ripple force. When they became stronger, it naturally was going to be better for the future development of Dragon City. Meng Zhao's guess was correct. Once he sent the formulae, instructions, and video to Yan Feru through the private message, they started spreading non-stop in the private chat group of the Yan family Ripple Force. Many of the third-generation disciples of the Yan family Ripple Force and even the pillars of the second generation were shocked. Layman could understand something at a surface level, but professionals could see the profound skill in whatever they specialized. When Meng Zhao taught Chu Fei Shang reckless bull force, regardless of his classmates or his homeroom teacher, all they could tell was this, oh, this is a very powerful super reckless bull force. As for how powerful it was or where its limits were, the layman and even Meng Zhao himself had no clue. But when the future ripple force was placed before current ripple force experts, the shock dealt to them was definitely that of a magnitude level 12 tidal wave. How could this be? This ripple force has increased the efficiency of our force execution by more than 10%, and it's even better than the newest version of our Yan family ripple force. When we attack, it's even smoother. It's practically perfect. There are practically no weaknesses in it. That's not right. This is the Yan family ripple force, but it's a super improved version of the Yan family ripple force. It's only after I saw it that I understood that the real Yan family ripple force is actually supposed to be like this. I I've been walking down the wrong path these the past five years. Instead of saying that it's the Yan family ripple force, it's better to say that this ripple force is the agglomeration of all the popular ripple forces in the market right now. It achieved mastery through a comprehensive study of all other ripple forces and by blending all of them together. I wonder just which monstrous and peerless elite made this ripple force. I'm impressed. All the practitioners of ripple force in Dragon City were bound to have a sleepless night. This great disturbance was passed from Meng Zhao's hands to Yan Feru. Later on, she sent it to her family's private chat group. Then, it went from the Yan family ripple force to more than 10 different schools. In the end, Waves of comments also appeared on normal martial art forums. The normal citizens did not know the source of the future Ripple Force. They thought that the Yan family had created a new version of the Yan family Ripple Force again, and they gasped in amazement. As expected of the Yan family. They were indeed the best in Dragon City when it came to Ripple Force, and they were worthy of the title of the creators of Ripple Force. Yan Fair knew what was going on, so it was only par for the course that she started spamming old Fire Relayers chat box. She wanted this expert to show his real face so that she could worship him. Chapter 37, A Crazy Technique Meng Zhao read the messages, but did not reply. He was thinking about how he should use the internet to contact more of the people in the Yan family and more of the powerful fighters in the future. He was in the era of information explosion. There were plenty of things online that declared themselves to be the secret techniques of martial arts, ultimate techniques, and peerless divine arts. Some of the secret techniques contained inborn weaknesses, and they were test versions that contained all sorts of flaws. Some of the secret techniques were very difficult to practice, and they could easily result in people's energy deviating. Some of the secret techniques had great side effects. They were a fist of seven injuries, which would deal heavy damage to both the enemies and the user itself. Most of the normal martial arts lovers with normal brains suspected every brand new martial art when they saw it online. They smiled and forgot about it. If it were not for the fact that they were at the end of their ropes, no one would be willing to be elaborate. 
trying to contribute through creating a post was an incredibly inefficient method. No matter how strong the force execution formula was or how great the calculations for damage output were, they would be drowned out by the surging flow of information online. But what if he got to know an online celebrity like Yan Feru who had a great background and the powerful people behind her so that they could fan the flames? Then, he would need to solve two problems. First, Meng Zhao could not explain how he came about the future martial art and other high-end techniques. Second, he did not understand them fully himself. He was purely relying on remaining enigmatic to bluff his way through. He could pretend to be mysterious and awesome, so the people would just use their imaginations to fill in the blanks. But if they met up, everyone would start respectfully asking him to explain the scientific logic behind this and that formula. How would he have to answer them? It's better if I create the image of a mysterious, inscrutable, and peerless martial artist. I'll just push all the responsibility to this mysterious elite, and it'll make sense. My words don't carry weight, and no one will believe many of the things I say anyway. Even if I warn others that the monster war is about to become more dangerous, and the other world is actually very big and dangerous, who would listen to me? But if there's a mysterious elite around, I'll allow the Yan family and other powerful people admire him first before I use him to send warnings. Then, the things I say will be much more convincing. After thinking about this, Meng Zhao returned to his room and locked his door. He turned off the private messages that Yan Feru kept sending him and went to the deep web. Meng Yishan and Bei Suxin looked at each other in the living room. Our son locked his door again. The mother was worried. Ah, such is youth. The father sighed. After Dragon City transmigrated, they did not have communication satellites anymore since connection to them was cut off, and the internet broke down for many years. Then, after the zombie crisis, things gradually calmed down, and the scientists made major breakthroughs in terms of biochemical technology and spirit energy, which allowed them to rebuild the internet. The new internet made use of a different concept compared to the one on Earth. It was said that it used the concept of crystallized chips made from crystals and made large use of biochemical brains, which were imitations of monster brains. This increased the distance of the transfer of information in an environment filled with powerful spirit magnetic fields and allowed to resist interference. The weakness of the new technology was that it made it very difficult to lock down on terminal addresses. Hence, the difficulty in monitoring and shutting down websites was 100 times harder than it was on Earth. The Internet was filled with places that the Survival Committee and Supernatural Tower could not control. When more than 100 of such lawless places were connected together, the Deep Web was born. This was the playground of mad scientists and cultivation maniacs. Many monster organ smugglers and even criminals showed up there as well. They tossed around all sorts of whimsical creations and made all sorts of shady, bloody deals. Together, they created an information forest filled with savagery. With familiar motions, Meng Zhao logged into a comprehensive forum that he often went to in the deep web. A familiar talking style popped up before him. I recently noticed a nest of bloody moon wolf pups. Are there any superhuman above two stars who would dare to form a party to snatch those pups before the military and major establishments? For those who seek truthful verifications, a professional scientific martial arts research team has recently developed the 13 secret killing moves with Thunder Rapier. It's incredibly powerful and has absolutely no side effects whatsoever. It's free for all to learn, and those who learn it will definitely master it. We'll even give you a compensation of 5,000 for enteral nutrition should anything happen to you. And in very small fonts were written, but we won't care if you end up disabled. You'll have to bear the consequences yourself. Have you ever been in conflict with superhumans? Did you have your prey snatched in the fog by your enemies? Do you want to have your problem solved forever? We can talk about this in detail through private messages. These were not the things Meng Zhao was looking for. He clicked on the section for life science and human anatomy research. The people here spoke normally. Well, they were not really that normal, but still. What sort of image should I come up with? Meng Zhao shut his eyes and came up with the image of countless mad scientists and cultivation maniacs. Since he called himself Old Fire Relayer, he should be someone with messy white hair, disagreeable, temperamental flaunt his seniority, but be really strong. Meng Zhao nodded. He got out the all-new email that he had prepared in the morning and which was absolutely clean. To learn the deviant ways on the internet, he had once done his homework regarding the deep web. He knew how he should avoid being monitored and how he should create a brand new fictitious identity. He used the email to create a new account. Then, he started going to other people's posts to create his presence. Old Fire Relayer, Jr., 
The advanced 7 spin of your 100 saber technique is pretty good, but there are 3 oversights, 4 flaws, and 5 fatal weaknesses. Today, I just killed a grade 5 super beast called lightning fire, and I feel good, so I'll point out one of the oversights for free. Old fire relayer, hey! This gun technique is pure rubbish. Don't misunderstand me, boy. I'm not targeting you. I'm saying that the current 17 mainstream shooting schools in the market are all trash. Old fire relayer, over the past 20 to 30 years, I seldom saw juniors like you who dare to quarrel against me. How reckless. You should be thankful that I have been rehabilitating over the past 10 years, and my killing intent has diminished greatly, or else, you wouldn't live to see tomorrow's sun. Men Zhao uploaded around 8 of such posts, which caused the netizens to yell at him, and nodded to himself. He believed that this would be enough. Then, with old fire relayer's name, he posted an academic investigation post regarding Ripple Force. It was not as detailed as the one he messaged Yan Feru, but he did reveal that he had continuously accumulated experience and modified it during his fights in the depths of the fog. He needed to test it further, and he was currently trying to gather test subjects. Now, I can push all the problems I face next on this elusive old fire relayer. Meng Zhao smiled faintly. He did not care about how the countless netizens cursed him in all the ways possible under his post and just logged off. Running away after pretending to be awesome felt good. The strange flame continued flashing at the corner of his eye, and messages continued jumping out. His contribution points started rising at lightning speed. Soon, it increased to more than 900 points. I might be able to get 3000 points over the night. Men Zhao thought happily. He had not slept for two nights, and he was extremely exhausted. He fell into deep sleep right away and dreamt that many aspects of the future changed. It was 3 o'clock at night. Swallow Building was the headquarters of the Yan family, and it was still bright. Yan Feru and more than 10 of the third generation Yan family Ripple Force disciples had hurried over. Even though it was late at night, there were no traces of fatigue on their faces. Their eyes were filled with excitement, which made them turn red. There was delight in their smiles, and they could not hide it. Hiss. The door to a cultivation room opened before them. A middle-aged man with a body as built as a mountain, an aggressive presence, and a powerful fighting spirit gushing out of his pores came out with a dark look on his face. He was the leader of the second generation of people who had learned the Yan family ripple force, monster hunter Yan Zenin. Sir. Uncle Nan. Dad. The people from the third generation rushed over to greet him, and Yan Feru said eagerly, You've been practicing the demonically modified ripple force for three hours. Was it great? Yan Zenin stared at his daughter for half a day before he said coldly, Of course it's good, or else, how could it have possibly deceived the mighty Ripple Force Princess? When he said these words, the people were stunned. Yan Feru was in shock. Deceive me? Dad, what do you mean by that? Was it fake? It wasn't fake, but it is very extreme and mad. Yan Zenin's facial muscles trembled. His heart seemed to be beating in fear. He gritted his teeth and said, as the saying goes, those who are ahead of the generation by half a step are genii, but those who are ahead of the generation by a whole step are lunatics. This demonically modified ripple force is at least three huge steps ahead of our era. It's basically madness. Many of the third generation was stunned by Yan Zen and Zora, and they did not dare say a single word even after a long time had passed. Only Yan Feru could still muster her courage. Dad. This demonically modified ripple force is very powerful on the surface and several of its parameters surpass our limits. Why did you say that it's madness? Yan Zen inside. Feru and all of you are still young. True, the figures on paper for this technique are very beautiful, and some of the parameters have reached the peak, but what's the price? To be able to push the human body to the limits when it comes to fighting continuously, it completely reformed the current breathing technique. The consumption rate of oxygen went up by 20%. And to be able to inhale large amounts of oxygen within a short amount of time so that our blood can swiftly circulate to all of our muscle fibers, it requires the practitioners to have incredibly well-developed lungs and active red blood cells. If you want even stronger lungs and higher quality blood, you need to use up a lot of cultivation resources and use a brand new stance to build your basics. In fact, the entire practice system will have to be modified. This is what you call affecting the entire system if you try to change one aspect of it. Now. He changed a simple basic force execution method that is easy to learn into an ultimate technique that is powerful but very difficult to train. The group looked at each other at a loss. An ultimate technique? That was too much, right? Yan Zenin spoke in a dark voice. 
Did you know that the more I practiced this demonically modified ripple force, the more terrifying I found it? Whoever created this technique is either a genius or a lunatic. He might even be a complete demon. This technique doesn't seem to have been created for this era. But for an even more brutal era. It's for martial artists who are 10 times as strong as we are so that they can fight against monsters who are 10 times more brutal than the monsters right now. Chapter 38, A Small Problem with the Martial Arts of the Future The people were shocked. Was this comment good or bad? No matter how strong the monsters are, it's impossible for them to be 10 times more brutal than they are right now, right? This person is seeking to push the human body to its limits on a surface level but does not care about the difficulty in learning and the body's ability to endure such pressure. To put it in good terms, this is all empty talk, but to put it in bad terms, he harbors malicious thoughts. Before his daughter could ask any questions, Yan Zenin took the initiative to say, You don't know yet, but the old man has been in isolated training for half a year, and he has mastered his divine technique. Most probably, he will announce Ripple Force V2 next month. The crowd cried out in shock. Twenty years ago, the master of the Yan family, Yan Hangbo had created Ripple Force, but it was not perfect. It could only be used in small fights, and the version number for it always started with one. Now, the Yan family Ripple Force had finally entered the age where version 2 could appear. This meant that the upgrade this time would definitely produce an extraordinary breakthrough. Right now, there are at least 10 mainstream Ripple Forces in the market. While the Yan family Ripple Force might be the leading one right now, we have not been able to completely monopolize the technique. But I believe that as we promote version 2, the other Ripple Force factions will forever lose the ability to challenge the Yan family. Yan Zenin spoke with pride in his voice. You should understand just how big this pie is. Right now, all the elementary schools in the city teach the Yan family Ripple Force. The money that the education department of the city gives us for our intellectual property is astronomical. We also work with the military to combine the Yan Force Ripple Force with 100 Saber technique to produce 100 Wave Breaking Saber. All the soldiers in Dragon City must learn the Saber technique. Hey, those dozen other Ripple Force factions are dreaming about stealing this pie from us. I reckon that they heard that the old man is about to promote Yan Family Ripple Force V2 and know that if they don't take action now, it will be too late for them. The crowd fell into silence. But what does this have to do with the demonically modified Ripple Force? Yan Feru asked. What does it have to do? Hey! If I'm not mistaken, this super ripple force has already spread because of you, right? Yan Zenin laughed coldly. If everyone believes that this is Yan family ripple force v2, what do you think will happen? Yan Feru shook her head in confusion. I don't know. Yan Zenin put his hands behind his back and said coldly, First of all, Everyone will think that Yan Family Ripple Force V2 is very powerful and is practically invincible based on the figures on paper. Social media will praise us to high heavens, and unrest will stir in the city. Then, these friendly factions will unintentionally discover the weaknesses in the new Ripple Force. They will notice the various problems such as the consumption rate of oxygen and how hard it is to learn this. They will notice that this is a technique that can allow you to slay dragons, but it's used to fight against things that don't exist. It's designed to tackle monsters that are 10 times more brutal than the ones we face right now. Whoever made this is just trying to show off. It's not practical, and this version isn't mature at all. Next, the social media outlets will make a 180 degree turn and point their knives at us. They will lash out at the Yan family for forgetting our roots. They will accuse us for forgetting that ripple force is a basic force execution method. Compared to being used in battle, it should focus more on lowering the difficulty for learning and using it. These friendly factions will then put on a front and sigh. They will say that a basic martial art should have the mannerisms of a basic martial art. It's not something that can become a high-end martial art just by making random calculations of the performance of the martial art on paper and striving after extreme figures, which is what research labs do. Next, the middle schools, elementary schools, and the military will begin to show doubt in the Yan family ripple force. They won't be able to understand the direction of development. If we are really prepared to push our ripple force to become a high-end technique and turn it into an ultimate technique, it will not be suitable to be used widely in schools and the military. At that time, hey, we would have lost the contract, and these friendly factions will definitely swoop in to take advantage of the situation. Even if we manage to keep the contract, they will do something major that will make the headlines before Yan Family Ripple Force V2 is announced, and it will throw things into absolute chaos. This will only be good news to the friendly factions while nothing bad will come out of it. His words left the crowd completely dumbfounded. 
Yan Fera broke into cold sweat. Dad, are you saying that this demonically modified Ripple Force came from other Ripple Force factions? They might appear to be your friends in business, but they will stab you in the back. Aside from the people who have been thinking about how to get rid of the Yan family for more than 10 years, who would be able to gather so much wisdom from other Ripple Force factions and make this seemingly powerful demonically modified Ripple Force to trick you? But this Ripple Force has a strong spirit of the Yan family Ripple Force. Can they really copy it? Copying the entire thing is naturally impossible, but copying bits and pieces to lead us astray isn't impossible, Yan Zanin said. Yan Feru thought about it, and she felt regretful. Dad, I was wrong. Master, we were wrong. The disciples of the third generation lowered their heads out of fear and remorse. I can't blame you for this. This person is just too sinister. If my guess is correct, he has been planning this for more than half a year. In fact, the elites from more than ten factions must have been planning this together. No matter how talented you are, you're still flowers on the ivory tower. There's no way you can tell just how great this plot is. Fortunately, I didn't go out to hunt in the depths of the fog these past few days, or else, the Yan family would have to face a huge crisis. Yan Fera looked at him anxiously. But the news of this technique has already spread in many forums and chat groups. What should we do? You haven't promoted this demonically modified Ripple Force through your public classes, so we can still save the situation. Yan Zenin thought about it. Right now, the most crucial part is that you've received 10,000 from this person. If he hires internet ghostwriters to cause trouble, the 10,000 can soon turn into an insider dealing that cost a few million. Do this. Immediately return the money to the person and make a notice to clear things up. Be stern about it and completely cut off all connections between the Yan family and this crazy ripple force. I'll immediately go to the public relations department in my squad and settle this matter overnight. We'll try to settle everything before internet traffic flow increases tomorrow. Yan Feru sighed in relief. Thank goodness her father was around. Should we ask for instructions from Grandpa? She asked. Forget it. The old man is still in isolated training. He's conducting the final tests before releasing version 2. Over the past few days, the entire research team has been working day and night. We can finish settling the trivial matters before we report to the old man. Yan Zenin waved his hand and disagreed with his daughter's suggestion. Ripple Force Princess gritted her teeth fiercely and hissed out the name, Old Fire Relayer. Meng Zhao slept well. When he woke up, he felt refreshed. His entire body was filled with explosive power, and he eagerly wanted to look for a monster so that he could beat it up. He checked the contribution points under the strange flame and found that. Huh? Why was it only at 1,443 points? He remembered that before he went to sleep, it had almost reached 1,000. A whole night had passed, but he had only gained a few hundreds of contribution points. This did not tally with how the numbers had shot up madly last night. He scratched his head and turned on his phone while he still felt sleepy. He found that Yan Feru had returned the 1 million broadcasting coins to his account. She had even exchanged those coins into cash and even paid for all the administration fees. What's going on? Meng Zhao instantly snapped away. He checked Yan Feru's newest course of action and found that Ripple Force Princess had uploaded a new video overnight. She was dressed in black in the video, and her expression was cold as ice. She was completely different from her sweet princess persona in the public classes. Recently, there has been a new Ripple Force that has been really popular in Dragon City. It's too extreme and even ranges on madness, and the consequences of practicing it can't be predicted. This demonically modified Ripple Force also used the name of the Yan family Ripple Force to mislead the public. I hope that the person who developed it will stop before it's too late and live his life well. The entire Yan family and I retain the right to have the law force you to take responsibility for the matter. Meng Zhao was flabbergasted. What did she mean? Extreme? Madness? Was she talking about his future Ripple version? But this Ripple Force was something Yan Feru had taken a lot of time to upgrade after converging all schools of Ripple Force together. What was wrong with her? Did she actually start punching herself in the face after she went bonkers? When he went to the comments section, the netizens were talking about her statement. There were also plenty of Ripple Force experts who had their usernames authenticated with their real names speaking up. Zhao Family Ripple Force, I will definitely support the Yan family to get rid of this pest in the world of Ripple Force. Wang family Ripple Force, Ripple Force's core competitive advantage is that it has no requirements to learn it, and it's easy to practice it. It's suitable for the elderly and the young. 
it's not something that should focus on loading up various parameters on paper and pushing the limits of performance while ignoring the difficulty for practicing it and the consumption of energy while we use the technique. This demonically modified ripple force has gone down the wrong path. Limitless ripple force, limitless ripple force might be better than its predecessor, but we've never forgotten that the origin of ripple force is the Yan family. We must never forget the source of our success. We will forever stand together with the Yan family in the face of this mad and demonic ripple force. There were more than 10 other Ripple Force factions who took up the stance of friendly factions and criticized the future Ripple Force until it was battered and not worth a dime. Menjiao only understood the gist of it after he stared at the gossip for some time. It was generally about the Yan family suspecting that this future Ripple Force was an imitation that was created by other factions and was only partially similar to the Yan family Ripple faction. In fact, it was an evil technique that was created with ulterior motives. After all, Meng Zhao did not copy all the force execution formulae and the calculations for the output of force. There were many things that he could not remember clearly, so the things he wrote were all over the place and only seemed plausible. Besides, some of the battle parameters were indeed a little ahead of the current era. After the representative of the Ant family Ripple Force spoke up, the other faction still did not know the inside story and just decided to cast caution to the wind by taking sides first, because they were afraid of public opinion attacking them. As they continued discussing with each other, everyone came up with their own conclusions. The shocking demonically modified Ripple Force was definitely not created by other Ripple Force practitioners. It was a creation by the Reckless Bull Force practitioners, Dragon Snake Force practitioners, and their other competitors. After all, there were major overlaps in their target audience. That's a strange train of thought if I've ever seen one. Meng Zhao did not know whether he should laugh or cry. He read a few of the professionals' posts carefully, and he had to admit that their guesses were pretty logical. The evolution speed of Dragon Citizens would increase for several decades in the future. Due to the nourishment of spirit energy and the stimulation from war, the shackles of their genes would be completely removed, and the potential of every single cell in the human body will be unlocked. Everyone will begin to evolve madly then. Even if their external appearances did not change, their lung capacity, the oxygen volume in the blood, their lung capacity, their muscle fibers, the secretion of hormones, the functions of organs, and everything else would increase. The martial arts of the future were developed and upgraded based on the standards of future humans. If he dumped future martial arts on the current generation, it would be the same as him using a phone from decades ago to operate a big game in the current era. The results would not be as good as he had imagined. This problem was not that obvious with beginner level martial arts like Reckless Bull Force and Ripple Force. But if he activated fiercer and even more amazing martial arts, he would naturally have no problem practicing those martial arts himself because his body had been continuously refined and modified by kindling, but he had to be careful about promoting them to the world. Alright, since you can't tell what's good from bad, I won't be giving you ripple force as a contribution. Meng Zhao thought tartly. I have reckless bull force, dragon snake force, and plenty of future martial arts with me. I can go to other places to make contributions to society. Yeah and Feru, we've formed a grudge against each other. Today, you treated my kindness like trash, so tomorrow, even if you beg me on your knees in your yoga clothes and throw yourself at my feet, I... He sucked in a deep breath and calmed down. Oh well, a fire relayer should have the magnanimity of a fire relayer. When I make contributions, I should not look for fame and benefits, and I should not be afraid of misunderstandings and suffering. If Ripple Force Princess really comes and throws herself at my feet while crying and admitting her mistake, she will have to be regretting her decision seriously, so I'll begrudgingly forgive her. And so, the matter was settled happily. But it was not as if there was no good news over the day. Meng Zhao had managed to get his third elite monster, Demon Yan. Chapter 39, Circle of High End Harvesters even though Meng Zhao only received 68 contribution points from Chu Fei Shang teaching Demon Yan Reckless Bull technique, once he was certain of Demon Yan's status as an elite monster, Meng Zhao could often go to him to play. He believed that he could farm buckets full of contribution points from him. Chu Fei Shang made an agreement with Demon Yan that after they went through the test in school, which was the first round of the national college examination, Demon Yan could teach Reckless Bull technique to the entire school and Demon Yan promised that he would get a huge load of cultivation resources for Chu Fei Shang from the principal. Overcharging the school for this was much more rewarding than a small profit from other students. Meng Zhao was absolutely fine with it. 
After Demon Yan understood the technique and the students in the study group sparred with each other, Meng Zhao accumulated 1,758 contribution points. He went to the toilet and activated an initial stage healing skill, and his healing progress went up to 71%. He threw the remaining contribution points into the skillfulness of basic harvesting skill. Even though a few hundred contribution points were not enough to push his basic harvesting skill from specialist level to master level, with each increase in his skillfulness, he would regain some memory fragments stored in the depths of his mind. They allowed him to gain a brand new understanding toward harvesting. He also managed to come up with a few ways to cure Ning Shuo. It was the day of the material trade fair. After school, Meng Zhao did not join the self-study period at night. He took the public bus to a building called Cloud Soar. He could vaguely remember attending monster material trade fairs in his past life as well. They might sound grand, but in truth, they were no different from markets that sold fresh pork. They were hearts, livers, spleens, lungs, and kidneys all over the place, and everyone competed by placing their bids. When Meng Zhao saw the sparkling Cloud Soar, the various grand cars parked in front of the building, and the men and women dressed magnificently, he lowered his head to look at his wrinkled school uniform and realized that there was something off about him. There couldn't be any talk about him owning a grand car. There was limited space in Dragon City, and an exorbitant amount of money was needed for parking fees, fuel surcharges, and vehicle taxes. Anyone could gain the status of nobility even if they just attached four wheels to two couches and installed a crystal engine, but that was as long as the vehicle could be driven on the road legally. I might have been a harvester for more than 10 years in my previous life, but I was always at the bottom of the field. At that time, the trade fairs I attended were all like markets. But this time, I was invited to attend by white-haired ghostly hands, so the standard will naturally be different. My appearance is indeed a little ill-fitting and eye-catching. Meng Zhao did not have the habit to pretend to be someone weak so that he could take advantage of the powerful. If he had realized the problem earlier, he would have changed to a cleaner pair of clothes so that he could show Ning Shuo respect. But since he was already here, he could not be bothered to go back to change. Besides, he did not have any other clothes at home that looked decent. He flung his school bag over his shoulder and let out a dry cough. Then, without ever changing his expression, he walked among the impeccably dressed men and women into Cloud Soar. To show off its noble status, the five-star hotel had installed an elevator. The number of times Meng Zhao took an elevator since he was young could be counted on one hand. When he saw the others operate it with familiar ease, he watched them curiously. When the young men and women saw him reacting in this manner, they could not help but snicker. A teenage girl decked in jewelry whispered into her male companion's eyes about how he stuck out like a sore thumb. When they reached the entrance of the trade fair, the security guard and ushers stared at him in puzzlement and wariness. They verified his identity thrice before they let him in with a troubled look. My apologies, my young friend. I'll only arrive ten minutes later. Are you all right? Ning Shuo soon called him. It's fine. School ended early for me today. You can take your time, Elder Ning. Meng Zhao was not bothered by it. The trade fair was held in the style of a buffet. Compared to markets selling pork, this was more akin to a banquet for rich and powerful families, as well as those of the upper class members of society. As they toasted each other, it was clear that the trading of monster materials was only secondary. The main goal of the trade fair was to expand connections, strengthen relationships, and negotiate business deals. After walking around a few times, Meng Zhao heard a few important people with extraordinary presences settling a few small business deals worth tens of millions. He also saw a few harvesters with strange lights shining in their eyes and spirit marks on their hands. It was clear that they were top-class harvesters who had transcended worldliness and attained sainthood. All of them boasted about themselves in a reserved manner while they spoke to each other. The contents of their talks were all about so-and-so was incredibly rash and turned insert monster name here's organs into mince meat with just one punch. Others would have had problems dealing with it, but I could perfectly separate the utterly destroyed organs, and their value remained the same. Sometimes, those conversations shifted to Mr. Whatever the name is possesses unmatched strength but only feels at ease if I harvest the super beasts he kills. If I have something to do, he would rather not go into the fog. And such other conversations. Based on their words, the peerless fighters who intimidated Dragon City were children who did not understand the importance of things. Every time they reduced the monsters into a pulp, the harvesters were the ones who had to deal with the aftermath. Meng Zhao knew that this was just businessmen boasting about themselves but he still found his emotions surging as he listened. 
the harvester field was indeed the top among all supporting careers. Meng Zhao was also completely unbothered by the gazes that people cast on him, the lavish environment, and the grand food around him. True, he was just an average high school student, but he was also someone who had witnessed the end of the world. During the apocalypse, no matter how lavish a five-star hotel was, it was turned into rubble, no matter how exquisitely and impeccably dressed a beauty was, she was reduced to a skeletal frame. The peerless fighters who stood supreme above others and had the entire city at their beck and call became ants who struggled to survive. No matter how high a person's position was in society, how great of an authority their family possessed, how matchless their martial art was, how rich they were, all of that turned into a dream and became meaningless. When faced with such a dragon city, was there a place where Meng Zhao could not enter? Was there anyone he would need to bow his head to? He smiled and went straight to the buffet table. Kindling was great but the energy consumption rate was extremely high every time he exchanged things with it using his contribution points. He needed to replenish a lot of fuel. Since this was a buffet in a five-star hotel, it would be a waste if he did not replenish the fuel he would need for the subsequent week. No one would really be paying attention to eating when it came to this sort of high-end banquet anyway. Because Meng Zhao was the only one with two plates full of food in his hands, even more people stared at him. He was completely fine with the stares but he had to preserve some of Elder Ning's dignity, so he found a corner behind a pot and sat down with his legs crossed. He then started munching on his food. While he was eating heartily, he suddenly heard people discussing him among themselves. Hey, did you see a high school student? He's eating like he's starving. He was also staring at the buttons in the elevator for a long time just now. It's no wonder why he came into the elevator with us. If he were alone, he might not have been able to reach the second floor. I thought that everyone needs an invitation to enter this trade fair. Who invited him? Meng Zhao narrowed his eyes and looked through the gaps of the plant. He discovered eight young men dressed in wafu. All of them had an air of supremacy about them, and they looked like people who would boss others around. The person who stood at the center had a handsome face, but his eyes were a little puffy, and he also had a rather wicked air about him. All the other people called him young Master Jun. However, they only spoke about Meng Zhao briefly. Soon, they changed the topic and talked about the world outside the fog. I heard from my teacher that the space and time torrent will calm down within three years, or eighth at max. At that time, Dragon City will completely infiltrate the other world. The army of Dragon City will be able to sweep through the world and suppress everything in its sight. That means that the world will belong to the people in our generation. We will be the ones achieving great things and create history. I heard from the people in the other world research center that there are not just monsters in the other world. There are also all sorts of strangely shaped things and even low-grade humanoid-shaped creatures. They look like the caveman on Earth. I wonder if they're strong? How could they be strong? The other world has many local creatures, but they're all very afraid of monsters. They named the place we transmigrated to Demon Mountain, Bloody Mountain Range, Monster Mountain Range, Curse Land, and other things. The monsters are the strongest beings in the other world. Earthlings have managed to start beating up those monsters mere decades into transmigrating to this place. Ha! Once we completely vanquish those monsters and the fog is gone, regardless if it's the other otherworld creatures or the savages who can only swing their sticks and stone axes, they'll all be useless before us. They'll only be able to wait for us to take them down. What a pity! That won't be exciting at all. There's no fun in that. The aristocratic children shook their heads and sighed. Meng Zhao wanted to laugh when he heard them. There were other world locals all over Monster Mountain Range, and they were indeed fearful of the monsters and treated them like demons, but that was nothing. On Earth, there was a place called Amazon Rainforest. It had giant snakes, crocodiles, piranhas and other fierce creatures, which were respected by the locals in the area. If a group of unfortunate aliens transmigrated into the depths of the Amazon Rainforest and spent decades there, what would happen after they finally destroyed the giant snakes? crocodiles, piranhas, and even the locals in the forest. They would think that they had faced the peak fighting force of Earth. If they defeated the Amazon rainforest, they could conquer Earth. Then, they would happily leave the forest and would find the armies of human nations watching them quietly with their guns pointed at them. The scene was too amazing. Meng Zhao could not bear to continue imagining it. He snickered. Who is it? Who are you? What's so funny? The children of the aristocrats did not expect that there would be a person hiding behind the pot and eavesdropping on them. He even laughed at them. Once Meng Zhao came out with the residue of the food he ate on two large plates, 
The group's expressions turned incredibly strange. They could be described as something along the lines of them wanting to step on him, but being afraid that doing so would soil the soles of their shoes. The wicked-looking young man called young Master Jun cast him a deep look. Meng Zhao did not want to get into conflict with them and cause trouble to Elder Ning, so he held back his laughter and quickly left. When the aristocratic children found that he smelled like food and saw that his hands were greasy, they avoided him like the plague. Ning Shou finally arrived. Along with him was Ning Zueshi, and she was impeccably dressed. She wore a low-cut, wine-red gown. On her fair, long neck was a crystalline necklace, and she gave off a faint bewitching fragrance. She was dressed in a mature manner, and it showed off her figure. Her inborn pride was etched on her face, and it made her look older than she was. Even so, she still gave off a rather youthful air, which made her look like an adorable girl trying to pretend to be a strong woman. Right after she appeared, she attracted everyone's attention. Is that ghostly Han's Ning's granddaughter? She's a famous beauty in the harvester field. Forget it. She's a very cold person. She refused to show respect even to young Master Jun last time, young Master Jun wanted to. Ning Shou was dressed in a wafu that was tailored and meticulously made with a lot of monster materials. His white hair was combed neatly, and there was a jade ring on his right thumb. He looked noble and domineering. When everyone saw this gorgeously dressed grandfather-granddaughter pair walk to the high school student who looked like a country bumpkin, they were shocked. Ghostly hands Ning invited that country bumpkin here? When Ning Shou saw how Meng Zhao was dressed, he was also stunned. After coming into contact with Meng Yishan, Ning Shou knew that Meng Zhao did not have a strong family background. He was just a normal high school student. But the more he thought about Meng Zhao's seven dissection methods performed in reverse, the more significant he found it. He thought that Meng Zhao must have gained a fortuitous encounter. His master should be an incredibly important person in the field. Since he agreed to attend the banquet, his master should teach him the basic rules. Who would know that the current genius youths would all act in such unique and eccentric ways? Ning Shou thought about it and said hesitantly, My young friend, are you pretending to look like a country bumpkin? Huh? Ning Zueshi piped in then. What grandpa means is did you dress up this way intentionally to make others look at you in disdain so that you can look for a chance to stop on them and become famous in the harvester field? Meng Zhao was shocked. What? No. Don't spew nonsense like that. Why is everyone's thought process so strange nowadays? Chapter 40 Behold a great man with admiration. The gazes around them became stranger, and some people even started whispering among themselves. Ning Shuo had been in this field his entire life, and he valued his dignity quite a lot, so he quickly dragged Meng Zhao to a corner. Meng Zhao was rather embarrassed. I'm sorry, Elder Ning. In truth, I'm a very humble and reserved person. I don't like to be in the limelight at all. Why don't you pretend as if you don't know me? No, of course not, my young friend. That's not what I meant. I'm just curious. Didn't your master tell you these things? Ning Shuo could not understand it no matter how much he thought about it. This is my greatest secret. I originally did not intend to say anything even at the pain of death, but I'm an honest person, and I'm really not good at lying. In truth, I don't have a master, but I got to know a very mysterious senior in the deep web. He has given me pointers casually, so I don't even know whether I have the right to call him my master. Meng Zhao stopped talking for a while before adding, his name is Old Fire Relayer. Old Fire Relayer? The Ning family grandfather-granddaughter pair looked at each other. I've never heard of him in the field before. Who is he? I don't know. He's a very elusive and mysterious person. Meng Zhao dug into his memory seriously. Based on what I gathered from his words, he's a very strong person, to the point of being domineering. But he's also very noble. He has already freed himself from low-class tastes, and he's only thinking about contributing to society. He's a man with great wisdom, great foresight, and can see into the future. He's also a man full of charm. Without everyone's knowledge, he's already subjugating, affecting, and saving everyone. The Ning family grandfather and granddaughter pair said, Is he? Be confident. Say that's right instead of is he? Meng Zhao said. By the way, I've told old fire relayer about your injury. Elder Ning. The old man only thought about it for three seconds before he casually told me to gather two ingredients. One of them is the juice from the roots of a 100 years heart corrosion weed, and the other is the wings of the bloody queen hornet. I don't know what he meant, but may you will, Elder Ning? Ning Shuo thought about it for a while before he suddenly sucked in a sharp breath. 
he was so shocked that his hair stood up on end. 100 years hard corrosion weed and bloody queen hornet are both incredibly poisonous ingredients. The properties of their poison are also very close to that of the purple crowned Elise Viper's poison. He's suggesting that I fight poison with poison. Fighting poison with poison. Why have I never thought of this before? It's logical. The more I think about it, the more logical it sounds. I've already tried all treatment methods aside from fighting poison with poison. This is the only way now. Ning Shou was in a daze. Sometimes, he mumbled to himself, and at other times, he made calculations with his fingers. A few times, he laughed soundlessly, and his facial muscles trembled. His expression was extremely strange. Ning Zueshi was terrified just by watching him. Grandpa. It's fine, Zueshi. I'm fine. I have a cure for my illness now. Our young friend here isn't lying. This old fire relayer is seriously an amazing person. He didn't even see me, and in just three seconds, with just some casual guidance, he managed to come up with a cure for the chronic illness that has bothered me for a long time. He's amazing. Ning Shou was absolutely impressed. At the same time, a notification popped up in Meng Zhao's field of vision. Through your guidance, elite citizen Ning Shuo has gained a whole new understanding of toxicology. Increased contribution points by 43. Elite monsters were just amazing. He couldn't get enough of them. Meng Zhao gulped. Elder Ning, you have to be careful when it comes to fighting poison with poison. The old fire relayer might have mentioned these two ingredients, but he did not mention the proportions needed and the method required. You might also need all sorts of supplementary ingredients. You must think about this carefully. It's fine. With this senior's level, it's already amazing that he's willing to provide me with guidance. What right do I have to bother him when it comes to these minor details? I have some knowledge regarding pharmacology myself, so it's only natural that I will have to carefully figure out the treatment plan with my specialist team. Ning Shuo aside. After Dragon City transmigrated to this place, we have an endless supply of amazing people among us. Truly, there is always someone who is better than you are. My young friend, regardless of how much I can recover in the end, these two ingredients will still help me by a large degree. I don't know how I should convey my thanks to Old Fire Relayer. It's fine. Old Fire Relayer is someone who is not after fame and wealth. Even if you don't pay him a single cent, he won't be bothered by it. But if you give him a duplex in Dragon City No. 1, he'd take it as well. He's just someone who treats money as if it's nothing. He's very carefree. Meng Zhao thought about things for a moment. By the way, I've asked Old Fire Relayer about the other methods of the seven dissection methods performed in reverse. He doesn't mind revealing them to the public, so I'll show them to you now. Before Ning Shuo could react to it, Meng Zhao picked up two chopsticks and started his demonstration in the air. In truth, his movements were far from perfect, and he did not understand the profound scientific reasons behind each action. He was just copying them, and his movements even ended up as a grotesque mess. However, even if the future harvesting skill Meng Zhao showed was seriously distorted, when an elite such as Ning Shuo saw it, the enlightenment he gained was so great that it was as if lightning had struck during the night. This is. Ning Shuo covered his chest. His face turned pale, and he took two huge steps backward. Through your guidance, elite citizen Ning Shuo gained a whole new understanding toward the first method of the seven dissection methods performed in reverse. Increased contribution points by 32. Through your guidance, elite citizen Ning Shuo gained a whole new understanding toward the third method of the seven dissection methods performed in reverse. Increased contribution points by 49. Through your guidance, Meng Zhao gained a whole bucket of contribution points from the elite monster. Grandpa. When Ning Zueshi saw that her grandpa looked as if he was about to have a heart attack, she quickly went forward to support him. She could not see the ingenuity behind Meng Zhao's actions. All she saw was that this average high school student had picked up two greasy chopsticks and casually waved them in the air, and it ended up putting her grandpa in this state. She was so anxious that she almost cried. I'm fine, Shui Shi. You don't understand just how great this is. Ning Shuo's lips were wide, but his eyes were full of life. He solemnly said, My young friend, did old fire relayer really ask you to teach me the upgraded seven dissection methods performed in reverse? What does he want me to do? Meng Zhao shook his head. It's the same thing as before. Old Fire Relayer said that martial arts, harvesting skills, and spirit energy technology are all the culmination of dragon citizens in the workforce wisdom. It should be something that is by the people and for the people. 
That's why he will never hold back on imparting his skills. He just hopes that your hands and eyes will recover and that you can learn a brand new 7 dissection methods performed in reverse. Then, you can harvest even more resources and create a better future with all dragon citizens. Ning Shoa looked as if he was struck by lightning. His lips quivered for a long time before he sighed and said, The senior's elegance is like a towering mountain, and his magnanimity is as endless as the sea. I'm impressed. I, no, this junior is completely impressed. Ning Zueshi looked back and forth between Meng Zhao and her grandfather a few times. In the end, she decided to be impressed as well. Only a matchless person like Old Fire Real Air could cultivate a unique and eccentric boy like Meng Zhao. The young lady of the Ning family had a lot of complicated feelings in her chest. My young friend, sit here with Zueshi for a moment. I'll go and greet a few of my friends in the circle. Later, I'll introduce them to you. After saying that, Ning Shuo dragged his granddaughter to the side and said softly, Now, you believe in my words, right? Meng Zhao is a person worthy of befriending. At the very least, he's much more reliable than that Liao Feijin. I'll be going off to socialize in a moment. Help me serve Meng Zhao properly. Don't be rude to him, understand? Understood, Grandpa. Then, Ning Zueshi seemed to have thought of something. Her cheeks burned, and she said shyly, But he's still in high school. He's younger than me by three years. Ning Shuo went. Hmm? Ning Zueshi returned with a, what? And Meng Zhao looked over. Huh? At another corner of the trade fair was Liao Feijin, and he had just finished drinking a cup of blood red wine. He licked his lips and stared at Meng Zhao as well as Ning Zueshi while they chatted with each other. After a while, he looked away. Huh? Isn't that Meng Zhao? The technical director of Prosperous Resource Recovery Company Gu Ming cried out. How could that brat have the right to come here? Liao Feijin's gaze turned cold. You know him? Even if I turn into ashes, I'd still be able to recognize him. Young Master Jun, I came to you today to talk about that brat. He's the one who humiliated us. You have to help us make a decision here. Gu Ming appeared to be near tears when he told Liao Feijin all about the conflict the night before yesterday and the crystallized neurosphere. Of course, he dramatized it a lot, and finished by saying pitifully, I've been learning from poisonous hands Liao Santong for a long time, and everyone in the circle knows that I am Mr. Liao's student. But this brat is acting with conceit just because ghostly hands Ning Shou O is supporting him. He's not showing any respect to Mr. Liao at all. Young Master Jun, we can't just bear with this humiliation. Liao Feijin pursed his lips in slight disgust. Gu Ming had just learned how to harvest for two years under his grandfather and his skills were only average, but he constantly caused trouble and embarrassed them. Liao Feijin could hardly be bothered caring about his affairs. However, his grandfather poisonous hands Liao Santong and ghostly hands Ning Shuo had learned under the same master. Over the past few decades, Liao Santong had always lost in terms of skills to his senior brother, and they had even argued and fought for monster materials. The grudge between them ran long and deep. Lately, However, Ning Shuo's nerves were damaged, and he seemed about ready to step out of the harvesting circle. This was the chance for Liao Feijin's grandfather to rise above him. His grandfather had long since hinted to him that he should look for a chance to provoke Ning Shuo and force him to lose his composure so that he could publicly compete against him. Then, poisonous hands would defeat ghostly hands by a landslide, and all the gloominess he felt over the past few decades could be swept away. This was a chance. Liao Feijin thought about it and said faintly, Gu Ming, you fell into his trap. The old bat was poisoned by a snake, and most of his skills are gone. Forget about staying in Thunderbolt, he might have to retire from the harvesting circle soon. Why are you afraid of a nearly dead tiger? What? Since Gu Ming was a low-level harvester, it was the first time he heard this insider information. He was stunned for a long time, and he could not help but say angrily, Damn it, if I knew that the old bat is already crippled. Mr. Hu and I wouldn't have shown mercy to that brat. Liao Feijin smiled. The old bat has been searching for a successor all over the city. Since that brat can tell the difference between an etherealized neurosphere and a crystallized neurosphere, he must have some degree of talent. The old bat is delighted to see such talent and is itching to harvest again. That's why he supported the brat. It was a very simple matter, but you ended up terrifying yourself and now things have become complicated. Gu Ming was embarrassed and angry. I was wondering about it. He's just a poor boy living in a public renting house, so how did he end up getting to know White Harried Ghostly Hands? Liao Feijin let out a bark of laughter. It's no wonder why his school uniform is so tattered. 
So, he's living in a public renting house. The old bat is really a shadow of his past now. He has been searching a long time for his successor, and he ended up finding someone like this? But it's no wonder. Everyone is able to tell that the old bat is trash right now. Those with some connections and talent in the circle would not want to be his successor. The two people across from them continued to chat happily. Meng Zhao said something, and Ning Zueshi listened to him attentively. When the girl lowered her head, she looked so charming that Liao Feijin felt incredibly jealous. He asked Gu Ming to bring two glasses of red wine over. Come, no matter what, my grandfather is that old bat's junior brother. If the boy is seriously the old bat's disciple, then he's my martial uncle. I'll go over and greet my junior martial uncle now. Chapter 41 Trap made using an unidentified material Five minutes later, Liao Feijin came back with a dark face. He gritted his teeth so hard that it made cracking sounds. He had red wine staining his chest, and he looked incredibly pathetic. Ning Zueshi. He hissed the name fiercely. I originally wanted to get rid of the enmity between us and resolve the grudge between our seniors through the relationship between us juniors, but I didn't expect that you would not show me any respect at all. This brat stays in a public renting house and has never even seen an elevator before. And he wants to fight against me, Liao Feijin? Young Master Jun. Young Master Jun. The young men and women who had come together with him saw the conflict between them and they quickly went over to dissuade him from attacking Meng Zhao. All the guests today are important people. We can't attack anyone in public, but we'll have plenty of chances in the future. Liao Feijin sucked in a deep breath. Don't worry. I'll just be dirtying my own hands if I attack this boy. Isn't he the old bat's new disciple? I'll have plenty of chances to make him embarrass himself later. At the other side of the trade fair, Ning Zueshi apologized to Meng Zhao in a flurry. I'm sorry, Liao Feijin is a lunatic. Just ignore him. I'm fine. But I didn't expect that you'd be so feisty. You just went and poured red wine on him. Ning Zueshi's face turned red. She did not expect that she would be so extreme either. No matter what, they were all harvesters. Even if their personal grudges ran deep, it was not good for them to turn into complete enemies. But just now, she had been engaged in a noble topic of how they should contribute to society with Meng Zhao a strange boy who did not regard fame and riches with any importance, when suddenly, Liao Feijin, a good-for-nothing rich man's son, came over to bother them. Ning Zueshi felt that her value in Meng Zhao's eyes dropped because of him. She had been angry and anxious, which was why she splashed wine on Liao Feijin. Fortunately, the trade fair officially began at that moment, and everyone's attention was diverted. The various strange, rare, and valuable materials were an eye-opener for Meng Zhao. They also stimulated the memories of his previous life to the point that they were eager to come to the forefront of his mind. But with his physical constitution, there was no need for him to buy high-quality rare materials to refine them into medicine. It was enough for him to feast his eyes upon those items. As for the crystallized neurosphere, Ning Shuo used all of his skills to push the price up, and they managed to sell it for 1,330,000. It was two to three times higher than the market price, and Meng Zhao was extremely delighted. With so much money in hand, he thought of buying valuable things that everyone missed. But the people in the hall had good judgment. The price for each material was fair and just. Nothing as cliché as a normal high school student with a discerning eye buying a material that was supposed to be worth 500 million with just 50 million happened. Without anyone's knowledge, two hours passed, and the trade fair entered the most exciting section. A built man brought out a wooden plate and walked onto the stage. He said in a loud voice, my dear experts, three days ago, Bloody Wolf Fighting Squad found an unidentified material in the depths of the fog. We don't know its properties, its use, or its worth. That's why we thought to bring it here. We wish that you would appraise it and we could find a buyer for it. If anyone is able to identify it, we will definitely give you appraisal fees. There were plenty of monsters, and they were constantly evolving and mutating. No matter how powerful a hunter was, it was impossible for them to be able to recognize all the materials in Monster Mountain Range. But harvesters had been in close contact with all sorts of materials for years. They had a much better judgment compared to hunters. A good harvester was usually a good appraiser as well. When powerful buyers and sellers gathered in a trade fair and a rare material was appraised in its worth set, it would usually be bought on the spot. In time, the identification of unidentified materials became the last event of high-end trade fairs. Of course, the harvesters were putting their reputations at risk. This was an incredibly risky event. If they managed to identify rare material no one knew about, 
their reputations would definitely shoot up. But if they made a misjudgment, they could easily fall from their pedestals. In no time, many harvesters and major buyers gathered together. Everyone was very interested in witnessing the splendor of the unidentified material. Wait. At this moment, Liao Feijin suddenly stood up. With ill intentions, he looked in Ning Shuo's direction. I know that Elder Ning has recently taken in a successor. He can be considered to be my junior Marshal Uncle. Just now, I spoke to Marshal Uncle Meng, and I've been enlightened. Why don't we let Marshal Uncle Meng come up to identify this item so that everyone can see his skills? We can also judge just how good is Elder Ning's judgment in choosing his disciples. What do you think? The crowd was stunned. Then, they became interested. Ning Zueshi's face turned red. She stood up and retorted. Liao Feijin, enough with the nonsense. Mr. Meng is not my grandfather's disciple, but his friend. He has nothing with the matters between our families. Stop going around randomly hurting other people. A friend? Liao Feijin laughed. Elder Ning was poisoned by a snake, and it seems like he has reached even greater heights, becoming friends with just anyone. The spirit of retiring while one is at the prime of their life and being content with a normal life is something worthy to learn for us juniors. Ning Shuo's face turned dark as a pan, but he could not fly off into a rage. With his status, if he entered an argument with Liao Feijin, he would just be lowering his status. Ning Zueshi was so angry that she was scowling. Just when she was about to take a step forward and ask that she could appraise the item, Meng Zhao stepped forward. All right, then let me see the item. He was never someone who could swallow insults and humiliation. He was already very angry about what happened to Ripple Force, and since Liao Feijin was in cahoots with Gu Meng, he was definitely not someone good. Now, since he provoked them verbally, he could vent on that boy. Besides, he would awaken to many future harvesting skills later on. He would also remember the structures of future monsters after they evolved. He would definitely be contributing a lot in the harvesting circle at that time. But if he wanted to do that, he would need a certain amount of fame. Only when his words carried weight would others believe him. Young Master Jun, is it? I'm sorry, but since you decided to put your face under my boot willingly, I have to stomp on it a couple of times, or I would be disrespecting you, Meng Zhao thought. Ning Zueshi did not stop him, and Meng Zhao strode to the stage and received the other experts' gazes on him in a relaxed manner. His confidence moved the built man from Bloody Wolf. He lifted the veil and said respectively, Mr. Meng, please appraise it. A brilliant light shot to the ceiling. When it was reflected off the colored chandelier, the whole hall was filled with a variety of colors. It was as if there were seven colored ripples swimming about the hall. Even the harvesters who had a lot of knowledge could not help but cry out in surprise. They rose on their tiptoes to stare at the item. Lying still on a fluffy red velvet was a pearl the size of a goose's egg. It shone with a crystalline hue, and each layer was dyed in a variety of colors. It was like dozens of landscape paintings that used a lot of vibrant colors were gathered in the pearl. It shone with a different colored light based on different angles. What is this? What a beautiful pearl. This looks like the crystal core of a super beast. We just don't know what sort of super beast it is. The spirit energy is really thick. The super beast must have used decades or perhaps even a century to gather that amount of spirit energy. It'll be great for our cultivation. Everyone gathered their gazes on Meng Zhao. All of them were curious. What made this boy who wore a wrinkly high school student's uniform so amazing? Meng Zhao cast the pearl a glance, and he immediately had an answer in his head. Just when he was about to speak, he saw an enchanting light flash in the depths of the crystal core, and his pupils shrank. He gasped. Could it be? Meng Zhao held his breath and observed the pearl carefully. His expression turned graver with each passing second. He walked three rounds around the unidentified object while drawing close to it. He studied it for three minutes and even asked Ning Zueshi to bring out a magnifying glass that was specifically used to identify items. The more he looked at it, the more focused he became, and the more immersed he was. It looked as if he was about to crawl into the item itself. He took a full five minutes, and everyone grew impatient. They started talking noisily. Then, Meng Zhao sighed and shook his head before he said, I don't know. The crowd burst into a ruckus. If you didn't know, why did you put on a show and observe it for such a long time? Do you think that our time is not valuable? Liao Feijin smiled. Do you know? Meng Zhao looked at him askance and let out a cold huff. He was not tooting his own horn. This was an unidentified item. If even he could not be 100% certain of it, no one in the current Dragon City would be able to identify it. 
I know a little about it. Liao Feijin was in high spirits. He strode to the stage and pushed Meng Zhao to the side rudely. There is an etherealized plant called single-eyed grass growing in the depths of the fog to the south of Dragon City. It's the favorite food of a local monster golden-furred pig. Single-eyed grass only bears fruit once every three years. After bearing fruit hundreds of times, it will bear a mutated fruit called ghost-eyed fruit. When golden-furred pigs eat this mutated fruit, they aren't able to digest it. It stays in their bodies and turns into something similar to stones in their bodies. Ghost-eyed fruit has gentle properties, so it can coexist harmoniously in a digestive system. But golden-furred pigs are grade 3 super beasts red-tailed golden python's favorite food. Once a red-tailed golden python eats a golden-furred pig with a ghost-eyed fruit in it, even if the pig is digested and absorbed into the python's body, the ghost-eyed fruit will be stimulated by the digestive fluid from the red-tailed golden python and form a new shell. After decades and even a century, this ghost-eyed fruit will be refined into the red-tailed golden python's crystal core. Let's use a term from the fantasy novels on Earth and say that it's the red-tailed golden python's dandian region. It would be an apt description to describe the crystal core as such. Now, it has a brand new name, Aquatic Dragon's Eye. Vice Captain Zhao, might I ask if you got this aquatic dragon's eye from a red-tailed golden python? Liao Feijin asked the man from Bloody Wolf with a grin. Mr. Zhao was shocked and impressed. He nodded repeatedly and said, Young Master Jun, what you said is true. This crystal core is indeed something we obtained from a red-tailed golden python. We also found quite a lot of fur and carcasses from golden-furred pigs near its nest. There was even a lot of single-eyed grass around it. Many of the people in the field, the buyers, and the sellers heard it, and they were also very impressed. Many of them were able to guess that the pearl was a python's crystal core. But they would not have been able to speak as logically as Liao Feijin and figure out what python breed it was and how the crystal core was formed. The details he mentioned made it seem as if he had seen it with his own eyes. As expected of young Master Jun you know a lot, have great memory, and also great judgment. You're not like that brat at all. Ha! Forget about the fact that he can't identify that it's from a red-tailed golden python, he didn't even know that this is a crystal core from a python-type superbeast. Why is he still thinking about becoming a harvester? Elder Ning must be desperate now. How could he look for such a successor? He's not a successor. Didn't you hear them just now? He's a friend. Ha 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 ha. Noise rose all around them. It was Liao Feijin's friends causing a ruckus. The grandfather-granddaughter pair were so angry that their hands trembled, and they felt their hearts ache for Meng Zhao. Ning Shuo glared at Ning Zueshi and said gloomily, You were too rash just now. You became enemies with Liao Feijin and dragged our young friend into this mess. He's just a high school student, and even if he has received a lot of guidance from old fire relayer, there's no way he could identify all the materials in the depths of the fog. He fell hard this time. Chapter 42, Did I Ask You to Leave? Mr. Zhao did not mind the conflict. He only asked in concern, Young Master Jun, how much do you think this aquatic dragon's eye is worth? 5,250,000, Liao Feijin answered casually. Mr. Zhao was slightly stunned. That's really accurate. Do you have an explanation for it? Of course I do, Liao Feijin said calmly. Let's analyze the market over the past five years. Four years ago, my grandfather organized a secret auction. At that time, a single aquatic dragon's eye was worth 8,880,000. Two years ago, through the deep web, one aquatic dragon's eye was bought by a mysterious buyer for 9,250,000. Based on my information, there are people offering more than 10 million to buy aquatic dragon's eyes in perfect condition. This item has absorbed a lot of essence from the world, and it contains a lot of spirit energy. It was also polished for over 100 years by two different monsters. It's a raw ingredient of various super medicines, and it's hard to come by. It can help superhumans reach higher standards, increase the strength of bones, the suppleness of muscles, and turn our limbs as indomitable and firm as those of pythons. Ten million isn't a huge sum. Mr. Zhao's eyes flashed. Then, why can our aquatic dragon's eye only sell for 5,250,000? It's simple. Those offering to buy it for 10 million ask for perfect aquatic dragon's eyes, but there's a flaw in your aquatic dragon's eye. Liao Feijin snapped his fingers, and a green flame shot out from his fingertips. He brought the green flame near the aquatic dragon's eye. In an instant, an ugly zigzagging shadow appeared in the dazzling light from the aquatic dragon's eye. It was just like how a scar would appear on a beauty's face. It was incredibly piercing to the eye, 
and it was a regretful sight. This is. Mr. Zhao's expression changed. Even they had not noticed this flaw. I reckon that you used a lightning type killing move to finish off this red tailed golden python, so the spirit energy in the aquatic dragon's eye turned chaotic, and when you were harvesting the super beast's crystal core, you were too rough and knocked into things, so the spirit energy in the aquatic dragon's eye went completely haywire. It rushed out through this incredibly thin crack. Even though it's difficult to tell with the naked eye, but it has already lost one third of its spirit energy. Its condition thus has been largely affected. The effects of the medicine created with it will also be much weaker. That's why I believe that it's worth 5,250,000. Of course, if you don't believe me, you can bring it to some place else for an appraisal. But I believe that the price will be about the same. Liao Feijin smiled in a relaxed and confident manner. Mr. Zhao's face was filled with delight and remorse. He was happy that he managed to get a supreme great item from the monster his group killed. But he felt regretful that they had not properly harvested the item, and the value of the supreme great item dropped by half. Who harvested this aquatic dragon's eye? Why was he so rough? Liao Feijin asked with a frown. Mr. Zhao thought about it and replied honestly. Our captain harvested it himself. No wonder then. You have specialists in every profession. Those who can kill might not be able to save others. You might be able to reduce monsters to mince meat, but you might not be able to harvest their organs precisely and ensure that their value is maximized. Bloody Wolf has been getting stronger very quickly. It's time for you to look for a professional harvesting team to work alongside you, Liao Feijin said. Mr. Zhao nodded firmly. He was utterly convinced by Liao Feijin's words. Young Master Jun, you're right. I'll go back and talk to my captain so that we can work together with the Liao family. Liao Feijin smiled. He turned his head around and spoke to the person standing in the middle of his friends, Young Master Ni, aren't you currently trying to become a three-star superhuman? This aquatic dragon's eye is perfect for you. Could you give me the honor and buy it for 5,550,000? Young Master Ni was dressed in beautiful clothes and had an extraordinary presence. He was also the son of a powerful family, so when he heard this, he stood up. Don't blame me for trying to steal from your pocket, Liao Feijin said. While this aquatic dragon's eye isn't in good condition, it's perfect for dragon slaying technique, which you're practicing. I believe that it will be able to help you become a third star superhuman. Young Master Ni laughed, and he did show Liao Feijin some respect. All right, stop trying to explain things to me. I believe in you, Young Master Jun I'm offering 6 million. Vice Captain Zhao, will your squad be willing to sell it? Mr. Zhao was beside himself with joy. He quickly nodded. We'll sell it. Of course we'll sell it. Thank you, young Master Ni. He also thanked Liao Feijin repeatedly. Thank you for your guidance as well, young Master Junior indeed the future star of Harvesters in Dragon City. With just a few words, not only had he identified the item and figured out its origins, but also helped him complete a trade. Then, he used his connections and professional knowledge to increase the price of the item by 7,500,000. It made both the buyer and the seller delighted with the trade. This was the elegance of a high-end harvester. In an instant, Liao Feijin became the center of attention. As for Meng Zhao, he did not even have the right to be looked down upon. What a joke! All the people present belonged to the upper-class society. They were high-end professionals, and they were very busy. No one had the time to look down on a normal high school student. Fine! Liao Feijin had the time. Marshal Uncle Meng, let me give you a few words. Liao Feijin would not allow Meng Zhao to just leave silently. He put his hands behind his back and said faintly, The requirements to join the harvesting circle are very low, but the upper limits are very high. If you want to become a good harvester, you need to come from a family of learned scholars. You need to personally examine and even touch all sorts of treasures since young, for only then will you be able to get the feel of things. Perhaps you truly have talent, but due to your family environment and considering the fact that you're staying in a public renting house, it's clear that you won't be able to touch something like the aquatic dragon's eye. This isn't a field you should step into. You put so much effort to disguise yourself so that you could come here, but that will not only make you feel horrible, if you make a wrong appraisal, you will ruin a major trade. Will you be able to compensate them at that time? I don't know what Elder Ning is thinking about by choosing you, but you should know better in your heart, or else, you'll just bring harm to yourself and others. Once he said those things, the crowd burst into a ruckus. Meng Zhao was dressed in the school uniform of 9th high school, which was a key high school. 
quite a number of students there were pretty well off, which was why no one could figure out his origins. Now, young Master June mentioned that the boy was staying in a public renting house, so what right did he have to attend such a high-end material trade fair? Liao Feijin's friends were the first to laugh. The technical director of Prosperous, Gu Meng, also said loudly, I know of the boy's background. Not only does he stay in a public renting house, his father is also a low-ranking harvester and prosperous, but because he's corrupted, he has just been fired. At that moment, the other harvesters in the field began whispering even louder. It was due to their respect for white-haired ghostly hands that they did not immediately chase Meng Zhao out. Meng Zhao's gaze turned dark. He stared at the aquatic dragon's eye for a long time while deep in thought. Liao Feijin thought that he was dumbfounded because of fear and shook his head while walking down the stairs. Young Master Jun, Young Master Ni, should we discuss the details? Mr. Zhao of Bloody Wolf smiled and chased after them. Ning Zueshi was so angry that she started stomping. Ning Shuo covered his chest with his hand and thought to go on the stage to help Meng Zhao regain some of his dignity. Hold on. At that moment, Meng Zhao suddenly spoke. His voice was cool and calm. Since you called me Marshal Uncle, did I allow you to leave? Liao Feijin frowned slightly. He slowed down a little. Hey, you. You're Liao Feijin, right? Do you really think that this is an aquatic dragon's eye? Meng Zhao asked, and his voice was filled with puzzlement. He sounded absolutely baffled that Liao Feijin would answer such a simple question wrong, and he was so wrong that it was ridiculous. And if he were so wrong that it was ridiculous, how could he have the gall to come out and pretend to be awesome? And now that he had finished pretending to be awesome, how could he think about leaving? Liao Feijin, young Master Ni, and Mr. Zhao went still. You just mentioned that you didn't know what that item was. What are you playing at this time? Don't you think you've embarrassed yourself enough? Liao Feijin's expression sank. Meng Zhao shook his head. I do indeed not know what this is. I just know that it's definitely not an aquatic dragon's eye. His words caused the crowd to burst into a commotion again. A few of the experienced harvesters shook their heads. This is indeed an aquatic dragon's eye. Liao Feijin is the grandson of poisonous hands. He is very knowledgeable, and he has a good eye. This boy is just trying to preserve his dignity. He might end up making a mistake and falling again. My young friend, stop talking and come down. Ning Shuo was incredibly anxious. He could also tell that it was an aquatic dragon's eye, but he did not know how Meng Zhao could save the situation now. Their family had certainly created huge trouble for him. Meng Zhao sighed. He put on an expression as if he was giving a lesson to elementary school students. If it's just an aquatic dragon's eye, I would naturally be able to tell at first glance. But when I looked at it the second time, I found that there's something strange about it. That's why I observed it carefully for five minutes. It's good that you know that the single-eyed grass bears fruit once every three years, and there is a certain chance that it will produce a ghost-eyed fruit each time it bears fruit. It shows that you're attentive when you study. But did you know that the ghost-eyed fruit can also mutate? There's a very small chance that it will mutate a second time and turn into the rarer monster-eyed fruit. When the monster-eyed fruit is eaten by a golden-furred pig which is in turn eaten by a red-tailed golden python. How could the crystal cora that is eventually produced end up as an aquatic dragon's eye? It should be called monster dragon's eye. What? Liao Feijin was dumbfounded. Young Master Ni and Mr. Zhao looked at each other, and they saw the shock in each other's eyes. All the harvesters, including Ning Shuo fell silent. They quickly rifled through their drawers of memories in search of the monster-eyed fruit, but they found nothing. What do you mean by monster-eyed fruit? I've never heard about it before. You're just rambling? right? Or else, why would you not have said anything just now? Liao Feijin scolded him fiercely. Meng Zhao sighed in a rather resigned manner. Because the monster-eyed fruit has a total of 15 ways it can mutate during its second mutation, so there are also 15 different types of monster dragon's eye it can form. I am a normal high school student staying in a public renting house. I'm poor and don't have a lot of knowledge. I've just learned how to harvest and appraise items. Even though I can tell that this is a monster dragon's eye. I can't figure out which monster dragon's eye it is despite racking my brains about it. That's why I can only honestly admit that I know nothing about it. Chapter 43, I'm not trying to lecture you. Meng Zhao's words were like a series of slaps that nearly caused Liao Feijin's face to become swollen. The others did not say anything. Even some of Liao Feijin's friends could not help but laugh. Liao Feijin flew into rage. You're just boasting shamelessly, boy. You don't have proof. 
so you can weave the wildest tales as you like. But this is clearly an aquatic dragon's eye. It's indeed very difficult to differentiate between an aquatic dragon's eye and monster dragon's eye. That is, unless, we conduct a destructive test. Every monster dragon's eye contains a faint bit of poison. If we can drill a hole into it, get some powder out, and put it into a poison testing fluid, we should be able to get a reaction. And after all that yakking, you finally revealed your true colors, huh? If you drill a hole into the crystal core, the material will be useless. You know that it's impossible for us to conduct a test like this here, that's why you spoke so fearlessly, right? Liao Feijin was so angry that he started laughing. He shook his head repeatedly, as if he was regretting his act of arguing with Meng Zhao. Truly, he had reduced his own status by doing this. If we don't conduct a destructive test now, are we supposed to wait for young Master Ni to turn this monster dragon's eye into a gene medicine? When he eats it and tries to reach higher heights, his energy will deviate, and he will start bleeding from all seven orifices. He will die on the spot, if being factual. Are you going to only acknowledge your mistake by then? Meng Zhao was very serious. As he spoke, he cast young Master Ni a pitying look. Young Master Ni's expression changed. Ni Leosi, don't you trust me? Liao Feijin was so angry that he was boiling. You'd rather trust a high school student in a public renting house. Of course that's not what I meant. Young Master Ni frowned while thinking, you were not the one eating it, of course you're fine with it. But what if you really made a misjudgment? They were just friends who had fun together. They had not reached the point where they would trust each other with their lives. 8 million. At that moment, Ning Shuo strode up the stage, and his voice was as great as a bell. Young Ni, please show me some respect. I'll pay you 8 million and buy this unidentified material from you. We'll identify it on the spot and see whether it has poison. We'll know whether it's the aquatic dragon's eye or monster dragon's eye then. Gasp. When the people saw Ning Shuo going on stage to support Meng Zhao, all of them cried out in surprise. The trade fair was filled with twists and turns. There were a lot of unexpected changes. There's no need for that. I won't be bothered with just a few million. Since you've stepped forward, we can appraise the item now and see just what it is. Young Master Ni handed over the unidentified material. Liao Feijin's expression was incredibly sour, but he could not go back now, so he had to brace himself and continue. Then, we'll appraise it. Humph, we're actually wasting an item worth a few million for a stupid brat's stupid words. That's right. While the monster dragon's eye is poisonous, if we use another method to adjust it, it will stimulate the potential of the human body, and its effects will be much better than those of the aquatic dragon's eye. It's a pity though. Once we conduct the destructive test, its quality will drop, and you will be losing at least a few million from it. Meng Zhao shook his head. He found the entire situation regrettable. Once things had progressed in this manner, there was no way it could end on a friendly note. Since the trade fair was equipped with all sorts of identification devices and testing fluids, Ning Shuo personally took action. Soon, he fixed the unidentified item on a device and used an incredibly small drill to gently drill a small hole that was the breadth of a strand of hair on the item. Then, he pushed an exploratory needle that was as thin as a hair into the item. At the moment the drill drilled through the item, a seven-colored light shot out, and the hall instantly filled with a fragrance. The crowd sighed. They knew that this meant that the spirit energy sealed in the crystal core had spilled out. The crystal core could already be considered to be wasted. The expressions of some veteran harvesters changed then. They were filled with puzzlement and shock. They could sniff a few strange things in the incredibly strong fragrance. Usually, only poisonous materials would have such a sweet-smelling fragrance. It was just as Meng Zhao said. Ning Shuo brought out powder from the core of the unidentified item. Soon after he placed it into the poison testing fluid, pink bubbles appeared. They tumbled out as if the fluid was boiling. It was poisonous. The poison was light, but it was enough to prove that the item was not an aquatic dragon's eye. It was a monster dragon's eye, an item no one had ever seen or heard about before, but Meng Zhao knew about. This is. In an instant, all the harvesters, buyers, and sellers had complicated looks on their faces. When they looked at Meng Zhao, their gazes were filled with respect and puzzlement. Liao Feijin was dumbfounded, and in an instant, he broke out in cold sweat. Mr. Zhao a bloody wolf idolizing gaze went from Liao Feijin to Meng Zhao, and it was five times stronger. Young Master Ni, who had nearly refined a poisonous item into a medicine and ate it, turned red with rage. In great dissatisfaction, he glared at Liao Feijin. 
Ning Shuo sighed in relief. When he looked at Meng Zhao, his gaze was full of admiration. Ning Zueshi covered her mouth, but her giggles could be heard spilling from behind her hand. And Meng Zhao saw new notifications jumping up in his field of vision. Elite citizen Ning Shuo received your guidance and came to understand a new item. His knowledge has increased. Increased contribution by 18. Normal citizen Ning Zueshi received your guidance and came to understand a new item. Her knowledge has increased. Increased contribution by 9. Normal citizen Liao Feijin received your guidance and came to understand a new item. His knowledge has increased. Increased contribution by 11. Elite citizen. Normal citizen. He received more than 10 notifications, and practically all of them were about people receiving guidance from him and their knowledge increasing. In one breath, Meng Zhao farmed more than 500 contribution points. Oh wow, this is pretty good. Meng Zhao's eyes lit up. He seemed to have found another way to obtain contribution points. Liao Feijin was so angry that he gritted his teeth. He was just about to get off the stage when Meng Zhao suddenly called out to him. Wait. It's impolite not to reciprocate when you're given something. You said a few words to me just now, so I should also give you a few words, right? Meng Zhao thought about it for a while. He was not just looking for revenge when he got himself into this situation. He truly wanted to give some guidance to Liao Feijin and see whether he could get more contribution points. I'm friends with Elder Ning, so if he's of your grandfather's generation, ranking-wise, I should be someone in your grandfather's generation as well, Meng Zhao said sincerely. But since we're all of similar age, it wouldn't be too good if I take advantage of you. Since you called me Martial Uncle, I might as well reduce my status by a rank and be your Martial Uncle. My dear nephew, let me teach you some principles of becoming a harvester. You have to be brave in admitting what you know and what you don't know. With how treacherous and unpredictable the fog is and how wide the other world is, there will definitely be an endless number of mutated monsters and extraordinary creatures. There will also be an uncountable number of valuable materials around. There is simply no way for us to be able to identify all the items in the world. No matter how great a harvester is, it's fine for him to admit that he knows nothing of an item. If he doesn't know it, he can just learn. It won't be embarrassing at all. But you should be worried about those who only know some details and pretend that they know everything about an item. You treated a monster dragon's eye as an aquatic dragon's eye and managed to show off, but when someone ate it, they would have died. Liao Feijin found himself speechless. His face alternated between shades of red and white, and the corners of his lips twitched non-stop, making him look as if he was about to suffer from epilepsy the next second. This is the way a harvester should be, and it's also the attitude you should have as a person. That includes the strategies toward the world beyond Dragon City. Meng Zhao spoke with utmost sincerity. Right now, we know nothing about the world beyond the fog, and yet we're talking unrealistically about sending our army outside to march forward like a hurricane and conquer the other world. That's just too arrogant. Civilizations aren't destroyed because of how weak the people are, but by how arrogant they are. My dear nephew, I'm not trying to lecture you here, but I think that you've been a little too arrogant lately. Liao Feijin was so angry that he nearly exploded from rage. Young Master Ni, who was from a family about as rich as that of Liao Feijin and the one to whom Liao Feijin had nearly harmed, laughed without bothering to preserve Liao Feijin's dignity. Meng Zhao blinked. He had been really kind and compassionate when trying to give Liao Feijin advice, so why didn't he receive even a single contribution point? Was Liao Feijin really that stubborn? He fell into contemplation for a while and could only guess that Liao Feijin must have misunderstood things. Don't misunderstand me, my good nephew, I'm not interested in humiliating you. I'm truly trying to give you some pointers on how to be a good person. Calm down and think about what I said when you go back, Meng Zhao said extra sincerely. Your life and the world in the future might go through an incredible change. If you're going to remain this arrogant, you might end up dead. You. Liao Feijin was absolutely livid. You dare threaten me? Meng Zhao felt wronged. Why did this person simply not understand human language? No, no, no. I'm definitely not trying to threaten you. I'm saying this for your own good. Even if you don't understand me right now, it's fine. Just remember what I said and what happened today. When you're free, you can think about it carefully and try as much as you can to change your life so that you can be a better Liao Feijin. Sooner or later, you'll thank. Before Meng Zhao could finish speaking, Ning Shuo took him by the hand and Ning Zueshi covered his mouth. They dragged him down the stage. I'm sorry, everyone, my friend here is a... is a really skilled person. He has a good heart, 
but is not very good with words. He doesn't know how to form connections with others. Ning Shuo helped him mediate the situation. Ning Shuo. Liao Feijin was mad. How dare you let this mad dog loose and allow him to cause trouble? Are you seriously not paying my grandfather any respect? Liao Feijin, are you even someone worthy of calling me by my name? Liao Feijin's words infuriated Ning Shuo, who was prepared to gloss things over and let this end on a friendly note. His expression instantly changed, and his voice turned fierce. My young friend was right. Your grandfather only taught you harvesting skills, but he forgot to teach you any skills to be a proper human being. I was the one who brought my young friend here. Whosoever doesn't show him respect today is not showing respect to me, white-haired ghostly hands. You might have not shown me any respect, but you're a junior, so I couldn't be bothered to argue with you. I'll go and settle scores with Liao San Tong. When white-haired ghostly hands became angry, the entire hall fell silent. Liao Feijin gritted his teeth. What do you want to do? I've been competing against my junior brother for decades, and I know what sort of plan he's trying to cook up even when he remains silent. Humph, he wants to step over my head while I'm poisoned, is it? Then, I'll let him get his wish. Ning Shuo said in a strong voice. One month later, ghostly hands will have a public competition against poisonous hands. We'll settle the conflict we had today. Will Liao Suntong dare take up the challenge? Of course he will. Liao Feijin had been waiting for this. He glared at Meng Zhao and said, then this is a promise. Everyone in the hall are witnesses. One month later, ghostly hands will compete against poisonous hands, and we'll see just who has inherited the true legacy of Jade Assessment skill. At that time, don't you dare say that my grandfather bullied you. You're just someone whose hands tremble so much that you're practically a cripple. Ning Shuo narrowed his eyes, and his beard trembled because of his rage. I can deal with Liao Suntong even with crippled hands. Once white-haired ghostly hands decided to take action, a mighty uproar instantly broke out. Ghostly hands actually challenged poisonous hands? Could it be that ghostly hands Ning has recovered from his injuries? But that doesn't make sense. It's impossible for him to win against poisonous hands Liao with his current condition. Just who is that teenager? He has such extensive knowledge, and ghostly hands Ning is protecting him. If ghostly hands Ning isn't his master, then who is his master? He must definitely be someone with extraordinary skills. Meng Zhao? I'll remember that name. Chapter 44, Trouble on His Head More than ten unidentified items were identified, but even after that, the veterans in the field continued discussing things with each other. Meng Zhao kept a low profile. He had been really lucky to be able to run into a monster dragon's eye, and when he remembered that his memory fragments only worked occasionally for him, he decided he would rather not go on stage to embarrass himself. But Bloody Wolf's Mr. Zhao was really friendly with him. Aside from thanking him, he also asked Meng Zhao whether he was interested in forming an alliance with Bloody Wolf. Meng Zhao said that he had not become a superhuman yet, so it might not be suitable for him to follow a fighting squad of superhumans to enter the depths of the fog and fight. But Mr. Zhao said that with his abilities, he was basically guaranteed a seat in a famous university, so they would definitely have a chance to work together. They praised each other and exchanged contact numbers. Hence, Meng Zhao got himself another connection. Then, young Master Ni, who had nearly been harmed by Liao Feijin, came over. In a very domineering manner, he transferred 300,000 to Meng Zhao. The rule in the business states that the appraisal fees for unidentified items is around 3 to 5% of the fees for the trade of the item. It's amazing that you managed to identify Monster Dragon's Eye, so I'll pay you the maximum amount. 5% of 6 million is 300,000. Young Master Ni brought out a golden card. Also, this is my name card. You saved me today, and I, Ni Waiao, do not like owing anyone anything. So you have to keep that card properly with you. If you run into any trouble, you can come to me. Once he left, Ning Shuo came to him and whispered, Keep the card, but unless you absolutely need to, do not approach this young Master Ni. Men Zhao thought about it. Is he bad? No, actually. In their circle, Ni Waiao has better morals. At the very least, he's much better than Liao Feijin. But they're all good for nothing rich men's children. They live lavish lives and are arrogant. They feel like Dragon City is protected by their fathers and the other world will be conquered by them. There's no person or thing in the world they don't dare to provoke, Ning Shuo explained. Today, Ni Waiao owes you a favor. Tomorrow, if you have something in which you need help, he will definitely say nothing and help you, 
but the methods these good-for-nothings use always have repercussions, and they might not be things that you can accept. Meng Zhao got the general gist of it, so he switched to another topic. Elder Ning, what happens if those two ingredients aren't useful? I heard that Liao Feijin's grandfather is your junior brother. He won't be easy to fight against, right? Old fire relayers innovations in the seven dissection methods performed in reverse already show how extraordinary he is. Besides, he has extensive knowledge of the world. He just casually taught you a few moves, and you already managed to identify Monster Dragon's eye. Why should I not believe in him? Ning Shuo smiled. The grudge you formed with Liao Feijin is something that happened because of me and Liao Suntong. If it were not for your inscrutable legacy, you would have been humiliated in public. If after this I still refuse to stand up for you, how would I ever have the right to meet old fire relayer? Let's not continue this topic. I'll introduce you to a few of my good friends in the circle. Everyone is very interested in you. After all, you're a rising star of hope in our field. Ha 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 ha. Ning Shuo's mood was good, and he and Meng Zhao and his granddaughter appear together. While they chatted with each other happily, Liao Feijin was in a gloomy mood. Young Master Jun's face was so dark that it was terrifying. His friends did not dare go to him. Young Master Jun, you want to hurt the boy? Then you'd best wait for a few days. Wait for me to pay him what I owe him, or else, I'll make sure that you pay for what I owe him. Ni Yao said coldly. Liao Feijin was livid, but he did not dare to provoke Ni Yao, whose family was even stronger than his. He could only cast a hateful gaze on the technical director of Prosperous, Gu Ming. Damn it. It's this bastard who said that Meng Zhao was just a poor brat who lives in a public renting house. He's the reason why I made a mistake, even when I had been so confident in this. When Gu Ming sensed Liao Feijin's murderous gaze, he shuddered and nearly wet himself in public. What the heck? Just what sort of monster is Meng Zhao? Why is it that whoever provokes him ends up in a tragic state? A few days ago, Shen Rongfe annoyed him, and he was sent into the hospital by Mr. Hu. Today, I just said a few words and the grandson my teacher loves the most ran into a wall. Gu Ming wanted to cry, but had no tears. He regretted his mistake, but it was already too late. After the trade fair, Meng Zhao was silent for a few days. He didn't do anything even though his contribution points were increasing so slowly that it was like a 70-year-old man peeing, it came out so slowly that no one could get any relief. Every day, he only obtained 30 to 50 points. At most, it was 70 to 80 points. Fortunately, his pockets were full of real cash now. He got a lot of cultivation resources from his classmates, and through Ning Shou, oh, he also managed to buy a lot of secret medicine not available on the market. He felt as if the current him had moved from being a pistol to a machine gun. Every morning and night, he bathed twice in monster blood, and before he went to sleep, he spread an ointment made of a secret formula all over his palms, feet, and jade pillow point behind his head. He also started eating muscle growth hormones bone cell growth hormones, energy fluids, super dense protein powder, and all sorts of cultivation resources as if they were common food. His living conditions became better than even those of many rich men's sons. He had always been a cultivation maniac, but due to a lack of resources, his body had been drained beyond its limit. Now, he had powerful support, and his potential was fully unlocked. During the few days, he started training madly, and he fully mastered the entire body of knowledge required for high school. His strength reached a whole new level. Over the past few days, he suppressed the urge to use his contribution points, and the skillfulness of reckless bull technique and ripple force rose by 1% and 1.5% respectively. Even the progress of his healing increased by 2%. Men Zhao was so happy that he could fly. However, during the afternoon, a very strange notification popped up at the upper right corner of his field of vision. You saved elite citizen Yan Zenin. Increased contribution points by 333. This is. Meng Zhao was stunned. It didn't give me a lot of contribution points over the past few days, and when it did, it gave me over 300 contribution points. I earned a lot this time, but who is this Yan Zenin? Dot oh, I remember now. He's Ripple Force Prince's father. But I'm clearly in the classroom. How did I end up saving his life? At the same time, in the depths of the fog located in the suburbs of Dragon City were three monster hunters covered head to toe in injuries. They were gasping for breath while they lay on the ground like three boneless heaps of meat. Wheeze. Before them was a pile of torn flesh five times their size. It looked like an amalgamation of a large insect, a huge feline-type monster, 
and a carnivorous plant. It was very dead, and a foul-smelling liquid flowed all over the ground from its body. Big Brother Zenon, you. A bald and built man and a woman with a face full of knife scars looked at each other. They were shocked by what they had seen just a moment ago. They were supposed to be on a normal hunt. Their prey might have been a grade 5 super beast known as Great Tiger Striped Praying Mantis, which was a terrifying existence that could wipe out an entire military squad, but the three of them were people who had five-star supernatural abilities. Superhumans and super beasts were both divided into nine ranks, but since humans possessed intelligence and also knew how to use all sorts of weapons and machines, they could usually defeat super beasts which were a rank higher than them. The three monster hunters were friends for more than 10 years. Their teamwork was impeccable, and they had various strategies they deployed while fighting, so they did not think that fighting against a grade 5 super beast would be difficult. After all, they were going three against one. But to their surprise, after the great tiger striped praying mantis was severely injured, it suddenly mutated in an unidentified direction. Its head burst open, and a lot of sticky sharp teeth resembling those of a saw and tentacles gushed out of its body. A huge man-eating flower popped out from its body. After the sudden transformation, the great tiger striped praying mantis speed and power increased several times, and it also gained poisonous and corrosive attributes. It even gained other fearsome characteristics like mind interference. In an instant, it turned from a prey to a hunter. Unidentified mutation. An evolution while the target is at the last of its life. The three monster hunters sank into despair. While the bald man and the woman with the scarred face ran out of strength and fell to the ground twitching, the desperate Yan Zenin suddenly changed his fighting style. In the face of death, he came to understand the principles of a brand new martial art. His breathing and force execution method completely changed, and he executed a series of smooth and beautiful killing moves, which allowed him to miraculously turn the tides. The group managed to survive a disaster. The bald man and scarred-faced woman were naturally happy, but they were also puzzled. Why did Yan Zenin's fighting style suddenly improve by a whole level? His fighting strength had increased by at least 10% just then. If he had such a powerful martial art, why didn't he use it from the start? Yan Zenin panted for three minutes before he slowly sat up. As he watched the carcass of the savage mutated superbeast, the puzzlement and confusion on his face was even stronger than those of the bald man and the scarred-faced woman. He thought about it carefully for some time. Suddenly, his pupils shrank and he started shaking uncontrollably. Big Brother Zenon, what's wrong? You've already killed that mutated superbeast. The two monster hunters quickly came forward to support him. But they could sense that goosebumps had broken out on Yan Zenon's skin. Regardless of how fearsome the superbeast was and even if they faced death just now, they had never seen such great and unhidden terror on Yan Zenon's face. I I think I offended someone. Yan Zenon looked as lost as a child, and his deep voice was quivering. The bald man and scarred-faced woman looked at each other. They could not understand it. Who did you offend? Could he be even more terrifying than this mutated superbeast? Is the Yan family unable to fend against him? That's right. He's ten times more terrifying than a mutated superbeast. Yan Zenin spoke in a daze. I offended an old and unfathomable monster. The Yan family is going to face a great disaster. Yan Pharaoh opened the door to the chamber at the top of Swallow Building. When she did so, she heard cracking sounds coming from within. It sounded like someone was making stir-fried bamboo shoots with meat. She walked in, and she saw something she would not forget her whole life. Her father, a mighty man who was as built as a mountain, whose presence was as great as tidal waves, and who had killed countless fierce beasts in the fog, was kneeling on the floor like a child who had done something wrong. And her grandfather, Yan Hangbo, the master of the Yan family, the martial arts grandmaster who had created Ripple Force, was jumping about in rage like an old monkey. Her grandfather kicked her father around like a ball with his mechanical legs. He even lifted a cane and struck him mercilessly. While he came to him, he yelled at him. You couldn't have offended those beneath us? Why did you have to go and offend those above us? Did you actually think that this old fire real air is someone you can provoke? Yan Farah felt that her views of life, the world, and her morals instantly shattered into pieces. In fact, she even wondered whether she was hallucinating. Was she dreaming? She used her fingers to pinch her palm. No, it was not a hallucination, and neither was it a dream. Her grandfather was still caning and yelling at her father. Old Fire Real Air saw that your daughter had potential, so he kindly gave her a martial art to research. He even said that he's not after fame and profit, and he just wants to contribute to society, yet what did you do? With your petty heart, 
you tried to decipher the heart of a great man. How could you suspect that he has ulterior motives? Did you think that the demonically modified ripple force was fake? If it's a fake, then what is our ripple force V2? It's trash. Before this demonically modified ripple force, ripple force V2 is just trash. Trash. Yeah and Feru was dumbfounded. Chapter 45, Trouble? Got it. Yeah and Hengbo started weeping. We've made a mistake. I've been a hero my entire life, but at the end, all our success will come crashing down. Why on earth did I have such a troublesome son like you? Tell me, why didn't you tell me about this when something so important happened? Yan Zenin had been covered in injuries when he came, and now, his skin broke because of the caning. He was in so much pain that his eyelids twitched, but he did not dare to move. I thought that you were in isolated training. He whispered. Isolated, my foot. After that demonically modified Ripple Force came out, how on earth would I have the dignity to even publish Ripple Force V2? Yan Hengbu kicked Yan Zanin so hard that he fell on the floor. He gritted his teeth and said, Bastard! The Yan family is going to perish, and it's going to be destroyed by your hands. Yan Feru simply could not keep watching. She could only brace herself and go up to protect her father. Grandpa, what happened? She asked sweetly. Why are you so angry? Dad has just returned from the fog, and I heard that he was heavily injured. Yet you are. Humph. Even his favorite granddaughter could not make Yan Hengbu calm down in the slightest from his rage. He said coldly, why don't you ask your useless father just what he did? Dad? Ripple Force Princess was absolutely stunned now. She listened to her father speak in fragments for a long while until she got the gist of it. The demonically modified Ripple Force isn't some carelessly made martial art. It's the real deal. While dad was at the verge of death, he used the demonically modified ripple force to support his entire force execution system. Not only did his fighting strength instantly increase, when he attacked, his moves were also smoother and more discreet. With every move he made, he hit the mutated super beast's weakness, and he managed to completely suppress the unidentified mutated beast which had evolved at the end of its life. Is that correct? As Yan Feru listened to it, she was dumbfounded and even stuttered. And no way. Last time. Dad practiced it seriously for three hours. Why didn't he notice it at that time? Nonsense. This demonically modified ripple force is profound and contains a lot of secrets. Even I wasn't able to completely understand it within a short amount of time. The more I think about it, the more interesting it is. Your father might have grand ambitions, but he's incompetent. Forget about three hours, even if he practiced it for three days and three nights, he might not understand the matchless profound secrets within it. Yan Heng bled out a cold huff. Fortunately, your dad's foundation is pretty solid. He might not have understood many of the profound secrets, but at least he managed to memorize the technique. When he was near death, those memories exploded forth, and they managed to save his life. Yan Feru thought about it carefully and shuddered. If the demonically modified ripple force is real, just how powerful must the martial artist who created it be? An expert like this was kind enough to provide guidance to me. But not only did I not appreciate his kindness, I even went online to publicly denounce him. That expert must be furious right now. Feru, do you understand how grave the situation is right now? Yan Hengbo asked with a dark face. Modern martial arts aren't all the nonsense in wuxia novels. It's impossible for experts to be able to come up with great martial arts just by entering isolated training in some mountain cave for a year and a half. Real martial arts require deep knowledge of every aspect such as genomics, cytology, ergonomics, exercise physiology, and even spirit energy physics. You have to build up a large database, and through the fights of countless martial artists gather a huge amount of data. Then, with it, you use the most modern super biochemical brain to make calculations repeatedly. After that, you use it in real fights to continuously test it. Just how much manpower, resources, money, and wisdom do you think is required for that? I've led a research team formed by more than 10 experts, and I used many years to finally upgrade Ripple Force to version 2. But based on my judgment, this demonically modified Ripple Force is at least at version 5. Think, just what sort of terrifying force of power the person who created this possesses? Yeah and Fair gulped. She did not dare to think about this any further. What is even more terrifying is that this martial art has a vision that surpasses the current era. It's as if this was designed for new monsters who are continuously getting stronger. This can only mean one thing. Yan Hangbo's voice fell a few octaves. 
its creator managed to travel much deeper into the fog than your dad and even me and has fought against countless unparalleled monsters we have never seen before. Yeah and Feru cried out in shock. There are monsters who are even more powerful? Of course there are. Dragon City tore through the sky and descended in this place. It suppressed monster mountain range and caused a drastic change in the geography of the area, so many of the monster nests hidden deep in the mountain range will slowly appear. In the past, Dragon City hid in a corner and did not come into a lot of contact with the unparalleled monsters. But as Earthling civilization continues to spread outward, sooner or later, we will clash against those creatures. This is something normal citizens and even mid-tier and low-tier superhumans know nothing about. But the higher-ups are actively preparing for war. Even the old monsters who stand at the top of Dragon City have long since entered the depths of the fog and set up sentry stations. They're gathering more specimens and information to enlarge their monster picture encyclopedia and increase their data bank. They are constantly thinking about how to upgrade the current martial arts available to us based on the characteristics of the unidentified monsters. Yeah and Faru's eyes went wide. Grandpa, are you saying that the demonically modified ripple force was created by those old monsters? Who else could do it? Did you think that some random Tom, Dick, or Harry could upgrade our Yan family ripple force to such perfection? Yan Hangbo asked. Faru, you should know that the old monsters have been fighting fiercely from the moment Dragon City transmigrated to this place. They're the first group of peerless fighters who woke up to supernatural powers when they were fortunate enough not to turn into zombies after they were infected with the zombie virus. Instead, the shackles of their genes were removed. They went through all sorts of trials and tribulations, and they are the great pillars which have protected Dragon City for half a century. But when we just transmigrated to this place, our knowledge of genomics, spirit energy, and life science was very crude, and we made a lot of mistakes. The pioneers stumbled about in their paths as superhumans, and they developed paths that no one had ever taken before. Because of it, they also paid devastating prices. Many of the pioneers suffered brain damage. Their minds were corroded by the mysterious power of the other world, and they have become people who stand on both the side of good and evil. Sometimes, they even descend into madness. They might lose control at any moment. When they're in a good mood, they can casually give you guidance so that you can improve by leaps and bounds in your path to become a superhuman. But if you offend them and they descend into a rampage, they can destroy the Yan family in a single breath. Why else do you think they're known as old monsters? Then, what should we do? Ripple Force Princess was so anxious that she started pacing. We've definitely offended this old mons, this senior. Will he destroy the Yan family when he flies into a rage? Don't worry. If he wanted to destroy us, he would have done so a long time ago. It's impossible for him to not have taken action even now. Yan Heng Bo thought about it. I can sense the old senior's love and desire to protect the Yan family through his demonically modified Ripple Force. If he didn't have strong feelings for the Yan family ripple force, it would have been impossible for him to have upgraded it to such perfection. Perhaps this old senior was once connected to the Yan family through fate. Is he a teacher of mine when I was going through my journey to become a superhuman? If that weren't the case, why would he have taught you? Third, there's nothing for you to do here. Go and heal your wounds. Once you're done, you don't have to bother managing the organization anymore. Just concentrate on becoming a monster hunter. Yan Zenin was silent. The old man's words destroyed his future in the Yan family. But he had offended an old, mysterious, and unfathomable monster. The punishment he received was already the lightest possible. Understood, father, Yan Zenin said in a dejected manner. Feru, this matter started with you. I feel like the mysterious senior still likes you quite a lot. Why don't you take action again and release a public apology? Try to be as sincere as possible and act pitiful. We'll see if the old senior is willing to forgive the Yan family. Yan Hang Bo sighed. If that doesn't work, we'll have no other way out. I will have to cast aside my dignity and beg the senior for forgiveness. That night, when Meng Zhao was attending self-study period, a major disturbance rose in the classroom. Look! Ripple Force Princess is currently reading a public apology letter on the broadcasting platform. My god! The princess looks so delicate and pitiful. She looks like she's about to start crying. Is there a mistake? With the Yan family's strength, who can force Ripple Force Princess to apologize in such a manner? Has the Yan family cast aside their pride? The students were in a ruckus, for all the boys were indignant. Men Zhao was stunned. He turned on his phone and saw that what they said was true, the eldest daughter of the Yan family had switched to another image today. 
It was different compared to her gentle look during the public classes and her unyielding mannerisms when she made the public statement. Today, she looked frail and delicate as well as very timid. A few days ago, due to my ignorance and immaturity, I was rash, and offended an old senior who has a high and noble status in our city. I started incredibly bad rumors online. Yan Feru might not have thrown herself at Meng Zhao's feet, but he could already smell her tears. The boys were burning with rage as they watched. Chu Fei Shang even started growling beside Meng Zhao. Who is it? Who scared my goddess to this extent? I'm going to kill that guy. In video comments and comments were turned off for this video. But many netizens stood up together against their common enemy in the gossip forums online. Everyone was trying to figure out who the old senior Ripple Force Princess mentioned was. Who could receive such great respect that the Yan family would show such weakness and apologize publicly. Meng Zhao touched his face. He did not think that he deserved so much respect. He could not understand it. Why did Yan Feru switch from arrogance to humility so suddenly? She was like two different people. However, he was a kind person. After he finished watching the video, Yan Feru sent him a really long private letter which was full of apology and sincerity. Meng Zhao sighed and decided to spare the Yan family. Okay. He sent a one-word reply to show that he understood. Yan Feru was beside herself with joy and soon sent another long text to thank him for showing mercy. She also asked whether there was anything he needed. We know that with your abilities, even if we give you money or cultivation resources, it would only be humiliating to you. I wonder if there is anything that you might require that the Yan family could help you with. We will definitely risk our lives for you and will never decline your request. The letter left Meng Zhao stunned for a long time. He really wanted to reply with, It's fine. I'm really good at withstanding pressure, and I can withstand all sorts of humiliation. You don't have to hold back. Just use money and cultivation resources to humiliate me as much as you want. He was frustrated with himself. Why did he have to put on the image of a mysterious and aloof senior? Now, he found it embarrassing to ask for compensation from others. He scratched his head for a long time. At some point, he looked up, and he was just in time to see Zhuo Haoran staring at him with a gloomy expression. Men Zhao thought about it and replied, In three days, help me check Great Waves Corporation. Great Waves Corporation was Zhuo Haoran's family's company. Men Zhao knew that Zhuo Haoran was a sinister person. He did not have to worry about the conflict between him and Zhuo Haoran becoming worse while he was in school, but what if Zhuo Haoran used his family and did something to his parents? His father had just started out with his small company. He only had one small dingy, and it could not withstand any storms. It was only natural then that Meng Zhao should investigate all of the uncertain elements before doing anything else. Yan Feru hesitated. Who is Great Waves Corporation? Meng Zhao was a little embarrassed. The future Ripple Force was created by Yan Feru. He was using various tricks to deceive her, and it seemed like he had terrified her quite a lot. Now, he was even asking for her help, which he felt was rather unacceptable. He was, in fact, being rather shameless, wasn't he he? It's a little troublesome, Meng Zhao replied. To retain his image as an aloof senior, he did not go into too much detail. What he meant was that it was rather troublesome to search for the details of a company within a short amount of time. If she could not handle it, it was fine. It was nothing major anyway. Yan Feru was silent for a while before she replied. Trouble? Got it. Chapter 46, First Stage of the National College Examination Meng Zhao lived a relaxed life for the next few days and trained as usual. His contribution points started shooting up like crazy, just like a man wetting himself. Aside from Yan Zhenan, he got another elite monster. He was the master of the Yan family, the elite citizen, Yan Hangbo. Elite monsters were divided into major and minor elite monsters. The Grand Master of Martial Arts had personally created Ripple Force, so every time he gave Meng Zhao contribution points, he did so in the three digits. There were also plenty of powerful martial artists working in Yan organization. They brought in close to 1,000 contribution points every day, which felt great. However, Meng Zhao noticed something. His highest amount of contribution points earned every day was renewed daily, but as the demonically modified Ripple Force was generalized, he reached the peak of his daily high score for contribution points, and the numbers started falling. But that was understandable. The future had been changed, and his contribution in this matter ended. He could not be supplied with an endless amount of contribution points just because of one basic force execution method. If he marked the contribution points he gained daily into a graph, based on the declining curve, 
he would have gotten thousands of contribution points from the demonically modified Ripple Force alone. He also managed to form a connection with Yan organization, so he was very satisfied with this matter. Finally, it was the day for the school test, the first stage of the three stages of the National College examination. Banners were hung all over the entrance of the school gate. Colorful flags flew everywhere in the school. There were nearly 500 people from the eight third-year classes, and they would all compete for the 150 slots that would send them to the next stage. Their youthful passion nearly turned into boiling magma that could overturn all the ceilings in the 15 levels of the cultivation center. In the meeting room at the top floor of the cultivation center were dozens of screens. Each monitored a different examination area. One of the screens also showed a continuously changing ranking board, which ranked students based on their results. The leaders of the school and the homeroom teachers of the third-year classes sat under the monitors. Whenever the ranking changed, their expressions also changed slightly. While they chatted with each other, their words were laced with hostility. The resources in Dragon City were limited, and competitions were everywhere. Humans and monsters competed for resources, and humans also competed against each other. The students fussed over everything for the sake of their rankings. The teachers and school leaders, too, competed against other classes or other key high schools, especially the high and mighty city level key high schools. The results of the third year students were pretty good. They were almost reaching the lowest possible score of those studying at city level key high schools. Principal's son was nearly 70. When he was young, he had fought against zombies and monsters and suffered permanent injuries. Gradually, he became hunchbacked and he was now a shriveled up old man who dozed every day. He was prepared to work for another two years before he retired. He did not care much about administrative affairs on usual days either, so he just grinned and remained calm. The teaching director Ma Ching Yun was still young and full of energy. He managed most of the daily tasks in the school, and he longed to be able to take a step further in his life once principal son retired. He was incredibly excited when the students scored well. His horse-like face was red and he looked like a huge horse monkey jumping around, which, coincidentally, was the nickname his students gave him. Demon Yan remained expressionless. He tapped against the table lightly while he continued examining reckless bull technique in his mind. The homeroom teachers of the eight graduating classes all acted as humble as ace students. Ah, this is bad. Class 1 this year is really horrible. There are only more than 30 students who are able to outrun Usain Bolt. Class 2 is even worse. These lazy bums are also weak. They can't even win against the Olympic weightlifting champions on Earth. Ah, this is so distressing. If all of you in the rocket classes say these things, then doesn't it mean that the strolling classes are done for? What do you mean by done for? Everyone knows that you've all been working hard to compete against the rocket classes. Let's just talk about old Wang from class 6. He might seem harmless, but he has been organizing study groups in secret. No one knows what sort of amazing martial art his students are practicing. Old Wang, don't even think about hiding. Just tell us, what are you practicing? No, I'm definitely not teaching them anything. Wang Longjin shook his head with a serious look. What do you mean by amazing martial art? I know nothing about it. Before his voice could fade, the ranking of maximum punching strength started changing rapidly on the big monitor screen. Someone managed to shoot up the ranks. Since every class was marked with a different color, everyone could tell who it was from a single glance. Class 6 is Chu Fei Shuang. His maximum punching strength is 249.5 kilograms, and he's ranked 21st for punching strength. What? He's just a student in a strolling class, and his maximum punching strength is greater than of most people in the rocket classes? Old Wang, that's so dishonest of you. You're still insisting that you don't have an amazing martial art up your sleeves? The other seven homeroom teachers struck their tables and rebuked him in a semi-serious fashion. But before they could recover from the shock brought by Chu Feixing's punching strength, another student from class 6 shot up the ranking board. It's class 6's Meng Zhao. His maximum punching strength is 240.9 kilograms, and his 100-meter dash is 9.55 seconds. He's faster than Usain Bolt by 0.03 seconds and his overall score is temporarily listed at the 19th place in the whole school. Meng Zhao? I remember that he was a really talented student during the first year and second year of high school. He was heavily injured later on. So, he has recovered? At that moment, the homeroom teachers from the two rocket classes could no longer hide the envy and jealousy in their eyes. They had been paying attention to Meng Zhao for a long time. After all, he had great talent. If he weren't injured, 
he would have definitely been slotted into a rocket class. They did not expect that even though he stayed in class 6, he would recover fully and even improve. Just how lucky was Wang Longjin? Even Demon Yan let out a gasp of astonishment. He deliberately switched to Meng Zhao's testing footage. Teaching director Ma Ching Yun let out a soft huff. There was no expression on his face. It's pretty good. Principal Sun grinned. He looked like a mascot. It was written in Destiny's books that today was the day of harvest for Class 6, because the shock they delivered was not over just yet. Soon after Meng Zhao obtained the great result of ranking among the top 20, another shocking news was delivered. 100 meter dash completed in 9.49 seconds he managed to break 9.5 second wall. His maximum punching strength is 250.1 kilograms, and he also broke the 250 kilograms wall, which is known as the legendary high school iron wall. Zuo Hao Ran's total score is temporarily ranked at the ninth place in the entire school. That's impossible. The students in a strolling class have charged into the top 10 even though there are nearly 100 students in the rocket classes blocking their path. Zuo Hao Ran. So, it's hard. Well, that's not much of a surprise. Once they read the name of a student who broke the record, the shocked expressions of the other seven homeroom teachers faded away. They put on obsequious expressions for teaching director Ma Ching Yun as if they were flattering him by using their expressions to say teaching director Ma, you're amazing. You managed to teach your nephew really well. The students from class 6 were also shocked as they stood in the testing room underneath. They had been immersed in the triumphant feeling of Meng Zhao returning with a dominating might and thought that he had a slight chance in winning over the class rep, even if it was in just one single aspect. But half a minute later, Zuo Hao Ran's domineering score shattered their hopes. Regardless of whether it was his maximum punching strength or 100 meter dash, the class rep's impeccable performance told them what it meant to be so strong that nothing could stand in the way. What should we do? Zuo Hao Ran is too strong. He's already above Meng Zhao by 20 points after the first two competitions. I thought that Meng Zhao could surpass him a little in the first two parts. Let's hope that he won't lose too miserably during the shooting test later. That guy never put a lot of effort in the past, but over the past week, he went all out. I think he must have taken in some sort of secret medicine and spent a lot of money to use top-grade cultivation machines to stimulate the potential in his cells. Damn it, it's seriously so good to be rich. The class was so anxious that they ground their teeth. Meng Zhao exchanged a glance with Zuo Hao Ran. Meng Zhao quickly looked away with a calm gaze, while Zuo Hao Ran quirked his lips. On his face was a domineering look he did not bother to hide. All examinees in class 6, your test for maximum punching strength and the 100 meter dash is over. Now, queue up based on your results and head to the indoor shooting range. The invigilator came from another school, which was a customary rule. All schools would exchange teachers to serve as invigilators so that they could prevent cheating. The teacher from the other school was as grave as a judge. He did not care about the strange atmosphere between the students and just waved his hand urging them forward. The 10th to the 12th floor of the cultivation center were indoor shooting ranges. At that moment, the rhythmical sounds of gunfire rang non-stop. The rocket classes had long since begun their tests. All sorts of ridiculous marks and the smell of gunpowder stimulated the students' nerves, and they were instantly in test mode. Zuo Haoran took the lead and walked into the sixth shooting range. Meng Zhao followed closely behind him. Unexpectedly, aside from the invigilator, Principal Sun, the teaching director, Demon Yan, and their homeroom teacher were in the shooting range as well. Good morning, Principal Sun, Teaching Director Ma, Mr. Yan, Mr. Wang. The students quickly bowed, and they were especially respectful to the principal. Principal Sun might be a small, shriveled up old man right now, but he was a hero who managed to turn the tides of battles in the past. He was known as Heavy Cannon. If Demon Yan killed monsters as if he was just making fillings for dumplings, Principal Sun was a huge meat grinder in food processing factories. The students who saw the videos of him training and fighting when he was young were unable to link the shriveled up old man with the moving human fortress. You're all pretty good, hmm? Principal Sun shut his eyes. He looked as if he was asleep, but it was not the truth. The teaching director stepped forward and explained their purpose for being here. This year, Class 6's results are very good. For the time being, you're taking the lead above the other six strolling classes. Students, continue to do your best. The students were shocked and delighted. They cheered. The teaching director slapped Zuo Hao Ran's shoulder and said with a smile, the homeroom teacher definitely has credit in helping class 6 achieve good results, 
And you also did well by setting an example for the others, class rep. Good luck. Thank you for your motivating words, teaching director Ma. I will. Zuo Haoran puffed out his chest, and his righteous demeanor returned to him. The students rolled their eyes. Everyone here knows your uncle and nephew. Why are you putting up an act? The shooting test is about to start. Compose yourself and focus. Demon Yan suddenly glared at them. You only have one chance. It's the easiest for others to pull ahead of you when it comes to shooting. Forget about the marks you scored just now and focus on the target in front of you. If you're the slightest bit careless, you'll end up having no place to even shed your tears. The students were startled. They quickly got rid of all other thoughts and focused on calming down their breathing. First test group. Zuo Haoran, Meng Zhao. The invigilator had the top two scorers based on the ranking of the results from the two previous tests come forward. Chapter 47, Golden Target This is bad. Meng Zhao is actually going through his test with Zuo Haoran? Will he get disturbed? He definitely will. Even though they're shooting two different targets they'll be able to see each other's actions and results very clearly. Meng Zhao's state of mind will definitely be affected, and he might go through a mental breakdown. Meng Zhao. He's too foolish. He should have read the examination rules carefully and figured out that the shooting test is conducted in pairs formed based on the ranking from the first two tests. His maximum punching strength and speed are good, so he should have preserved some of his strength and gotten third or fourth place in the class. Then, he could avoid competing against Zuo Haoran. The students were anxious. But some decided to indulge in wishful thinking. Would Meng Zhao's state and luck be really good today and he would end up getting really good marks? Those who had that hope were mostly formed of the low scorers in the class. They did not intend to get into college. Those among the top 10 in class snorted. Impossible. You won't be just firing one shot during the shooting test. You'll need to assemble three guns on your own, then fire 10 handgun bullets, 20 rifle shots, and 30 caseless bullets specifically made for submachine guns. You need to shoot 10 fixed targets and 10 moving targets. I won't say anything about managing to get one or two lucky shots but it's impossible for you to get lucky with every shot. You can still try your luck when it comes to fixed targets, but the points for moving targets are 3 to 5 times those of fixed targets. They move based on the trajectory and speed of monsters, and each target only appears for a few seconds. They're really fast. They also drift about, so you can't rely on your luck for that. The school does not really teach us how to shoot moving targets when it comes to our shooting classes. But Zuo Haoran specifically trains with moving targets when he practices in Falcon Gun Club. The low scorers could not accept this. There's also the golden target, right? Doesn't it offer you more points than normal targets? The ace sharpshooters in the class laughed. The golden target is the last of the 20 targets. It's the smallest, is positioned the furthest away, moves the fastest, and also has the strangest movement trajectory. That target is the size of a fist, and it'll be placed 50 meters away. It's even faster than monsters, and it only appears for one second, so you need to predict its appearance beforehand. Unless your shooting skills, feel of the gun, and reaction time are perfect, you won't be able to hit it. It's impossible for even Zuo Haoran, so he won't be wasting his bullet on that golden target. The low scorers felt all their fight drained from them. Then, doesn't it mean that he doesn't have any hope in winning at all? The ace sharpshooter sighed. He never had any hope. We can only wish that Meng Zhao will get good results and win against himself. Zuo Haoran, Meng Zhao. The invigilator called them a second time. While the students discussed things among themselves, the two people moved forward. Meng Zhao, wait. The homeroom teacher suddenly came over and put a hand on his shoulder. He said softly, forget about your ludicrous fight based on your personal feelings. Right now, the most important thing for you is to get into the second stage of the National College examination. It's normal if your shooting skills can't compare to those of Zuo Haoran. Don't break down. Once you lose your composure, you'll miss every single target, and no matter how good your results were in the beginning, it'll be useless. Ahem. The invigilator coughed softly. Meng Zhao nodded. I'll do my best, Mr. Wang. That's good, then. Persevere. Try to ensure that your accuracy is higher than 70%. You'll then have a chance to get into the next stage. The homeroom teacher punched the air and smiled at the invigilator before he left. Meng Zhao and Zuo Haoran each stood at their shooting spots. Placed all over the table before them were mixed up pieces. They belonged to handguns, rifles, and submachine guns and were piled up together until they formed a small hill. 
The two men looked at each other. The mocking look in Zhuo Haoran's eyes burned like a fire that seemed ready to scorch Meng Zhao to ashes. Meng Zhao's gaze was a little unfocused. It seemed like his mind was elsewhere. He could not help it. Notifications just kept popping up at the corner of his eye. This was the side effect of gaining contribution points. His gaze constantly drifted about, and it made it look like he was always ignoring others. When Zhuo Haoran noticed that he was being ignored, the anger in him burned even hotter. Beep. The invigilator pressed on the timer. Ten fixed targets appeared at the end of the long shooting lane across from them. The ten fixed targets would be up for three minutes. The examinees had to finish assembling the three guns within three minutes before they were allowed to shoot at the fixed targets in a relaxed manner. The rules did not limit the examinees on how many fixed targets they had to strike. If they were absolutely sure in their gun technique, they were allowed to completely skip the fixed targets and shoot the moving targets. After all, the moving targets were worth three to five times more than the moving targets. In fact, some were even worth ten times more. But there was no examinee who would be stupid enough to do that. The shooting skills of high school students were amateurish, and while they were all right with shooting fixed targets, they could only count themselves lucky whenever they hit. Kacha, 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 kacha. The rhythmic sounds of compartments being assembled together came from Zhuo Haoran. Every day, after classes ended, he would go and practice at the shooting club, so he was incredibly familiar with the military-grade guns of Dragon City. His movements were smooth, and there were no flaws or redundant movements in his actions. Even the students who called Zuo Haoran's morals into question had to admit that it was a joy watching him assemble guns. The teaching director grinned widely when he saw his nephew's outstanding performance. Demon Yan looked at his watch. Zuo Haoran's speed has increased by 10%. He can already catch up to most of the students in the rocket classes. As expected, guns are his strongest subject. Compared to Zuo Haoran's dazzling performance, Meng Zhao kept a much lower profile. He was not much slower, but he operated at the pace of a normal high school student. His movements were methodical, and he even occasionally stopped to think or rubbed his fingers against a compartment carefully. His eyes were half-lidded, so no one could tell what he was thinking. Everyone was anxious. But due to the disciplinary rules in the exam hall, they could not urge him to hurry up or give him encouragement. Besides, Meng Zhao's performance today was already much better than his usual performance during shooting classes. He had already surpassed himself, so what else could they ask for? All right, at least I got him to calm down. The homeroom teacher sighed in relief. That's correct, Meng Zhao. Competing is all a child's talk. It's fine even if you can't win against Zuo Haoran. It won't stop you from getting into college. As for Principal Sun, he had been sitting in a corner and seemingly taking a nap, when he suddenly opened his beady eyes and swept his gaze over the table of guns. He was not looking at Zuo Haoran, but at Meng Zhao. He only watched for half a second before his heavy eyelids fell closed once more. It's pretty good, hmm? The heavy cannon of the past and the current small, shriveled up old man started dozing off again. Bang! 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 It had just been one minute since the test begun, and Zhu Haoran had already perfectly assembled all three guns. Like a whirlwind, he fired all ten of his handgun bullets and all thirty of his submachine bullets. Inner tenth ring. Inner tenth ring. Inner tenth ring. All forty bullets hit the inner tenth ring, and it was perfect. The students could not help but cover their mouths. They swallowed their cries of surprise. At that moment, Meng Zhao finished assembling his guns and began shooting. Unfortunately, more than two minutes had passed. It was clear that he was affected by Zuo Haoran's perfect performance. Even though his movements were harmonious and he was quite precise, he made the worst possible mistake. He's using the semi-automatic rifle? The students whispered. Usually, when ace sharpshooters fired fixed targets, they used handguns or submachine guns. Handguns had a short shooting distance while submachine guns were not very accurate. That's why they were perfect for fixed targets to get basic marks. Semi-automatic rifles had optical gun sight, so they possessed the highest accuracy. They were used to get high marks when shot at moving targets. This was the classic strategy, and it was what Zhuo Haoran did. When Meng Zhao was done firing all his handgun bullets, he seemed to have been thrown into confusion. He picked up his semi-automatic rifle and started firing without care. Even though his results were pretty good and he managed to get some inner tenth rings, which made it seem as if his results were about the same as Zuo Haoran's, 
they were about to enter the moving target stage, and Meng Zhao would have to use his submachine gun to shoot at the drifting targets. What was about to happen was simply too despair-inducing. The students looked at each other, and before their eyes, they saw a big, brilliant zero shining brightly. I think Meng Zhao decided to completely give up on the moving targets so that he can use all his bullets on fixed targets. He has gotten a lot of points this way. That's true. Many of the students who are bad at shooting give up on moving targets. But it's still bad. He wasted too much time assembling guns just now, and there's no time left. Then he should hurry up and get as many points as possible. Why is he standing there staring into space? The students were so anxious that they felt like they were about to jump out of their skin. They really wanted to shoot the targets for Meng Zhao. But Meng Zhao remained unmoving. He only held the submachine gun and waited for the timer to go down to zero. Beep. It was time. All fixed targets fell. Ten seconds later, the moving targets showed up. Meng Zhao still had 30 caseless bullets for the submachine gun, while Zhuo Haoran had 20 bullets for his semi-automatic rifle. The submachine gun had great firepower, low accuracy, and great recoil. It was not easy to control it. The semi-automatic rifle, however, was designed to be accurate. The students could not help but release huge sighs. The homeroom teacher was so frustrated that he stomped on the ground. Why did the child allow his ego to rush into his head after he just praised him? The teaching director gave a cool remark. Meng Zhao's heart isn't very steady. He's the student who searched for deviant martial arts and ended up being sent to the hospital because of it, right? He's too extreme, so he will probably have a difficult path ahead of him. Demon Yan stared at Meng Zhao, but he was in deep thought. A hint of puzzlement rose on his damn face. Principal son? Demon Yan moved next to the small, shriveled old man and spoke respectfully. He softly asked for advice. Bois, wa? Oh, it's pretty good, hmm? Principal son was stirred awake because of his words. He nodded with a smile before he shut his eyes again. Ten seconds soon passed. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The moving targets rose like ghosts before the two examinees. They started moving madly in an irregular pattern. Everyone held their breaths. Zuo Haoran had a solemn look on his face. He bound the strap of the rifle around his arm and put on the standard triangle shooting stance. He began shooting calmly. Fourth ring. Fifth ring. Third ring. Seventh ring. The results with the moving targets were inferior to his mixed target results, but it still far surpassed the limits of most students. Every time he shot a moving target. As long as he managed to hit the edge of the target, he would still be able to get marks that were higher than hitting the inner tenth ring of the fixed targets. As for Meng Zhao, he put on a stance no one had even seen before and fired his submachine gun a few times. A few of his bullets missed the target, but those he did manage to hit, he only struck the third ring or was even further outside. The gap between him and Zhuo Haoran kept on growing wider. Ninth ring. Zhuo Haoran managed to get an astonishing result with his final bullet. He pulled his rifle back expressionlessly and showed the bullet cases and magazines of the three guns to the invigilator. Then, he took two steps backwards, turned around, and left. It was at that moment that he finally appeared to be in high spirits. Very good, you did really well as the class rep of class 6. The teaching director was beaming. Zuo Haoran, you did well. The homeroom teacher congratulated him as well with complicated emotions. In his mind, he thought, seriously, you're too amazing. If you shoot like that, you're going to end up destroying the mind states of all your classmates, and we might end up having one less student being able to enter college. Just what sort of grudge do you have that you must act so aggressively? And just as he expected, Meng Zhao seemed to be shocked by Zuo Haoran's results. He just stayed still and did not move. Someone saw that he had even shut his eyes. He just let the target zip past him. Has he completely given up? The students looked at each other at a loss. As time passed, the moving targets that appeared became smaller and faster. If Meng Zhao had missed the targets in the beginning, it was impossible for him to be able to hit the targets that appeared later. You overestimated yourself. Zuo Haoran laughed coldly in his heart. At that moment, gold color flashed at the end of the shooting lane. The golden target had appeared. It was the final target, and it was worth a ridiculous amount of points. This was basically an additional question in the National College Examination and most students never thought about hitting it. Even Zhuo Haoran had only hit seven moving targets. He gave up on the last three. But at that moment, Meng Zhao opened, no. 
It should be said that right before the golden target appeared, he opened his eyes. Chapter 48, A Brief Fight At that moment, Demon Yan detected a familiar powerful killing intent, because he was a veteran who had once faced multiple life and death situations. Bang, 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 bang. The sounds of gunfire from a submachine gun beat down on everyone's eardrums like a violent rainstorm. But this storm left as quickly as it arrived. When the students looked over in a dumbfounded manner, the sounds of gunshots had already disappeared. Meng Zhao removed the cartridge with familiar ease and opened the magazine. He let the dumbfounded invigilator take a look at it. His results did not appear on the screen even after a long time had passed, but he was completely fine with it. He just exercised his fingers, turned around, and left. Meng Zhao, how was it? His classmates surrounded him anxiously. It was pretty good, Meng Zhao said after some thought. It was within my limits. I'd say I did perfectly. His classmates were speechless. If you're nervous, then say you're nervous. If you had a mental breakdown, then say that. Why are you trying to keep up a stubborn front? Zuo Haoran shook his head in disdain, as if he was rebuking himself for arguing with a person who was just all talk. At that moment, Meng Zhao's results finally showed up. Class 6 is Meng Zhao obtained 588 marks for the shooting test. His total score is 1434 points. As of now, he's ranked at the 8th place in the school. The large indoor shooting range instantly fell silent. Even the sounds of gunfire from the examination room next door seemed to have become duller. It was as if the air had filled with a very sticky substance and glued all sounds, oxygen, and even their thoughts together. 588 points? Zuo Haoran only scored 515 points just now, right? Meng Zhao's marks surpassed Zuo Haoran's by 73 points. He evened out the gap between them in terms of speed and strength, and his total score even surpassed Zuo Haoran's by more than 20 marks? How could it be? He missed a lot of targets, and he even used his submachine gun to hit the moving targets. How did he get so many points? Was there a miscalculation? Everyone looked at each other at a loss. There was probably a miscalculation. Yes, there had to be one. Maybe. Zuo Haoran was shocked. Did they mix my points with Meng Zhao's? The invigilator frowned and brought out Meng Zhao's targets. All the ones in the front were normal. Then, they reached the final golden target. Zuo Haoran's golden target was clean. There was no hole on it. But Meng Zhao's golden target was covered in 13 bullet holes. Six of them were within the inner eight rings, so he nearly destroyed the tiny golden target. The golden target was the most valuable, and the points from it alone were enough to surpass Zuo Haoran. Silence fell. The invigilator and the classmates were all a little dazed. Did you shoot blindly? Or did you aim for it? Someone asked in disbelief after a long time passed. Right now, no one was taking the test. The invigilator was the one who decided whether they could speak or whether they should continue with the test, and judging by his expression, it was clear that he was also very curious about this question. Of course I aimed. I told you repeatedly since a week ago that my shooting skills were pretty decent. Didn't you believe me? His classmates could not help but say, but you assembled the guns really slowly. He did not act like Zuo Haoran, who did everything smoothly and quickly. Meng Zhao smiled. Assembling guns isn't a circus act. What's the point of doing it quickly? Am I supposed to turn my hands into a blur? One of the goals of assembling guns is to perform maintenance on the gun, and the other is to get a clear idea of the wear and tear as well as the shape of each compartment by rubbing them carefully. Then, you can deduce the shooting parameters of the gun. You have to understand that when each new gun is produced, their shooting parameters are slightly different from each other. Besides, my gun has already been touched by multiple examinees. Their shooting habits are different, and many people's stances and shooting rhythm are wrong, so the rifling and compartments are all a mess. If I didn't get a clear idea of the details, how would I be able to shoot accurately? One person swiftly came to a realization. So, you were prepared to shoot the golden target since the beginning? Then why didn't you use the semi-automatic rifle? Why did you use the submachine gun? Meng Zhao shrugged. The golden target will only appear for a moment, and I can only use one gun. We are given 30 shots for the submachine gun, but only 20 shots for the semi-automatic rifle. His classmates could not believe their own ears. But the accuracy of the semi-automatic rifle is higher. Meng Zhao thought about it. To me, it's all the same. His classmates were all speechless. 
the only thing they wanted to do was scream at the heavens. Someone ground his teeth and asked, then why did you miss so many targets when you just started using the submachine gun to hit the moving targets? I was testing the gun. This would help the students in the test later on, so Meng Zhao did not bother to hide this information. Even though I did my best to assemble the submachine gun based on my shooting habits, since there was wear and tear in the compartments and rifling and since I wasn't really sure of its characteristics, I needed to use a few bullets to correct the trajectory. Then, I was able to hit the target with every shot. The students looked at each other at a loss. So, you decided to bet all your hopes on the golden target since the beginning? Meng Zhao was stunned. His gaze was a little unfocused, as if his classmates had just asked a question that he could not understand. I didn't bet everything on it. He could only be said to have bet everything when he shot that ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle. At that time, he staked his last bullet on it. Today, he was only answering a question that had a lot of nitty-gritty steps and complicated calculations, but was not actually very difficult. That was all. Meng Zhao just high-fived Chu Feishong, who stood at the back row, and walked out. He brushed shoulders with Zhuo Haoran and did not spare a glance for the class rep, who seemed to be absolutely stricken. He did not mention the challenge he issued to Zuo Haoran a week ago in front of the principal or the teaching director either. But Zuo Haoran sank into a trap made of puzzlement, fear, and embarrassment. It was as if his world had collapsed around him. A moment ago, he had the winning ticket in his hands, and he had been smiling because of it, but now, his smile had frozen on his face, as if it was a mark left behind when Meng Zhao slapped him hard across the face. Haoran. The teaching director pinched his waist hard. You did well. Go and rest to calm down. The invigilator schooled his expression and said, Pay attention to the disciplinary rules in the examination area. All those who have finished the test have to leave. The homeroom teacher quickly went up to them. Meng Zhao, Zuo Haoran, go back to the class first. Remember to calm down. Don't let this get over your heads. The test was still going on, so it was only natural that they could not get into a conflict here. Meng Zhao nodded and waved his hand at the class before he said, Good luck. I hope that you can hit all your targets and get good results. He turned around and left the examination room. Zuo Haoran followed behind him with a dark look on his face. When they left the examination center, Meng Zhao could not help but raise his fist and swing it fiercely. He was one step closer to his dream now. This feeling of continuously changing his destiny was amazing. Zuo Haoran saw his action and it was only natural that he saw it as an act of provocation. Meng Zhao, you were lucky today, and it's out of sheer luck that your overall results are higher than mine. I will naturally be too embarrassed to continue being the class rep. But I will absolutely not admit that you're stronger than I am when it comes to your practicals. He gritted his teeth and said, your maximum punching strength, 100 meter dash, and the shooting games in the shooting range cannot represent your real fighting strength. Since you already returned to the peak of your strength, do you have the guts to fight against me? Meng Zhao turned his head around and looked at Zhuo Haoran with the ghost of a smile on his face. Here it is. I knew it. It's exactly the same as in my previous life. But last time, the class rep had full advantage. With just a few words, he managed to anger Meng Zhao, and Meng Zhao jumped straight into the trap. This year, he would let Zhuo Haoran reap what he sowed. Sure, Meng Zhao said calmly. There was a dense grove behind the cafeteria of 9th High School. There was also a land full of soft sand there. It was the place that students often used to settle their conflicts. Dragon City was an unyielding society and learning martial arts was incredibly common among the people. Even elderly women in their 80s played around with shotguns, so what needed to be said about youths, who were very hot-blooded? The school usually turned a blind eye to it. In fact, they even advocated going to the cultivation halls to publicly settle any conflicts under a teacher's monitoring. If anyone wanted to go to the depths of the grove for a private fight, the school usually did not punish the fighters badly as long as the consequences of the fight were not too severe. Meng Zhao stared at the rustling trees before him and sighed. In his previous life, he was set up by Zhuo Haoran in this place, and he failed his national college examination. Meng Zhao stopped at the center of the grove. He hesitated for a moment before he decided to speak. Class rep, we're about to take our exam, so let's have a brief fight. Regardless of who wins or loses, let's put all our past transgressions behind us after the fight is over, all right? A thought appeared in Zuo Haoran's mind then. Of course. We'll fight briefly, and once it's over, we'll put everything behind us. All right. I hope that you'll keep your promise, or else. 
Meng Zhao furrowed his brow and stepped forward to seize the initiative. Ripples appeared under his feet and on the sand. With the power from the ground, Meng Zhao sent out a force that was as strong as a tidal wave. Zuo Haoran quickly moved back, and his body became blurry. He used ripple force as well. Meng Zhao, you've only been practicing ripple force for a year, while I'm skilled in both ripple force and reckless bull force. I can use tough and gentle forces at the same time. You're not my opponent. Give up. Zuo Haoran intentionally provoked him. This time, I won't lose. Meng Zhao's strength increased, and he gradually brought out the essence of ripple force. The two youths looked like two waves that were entangled with each other and pushed one another back and forth. They moved faster with each moment, and sand as well as stones flew everywhere. The grove let out rustling sounds, and a lot of the leaves were torn down by wind stirred up by the punches. Meng Zhao acted as if he had just recovered from his injuries and could not fight for a long time. Hence, he tried to end the fight as quickly as possible. Zuo Haoran clearly knew about his weaknesses. He remained calm and slowly whittled down his stamina. After just a brief minute, Meng Zhao's uniform was drenched in sweat, and his footsteps became disorderly. Suddenly, Zuo Haoran shouted. He changed his fighting style and switched seamlessly from ripple force to reckless bull force. Slap! Meng Zhao looked unable to get used to this fighting style, where Zuo Haoran could switch at will, and was stunned for a moment. Then, he was struck firmly on the face. In an instant, blood gushed out from his nose, and his lip was torn. Ah! Meng Zhao's face was covered in blood. He was angered by pain, and his legs let out loud thuds as he charged forward without regard for any cost. Perfect timing. A savage light in Zuo Haoran's eyes shone brilliantly. The trash has finally fallen into the trap. Hey, did you actually think that I'm only skilled in ripple force and reckless bull force? Or did you really think that I only know the three great force execution methods? They are all just basic skills. Without true killing methods, they're like unsharpened weapons. They can't kill anyone. So-called good talents like you can only receive compulsory education in school. You don't know what true fights are. But me? I've long since received teachings from my father and the powerful fighters in society. I've learned killing methods that only those in college can learn. Meng Zhao, witness my hard hammer. Chapter 49, Put Everything Behind Us At the instant Meng Zhao pounced, Zuo Haoran shrank into himself. His force execution method changed again, and he switched from the fierce and powerful reckless bull force to dragon snake force, the force execution method that allowed the user to accumulate force. Crackle, crackle. A string of explosive sounds that sounded like firecrackers came from his body. He was like a python who had been lying in wait for ten years and had finally turned into a real aquatic dragon. Even his spine bulged out from his flesh, making him look like an aquatic dragon with its claws out and teeth bared. He was about to charge into the sky. A fierce and excited expression appeared on Zuo Haoran's face. With a growl, he moved his spine and delivered a strange punch with his right hand. It was like a steel needle that could pierce through bones, and it went right under Meng Zhao's ribs. Before even hitting with hard hammer, Zuo Haoran was already imagining Meng Zhao falling to the ground and spasming while he vomited and cried. There was something extremely amazing about his skill. When his father taught him the move, he also showed him a few variations of it so that he could make his hidden force stay in the target's body for a very long time, and if no one examined the target's body in depth, they would not be able to discover it at all. Over the next few days, Meng Zhao would just feel a bit of pain under his ribs, but he would not find anything strange about it. When he would discover it, it would be too late. He would have no proof, and Zhu Haoran would just need to deny it flatly. No one would be able to do anything to him at that time. Meng Zhao had just recovered from his wounds, so this would be adding insult to injury. Ha! Forget about getting into college, it would even be up for debate as to whether he could get into a high vocational college. Zuo Haoran was very happy about the future. Then, he saw the eyes of his opponent. His eyes were as cunning as those of a hunter, as callous as those of a butcher, as brutal as those of a monster, and as calm as those of a doctor. When Meng Zhao looked at his target like that, he seemed to have become someone else. He changed from a high school student to a person who had returned from the apocalypse. His force execution method shifted from ripple force to reckless bull force, and the change was even smoother and more discreet than that of Zuo Haoran. But it was not the same reckless bull force. It was the future master level reckless bull technique. 
The contribution points he had gained through the future Ripple Force were enough to upgrade a few of the basic skills by a level, and the first Meng Zhao chose to upgrade was Reckless Bull Technique, which had great force, power, and could destroy everything in its way. Zuo Haoran felt as if his chest had been struck by a charging rhinoceros. Meng Zhao's fist was like a horn whose force went from his chest to his back. Crack! Zuo Haoran's spine made a loud noise. He was sent flying high like a kite whose string snapped and broke a sapling before he fell to the ground in a heap. He looked like a puddle of mud that Meng Zhao had just violently stomped over. Zuo Haoran's eyes went wide, and he stared above himself at a loss. The sky was still as blue as ever, but he felt as if his world was crumbling rapidly. Puzzlement, distress, remorse, loathing, pain, hatred, and all sorts of emotions flowed freely on his pale face. He opened his mouth like a fish that was washed ashore by a wave. He tried to breathe, but could not get any oxygen. His upper body burned from pain, but his lower body was growing cold, and soon all feeling from it disappeared. The two completely different feelings made his eyes go wide. Madness and despair fought for supremacy in his mind. Meng Zhao walked over while slowly wiping off the blood from his nose. He stopped where he blocked off Zuo Haoran's view of the sky. You. Resentment was all over Zuo Haoran's face, but he soon came to an understanding. Yup. I held back during the test. I hit the gauge casually and ran without trying hard, Meng Zhao admitted generously. Why? Zuo Haoran could not understand it no matter how hard he tried. This is just the first stage of the National College examination. I have no interest in standing out like some low-class clown. Besides, if I did too well, what would I have to do if you refused to fight me? Meng Zhao shrugged. You did it intentionally. You set me up. Zuo Haoran's eyes were practically spitting flames. That's right. I intentionally scored second place in class so that I could compete against you in terms of shooting skills. Then, we could leave the examination hall together. The homeroom teacher and our classmates would stay inside, so no one could interrupt us when we went to spar. Meng Zhao crouched down and sighed. But I still gave you a chance. Before we started sparring, didn't I tell you that we'll only have a brief fight, stop when the victor is decided, and put all differences behind us? Don't go disbelieving my words now. I was serious. If you hadn't been despicable enough to use a brutal method to cripple me, you wouldn't have reaped what you sowed. Aye aye. Zuo Haoran's face was full of fear. The unknown was always the most terrifying, and right then, he did not know what was going on with his lower body. Your spine should have cracked from the shock. Your organs aren't bleeding severely, so your life is not in danger. Don't worry, Meng Zhao said. With Dragon City's medical skills, even if your spine cracked, it's not as if you can't get it treated. Just get a good doctor and rest well for two years, then you should have no problem regaining the mobility of a normal person. But it'll be difficult for you to cultivate, get into college, or become a superhuman. Still, I don't think a person like you should become a superhuman. It'll be good for you and the society if you don't. You, Zuo Haoran started shaking uncontrollably. Meng Zhao, who had blocked off half of the view of the sky, was like a demon in human skin in his eyes. But what Meng Zhao said was the truth. Just then, two notifications had popped up in his field of vision. You severely injured normal citizen Zuo Haoran. You probably saved a large number of soldiers far into the future. Increased contribution points by 99. The future cannot be predicted. Destiny is filled with many ups and downs. Changes done far into the future contribute little to the current civilization. It's only when you control the present are you able to create the future. True. I've crippled Zuo Haoran, so he won't be able to get into college or become a superhuman. This means it'll be impossible for him to be in charge of an entire line of defense and run away at the last moment, thereby harming a lot of soldiers. But this is just one possible future. If we look at this through the butterfly effect theory, my return to the past has already changed many things. Who can say what will happen in the distant future? So, while I have made contributions to civilization, I haven't done much yet. It's best to teach elite citizens future martial arts. This way I'll be able to get instant results. After thinking about this, Meng Zhao cast Zuo Haoran a compassionate look. Could he be considered to have saved the class rep? Even though he was injured badly and might be unable to become a superhuman, if he looked at it from another angle, this meant that he would not have the chance to become a traitor and become the subject of scorn. He would also never be pinned on the pillar of disgrace. He could live a simple life as a normal person in the prospering Dragon City, which could also be considered as a form of luck. 
No matter what, the grudge between could be considered as settled now. Men Zhao no longer had the slightest bit of interest towards Uo Haoran. Lay still here. I'll go and call the school doctor. Oh, but it's not as if you can move. Meng Zhao started heading out of the grove. Zuo Haoran coughed up blood then. His originally handsome and righteous face was now a mess of tears, snot, and blood. When Meng Zhao was halfway out of the grove, he suddenly came back. I almost forgot something. He started groping about Zuo Haoran's body, and soon, he brought out a recording pen from the pocket in his pants. Meng Zhao whistled. Look at what we have here? Mr. Class Rep, your ability to learn is this great. You started learning how to record things behind others' backs as well, huh? Crack. He crushed the recording pen and put all the parts carefully into his pocket. Then, he patted around a little more to make sure that Zuo Haoran did not have a second recording pen before he left in satisfaction. Zuo Haoran was in complete despair. Aside from using his head to beat against the soft sand, which ended up with his face being covered in dirt, he could do nothing else. Ten minutes later, not only did the school doctor come, their homeroom teacher, Demon Yan, the teaching director, principal son, and all the class 6 students, they had just finished their tests, came over. The bloody scene in the depths of the grove shocked everyone. The students sucked in sharp breaths, while the homeroom teacher was scared out of his wits. Demon Yan scowled, and his face turned incredibly dark. The teaching director began jumping in anger after almost having a heart attack. Even principal son, who had been constantly dozing off, opened his beady eyes, which was a rare sight. He looked back and forth between Meng Zhao and Zhuo Haoran. You have absolutely no regard for the rules. How could you beat him to this state? The teaching director was mad with anger. As he watched his heavily injured nephew, he felt like tearing Meng Zhao apart. Student Affairs Office, hurry up and subjugate the student who broke the rules. Wang Longjun, how do you even teach your students? I is he even a student anymore? He's practically a murderer, a criminal, a.a. He started hiccuping because of his anger, then led two teachers from the student affairs office door at Meng Zhao. The homeroom teacher wanted to stop him, but he could not find a reason to do so. He could only rub his hands as he descended into panic. What should we do? Meng Zhao, you were too rash. The students looked at each other at a loss. They found themselves unable to say anything. The class rep had been quite mean, so if the two ended up fighting each other to a bloody pulp, the students would still be willing to side with Meng Zhao. It didn't matter even if they had to do so in the face of Principal Sun and the teaching director. But Meng Zhao had decided to lay a heavy hand and snap Zuo Haoran's spine. Wasn't that too much? Of course, there were some who found it strange. Since when did Meng Zhao become so strong that he could cripple the class rep? Meng Zhao appeared to be relaxed. He crossed his arms and just stood still. Even when the teachers from the student affairs office came over, he did not care. He just took two steps backwards. What now? Are you still thinking of fighting back? The teaching director had a fierce look. Meng Zhao, you can't keep making mistakes. The homeroom teacher quickly said. No, I'm perfectly fine with going to the student affairs office. Things have already progressed to this state, and I am indeed responsible for it. It's not something I can shake off, Meng Zhao said in a leisurely tone. But I have some evidences here that I should bring out to all of you now or else, I won't be able to know when they're destroyed in the dark. Mr. Yan, I trust you the most. Please look below the trees around us with banners tied on them. I've put eight super high-definition micro-video cameras on them. They should have recorded the fight just now from multiple angles. We'll know what happened when we look at them. The crowd was stunned. Even the teaching director was taken aback. Why did you put video cameras over there? Meng Zhao smiled. I didn't come here to fight against the class rep to settle our personal grudge. We were just going to spar and exchange techniques. We wanted to improve together. The class rep is strong, and it's rare for me to spar with him, so it's only par for the course that I'd want to record the entire session from a 360 degree angle. Then, when I go back, I could examine it carefully and improve more. Don't you always record our cultivation processes and fights to analyze our mistakes? I don't see anything wrong with what I did. Chapter 50, It's Just a Surprise The teaching director had nothing to say about it. Demon Yan cast a glance at Principal Sun and searched around the area. Soon, he brought out eight video cameras. When Meng Zhao saw the video cameras in Demon Yan's hands, he said, It's true that Zhuo Haoran is injured, but I don't understand what happened. I've just recovered, and my limbs are weak. There's no way I could deliver such a heavy punch. 
Mr. Yan, Mr. Wang, Teaching Director Ma, please watch the videos before the students and help me figure out what happened, or else. Or else what? Do you think that the school will falsely accuse an innocent man? The teaching director braced himself. Mr. Yan, turn on the videos, let's have a look. Each micro video camera had its own super high definition monitor. Demon Yan handed the eight video cameras to the teaching director and the homeroom teachers of the other third year classes. Wang Longjin managed to get himself one as well. Chu Fei Shang and the other students quickly went behind Wang Longjun and craned their necks to take a look. The fight was very short. It only lasted a bit over two minutes. First, Meng Zhao was beat up so badly that his face was a bloody mess. Then, he pounced on Zhuo Haoran. After that, Zhuo Haoran went flying while coughing blood. The normal students could not understand it, but the homeroom teachers looked contemplative. The teaching director's face turned white, and Demon Yan's pupils shrank. He gathered up the other video cameras and slowed down the video five times and replayed the final scene several times from different angles. Then, he cursed softly and strode to Zuo Haoran, who was on the stretcher. Tell me. What move were you about to use against Meng Zhao? Demon Yan asked while glaring at him. Zuo Haoran's face was pale. He could not say anything even after a long time had passed. Hurry up and tell me. Even if you don't tell me, I already know it. But if we don't figure out what sort of injury you have, you might miss the optimal time to be treated, and your injury will accompany you for life. Demon Yan's expression was fierce. The ruthless instructor's intimidating presence was not something the heavily injured Zhuo Haoran could stand up to. He shuddered and said, I it's hard hammer. When he said these words, before the students reacted, the homeroom teacher sucked in sharp breaths and jerked in shock. You know hard hammer? You were just sparring with another fellow student, and yet you used hard hammer. What were you thinking of doing? Ah! Zuo Haoran, why you are too rash. Everyone was shocked and remorseful. The teaching director covered his face. He looked as if everything was over. Mr. Yan, what's going on? How was Zuo Haoran injured? We want to know. Chu Fei Shang stood out to represent all of Class 6. Demon Yan cast a glance at Principal Sun. When he saw that the principal was not reacting to the situation, he faced the excited students and answered honestly. Zuo Haoran used a very powerful killing move called Hard Hammer during the sparring session just now, but he hasn't mastered it, and there were obstructions in his force execution. The explosive strength was all gathered on his spine, and the moment he was about to release it, Meng Zhao hit his chest, which caused the strength at the depths of his spine to explode. It resulted in his spine exploding. Hard Hammer as in the attack described with a crack of the whip, a needle seeps into bones? After saying this, a student who was very well read finally remembered what it was and could not help but cry out. This is a domineering killing move only used against monsters who have strong defenses. The power of the punch can pierce the organs and destroy the heart. Zuo Haoran actually tried to use it on Meng Zhao? Isn't that too diabolical? I see. So he reaped what he sowed? So, Meng Zhao was actually defending himself? Meng Zhao didn't injure Zuo Haoran, he hurt himself. You can't blame Meng Zhao for this. Demon Yan handed the eight video cameras to the teaching director. Teaching director Ma, do you have any opinion regarding my judgment? The features of Ma Ching Yun's horse-like face bunched up so much that he looked like a fried dough twist. The color of his face changed several times, but in the end, he said fiercely, and no matter what, this was caused by them fighting in secret. Meng Zhao. Why did you come to the grove to fight against Zuo Haoran? Teaching Director Ma, allow me to say this again, we were not fighting but sparring, and it was an accident. That hard hammer was also something Zuo Haoran mentioned that he would demonstrate to me beforehand. That's why I believe that it would be better to categorize the whole thing as an accident, Meng Zhao said calmly. Otherwise, it would be very hard to understand what went on. Zuo Haoran and I only have a little disagreement between us, which is something that can be resolved with a few words. Why should he use a move that is said to be able to deliver needles into bones with just one crack of a whip? That's a little over the top. If things really go out of hand, it'll be bad for me, Zuo Haoran, class 6, and the school. What do you think? The teaching director's expression changed. The homeroom teachers furrowed their brows. He was right. Students fighting against each other was common, but if they used hard hammer during a fight, were filmed doing it, and word about it spread out it would be difficult for them to control how things would blow up. If it were not handled properly, 9th high school's reputation would be ruined. 
even the teaching director himself would be disgraced for teaching a nephew who was ruthless and ended up reaping what he sowed. He would have trouble progressing the career ladder. But if the students were just sparring and an accident occurred, it was a different matter. The teaching director was still hesitating, but at that moment, Principal Sun, who had not spoken since the start, finally opened his mouth. Teaching Director Ma, Zuo Haoran is still lying there. Shouldn't you send the boy to the hospital? The other classes are still going through their tests. If we continue with the argument, we'll affect the children's future. That will not be good. The small, shriveled up old man spoke feebly. Since he was missing a few teeth, he spoke with a lisp, and he did not sound imposing at all. But the teaching director looked as if he had just been struck by a stick. He instantly held his anger back, lowered his head, and said, Yes, Principal Sun. Mr. Yan, ask Meng Zhao what exactly happened and how did the accident occur. Then, write a report about it. By the way, put on a friendlier face. Don't scare the children now. Understood, Principal Sun. Demon Yan instinctively saluted. It looked like a ruthless instructor was facing his own ruthless instructor. It's pretty good, hmm? Principal Sun smiled and returned to how he usually looked like, a mascot who only knew how to doze off. His hands were placed behind his back when he walked out of the grove. The class released a long sigh. Judging by the looks of it, the incident would be classified as an accident. However, Men Zhao should have coincidentally and unintentionally hit a fatal spot on Zhuo Haoran, right? It was not wrong, then, to say it was an accident. What else could have happened? There was no way Meng Zhao could have countered Hard Hammer. It would make absolutely no sense if he did. While the class watched with a complicated gaze, Meng Zhao was led away by Demon Yan. But they did not go to the office or the student affairs office. They only strolled about the schoolyard. Demon Yan walked at a moderate pace in front of Meng Zhao when he suddenly asked an unrelated and very strange question. How much did you hold back during your speed and strength tests this morning? Meng Zhao did not intend to hide and thought about it. About 20 to 30 percent? It was 20 to 30 percent right now, but the figures might change in a few days. Why? It wasn't challenging, so I wasn't interested in it. Hey! And only the golden target was able to stir up your interest? Your shooting skills are pretty good. Who did you learn it from? My dad. He was once an ace sharpshooter in the army. A few days ago, a ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle invaded Blessed Heavenly Garden. My dad dealt a headshot to it. I see. Demon Yao suddenly stopped still, turned his head around, and said, What happened today was intentional. Meng Zhao did not back down from the ruthless instructor's suddenly fierce gaze. Instead, he took a huge step forward, as if he was trying to clash weapons against him. Yes, it was intentional. I need an explanation. Meng Zhao shrugged. It was purely self-defense. Was it self-defense, or were you launching a preemptive strike? If you hadn't been baiting him, Zuo Haoran might not have attacked you. Am I supposed to stake my destiny on the possibility that he might not harm me? Meng Zhao smiled coldly. Mr. Yan, right now, if there was a fierce monster standing beside you and your family, would you carefully judge whether it's hungry or not, whether it would choose to spare you, or whether it was going through some difficulty? Would you try to decipher whether it is a kind monster? Would you think about whether you could find a better way to get rid of it? I'm just a high school student. When I handle matters, I am not able to pay attention to all details. I can only dig a pit and fill it with spikes. Then, I will stand behind that pit to see whether the monster will follow me. If it doesn't come, I won't bother it. But if it insists on coming after me, what can I do? Am I supposed to kneel down and beg it not to attack? Demon Yan stared at Meng Zhao for a long time before saying, All right, I can accept this explanation. I'll handle the trouble that will come later. Just focus on preparing for your exam. Meng Zhao sighed in relief and smiled brilliantly. Thank you, Mr. Yan. I knew that you're the fairest and kindest teacher in the entire school. Demon Yan waved his hand. You don't have to flatter me. If you're really thinking about thanking me, then have you ever thought about getting into military school? Meng Zhao shook his head frankly. Fei Shang wants to become a general who fights in wars. Please help him. As for me, forget it. A cunning look flashed in Demon Yan's eyes. Why? I don't think you're the type who hates wars. Meng Zhao had been a harvester for ten years of his life, and he had gained some occupational diseases because of it. He pouted. Being a soldier is too crude. They use guns, cannons, and tanks to reduce the monsters into a mess. 
resources that were originally in perfect shape end up mostly destroyed. Fighting in such a simple and crude manner isn't my style. Demon Yan smiled. Oh? And what sort of style do you like? Meticulous, precise, and elegant. Men Zhao thought about it, and he could not help but brandish his hands. It was as if he was holding an invisible scalpel and surgery knives. I like cutting into monster skin carefully, going through their blood vessels, gently caressing their organs, searching through every drop of their blood, and separating their organs perfectly before placing them in vessels filled with all sorts of medicinal liquid. In the end, a fearsome monster will become exquisite art. This is the art of a harvester, and I want to become an artist in this area. Demon Yan was unable to help it and shuddered when he saw the intoxicated expression on Meng Zhao's face. We're all high school students this crazy nowadays? Demon Yan took a few steps forward and said nonchalantly, Last question. You said you dreamt of my death that day? Meng Zhao was stunned. Then, he remembered what Demon Yan said. He was referring to the day he was reborn. Ugh. Mr. Yan. Dreams are the exact opposite of reality. Are you bothered by this? He scratched his head. Hey! I'm not bothered by it at all. Instead, I hope that's the case. While Meng Zhao was shocked, Demon Yan said, I was once a member of Dragon City's regular army, Red Dragon Army. Even though I have been discharged from service, I will be a member of the Red Dragon Army till the moment I die. The greatest humiliation to a soldier is to die in his sleep. Since a person is going to die either way, I hope that I can die in a monster's stomach and use my very last bone to pierce a monster's heart. That is the best way for a member of the Red Dragon Army to die. So, thank you for dreaming of me fighting to my death, Meng Zhao. This time, it was Meng Zhao's turn to be unable to speak. Demon Yan laughed loudly and strode forward. Chapter 50, It's Just a Surprise The teaching director had nothing to say about it. Demon Yan cast a glance at Principal Sun and searched around the area. Soon, he brought out eight video cameras. When Meng Zhao saw the video cameras in Demon Yan's hands, he said, It's true that Zhuo Haoran is injured, but I don't understand what happened. I've just recovered, and my limbs are weak. There's no way I could deliver such a heavy punch. Mr. Yan, Mr. Wang, Teaching Director Ma, please watch the videos before the students and help me figure out what happened, or else. Or else what? Do you think that the school will falsely accuse an innocent man? The teaching director braced himself. Mr. Yan, turn on the videos, let's have a look. Each micro video camera had its own super high definition monitor. Demon Yan handed the eight video cameras to the teaching director and the homeroom teachers of the other third year classes. Wang Longjin managed to get himself one as well. Chu Fei Shang and the other students quickly went behind Wang Longjun and craned their necks to take a look. The fight was very short. It only lasted a bit over two minutes. First, Meng Zhao was beat up so badly that his face was a bloody mess. Then, he pounced on Zhuo Haoran. After that, Zhuo Haoran went flying while coughing blood. The normal students could not understand it, but the homeroom teachers looked contemplative. The teaching director's face turned white, and Demon Yan's pupils shrank. He gathered up the other video cameras and slowed down the video five times and replayed the final scene several times from different angles. Then, he cursed softly and strode to Zhuo Haoran who was on the stretcher. Tell me. What move were you about to use against Meng Zhao? Demon Yan asked while glaring at him. Zhuo Haoran's face was pale. He could not say anything even after a long time had passed. Hurry up and tell me. Even if you don't tell me, I already know it. But if we don't figure out what sort of injury you have, you might miss the optimal time to be treated, and your injury will accompany you for life. Demon Yan's expression was fierce. The ruthless instructor's intimidating presence was not something the heavily injured Zhuo Haoran could stand up to. He shuddered and said, I it's hard hammer. When he said these words, before the students reacted, the homeroom teacher sucked in sharp breaths and jerked in shock. You know hard hammer? You were just sparring with another fellow student, and yet you used hard hammer. What were you thinking of doing? Ah! Zhuo Haoran, why you are too rash? Everyone was shocked and remorseful. The teaching director covered his face. He looked as if everything was over. Mr. Yan, what's going on? How was Zhuo Haoran injured? We want to know. Chu Fei Shang stood out to represent all of Class 6. Demon Yan cast a glance at Principal Sun. When he saw that the principal was not reacting to the situation, he faced the excited students and answered honestly. 
Zuo Haoran used a very powerful killing move called Hard Hammer during the sparring session just now, but he hasn't mastered it, and there were obstructions in his force execution. The explosive strength was all gathered on his spine, and the moment he was about to release it, Meng Zhao hit his chest, which caused the strength at the depths of his spine to explode. It resulted in his spine exploding. Hard Hammer As in the attack described with a crack of the whip, a needle seeps into bones? After saying this, a student who was very well read finally remembered what it was and could not help but cry out. This is a domineering killing move only used against monsters who have strong defenses. The power of the punch can pierce the organs and destroy the heart. Zuo Haoran actually tried to use it on Meng Zhao? Isn't that too diabolical? I see. So he reaped what he sowed? So, Meng Zhao was actually defending himself? Meng Zhao didn't injure Zuo Haoran, he hurt himself. You can't blame Meng Zhao for this. Demon Yan handed the eight video cameras to the teaching director. Teaching director Ma, do you have any opinion regarding my judgment? The features of Ma Ching Yun's horse-like face bunched up so much that he looked like a fried dough twist. The color of his face changed several times, but in the end, he said fiercely, and no matter what, this was caused by them fighting in secret. Meng Zhao, why did you come to the grove to fight against Zuo Haoran? Teaching director Ma. Allow me to say this again, we were not fighting but sparring, and it was an accident. That hard hammer was also something Zuo Haoran mentioned that he would demonstrate to me beforehand. That's why I believe that it would be better to categorize the whole thing as an accident, Meng Zhao said calmly. Otherwise, it would be very hard to understand what went on. Zuo Haoran and I only have a little disagreement between us, which is something that can be resolved with a few words. Why should he use a move that is said to be able to deliver needles into bones with just one crack of a whip? That's a little over the top. If things really go out of hand, it'll be bad for me, Zuo Haoran, class 6, and the school. What do you think? The teaching director's expression changed. The homeroom teachers furrowed their brows. He was right. Students fighting against each other was common, but if they used hard hammer during a fight, were filmed doing it, and word about it spread out, it would be difficult for them to control how things would blow up. If it were not handled properly, Ninth high school's reputation would be ruined. Even the teaching director himself would be disgraced for teaching a nephew who was ruthless and ended up reaping what he sowed. He would have trouble progressing the career ladder. But if the students were just sparring and an accident occurred, it was a different matter. The teaching director was still hesitating, but at that moment, Principal Sun, who had not spoken since the start, finally opened his mouth. Teaching director Ma, Zuo Haoran is still lying there. Shouldn't you send the boy to the hospital? The other classes are still going through their tests. If we continue with the argument, we'll affect the children's future. That will not be good. The small, shriveled up old man spoke feebly. Since he was missing a few teeth, he spoke with a lisp, and he did not sound imposing at all. But the teaching director looked as if he had just been struck by a stick. He instantly held his anger back, lowered his head, and said, Yes, Principal Sun. Mr. Yan. Ask Meng Zhao what exactly happened and how did the accident occur. Then, write a report about it. By the way, put on a friendlier face. Don't scare the children now. Understood, Principal Sun. Demon Yan instinctively saluted. It looked like a ruthless instructor was facing his own ruthless instructor. It's pretty good, hmm? Principal Sun smiled and returned to how he usually looked like, a mascot who only knew how to doze off. His hands were placed behind his back when he walked out of the grove. The class released a long sigh. Judging by the looks of it, the incident would be classified as an accident. However, Men Zhao should have coincidentally and unintentionally hit a fatal spot on Zuo Haoran, right? It was not wrong, then, to say it was an accident. What else could have happened? There was no way Meng Zhao could have countered Hard Hammer. It would make absolutely no sense if he did. While the class watched with a complicated gaze, Meng Zhao was led away by Demon Yan. But they did not go to the office or the student affairs office. They only strolled about the schoolyard. Demon Yan walked at a moderate pace in front of Meng Zhao when he suddenly asked an unrelated and very strange question. How much did you hold back during your speed and strength tests this morning? Meng Zhao did not intend to hide and thought about it. About 20 to 30 percent? It was 20 to 30 percent right now but the figures might change in a few days. Why? It wasn't challenging, so I wasn't interested in it. Hey! And only the golden target was able to stir up your interest? Your shooting skills are pretty good. Who did you learn it from? My dad. 
He was once an ace sharpshooter in the army. A few days ago, a ghost-eyed golden-winged flame beetle invaded blessed heavenly garden. My dad dealt a headshot to it. I see. Demon Yao suddenly stopped still, turned his head around, and said, What happened today was intentional. Meng Zhao did not back down from the ruthless instructor's suddenly fierce gaze. Instead, he took a huge step forward, as if he was trying to clash weapons against him. Yes, it was intentional. I need an explanation. Meng Zhao shrugged. It was purely self-defense. Was it self-defense, or were you launching a preemptive strike? If you hadn't been baiting him, Zuo Haoran might not have attacked you. Am I supposed to stake my destiny on the possibility that he might not harm me? Meng Zhao smiled coldly. Mr. Yan, right now, if there was a fierce monster standing beside you and your family, would you carefully judge whether it's hungry or not, whether it would choose to spare you, or whether it was going through some difficulty? Would you try to decipher whether it is a kind monster? Would you think about whether you could find a better way to get rid of it? I'm just a high school student. When I handle matters, I am not able to pay attention to all details. I can only dig a pit and fill it with spikes. Then, I will stand behind that pit to see whether the monster will follow me. If it doesn't come, I won't bother it. But if it insists on coming after me, what can I do? Am I supposed to kneel down and beg it not to attack? Demon Yan stared at Meng Zhao for a long time before saying, All right, I can accept this explanation. I'll handle the trouble that will come later. Just focus on preparing for your exam. Meng Zhao sighed in relief and smiled brilliantly. Thank you, Mr. Yan. I knew that you're the fairest and kindest teacher in the entire school. Demon Yan waved his hand. You don't have to flatter me. If you're really thinking about thanking me, then have you ever thought about getting into military school? Meng Zhao shook his head frankly. Fei Shang wants to become a general who fights in wars. Please help him. As for me, forget it. A cunning look flashed in Demon Yan's eyes. Why? I don't think you're the type who hates wars. Meng Zhao had been a harvester for ten years of his life, and he had gained some occupational diseases because of it. He pouted. Being a soldier is too crude. They use guns, cannons, and tanks to reduce the monsters into a mess. Resources that were originally in perfect shape end up mostly destroyed. Fighting in such a simple and crude manner isn't my style. Demon Yan smiled. Oh? And what sort of style do you like? Meticulous, precise, and elegant. Meng Zhao thought about it, and he could not help but brandish his hands. It was as if he was holding an invisible scalpel and surgery knives. I like cutting into monster skin carefully, going through their blood vessels, gently caressing their organs, searching through every drop of their blood, and separating their organs perfectly before placing them in vessels filled with all sorts of medicinal liquid. In the end, a fearsome monster will become exquisite art. This is the art of a harvester, and I want to become an artist in this area. Demon Yan was unable to help it and shuddered when he saw the intoxicated expression on Meng Zhao's face. Were all high school students this crazy nowadays? Demon Yan took a few steps forward and said nonchalantly, Last question. You said you dreamt of my death that day? Meng Zhao was stunned. Then, he remembered what Demon Yan said. He was referring to the day he was reborn. Ugh. Mr. Yan, dreams are the exact opposite of reality. Are you bothered by this? He scratched his head. Hey! I'm not bothered by it at all. Instead, I hope that's the case. While Meng Zhao was shocked, Demon Yan said, I was once a member of Dragon City's regular army, Red Dragon Army. Even though I have been discharged from service, I will be a member of the Red Dragon Army till the moment I die. The greatest humiliation to a soldier is to die in his sleep. Since a person is going to die either way, I hope that I can die in a monster's stomach and use my very last bone to pierce a monster's heart. That is the best way for a member of the Red Dragon Army to die. So, thank you for dreaming of me fighting to my death, Meng Zhao. This time, it was Meng Zhao's turn to be unable to speak. Demon Yan laughed loudly and strode forward, 